to an end? Freeloader, huh? I know you're napping around here somewhere. On your feet and back to work already, yeah? Hey, get up already! <sighs> mm, sorry, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Did your head spring a leak while you were napping? Better see if you can even remember your name. Well, looks like there's hope for you yet. Back off, you sack of guts. I'm just resting up for the battle. Yeah, well, the battle's on our doorstep, so you're lucky I like you enough to wake you. You heard who we're up against, yeah? Gerald's mercenaries. Gonna be one hell of a fight if true, especially if the Ashen Demon is here. Don't like a smidge of what I've heard about that fella. Or was it a woman? Leave it to you to fumble the details. Did you even catch this Ashen Demon's name? Of course I did. It was... I... By the goddess, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, that's it. Demon or no demon, our job is to fight and win. <laughs> you sound just like the captain. I know they paid up front, but come on. Well, at least one of you has some courage. You've certainly come a long way since I plucked you from that mountain village. But this battle is about more than just victory. Gerald's team has a sterling reputation. Rumor has it they've never blundered even a single job. But once we put them to rout, we'll finally be the greatest mercenaries in all of Leicester. Enemy activity detected, Captain. Looks like we'll be fighting by moonlight. Mind you don't kill each other in the dark. Wasn't expecting a fight so soon, but I guess there's nothing for it. You ready? Well, I don't know that I... You know what? Never mind. It's gonna be fine, so long as we both watch our backs. All right, let's get down to business. We're up against Gerald's mercenaries. Let's move out! Drive them straight into their graves! Time to see what you're made of. <laughs> Guess 
that's that. I eat steak tougher than this. Hey, you! Clear out that group over there! The main force is here! We're saved! Now push! Push the enemy back! About time a foe with some teeth showed up. But they still don't stand a chance against Burling's mercenaries. Now, over. isn't this a sight? You must be the infamous Ashen Demon. I can't wait to tear you apart. This will be the end of the Ashen Demon. No one can beat the cow. like she was nothing. You can't believe I'm losing to some damn kid. Captain Burling's in trouble. I have to reach her before it's too late. There's so many of them. There's one thing to do about that. Just when my dream was finally in sight. You monster. The captain's dead. What are we gonna do now? Stand down or die. We're gonna stand. We're gonna fight. And we're gonna avenge the captain! Why am I so scared? It's just one mic. Run! Run while you can! No! This can't be happening! of this world. I will not allow it to perish with you. This fight is over. Hey, wait! 
Why? We've achieved our goal. Your job was to stop us, and you failed. <sighs> Another time, perhaps. Hey, we're not done here! Why, why am I so tired? Not sure I would have been able to sleep at night with your <laughs> blood on my hands. Ah! Who are you? Ha! Now that is a tricky question. For the moment, why don't you call me Arval? Arval, huh? But for now, let me speak plain. You are slated to die. Right now, I'm the only thing holding your meager life together. And to be blunt, it's beginning to tire me. Um, thank you? Oh, oh my. That's the first time anyone has ever shown me gratitude. And I must say, I like it very much. Hear me well. You are a crucial piece of this world's cyclical... Yeah, uh, no, this will never do. You're far too groggy to absorb what I'm saying. For now, I needn't tell you how you'll get back on your feet. I need only convince you that you will. I don't understand. I'm already up and about. Ah, perhaps here you are, but not in reality, where it counts. <laughs> your cluelessness is actually quite charming. I think you're starting to grow on me. Still, the important thing is what you do after you wake. And what should that be? Recall, please, how the Ashen Demon bested you came within an inch of snuffing out your life. If you attempt the fight again the same way, you will reach the same conclusion. This would force me to step in once more, which would be most annoying and also rather counterproductive, if I'm honest. You don't need to worry. I won't lose next time. Although, who's to say when that time will come? Who indeed? My captain and comrades are dead. The company is finished. So there's only one thing I can do. Start over. Huh. I thought you'd be more sentimental. Did they not take you in? Care for you? Gold's the only thing that ever held us together. And death is something we're all too used to. I never knew my real parents, and I lost the mother who raised me. Partings just come easy to me, I guess. The best way to honor my fallen comrades is by training hard and growing even stronger. Then I'll crush Gerald's mercenaries, and the Ashen Demon with them. That's what I'm going to live for now. Oh, but I like your spirit! Though I expected no less from my partner in destiny. I'm sorry, what? Yes, I suppose that was a bit sudden. I should remember, take intimacy in smaller steps. The point is that I'm here to guide you, and I promise to help you find the strength to see your dreams realized. Prologue. A Chance Encounter. The continent of Fodlan, said to be protected by a goddess, has existed for uncountable ages. Now, three ruling powers control the land. 
To the south is a region held for more than a thousand years by the Adrestian Empire. To the north is the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. And to the east, a league of nobles that bends no knee rules the Leicester Alliance. Though once consumed in war, these three powers now exist in relative harmony. Nestled between them is Garrick Mach Monastery, seat of the Church of Seros, the land's widely practiced faith and a power that helps to maintain peace across the continent. Not far from the monastery, at the northern edge of the empire, is a small village called Ramayar, and west of this place stretches a forest where a lone mercenary awaits. Hey, wake up! Ugh, how many times must we do this? Get up already! Huh? That's weird. I could have sworn I heard someone calling me. It's still dark out, though. Hello? Yes, I was calling you. Many times, I might add. Come on, I told you not to sneak up on me like that. As if I have a choice. Do you know how many times you would have died by now if not for me? I'll tell you. 22. The three times you leapt off a cliff to quote unquote get tougher saved you. Those five mad attempts to dispatch a horde of monsters by yourself saved you. And tonight, despite my repeated warnings, you took the wrong path and ended up having to sleep on a bed of leaves in the middle of the woods. All right, this was all my fault, and I'm sorry. Strange. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, yet somehow I'm the one who feels bad now. I must remember this tactic. At any rate, we all make a few mistakes along the way. And by we, I mean you. And by a few, I mean far, far more than average. Now then, with that out of the way, would you like to know why I've roused you from your mud-caked slumber? Actually, it's probably easier to show rather than tell at this point. Look over there, if you would. Hmm? Stop plowing ahead, Claude. You're going to get us lost. Lost, schmast. We've got it on Imperial authority that this is the way to the village. <sighs> True, I said there was a village, but how could anyone know where it is in the thick of these mountains? I can't even say for certain where we are in all this gloom. Okay, new plan. I'll rely on my keen senses to navigate. Lucky for you, they're sharp as an arrow. Hold, both of you. Someone's here. Another bandit, perhaps? They're mistaking you for some common backwater thief. What cheek. Well, hold on there. I'm no bandit. I'm a mercenary. Well, that makes everything better. A bandit would be far less out of place in these woods than a sellsword. What brings you here? We've no time for an interrogation. Our pursuers are closing in. I don't know who you people are or what you want, but I think introductions can wait. You clearly need every blade you can find, and my pockets have been feeling awfully light lately. What do you say? Well, since you're here, do you mind stepping in and helping us chase off these scary bandits? Don't worry about payment. You'll receive plenty of coin. If we survive, that is. There they are! Kill them all! I'll deal with things here. Watch this! Let me show you a trick for dealing with heavily defended enemies. And 
That's how it's done. Done. Don't overstep, Edelgard. Well, I suppose my turn has arrived. Watch this! I've awaited this moment. I won't allow anyone to stop me. Was you or me? Just who are these people anyway? All three of them have crests. What's wrong with you? They're just a bunch of brats. Stop embarrassing yourself and stick at your ground that. already. Is it claw time? I think it's claw time. No problem. I got it. I'm a master of strategy, but I'm not really used to being on the front lines. Be sure to tend to your wounds, Edelgard. Lord, you're hurt. Do something about those wounds. Lucky there. Oh, well, the lucky for me, over. I guess. My turn. Not so much for you. Her bandits have a firm hold on the central road. It would be wise to move through the forest and take down the strongholds as we go. Try and keep an eye on who we're fighting, and make sure we've got the right person leading the charge at the right time. Well, to unravel their defenses? Enough of this strategy nonsense! Get out there and tear them all to pieces! Okay, how many thugs does this guy have working for him anyway? It's not over. Repent, foul bandits! The Knights of Seros are here, and we'll cut you down for terrorizing our students. This battle is practically won. The Knights have arrived. Zeros! Not now! If I don't kill at least one of them, Brett, I'm finished! Watch out! You're gonna make a last-ditch effort to rush our position. This is where you die, dogs! Do you feel that power? Maybe you can channel it like you did in the other battle. You're seriously the Imperial Princess, the Crown Prince, and the heir to the Alliance? Yes, and as the three of us are now in your debt, I think formal introductions are in order. My name is Edelgard von Hressfeld, Princess of the Adrestian Empire. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathed, Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. And I'm Claude von Regan. Grandson of the leader of the Leicester Alliance. Things looked grim there for a moment. Thanks to you, we put those bandits to flight. Bit of a miracle we ran into you out there, but hey, I'll take it. Oh, I'm sure the three of you could have handled the situation just fine without me. No need for false humility. 
We'd likely have perished if not for your help. Well, aren't they an unlikely trio? I wonder why those bandits were after them. Still, it's no concern of ours. We have our own plans to attend to. Now, collect your pay and be off before they get a wild idea and ask you to join them. Say, while I have you here... Do you know where I can find Ramire Village? I took a wrong turn somewhere along the way. I'm looking for a band of hardened mercenaries who follow a man named Gerald. I hear rumors that's where they're camped. Actually, Ramire might just be the village we've been looking for, too. That ring a bell, Edelgard? I don't remember hearing anything about Mercs, but... The name sounds correct, at least. Gerald's too smart to get smoked out by a bunch of rumors, but they're all I've got at the moment. In any case, we won't find our own two feet in all this dark. We should return to camp and get our bearings before... Hello there, house leaders. Hello, brave mercenary. We've mopped up what's left of those rascals, so what say we return to camp? And I insist you accompany us, good mercenary. Who, me? You heard the man. We'll wait out the night together and make for the village in the morning. It's a great plan, especially if you want to get paid, as we're a tiny bit short on pocket change at the moment. Yes, and those mercenaries you're looking for? Gerald's band, wasn't it? They may be in Ramire Village tonight, but there's no telling when they'll move on. If you come back to our camp, we have maps that may help you get one step ahead of them. This is clearly the wisest course of action, not to mention that I would enjoy conversing with you further. But of course, the choice is yours. <sighs> Why can't things ever be simple? All right, but just for the night. Perfect. Then might I borrow you for a moment after we reach camp? There's a matter we must speak about. Nothing alarming, I promise you. Right then, so off we go. But, um, if I may, did I hear you mention a Gerald earlier? Yes, do you know him? He heads up a pretty elite band of mercenaries. So I imagine his name has spread all over Fodlin by now. Mercenaries, is it? No. No, it can't be him. Can it? Well, I'll just have to meet this Gerald myself. After I've seen my duties through, of course. After all, if I don't finish my assigned tasks, I'm mission the point. Get it? Missing? Mission? Come now, this is good stuff! <laughs> That's our Aloise. Come on, let's get moving before he really gets going. My sincere apologies for asking this of you. I know you're heading for Ramire Village in order to find Gerald's mercenaries, but... Well, perhaps you might consider changing your mind and accompanying us to Garagmach Monastery instead. And why would I do that exactly? Because you've done us a great service and we don't have the means in camp to properly reward you. At the monastery, however, we can repay your kindness in full. Also, between you and me, this evening's turn of events was quite the embarrassment for the church. We allowed students of the Officers' Academy out of our sight, and house leaders of great political consequence at that. And then they crossed swords with bandits! If word got out, well, let's just say it would sit poorly with everyone. So you see why we must ensure you are well compensated. Also, there may be some papers for you to sign. Perhaps in blood. This sounds more like hush money than a reward. Yes, that's exactly what I told the fool knight who suggested it. 
Me, I'd just as soon send you on your way, but I fear I'm obligated to escort you back. Anyway, the whole thing will be much easier if you simply agree to come along. Just as a formality, of course. I think that was a threat. And here I thought he was a big softie. Well, what do you think? Garrick Mock is in the opposite direction of where we need to be. But this man seems rather set on having us accompany them. You make a poor case, Aloise. But I can see where this is heading. I'll come with you to the monastery. But I'm not staying a single minute longer than I have to. Bless you, my friend. What a noble soul you are. I'd say you saved my bacon, but that would be utterly hammy. Alois, has anyone ever told you that you're... Don't. Some truths are simply too painful to bear. While I'm no expert, I fear the poor man's heart couldn't handle the shock. Hmm? Told me what? Told you how dashing you are in that armor. <laughs> Not just any man can pull off that look. Ah, you like it? Wonderful. I admit I've received no small share of positive comments on it. There's a grand story behind every last ding and dent. Enough to keep me talking for a week. Why, take this one here. We heard you'll be joining us at Garrick Mock. Perhaps somewhat unwillingly, I might add? I know this wasn't in your plans, but if it lets us get to know each other better, perhaps it will prove worth it in the end. Unwilling or not, we've got a long road ahead, so let's try to keep the mood light. I hesitate to ask this, considering you're only here because of us, but... Well, are you sure about this decision? The last thing we want is to delay you from your own business. The knights may seem unwilling to bend, but it's not as if you have no say in the matter. Actually, I see this as just another chance to better myself. You are more gracious than I. But, as I see you've made peace with it, I will leave the matter be. Yes, yes, that's quite enough chatter. Let's save our energy for the road. To the monastery! Listen, I know this one's on me. I'm the one who roped you into coming back to camp, after all. But I'll find a way to make it up to you, I promise. Thanks, Claude. I know you will. Hey! Hurry up back there, or we'll leave you behind! You know you've had a busy day when you rub shoulders with the heirs to the Empire, the Kingdom, and the Alliance. I think they're a fascinating group of people myself, but what do you make of them? Seems like Edelgard thinks high enough of me. She's got this elegant air about her, but somehow doesn't hold any disdain for mercenaries. It feels like Dimitri's always checking in on me every chance he gets. He'll definitely make a good king. The kind who looks after his people. Claude's a laid-back kind of guy who doesn't really strike me as noble, and I mean that in a good way. Something tells me he's gonna be easy to work with. <laughs> of course you only pick up on their rosy qualities. You really are a delight. Have I told you that lately? Still, you better pick up the pace before you vex these people any further. Prologue. Three Houses. Deep in the forest, the mercenary meets a trio of youths, each a student at Gehrig Mach's Officers Academy and a leader of one of the school's three houses. Striking down the bandit chief who attacked the students brings undue attention to the mercenary, who soon arrives at the hallowed gates of Gehrig Mach.
And with that, may I present the mercenary I spoke of? Greetings. My name is Rhea, and I am the Archbishop of the Church of Seros. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for rescuing our students. <sighs> it was nothing. You take a job, you make sure it gets done. That's what a mercenary does. I see you do not lack for confidence. However, the reason we summoned you here was not simply to express our gratitude. We have a proposal for you. One made on behalf of the church itself. What kind of proposal? Someone told you of the officer's academy here at the monastery, yes? We would have you join this academy as a student. You what? Though you are a mercenary, I understand you are not currently beholden to any one particular employer. Also, the students you rescued are close to your own age. Your life could be greatly enriched here. Or she's heard about our power and wants to keep us on a short leash. And yet she's taking it almost as a given that we'll accept. It's infuriating. I need to get stronger if I'm gonna do what I need to. If your fancy school can really make that happen, consider me interested. The Knights of Seros, as well as many other powerful warriors, pass daily through the gates of this hallowed monastery. If strength is what you are after, we can certainly provide it in spades. They've really talked us into a corner here. I think I see where this is going. All right, I'm in. A wise decision. We will do all we can to ensure you do not regret it. I believe you will go far. If I may, permit me to tell you a bit more about the school itself. The Academy is divided into three houses and draws in the most promising young talents from every corner of Fodlan. Some are noble-born, while others spring from more humble roots. But within these walls, all are treated as equals. We ask our prospects to spend a year living under the same dormitory roof, so they can challenge each other, work hard, and grow together. Each of our houses corresponds to one of Fodlan's three regions. Edelgard leads the Black Eagle House, which is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Dimitri leads the Blue Lion House, home to students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. And Claude leads the Golden Deer House, for students from the Leicester Alliance. We could select a house for you ourselves, but as all of this was our idea, perhaps we should leave this decision to you. You are something of a special case, after all. So I can join any house I want? Yes, you have simply to name it. So you wish to join Claude's Golden Deer. Are you certain? Yep, that's the one. I'm sure of it. May you build wonderful and lasting friendships in your new house. Well then, with that taken care of, it's time to decide which of us will supervise which house. Yes, it turns out we just underwent a last-minute roster change. I guess you two haven't met. This is Professor Yuritsa, our weapons instructor. Hello. Nice meeting you, uh, sir. Don't load me up with too much homework, all right? <laughs> Do my ears deceive me, or is that curiosity I hear in your voice, Professor Yuritsa? I thought all the houses were the same to you. 
Perhaps you should be in charge of our new student's house, hmm? I don't care. You decide. Well, you'll certainly hear no objections from me. Professor Manuela, you and I can take charge of the remaining houses. What? It's decided already? I was at least expecting a fight. Maybe some hair pulling? And as for you, my mysterious new student, I look forward to getting to know you much, much better throughout the year. The gall of these people making decisions for you. It's enough to make one's head spin. Uh, right. In any case, I'm looking forward to learning from you, Professor Yuritsa. I'll inform you of our first mission soon. Sorry, what mission? Oh, did we fail to mention that? Each month, every house in the Academy is given a mission entailing some form of service to the Church. Sorry, but do I have this right? This person just enrolled at the Academy and now they have become a member of our house? Yeah, that's pretty much the deal. Right, Professor Yuritsa? Yes. I love how you can bump into someone in the woods one night and suddenly you're living under the same roof the next. I knew we had a thing. Anyway, welcome to the Golden Deer House, where the only rule is make your own rules. Kidding, of course. Or am I? The point is, you're one of us now. And it's very good to have you here. Well, the term's only just started. The church must really like you if they're letting you join partway through. You have to be pretty skilled to get that kind of treatment. Well, I believe it. I mean, how many people our age can cut it as full-fledged mercenaries? I definitely see why the church was interested, and I can't wait to train together. And I can't wait to eat together! Or work out! You wanna go work out? Seriously, you need to put some muscles on that coat rack you call a body. Bulk up! Like me. Hmm, I don't think these strange shirt buttons look is for everybody. Any more meat on those bones, and our friend here would be downright scary. Our new friend's build is perfect as is. Wouldn't you agree, Marianne? Oh, well, I don't... Uh... Okay, okay, everyone just loosen up. And hey, it's not like we haven't met already, so just sit back and make yourself at home. I would not take after Claude if I were you, new blood. Honestly, if you wish your time here to be fruitful, you would do well to follow my lead. Um, I think Professor Yuritsa wants to say something. Remember your mission? Every word, Professor. We are to crush what remains of the Iron King's thieves who attacked our camp. And with their boss Costas out of the picture, the runts that are left should be easy pickings. They can't be anything too special if we're getting them as homework. Good. Prepare yourself. Of course, Professor... Oh, he's gone. Yeah, so that whole Yuritsa up and vanishing thing? Best to just get used to it. Well, I for one am excited to show off my skills by beating up on some bandits. I don't suppose I could be excused, or... Um... We're all in this together, Marianne. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Besides, the newbie here already sent them packing once, so this should be easy peasy. So long as I'm here, this will all work out just fine. Are you sure? <sighs> That's a relief. Anyway, we're all participating in this mission. Church's rules. I didn't make them, so the only thing we can do is work together. And we're gonna lean pretty heavy on our mercenary buddy here. Hope that's okay. Hey, lean all you want. Just make sure I get the credit at the end.
There you are, Yuritsa. I have word from the knights. It is time? Yes. The bandits have fled north into the canyon bordering Count Rose land in the kingdom. But the knights have cut off their escape, and now stand ready to provide whatever support the students may require. We'll leave at once. I needn't remind you this is the first real battle for some of our charges. I trust you will keep them safe, though I likely do not need to worry with an old hand like you at their side. No, you don't. You there, it's time for the mission. Gather the others. About time we saw some action. Lost sight of them? Ashamed to admit it, but yes. It's possible someone magicked the bandits away. But why go to that kind of trouble for a handful of highwaymen scum? So be it. We'll follow the blood scent. Right, of course. We'll follow... Wait, what? We're leaving. Everyone, follow me! Hey, uh, Professor Yuritsa, are you... And the way he goes. Guess we better get after him. We're still on a mission, after all. Pathetic. Slow down, Professor. You're making it hard for us to... Oh. Well, this is something. What happened to all these people? Dead by my hand. Are these the bandits we have been chasing? Who knows? It's not like you can tell they're bandits just from looking at them. Well, Professor? Are they the villains we're searching for? Most likely. I caught them trying to escape to that fortress. Okay, does it have to be so dark and spooky? It must be their hideout if they were trying to shelter there. Then let's quit standing around and seize the place. Might even find some nice gear in the process. I concur. As nobles, we would be remiss to let the people suffer at the hands of these rapscallions one minute longer. So you want to go in there? Yeah, you know what? I think I'll stay here and make sure the outside is safe. Right, Marianne? You with me? Of course. We don't belong in a dangerous place like that. We'll be heroes if we manage to take out an entire bandit outpost. This is the kind of stuff I live for. Yeah! Let me at him! I'll crack those guys like walnuts! It seems like opinions are split. But the thing is, we're still on a mission. And that means we leave the decision-making to Professor Yuritsa. And I say, enter the fortress. Dispatch any bandits you find. But... There's no cause for concern. I see no signs of life. There can't be more than a handful, or none at all. I'd be happy with the none option. My grandpa told me empty forts have ghosts in them. Ghosts? I mean, uh, how childish. Everyone knows there's no such thing. We're hunting bandits, not banshees, so can we please just get this over with? Lysithia, don't tell me that you're... You know what? Probably better not to ask. You folks must be pretty confident considering how much you're horsing around. Just be careful some brute doesn't take you by surprise. Yeah, we'll just need to watch each other's backs. Eyes peeled, everyone. We'll put the bandits to rout. Follow me! Huh? Hey! We got intruders! Come on, they're just bandits. That doesn't mean we can go easy on them. Let's do this.
That takes care of seizing the hideout. So what's next? Search the basement. Something is amiss. Hey, there's a prisoner down here. And she looks like an academy student? Rescue me? Hey, are you all right? Who did this to you? Actually, never mind. Let's get you out of here before any of that. Thank you for saving me. Don't let the girl escape, or Kranya will make us wish we were dead. It's not safe here. We must take the girl and run. <laughs> okay. We should be safe here. I mean, I hope we are at least. All right. Who came in here and trashed my beautiful stronghold? Huh? Hi there. I'm Kronya. But you can just call me the lady that's about to murder you. Or, you know, don't. It's her. So be it. Kill her! plan for you. Progress looks good on me. All right, you asked for it. Release the creature we captured. What is that? It looks like some sort of giant beast. Attack in force. You'll never defeat it alone. All the numbers in the world won't save you. I'm here to aid you. Are we even hurting this thing? I sense fear in this beast. Keep attacking. Yes. You got my back? All part of the plan. We'll do it together. I've got you now. Defeated a demonic beast? Impossible! Talus isn't going to like this at all. You'll pay for this. You'll all pay! Talk about strange customers. Well, at least we beat her. That's what counts. We should be safe here for the time being. I'm well acquainted with Professor Yuritsa. But the rest of you are this year's fresh-faced golden deer, I presume? Nothing but the freshest. Also, is it just me, or are you wearing our uniform? And how do you know Professor Yuritsa?
Do you go to the Officers' Academy? She's one of last year's students. A Black Eagle. Which would make you our senior? But what were you doing here in a bandit fortress? Well, I was just on the verge of graduation last year when I was kidnapped by the strangest people. In truth, I thought I'd never breathe fresh air again. Thank you for coming when you did. Oh, where are my manners? I'm Monica Von Ox, eldest daughter of the Empire's Baron Ox. Mm, yes, I think I understand. This all began when the Knights lost sight of the bandits and you gave chase. Afterward, you entered a suspicious fortress and rescued a missing student. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I'll be sure to smooth things over for you once we're back. Sounds good. But, uh, why are you even here, Alois? Because the Knights sent for help after you left them behind. Did you expect anything different? Not that I'm trying to lay blame at your feet. I know you were following Professor Yuritsa's lead, so I think everyone involved can head home knowing they did just swell. For as you know, all swell that ends swell. Still, I find this a rather grave turn of events. To think the same bandits who attacked our charges were behind another student's abduction. Hmm? I never said I was kidnapped by bandits. You... you didn't? Now that you mention it, some of the folks in that fortress weren't exactly dressed in the typical bandit fineries. What if we're dealing with a way savvier organization than we think, and the bandits just answer to them? Yeah, there was one real piece of work. Kranya, I think, who managed to escape. I've seen all kinds of people as a mercenary, and she was definitely not your everyday bandit. You're on the right path. Perhaps I should just tell you who kidnapped me, seeing as I already know. What? Why didn't you mention this earlier? Everyone was busy speculating, so it was difficult to cut in. What do you know, child? Out with it. Well, the one who kidnapped me was Tomas the Librarian. I'm certain of it. I could tell from his gait, and how he held his staff. I suppose he isn't the simple scholar you think he is. Tomas? Impossible! But Tomas has been at Garrick Mach even longer than I have. I don't want to believe it, but based on what you say, we've no choice but to investigate. But Sir Alois... Be on guard. If Tomas is in league with Kranya, he is dangerous. Very well. I will quietly report the matter to Lady Rhea and leave the decision in her hands. Not a word of this to anyone. Is that clear? Well, now things are getting interesting. Honestly, did not see this coming. So what do you make of this Kranya? Why do you think she was at the fortress? You seemed preoccupied with her during the battle. Is she a friend of yours? Sadly, I wouldn't know. My memory is but a shadow at this point. Gone! Vanished! Lost! I remember meeting you, but before that, nothing at all. And yet, the moment I saw her, I was struck with the most inexplicable feeling. I couldn't tell you if it was revulsion or affection. It was simply... Pure emotion. And here I thought I had it tough. Are you worried about me? How adorable! Oh, but I do love that about you. And that's why Rhea has decided to take Tomas into custody. When he gets back, that is. Seems he's been away from the monastery for a bit. Custody? They ought to end his life on the spot. 
The churl's enmity towards the church is plain for all to see. All the more reason to keep him alive and question it. You really think he's working alone? This all comes from that Monica girl we rescued, right? Still, I guess if Lady Rhea believes her... So who is this Tomas guy anyway? You say he works in the library? Yes, and he's always bent over backward to help me find whatever book I'm searching for. He's a kind man. And the last person you'd ever expect to stab you in the back. Well, you won't make it too far as an evildoer if you can't pull the wool over people's eyes. I can't believe someone that nasty was working right here under our noses. But wait, what if the dining hall lady is a traitor too? I'll never be able to ask for seconds again! As if anything would stop you from asking for seconds. Besides, what kind of villain sets their sights on someone's lunch? I think we can give the poor dining hall lady the benefit of the doubt, right? If we can't trust the hand that feeds us, we can trust nothing. Exactly. If we start looking at everyone with suspicion, we may as well pack up and go our separate ways now. I'd really like to stop talking about the dining hall lady now, please. So, is it safe to assume Tomas hired the bandits that tried to kill us? No one has proven he was the mastermind behind it all, but there is no doubt he was involved. You're awfully quiet, Marianne. Is everything okay? Oh, it's just... I suppose I'm worried about what this all means. Hey, I understand. These walls were supposed to keep trouble out, but now everything feels very different. Wait, do you hear that outside? Are they ready at the gates? Yes, sir. Every exit is covered. Well, well, it sounds like Tomas has returned. I don't know why I know this, but you need to get out there, and quickly! Sheesh, what's gotten into... Oh, Tomas! There he is! Hmm? <laughs> That man down there. Lady Rhea wants to speak with you. I suggest you accept. Hmm. This doddering persona of mine will benefit me no further. What is this? Vermin, you will pay for this. Find him! Right! And what he did was just like... Prologue. The Battle for the Locket. Upon his return to Garrig Mach, the humble Tomas shapeshifts and flees, and not even the Knights of Ceres' most concerted efforts can track down the erstwhile librarian. Though Claude is quite intrigued by the dark developments at his school, an urgent message soon arrives from House Goneril at the eastern edge of the Lester Alliance. Well, that was certainly an unexpected conclusion to the whole Tomas saga. Thanks to his shape-shifting ability, he slipped free of the knights and escaped. Shape-shifting. Yes, that's what I said. Also, I know what you want to say next. His powers are just like the ones you gave me. His powers are just like the ones you gave me. 
Are you in league with him, Arval? Where did these powers come from? If I am in league with him, no one has informed me. All I have is you, my dear partner in destiny. Still, I saw what you saw. Clearly, we don't have a monopoly on shapeshifting. And now that everyone knows about Tomas, some of them must have connected the dots back to me. At least they've had the grace to keep it to themselves. It's because they trust you. Hold on, someone's coming. Hey there, got a second? Something wrong? There's no nice way to dance around this. Are you sure you don't know, Tomas? I already told you I don't. Okay, okay. It's not like I suspect you or anything. But it does make me wonder where you're from originally. Who knows? Maybe there's some mysterious clan out there with shape-shifting powers. And maybe they banished you when you were little and you don't remember it. It's possible, right? Well, my early years are pretty hazy. But while it's not completely impossible... Hey, I'm sorry. You know what? Don't worry about it. I only ask because people here also see me as something of an outsider. Guess I got a little ahead of myself. Maybe I was just excited to meet a kindred spirit. You're an outsider? There you are, Claude. You must come quickly. We have an urgent message from House Goneril. Sure thing. Why don't you tag along? I'm not sure what House Goneril wants, but it can't be good. I can't believe the Almiran army is invading! And with the biggest army since Fodlin's locket was completed? My brother's preparing to intercept them, but he's outnumbered big time and needs all the help he can get. House Regan stands ready. But we can't expect my grandfather to lead an army, so I guess it falls to me. I wish I knew what the other Alliance Lords will do, but there's no time to call a round table. I have no doubt my father has already leapt into action, though I will likely be the one who ends up on the front lines. House Ordelia is close, so I like to think we've already sent reinforcements. Sadly, I expect little help to come from my adoptive father. I'm sorry. That's fine. I actually have a different favor to ask Margrave Edmund, but we can chat about it later. I don't understand the reason for this sudden act of aggression. If this really is the biggest army since Fodlin's locket was completed, that's a century's worth of battles. Maybe the Almirans figured it's now or never, since the Empire and Kingdom are wrapped up in their own problems. I mean, we're pretty much the only students left around here now. Yeah, I heard something about a coup in Enbar and a revolt in Ferdiad. Both serious problems that don't directly affect the Alliance. And even if word of Fodland's troubles has reached the Almirans, it doesn't follow that they'd start a war. Well, that's assuming they have all the information, which seems unlikely. If all they heard was something vague, like war in the capitals, it might make them more likely to invade. Do you truly think so? Let me go with you. Maybe I can help. Hey, we need every sword hand we can get. Welcome aboard. And you'll have me. The name's Shamir. I'm a Knight of Saros. The bulk of the knights were dispatched earlier to track down Tomas. And the rest of us fanned out to the Kingdom and Imperial Capitals. Yeah, I was worried they might have been deployed already. How did we end up with you? The Church may not be able to lend you an army, but they won't turn a blind eye. I'm here because I'm the best woman for the job. My arrows will make short work of Almiran Wyvern Riders. So we get to see what the knight's best archer can do with the bow? I won't say no to that. I'll be counting on you as well. 
It certainly sounds more interesting than staying here and twiddling our thumbs. And besides, who knows what will become of the Academy in the meantime. Sure thing. I'm in. I gave you an order, Nadir. Yes, sir. You sure did. Then explain why we remain on this side of the mountain staring at that wretched fortress! Did I not command you to gather enough soldiers to push through? Yes, and I did all that. We actually have the numbers advantage by some margin. But the enemy commander Holst is a born leader, and his men are bound to fight like demons. I'm sorry. Are you suggesting some cowardly savage is a superior commander to me? The next king of Almyra? Not at all, not at all. Merely pointing out that storming a fortress tends to be one of those time-consuming sort of things. In which case, the current state of affairs proves to be exceedingly fortunate for you. As we speak, the Imperial Household fights to hold power against the Empire's nobility, while the whole kingdom bickers over who should wear the crown. There will be no reinforcements here. Take whatever time you need. I admire that optimism. Uh, but, as I recall, the king instructed us not to attack yet. That was before the situation changed. Father will hold me in great esteem for this. Mark my words. Also, Khalid has been absent for a good while now. And I wager he's plotting some mischief. But once I've conquered Fodlin, it won't matter what folly he attempts. The throne will be mine! Prince Shahid, enemy reinforcements have been spotted. What? <laughs> no matter. There can't be more than a scattering of them. Send in what's left of our troops and crush them all! Thank you for traveling all the way to Fodland's Locket. I'm Holst Sigisvald Goneril, in command of defense here. Claude Von Regan. I've heard a lot about you over the years. We're here to help you hold the locket in whatever small way we can. Ah, House Regan's new scion. I've heard a fair bit about you as well. I'm impressed you were able to scrape together this many troops in so short a time. Duke Oswald has clearly chosen his heir wisely. Also, I can't express my gratitude enough at seeing so many young people offering to serve. Whoa! Look at the muscles on you! Your regiment must be epic! Oh, I'm Raphael Kirsten, by the way. Nice to meet you, Holst. Do not address him so casually, you oaf. This is General Holst, one of the Alliance's finest and bravest warriors. Well met, General. My father sends his warmest regards. So we're gonna fight alongside a famous general? No pressure there. Yes, I, I know when I'm out of my league, and I am clearly way out on this one. Maybe I should go back to the monastery. And I as well. Enough, both of you. This is no time to be cowards. Our enemy's just over there. Are you gonna hide like field mice, or will you find some courage and fight? My weapon stands ready. I want to see what Holst here is truly capable of. <laughs> Your classmates are a real colorful bunch, Hilda. I like them. Thanks, Holst. But if we're all done catching up, we might want to focus on the enemy army that's headed right for us. Oh, so they are. The sight of your forces clearly lit a fire beneath them. Fortunately, the locket is impregnable, which they'll soon discover the hard way. Good luck, all. I'm counting on you. To battle! Crush the enemy! Reinforcements and all! Today we pry open the gates to Fodlin! Are you ready to send these troublemakers packing? Because I have a plan that'll do just that. Theoretically, I'm all ears. 
first, we need to do something about those soldiers closing in on us. Everyone buckle up! This stronghold is crucial to our defenses, and we can't let it fall. Well fought, one and all. Now, perhaps the Alliance representative would like to fill us in on his master plan? Right. Since the central approach is crawling with enemy soldiers, we'll start by capturing the strongholds to the north and south. The drawbridges here can only be lowered from one side, so we should make sure it's safe by taking any strongholds in the vicinity. Can I ask you to hold the center holst? You're the only one of us who can do it. I'm here to help. Make use of it. I'm souring on this whole affair, but if it's a fight you want, I'm your man. Sounds like Nadir could probably be coaxed off the battlefield. I mean, unless you really want to have a crack at him. Well, if it isn't Nadir the Unstoppable, are you ready to settle the score? For the last time, it's Nadir the Undefeated, and I know you're doing that on purpose. You got my back? Come on, follow me! We'll do it together! I've got you now! That was close. My thanks for your aid. That's that. If you keep holding back to there, you'll have to retire that overblown title. I'm the dare the undefeated, because I know when it's smart to run. And I'll come back to end you when I damn well feel like it. One stronghold down, one to go. Mind our flying units. Use arrows. Well, that's definitely working. Keep it up. Those troops at the center don't exactly have the highest morale. Once they realize we've got them flanked... Who told the Central Force they could retreat? Ugh. All remaining troops, attack! You see? Things are looking up already. Now we just have to go after their general. They're scattering like leaves. Claude's strategies really are a cut above. You stand in the presence of Shahid the Great, next king of Almira! Challenge me! I would make my escape if I were you. You're not gonna like what comes next! You swine! Turn that loathsome face from my sight! In every way, you remind me of my wretch of a brother! I will be the end of you one day. I promise you that! <sighs> Shouldn't we go after him? Nah. At the end of the day, he's still royalty. The last thing we need is some army tromping in here trying to avenge him, you know?
<sighs> we did it! We won! We held the locket! Honestly, I expected more of a struggle. For some reason, the Almirans just didn't have the fight in them. If they were serious about beating us, we probably would have found our backs against the wall. What matters is that we're safe, and no one from our house was killed. Thanks to Holst! He was out there taking on thousands of soldiers all by himself! I don't think it was actually thousands, although I agree, it was an impressive sight. Yeah, well, give me a couple years and I'll be swatting down tens of thousands. If you're setting the bar at Holst, I guess I'd better aim high too. I mean, being a fellow Merc and all. Kinda nuts to think the Almiran Prince personally led their army against us. From what I've heard, he's vying with the others for the throne. That kind of motive makes people dangerous. We'd best stay on our toes. You think? I felt like we did a pretty good job of slamming the door in his face just now. If it's a throne he's after, we just kicked him a little further away from it. An embarrassing loss like this ought to deter any other siblings from trying the same stunt. They're reasonable people, which is a big if. You should trade places with my brother for a while and see how fun it is to keep chasing the Almirans away. You know what? You're right. I'm sorry. Huh? We let House Goneril do all the heavy lifting, which isn't fair. And it isn't how you lead. On behalf of my house, I apologize. Oh, right. I forgot you're technically representing your grandfather here. You came through with speedy reinforcements, and for that, I'm grateful. Also, Margrave Edmund showed me your budget for restorations to the locket. I hear you personally intervened to make sure the funds were secured. Very thorough, and very helpful. Between that and your impressive tact on the battlefield, the Alliance will be in good hands once you take the reins. Hey, it's an honor to be accepted by a man as valiant as you. I think we'll get along just fine. That we will. Glad to hear it. So now that the battle's over... I want to feast until I burst. Come on, let's all go toast to Lester's bright future. Ooh, I'm so stuffed I can barely move. That Holst sure knows how to throw a party. That's for sure. The nobles would treat us to a meal every now and then back when I was a merc. It was never anything like this. Thanks for arranging it, uh, Lord Future Leader. Come on, don't call me that. We're just classmates. Actually, you know what? I take that back. We can do better than classmates. What do you mean? Once we're done with the Officers Academy, I was thinking you might join me in Leicester for a while. I may have Regan blood, but I grew up about as far from nobility as you can get. I tend to get the full, who's this upstart treatment around Leicester, so I could use someone reliable at my side. You're hunting a band of mercenaries, right? Well, maybe we can leverage my family's influence to track them down. And then you can do whatever it is you need to do. Seems like a solid offer. Better than staying pent up in the academy at any rate. Why me? There are plenty of skilled students you could choose from. Thought we'd been over this. I'm an outsider and so are you. That makes us two peas in the wrong pie. Plus, we work well together. In that case, I'm in. I need to find those mercenaries and repay what's owed. <laughs> Glad to have you. As the representative leader of the Alliance, Claude narrowly defends Fodlin's locket from Prince Shahid and the Omirans. 
but the future of the Alliance remains in jeopardy. Meanwhile, a power struggle breaks out in the capital of the Adrestian Empire. And a revolt over the right of succession takes root in the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Realizing the troubles of Fodlin will fall squarely on her young student's shoulders, Archbishop Rhea closes the Officers' Academy and permits her charges to return home. Golden Wildfire to War. It is the end of 1181. Two years have passed since the Officers' Academy closed its doors. Claude has inherited the leadership of Leicester and toils to unite the nobles in the region. With Edelgard ruling as Emperor of Adrestia and Dimitri sitting on the throne in Fargus, the three former schoolmates are striking out as the next generation of leaders. A new era is dawning in Fodland and much teeters at the brink of great change. Edelgard declares war against the central church, causing the first tremor of a major upheaval. Hey, thanks for coming. Sorry to make you wait. I couldn't get out of there any sooner. You're looking kind of worse for the wear. Is running the Alliance really that rough? Yeah, well, you know what they say. What doesn't kill you, but enough about me. How are things with you? Mercenary work keeping you busy? Hardly. I came to Regan territory expecting steady work from your house, you know. But it still hasn't materialized. How's a merc supposed to make a living like this? It doesn't matter how much I train my sword arm if there's nothing to swing at. Right. Sorry about that. I had a feeling your talents were going to waste here. Oh, he had a feeling, did he? Where were those feelings while we were left high and dry for these last two years? I've been getting by guarding the local inns and all, but I'm at the end of my rope here. You mind if I move on? I hear there's plenty of work in the south for someone like me. Whoa, slow down there, friend. Why do you think I asked you here? I'm ready to make you an official offer. And there it is, just as I expected. So war's coming then. That's right. The new Emperor of Adrestia seems determined to bring a fight to the rest of Fodlan. And many along our southern border are worried she'll come after the Alliance. Hence, all these meetings to plan our response. Are you familiar with the Leicester Roundtable? Not much. Just that it's a council held by some stuffy Alliance nobles. That's basically it. The Alliance crowns no king and bows to no emperor. So instead, we just have a bunch of meetings when we want to get something done. Every last detail of Alliance policy and strategy has to be worked out and agreed upon by the five great lords at the roundtable conferences. Day after day, we go round and round, arguing and bickering over this or that. And as each of the lords only truly cares about their own skin, we never actually reach a decision on anything. No wonder you look like you've been put through the ringer. Guess being a noble's not all fun and games. You can say that again. And while we sit around twiddling our collective thumbs, the Empire and their army could be right on our doorstep. Nevertheless, I'll find a way to convince the other lords that they need to commit to deploying their troops. The real problem is what happens after. Armies need commanders, and those commanders need to be exceptional warriors that we can rely on. You're not gonna ask me to lead Alliance troops, are you? You, my friend, hit the nail on the head. I want you fighting alongside me as one of the Alliance's commanders. Hold on, I'm not a noble, though. I'm not even a knight. Who cares about titles? Isn't this why you came here in the first place? I came here to help you as a mercenary. I never thought I'd be commanding troops. 
Look, you'll be well compensated for your efforts. And you can do this. I know you can. What do you say? Hey, if there's money to be made swinging my sword around, I'm there. My coin purse will be happy about it, too. Plus, it's not like I have anything better to do. I knew you wouldn't let me down. I have high hopes for you, my friend. Now then, looks like I've got a contract to draw up. Look who's here! It's been forever! Did you do something with your hair? Yeah, probably just lost some weight since you last saw me. You must not be eating enough. Those arms are like chicken bones. I imagine you've been doing a lot of mercenary work. You probably haven't had time for proper meals, what with the way things have been going. Time's not the issue here. Money is. And it's been really quiet in the Alliance, despite what's been going on elsewhere. The last two years have been hard on us mercenaries. It's not easy to land jobs when there's nobody to fight. Sounds like that's all gonna change, at least. So, uh, what are you all doing here? At the last roundtable conference, each of the five great lords agreed to contribute soldiers and officers to the Alliance army. That's why I'm here. I'm guessing it's the same for you, Marianne? Yes. My adoptive father sent me. I'm in the same boat. Count Gloucester arranged my transfer. Oh, that's right. You're doing the whole night thing for Lawrence's father now. Raphael, didn't I hear your family started an inn? What are you doing here? Claude sent me a letter, asking me to come. And there was no way I'd miss this. Same here. I guess Claude wanted to get all the golden deer back together, huh? That pretty much sums it up. There's no way I'm getting through this war without friends I trust by my side. And there's Claude. Now our little reunion's complete. Well, we are missing Lawrence. Yeah, Count Gloucester sent one of his newest knights in Lawrence's place. Um, yes. I suppose I should apologize for that. <laughs> I have no doubt Lawrence has his hands full protecting the border right about now. And I'm guessing you're not exactly thrilled to see me instead of my brother. <laughs> for the time being, I've asked Holst to see to our defenses in case Almira decides to take another run at our borders. Besides, I'm not about to let the Empire see our best card on the first play. It's always been my plan to have you all here, and I'm sure we'll be reunited with Lawrence before long. After all, we'll be passing through Gloucester territory very shortly. The Aramid River serves as the border between the Alliance and Empire. I imagine we'll want to fortify its banks and close off the Great Bridge of Murden. That is the plan, yes, Claude? That's right. There are many large bridges spanning the Aramid, but the terrain on the eastern bank is less than ideal. The Great Bridge of Muradin is the only one suitable for crossing into the Alliance with a significant military force. So if the Empire is looking to attack us, blockading the Great Bridge will severely limit their options. Of course, that means the enemy will do everything in their power to take control of it. So, while I'm happy to see you all again, I'm afraid we don't have time to reminisce. He's right. We need to get ready to move out. Hey, Claude. Looks like you had another one of those meetings. You finally finished? For today, yeah. But we're picking up right where we left off tomorrow. Ugh, that's a lot of talking. What could possibly call for that much discussion? Well, first, we need to settle on a direction for the Alliance. And then come all the pesky little details. All responsibilities need to be doled out fairly, but each territory has different resources and different circumstances, you know? So it's tricky to figure out what's really fair. There's no one answer that works across the board. But you're their leader. Can't you just make a bunch of decisions and get it over with? 
No can do, I'm afraid. I may be the leader, but I'm still just one of the five great lords. Sure, I may be the idea man, but I don't have the authority to enforce anything on my own. On top of all that, most nobles are experts at focusing on what's good for their own territory instead of what would benefit the Alliance as a whole. When priorities clash, the debates just go around and around in endless circles. Makes me wonder if we'll ever reach a consensus on anything. Hold on. Do you really think you'll win the war like this? You'll always be on the defensive if you can't act decisively. I hear you, believe me. The process works much better in times of peace, but since we're at war, it's frustrating to say the least. What's worse is that it's near impossible to get a read on the situation. I don't have the foggiest idea how we're going to overcome this. Say, mind if I pick your brain? What would you do in my shoes? What, me? Well, I guess I'd... You gotta just give him a nice whoosh. Deal with him that way. Uh-huh. Whoosh. You yeah, care to spell that one out for me? What I'm saying is, why not just get rid of all the talking? You mean, get rid of the Alliance's council altogether? Exactly. If you give yourself more authority, then it won't take as long to make decisions. It doesn't even have to be permanent. You could go back to the old way once things are peaceful again. But I guess that wouldn't go over too well with the other nobles, huh? Actually, I think you're onto something. Can't say it hasn't crossed my mind before. If folks at the round table just keep looking out for their own territory's interests, we'll be in a world of hurt if the Alliance is ever invaded. I just wish they could see that. Whoa, are you seriously considering it, Claude? Of course. Unfortunately, the possibility of it actually happening right now is basically zero. But you've given me a lot to chew on. Let's do this again sometime. Just say the word. Whew, glad that's finally over. Oh, hey! Nice job out there. You too, Hilda. Good to see you back safe and sound. That was one close fight, huh? You think so? I didn't even break a sweat. Really? Well, I guess we did have the upper hand for most of it. We sure did, and yet you still charged headfirst into the most contested part of the battlefield. You know, that's why you end up feeling like every battle is some huge ordeal. It's so unnecessary. Whoa, hey now, unnecessary? That's a little harsh. Someone has to get in there and turn the battle in our favor, even if it's dangerous. I know, but why do you always have to be that someone? Living fast and loose is only gonna land you in an early grave. Well, it's not like I'm trying to live like anything. This is just how mercenaries are. You can't distinguish yourself by hanging around in the back. And if you don't stand out, you don't get paid. People notice you if you do something showy on the front lines. And that can bring in the next job, you know? Uh, you're basically commanding an entire army now? What does recognition matter at this point? You're probably right. I guess I've just gotten so used to fighting like that, it's hard to change. Aren't there a bunch of mercenaries in Goneril territory? Pretty sure I've heard of a merc company stationed at the throat. Yeah, we use mercenaries a lot when we're beating back the Almiron army. Then I'm sure they're the same as me. Haven't you seen them going all hog-wild, competing with each other up at the front? Hmm, I've never really fought with them, but I can imagine that they're way different from regular knights. My brother is always going on about how some guy from some mercenary company or other died fighting at his side. No surprise there. The more a merc makes a show of themselves, the easier it is for the enemy to spot them. 
Right? And that's exactly why I'm worried about you. You don't have to stress about grabbing attention and getting paid anymore. So just take it easy, okay? We don't want you dying before your time. Yeah, okay, I'll keep that in mind. It's not like I have a death wish or something. I can't really change my fighting style overnight, but I'll try to keep the recklessness to a minimum. Don't worry. Hmm. You know, I've never seen a noble worry so much about a mercenary. You just sit back and enjoy the show, all right? Enjoy the show? Yeah, that sort of talk is so not making me feel any better. Are you here to train too? Nah, just grabbing something I forgot earlier. Is this normal training time for you, Leone? Well, yeah. We've been so busy lately, I've had to squeeze it in whenever I can. Huh. You work hard for a mercenary. I'm just starting out in my career, so I can't afford to slack off now. I only started training as a merc after the Officer's Academy closed, remember? Meanwhile, you were one before you even came to the Academy. You've got years of experience on me. Still, you're skilled and you've got brains, which means you're more promising than the average rookie. I hope you're right. I have to distinguish myself at some point, or else I won't be able to face the captain. You have a captain? Yep. He visited my village when I was a kid, and I practically begged him to make me his apprentice. I was probably a huge nuisance, but I was so desperate to get out of my village and be independent. Gerald treated me like an annoying little brat at first, but eventually, he taught me for real. He showed me everything. Tricks of the trade, standard training routines, basic strategy. Don't you have a mentor? Someone who showed you the ropes? A mentor? Hmm... I do have a mentor, in a sense. You know, someone who occasionally gives me advice and stuff. That sounds sort of vague, but I guess there can be all kinds of mentors. Either way, you still have loads more experience than me. I need to work hard so I can catch up with you. Well, if you ever want help from an old pro, just say the word. Thanks. I'm glad to have a role model I can count on. As I told you before, I do not have a crest. Why do you insist on hiding it? It can only mean your crest is somehow... Please stop! What's going on here? Lysithia! What were you saying about crests? Go on. I study them every day without fail, so this is extremely relevant to my interests. I do hope you have proof of your theory, though. Spewing out unfounded platitudes will just lead to consequences you definitely don't want. I might not look it, but I'm a general in this army. Ah, well, we were just finishing our conversation. Now, if you'll excuse me. Thank you, Lysithia. Think nothing of it. I stepped in of my own accord. <sighs> you appear to hold a secret or two regarding crests. Um... Well... No need to answer. We all have things we prefer to keep hidden. <sighs> Still... Your situation hits rather close to home for me. Perhaps too close. What? So if you ever need assistance, don't hesitate to ask. We secret keepers need to hold strong with each other after all. <clears throat> oh, and I'm not saying this because I pity you. But you clearly find your secret painful. 
In light of this, maybe I've been a bit too harsh on you in the past. Oh no, you haven't been harsh at all. I'm merely envious of how strong and level-headed you always appear to be. I never would have guessed you hold a closely guarded secret just as I do. I'm not gonna tell you, if that's what you're after. Yes, I suspected as much. Still, perhaps you would be willing to hear mine one day? I feel like being around you gives me the courage to finally set it free. I would be happy to hear you out, and also to help rectify the situation if possible. I know quite a bit about Crest's scholarship. That fool talking to you earlier couldn't hold a candle to me. Thank you, Lysithia. I already feel a little bit braver. I'm offering you the full might of my assistance. I hope you can do better than a little. Um, I mean a lot. I know I'm going to feel a lot braver. Hey there, Ignatz! Oh, Raphael! I've been looking all over for you. Got a minute to chat? Of course. With all the battles lately, we've barely had any time to sit down and rest. Right? It feels like I don't even see you anymore. And I definitely don't have enough time to show off my muscles. <laughs> Glad to see you haven't changed at all these past two years. The Officer's Academy shut down so suddenly. I scarcely would have imagined we'd all end up back together as part of an army. Same here! Oh, and I could hardly believe my ears when I found out you signed up to be a knight over with Lawrence. To be honest, I had nowhere else to turn. I owe a great debt to him and his generosity. Gotcha, gotcha. He's not such a bad guy, that Lawrence. I agree. But tell me, Raphael, how have you been holding up these past two years? I hear your family opened an inn. Oh, yeah. Me, my grandpa, and Maya. Business is going pretty great, if you ask me. That's wonderful. And how is Maya? She's as sunny as always. That reminds me. She was pretty worried about you. I better write her a letter and tell her you're okay. I'm sure she wants to see you. Bet you're feeling the same way, huh? Of course, I'd love to come and... That is, I should write her a letter. <sighs> What's wrong? Life never works out the way you want, does it? Huh? Oh, it's nothing. Just thinking back to my childhood. Back then, I felt like I had the power to do whatever I wanted. What do you mean? I still feel like that now. You do? Sure. I know I joined the Officer's Academy to be a knight, but that option's off the table. But look at me now. I might not be a knight, but I'm fighting in a war as if I was. All you've got to do is put your mind to it, and you can do anything you want. Trust me. Yes. I think you're right. Thanks, Raphael. Two years ago, I never would have imagined we'd be fighting a war like this. I'm with you there, but it's actually quite the lucky break for you. How do you mean? When a war breaks out, every mercenary in the land starts crawling out of the woodwork. And with all your associates here, you should have a large enough force to take on you-know-who. They're not just associates. They didn't have to trust a down-and-out mercenary like me, but they did anyway. And that makes them friends. Still, you're probably right. This'll be a great chance to drive Geralt's mercenaries out into the open. And then you can give them their just desserts or die trying. Could have done without that last part. Thanks. Relax, relax. 
You know I'm on your side. Our destinies are forever intertwined. Do we have an understanding, then? I understand your request, but I make no promises to honor it at this time. Pardon my candor, but you have yet to earn my confidence. I shall observe how this war progresses and then make the decision myself. Now, good day to you. Oh, Father! The current Alliance leader and I have finished our discussion. I will be taking my leave now. Everything okay, Claude? That seemed... tense. On the contrary, our conversation couldn't have been more pleasant. Count Gloucester is always a delight. If that was meant to be a joke, you will note that I am not laughing. Lawrence, it's been far too long. I'm glad to see you're safe and well. Yes, well, I doubt I will be either of those things for much longer. The Imperial Army has begun its march northward. Incidentally, what were you discussing with my father? Oh, you know, just what the Lords should do in the unlikely event that the Imperial Army crosses into Alliance territory. And how did my father respond? With a whole lot of words, but not a lot of clarity. Hardly surprising. My father does not even share his innermost thoughts with me. And I am his heir. Lawrence, let me ask you something. Would you go along with his decisions no matter what? What exactly do you mean? Say, for example, if your father pledged his allegiance to the Empire, would you follow suit? Oh. Do you think Count Gloucester is going to betray us, Claude? Of course not. It's just a hypothetical. Well, then, that's a serious what if. Almost sounds like you're trying to provoke Lawrence. No, it is quite all right. In fact, it is a perfectly reasonable query, given my father's actions as of late. However, my father takes tremendous pride in being one of the five great lords of the Alliance. He would not betray us to the Empire lightly. I, for one, still have faith in him. I won't deny that your father is a great man, Lawrence. I just wish he regarded me with anywhere near the same level of esteem. Sir, Viscount Phlegathon has sent an urgent appeal to reinforce the front lines on the Great Bridge. Acheron again? How many times does that make it today? Only the fourth. He sent eight requests yesterday. I'll call that an improvement then. Thanks. Just tell him, message received, keep your chin up and good luck out there. Yes, sir. Are you sure it's okay to just blow him off like that? I mean, I get that it's Acheron, but... He can deal with it. That guy would rather foist his duties on everyone else than bother to lift a finger himself. There's a reason we call him the Weather Vane. It's a cruel twist of fate that a selfish lord like him controls one of the most important points in the Alliance. Claude, we are nearing the breaking point. My father has sent an urgent request for reinforcements. Oh boy. Things must be getting really dire if Count Gloucester's sent word as well. Then surely it's time for us to depart. We just need to protect the bridge, right? Yes. If it falls into the Empire's hands, there'll be no keeping the war out of Alliance territory. I'd hate to see innocent towns and villages getting caught in the fighting. With the way things are going, though, I think we should be ready to abandon the bridge if necessary. If we go in determined to hold it at any cost, we could end up sacrificing a lot of lives in a battle we have no hope of winning. If worse comes to worse, it'll be up to us to evacuate as many of our soldiers as we can. The war with the Empire won't end with the coming battle, so I want to keep our losses to the absolute minimum. If the Great Bridge of Murden falls, then Garrig Mach will be in jeopardy too. That's true. And since Edelgard is set on toppling the Central Church, it probably won't end well for them. 
What are you going to do, Shamir? Will you return to aid the monastery? No. I have repaid my debt to Rena. I no longer have any ties to the Knights of Seros. All right. Then let's adjourn this war council and get moving. Yeah! Let's do this! For the sake of the Alliance, don't hold anything back. I'm counting on each and every one of you. This looks bad. We might have to abandon the bridge after all. Either way, we can't afford to lose Count Gloucester. We have to secure an escape route and rescue him. And that's not going to be easy. We'll have to take the surrounding strongholds first. We do not hurry. My father's life will be in danger. Can we make use of the archers? Count Gloucester's locked in battle in the center of the bridge. Hurry and rescue him. We must save my father at once. I had hoped to achieve victory without bloodshed. long to arrive? Not that I expected much from our fraud of a leader. Yeah, sorry about that. We're here now at any rate. <laughs> My, well done. I can take it from here. Go forth and continue your assault. I would not trust take that fickle breather. weather vane. He's liable to betray us at the slightest breeze. We've got an escape route now, yeah? Let's do this! Help Gloucester, are you all right? At least we made it here in time. Ah, so you have come to rescue me. You have my gratitude. Thank you. However, the situation is dire. Please cover my soldiers as they escape. Now seems like an opportune time to curry favor with the Empire. Troops, we are defecting. Move out! <laughs> Looks like Lester's weather vane can't sense the prevailing wind after all. Don't hesitate to take them out. Time to show how strong you've become. Don't let them get away! <laughs> I should have never thought the Empire my ally. I want as few casualties as possible. We could have this. I found strength in adversity. The port squad protect the retreating troops. Sorry, but I'm not letting anyone escape. Get in my way and I'll knock you flat. Caspar, is that you? Well, no way am I gonna let you stop him. Show them what you can do, Raphael! What do you think of this? They won't know what hit him! Now watch me flex! Did you see that? My muscles always win the day! I can't give up now! Maybe I should stop that. Always be prepared. What are you doing? 
fighting! The enemy's gonna get away! Take a breather. You would have died if you'd kept fighting. You need to pay closer attention to what's going on around you. Uh, I guess we probably shouldn't let them escape. Shall I open the gate to draw them in? Stop, Linhart! Don't go off by yourself! Ugh. I'm still too hurt! If there's one thing Linhart hates, it's a pointless fight. We might be able to convince him to surrender. I really don't have much choice, do I? Sometimes you have to fight even when it's a pain. Has the Valley of Torment frozen over? I never thought I'd hear you say something like that. I'll protect you. Don't let anyone get away! Seriously, no one? <laughs> I've got you now! You know you'll end up dead if you keep going, right? So just surrender already. You could have said as much before you beat me up. You're all cruel, you know that? But fine. You were never the type to fight to the death anyway. If anything, I'm relieved. So you captured Linhart, huh? Sorry to ruin your fun, but I'm taking him back! Is he the only enemy general left? Then let's take care of him before reinforcements arrive. If we can spare the effort, no, wouldn't it be preferable to take out all the nearby strongholds? Bring it down! More fighting means more strength. about them chasing after us. Let's get a move on and retreat before... What's that? You appear to be outmatched, Kaspar. Allow me to show you all the full might of the Empire. Reinforcements already arrived. And I have no other option. House Gloucester hereby swears fealty to the Empire. Cease fighting and throw down your weapons. Further resistance is futile. What? Fall back! We need to get out of here! Claude, what is the meaning of this? Father, why are you surrendering to... Father! Claude, what is the meaning of this? Has the Alliance forsaken my father? Far from it, Lawrence. Just calm down and we'll talk this through. How am I to remain calm at a time like this? The noble House Gloucester has been relinquished to Imperial control! Considering his position, I'm sure Count Gloucester anticipated this possibility and has already laid the groundwork to switch sides. I doubt the Empire will lay a finger on your father. So you've been thinking Count Gloucester might surrender all along? The Count's greatest concern has always been keeping the people of his territory from getting swept up in the war. It only stands to reason that he'd prefer a noble surrender to a lengthy, bitter resistance. I expect House Ordelia will follow suit and pledge fealty to the Empire. Um, Lawrence? Shouldn't we be returning to the Count? 
If we go back to House Gloucester, we will no longer be able to fight for the Alliance. Is that what you desire? No, of course not. Far from it. I intend to remain with the Alliance army as well. Assuming that's all right with you, Claude? I wouldn't have it any other way. This war has only just begun, after all. Since we've lost the bridge, the Imperial Army will soon descend upon Leicester itself. We can't allow them to run rampant over our land. It's time to redraw the battle lines. Everyone here? Well, let's get right into it. We have to figure out exactly where we stand in this war. As you all know, the Empire has taken the Great Bridge of Murden. The Imperial Army now occupies what was formerly House Phlegathon territory. House Gloucester has surrendered to them as well. Doubtless an agonizing decision on my father's part. House Ordelia, to the east of the bridge, has also vowed not to take up arms against the Empire. We had precious little in the way of arms in the first place. You have my deepest apologies. You don't have to apologize, Lysithia. Count Ordelia did what anyone would have done. And now Lawrence and Lysithia can't even go back home! That's not all. After the battle, the Imperial Army crossed Gloucester territory and attacked Garrig Mott. Rhea and the rest of the Central Church have apparently fled to the Kingdom for sanctuary. Then I suppose none of us will be able to visit our old school anytime soon. I hope no one from the Church was hurt. There's no point in worrying about it now, but they're all tougher than you think. Now that the monastery has fallen, the front lines are rapidly expanding north. It won't be long before Deirdre is within their reach. And if our capital falls, the Alliance goes with it. We have to stop them there, no matter the cost. That all sounds well and good, but how large of an army will you even be able to raise at this point? I don't think House Edmund will be able to send more troops. I'm sorry. Which means House Goneril is the last of the five great lords upon whom we can rely. I'm not so sure the combined forces of Houses Regan and Goneril will be enough to hold off the whole Empire. We'll just have to work with what we've got. And let's not forget the hero of Daphne. Um, who? He speaks of Judith, the head of House Daphne. She was once counted among the five great lords. We can definitely count on her. It helps that she seems to really like Claude for some reason. But we can't expect much from her in terms of sheer numbers. Any chance the kingdom could send troops? I doubt they'll have any to spare. They've just started engaging the Empire themselves over in the west of Fargus. And besides, I'm not sure how much we can really trust them. I still have no idea what's going on in Dimitri's head. Well, we have an idea of how big our army's gonna be, if nothing else. What's the plan? I'm still working that out. For now, all we can do is hold our ground and fight with everything we've got. You can always count on me. And my muscles. Thanks, Raphael. That unfounded confidence of yours is like music to my ears. Lady Rhea, Seneth, I'm relieved you both made it out unharmed. It appears we arrived just in time. You have our utmost thanks for aiding in our retreat, Your Majesty. I can only apologize for the trouble we may have caused your outfit. King Dimitri, I cannot express just how grateful I am to you and all the fine people of Fargus. The honor is mine. Your order provided me with immeasurable aid during my ascension to the throne. My citizens would have branded me a heathen had I not returned the favor. And now it seems we are the ones who owe a debt. The Church shall provide whatever assistance it can to your efforts. If you see it prudent, I have no objection to placing the Knights of our Order under Kingdom command. Thank you both. While it pains me to qualify our hospitality, this kingdom is not a wealthy one, 
neither in goods nor provisions. I fear we may struggle to compensate your soldiers, or even to feed them. You needn't trouble yourself with such concerns. Your generous offer of shelter will be more than enough. Very well. We've lingered here long enough. Let us make for Ferdiad. There's much to discuss. The church, the kingdom, and the battles to come. It seems the Leicester campaign is proceeding smoothly. Indeed. Count Gloucester's timely surrender allowed us to advance with minimal casualties. Ferdinand's battalion is tightening the noose around House Regan's territory as we speak. The Minister of Military Affairs is making the necessary preparations to move his forces into the Alliance as well. Once Count Burglius takes the field, we won't have anything to worry about on that front. Yes. And at the moment, we have little choice but to divert most of our military might to our conflict with Fargus on the Western Front. I fear Count Rowe's abrupt change in allegiance will have only served to further provoke the Kingdom's army. Ah, yes. Him. He disregarded our timetable and launched an attack on the Kingdom without our approval. And in doing so, has done nothing but make trouble for the Empire. Still, we can hardly afford to abandon him. We have led our vassals to believe the Empire will always come to their aid. What a troublesome policy that has turned out to be. The policy may be irksome, but we will not fail to honor it. Dispatch immediate reinforcements to Count Roe. Understood. And what message shall I send to Count Burglis? I'm still a little wary of the Alliance's plans, but tell him we leave matters in his capable hands. Golden Wildfire. The Golden Guardian. After Count Gloucester's surprising defection, the Empire's invasion of Leicester begins in earnest. The Alliance Roundtable unravels, and the region descends further into chaos. Yet the Alliance does not yield. Claude takes command and rallies his comrades, insisting that so long as they can withstand the Imperial onslaught on Regan territory, they will survive. And that's where things are. It's only a matter of time before the Imperial Army marches on Regan territory. Once again, Margrave Edmund is only offering financial support instead of troops. My apologies. I'll do all I can on the front lines in my adoptive father's stead. And on top of that, he sent his adorable daughter to risk her life on the battlefield. Unbelievable. I'm so sorry for the trouble. You have nothing to apologize for. The blame rests squarely on your father's shoulders. Mark my words, the next time I see him... I think we get the picture, Judith. Save that fire for the battlefield. We're finally free of Count Gloucester and his overbearing pompousness. You don't need to go filling his shoes. Isn't that exactly why you called me here? If I'm to fill his seat, I assume I also get his right to complain. Honestly, what's going on? The Alliance is facing an unprecedented crisis, and these great lords can't even show up to their own round table. House Ardelia has no ability to resist the Empire, given our location and lack of military power. Were my father to take his seat at the round table now, the Empire might interpret it as a show of defiance. I take it that means House Ordelia won't be contributing to the Alliance in any way. Two of the five Great Lords have effectively forfeited their seats. Why not fill Ordelia's chair with someone like Viscount Seward? Not happening. Can you imagine the fuss Albany and Burgundy would kick up when they learned we only asked Seward to participate? Those three houses have always been treated as equals. Besides, I doubt Viscount Burgundy could come even if we did invite him. 
House Burgundy's circumstances are much the same as House Ordelia's. In fact, their position may be even worse than ours. How are we supposed to stop the Empire like this? House Goneril was supposed to swoop in and save our skins, and even they couldn't bother to attend. <laughs> Leave it to my brother to eat some bad mushrooms just before an important meeting. Don't you make excuses for him. If Holst couldn't make it, then the Duke should have come himself. House Goneril has already pledged their full support. They're not the problem here. Then why waste our time with this conference? Our troops were provided by the Alliance's nobles. You know we can't act without a resolution from the Round Table, even if it is a mere formality. And anyway, the entire Alliance needs to be on the same page if we're going to coordinate our military strategy. Well, as I said, I'm afraid there's not much House Ordelia can do, even if we are informed. Be that as it may, we still have to get this done. Let's move on and discuss our strategy for the battles to come. This is it, folks. Right now, we need everyone focused on defending Deirdre. Here's the plan. When we fought the Empire at the Great Bridge, it looked like they had a number of mercenary groups working for them. And yet, I didn't see any sign of Gerald's company among them. It's not like that was the only battlefield, and there's no shortage of mercenary companies. That's true. And you don't have any inkling of when the Empire is going to launch their attack on Deirdre? No clue. They could strike tomorrow for all I know. Then I imagine there's no time to waste in formulating a plan and fortifying the city's defenses. Yep. If we lose the initiative, the battle's practically over. If that's the case, then why are all of you just idling the days away? The army can't act until Claude returns from those meetings. It's like no one can even sneeze around here without it turning into an endless debate. A king or emperor can make things happen with a wave of their hand. But I guess it's not so simple when you're leading an alliance. Ruling by consensus may work in peacetime, but it seems to have a distinct disadvantage during a war. Hey, Claude's calling for us. Sounds like the round table's finally over. We better get going. If we don't hurry, all the food will be gone. It's not a banquet, you know. It's a war council. But yeah, we should move. I'll be right there. Let's start with introductions, shall we? Allow me to present the head of House Daphnel, the Honorable... The name's Judith. I'm joining the War Council at the invitation of our Supreme Leader here. It is a pleasure to see you once more, Lady Judith. I am heartened to know that we will be fighting at your side. You're Gloucester's kid, right? You've grown into quite a handsome boy over the last few years. I'm sure all the men here seem like little boys to someone like Judith. Ah, Duke Goneril's daughter. You've grown quite lovely yourself. You'll be outshining me in no time. Are you kidding? I've got a long way to go before I can compete with you. I don't really know what you two are talking about, but I think I'm ready for it to be over. Let's start the briefing. So, you want us to hamper the Imperial Army's advance in order to delay their arrival at Deirdre? That's right. And we'll use every bit of time we gain to tighten up our defenses around the capital in preparation. Then we have to avoid losing too many of our allies before the battle in Deirdre. Exactly. Hold them off as best you can, but the second you're in any real danger, I want you to fall back. It's easy enough to order retreat after retreat, but I don't see how that's supposed to win the day. Do you really think we can win like this? I wish I could tell you that victory is all but certain, but honestly, it could go either way. Ultimately, our goal is just to buy time until the defenses are ready. 
And if we can just stop them from taking Deirdre... Claude, I have to ask, are you keeping some kind of incredible top-secret plan from us? Sure, I may have something up my sleeve, but it won't amount to anything if we fail to protect Deirdre, I can promise you that. But if we succeed, then this plan of yours will get us out of our predicament? If that's the case... Yes, and there is still hope. You kids are all so young. Don't do anything rash and get yourselves killed, all right? All right, let's reclaim all that time we wasted on the roundtable conferences. Watch each other's backs out there. I know we can do this. I was wondering who it was, what fortuitous timing. Did you need me for something? Nothing in particular. I was simply thinking of having a little chat with you. Please, do relax. But I already am relaxed. I've heard your background is quite the mystery. And what's more, that you possess some sort of unknown power. It's certainly a bold decision for Claude to put someone like that in charge of frontline forces. I don't know if there's anything bold about it. Oh? It seems you do not understand your unique position, then. Each noble house in Leicester commands its own knights, and those knights in turn enact the will of their lords through the soldiers in their employ. But you are no knight, merely a mercenary who commands soldiers in fealty to nobody at all. Maybe so, but all my orders come straight from the Alliance leader himself. What's the problem? There is no problem, per se. You excel at what you do and fight with true valor. However, protecting the people of Leicester has always been the nobility's responsibility, and theirs alone. Some nobles may feel insulted that they have to rely on a simple mercenary of unknown origin. Seriously? But nobles are usually the ones hiring mercenaries in the first place. On the other hand, I hear there are more commanders of common birth in the Empire of late. Given our current lack of resources, the Alliance could serve to learn from them and promote more commoners through our ranks. Which means there should be no particular reason for anyone to resent you. Didn't you just say they might feel insulted? If nobody's getting all hot under the armor about it, then there's no problem, right? That said, this does not change the fact that a noble's obligation is to protect the common folk. Though your exact origins remain unclear, you undoubtedly fall into the commoner category as it stands. Therefore, you are entitled to all the protection a noble is compelled to provide. Simply say the word if you ever require my assistance. Of course, Lawrence. You'll be the first person I go to. A capable guy like you has plenty of sway with the other nobles, after all. You know, at first I thought you were just coming to complain, but you were actually trying to be nice. Me? Nice? To you? <laughs> oh my, you are funny. Allow me to explain. I am the heir to House Gloucester, a noble among nobles. My offer of aid was not an act of kindness. It was a means to inform you of your place in this society. You would do well to remember the order of things here in Fodlan. So you just came to tell me how I'm disrupting the order? You are complaining. Most certainly not. Do you really think me that small-minded? I've acknowledged your skills, and all I ask in return is that you act according to your station. Understand? Not really, no. I mean, we're at war, and you're seriously telling me I need to worry about how nobles and commoners are supposed to act? In any case, my job as a mercenary is to fight. Simple as that. You're wasting your time if you're gonna get all bent out of shape about me. I am not get- mm -hmm. oh, Never mind. We shall continue this at a later date. Oh, hello there. Are you doing some research? 
Yeah, I was just looking through records of past battles. Figure I'll probably run into some similar situations. That's admirable of you. I thought that someone with a mercenary background would be a little more reckless with their fighting. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. That sounded a bit rude, didn't it? No, you're right. My fighting style was pretty loose when I was a mercenary. Actually, I can't say it's really changed that much. But I've got more responsibility now, so I've had to adjust some. Any mistakes I make would only cause problems for everyone else, right? Huh. You're much more studious than I thought. I can see why Claude trusts you so much. You really think I'm held in such high regard? That's what I've heard, at least. It's very impressive, especially since you're so young. Thanks, Lysithia. And the same goes for you, too. For a kid, you're amazing at what you do. Excuse me? Who is a kid? Huh? Well, you are. I must ask that you refrain from treating me like a child. Uh, I wasn't trying to... You said, and I quote, for a kid. I'm aware that people often treat me like a child, but to think you'd call me one directly to my face! I work harder and contribute more to this army than anyone else here. It is truly vexing that something as inconsequential as my age can dictate how people treat me. Uh, I'm sorry. I had no idea you hated being treated like a kid that much. <sighs> this is not a matter of like or dislike. My belief is that those who fight alongside each other should treat one another as equals. Well, yeah. I thought I was complimenting you as an equal, obviously. Then there is no need for any qualifying language. You should compliment me as you would anyone else. Hold on, didn't you tell me I was impressive for being so young? Doesn't that mean you assessed me based on my age, too? Me saying you're impressive in spite of your age is completely different than you saying I'm pretty good for a weak little baby. Pretty sure I didn't phrase it like that. But it's what you meant! Oh, I should have never complimented you! <sighs> you know, an adult wouldn't get all stubborn and combative like this. I am not being combative. I'm simply having a normal conversation with you. Is that a problem? What about this is normal to you? <laughs> hey, Marianne. You were really doing great during those drills today. Oh, um... I'm heading over to the mess hall. You want to join? After all that training this morning and no break, I'm starving. Oh, sorry, I forgot. You like to eat alone, right? Then don't worry about it. I'll find someone else. No, I'd... I'd like to accompany you. If you'd have me, that is. You sure? All right, then. Let's go. I wonder what's on the menu today. Oh, man, that was good. I feel alive again. Yes, that was nice. By the way, why'd you decide to come along with me? What do you mean? You usually sit by yourself. I thought you didn't like eating with others. Sometimes I see you eating with Hilda, but I figured that's because she makes you do it, right? Yes, I do feel more comfortable when I'm alone. I haven't been around people much, so I don't normally know what to say in conversations. Well, now I'm even more curious why you decided to eat with me. Well... You have a strange power, right? It makes you transform, or something like that. Yeah, you 
curious about it? It's not so much that. I, um... Wondered if you despised having it. Uh, I don't even give it much thought. And besides, my powers come in handy a few times. I know it makes people suspicious of me and curious about my background, but that's just how people are. And yet you always have such a sunny disposition, and everyone here respects you. I wondered why that was. I mean, I sure hope they respect me. So, that's why you wanted to join me? I wanted to know how I could be like you. Like me? But Marianne, it's not like you have some mysterious power tucked away, right? No, I don't. If you just want to make friends with people, then you don't need to think so hard about it. It's not like anyone here hates you. Don't they? I'm so useless. Hey, you're a huge help to all of us. I mean that. So you don't have to force yourself to act like someone you're not, okay? All right. Thank you for saying that. That's a tasty looking roast you've got there, Claude. Where'd you get it? Oh, hey, Raphael. I nabbed it from the base we took over the other day. No big deal. Plus, it's about to go bad, so there's no point in trying to ration it out to the troops. Meaning? You're giving it to me! Oh, yes! Hold on there, big guy. Nobody can eat all of this alone. Not even you. I was actually thinking we could all feast on it together. Wanna help me cook it? You bet I do! Might mean my stomach goes a little emptier, but feasting with the whole team adds a spice like no other. Just leave the rest to me. I'll kick this meat party off in style. Hey, make sure you take it to the mess hall. Is he even listening to me? Wow, this looks incredible. Color me impressed, Raphael. Well, you said it was about to go bad, right? I had to grill it up as quick as I could. I mean, it wasn't going bad in a matter of minutes, but this is a huge help. Thanks. Weird. It felt like that was more than we could ever finish. But just mention food to the crew and it's gone in an instant. Too bad, too. I was thinking I could split any leftovers we had with Maya and my grandpa. Uh... Doesn't it take days to get here from where they are? It would definitely have started rotting by then. Besides, this isn't really the chapter in history you want an old man and a child going out for a stroll. Yeah, I guess you're right. Still, I hope that day comes soon. Huh? A time when we can invite your grandfather and sister over for banquets whenever we want. A time when it's not so dangerous for them to travel. Not that any of that'll be possible so long as this war keeps dragging on. That's it, Claude! That's it! Whoa! What's all the yelling for? This meal was amazing, yeah. But a little voice in the back of my mind kept saying something was missing. And now I know what it is! Once the land's at peace again, we're gonna have to have a huge party with Maya and my grandpa and everyone! After all, you can't savor a meal if you've got thoughts of war rolling around in your head. Yeah, I think you're right. A banquet we can throw in peacetime is far better than one we have to put on hold due to the conflict. But in order to make that dream a reality, we'll need to create a future where the wild animals share their game instead of fighting over it. Game? As in game meat? You have more? Sorry, just a metaphor for the eagles and lions, always at each other's throats. As for us deer, we're content with leaves. But where should we forage next? Anyone here? Oh, Hilda, perfect! I am, aren't I? Now, what do you need? 
was thinking about getting another round of practice in, but I need a partner. And here you stand. So what do you say? What? But it's so late! Yes, but I just thought up a fantastic move, and I need to try it out or I'll never be able to sleep. Yeah, but I've already bathed, and I really don't want to get all sweaty and gross again. <laughs> Wait, is that you? You smell amazing. I know! I use floral oils. I've got a whole bunch of them, and I mix and match based on the situation or just, you know, mood. Wow, that's impressive. I bet you're wondering why I go to all that trouble, right? Well, scent is very important. One whiff of something nice can turn a person's entire day around. I get that, but I don't really think it's for me. I'm always training or hunting or something, and the constant sweat would probably wash it right off. Which is exactly why you should use floral scents. Then you'll smell like a delightful bouquet and not some kind of hog farmer. I mean, you're cute already, but you could be the whole package if you just leaned into it. You think I'm... cute? No one's ever said that to me before. Or anything even remotely like it, actually. You know what? Let's just do it! Come to my tent. That's where I keep the stash. I really don't think this is for me. Oh, don't be silly. It is absolutely for you. No, really. Besides, I have to go practice that move. Well, too bad. But I'll come find you tomorrow, okay? Oh, this is so exciting! Wait, I don't think I actually agreed to anything. Never mind. I'm leaving. Bye! Yup! Just a little bit of effort and she'll really be the whole package. Uh, looks like the Imperial Army has finally begun their march in earnest. And they're headed straight for Deirdre. Okay, but what's the problem? This is exactly what you thought would happen. True enough. But even if I read the enemy perfectly and our allies do their absolute best, I can't do a thing about the odds. In the end, it's still a coin toss. It never should have come to this. If only I'd managed everything better in the first place. Hey, don't beat yourself up about it. That's not like you. There was no avoiding this situation, regardless of who was leading the Alliance. In fact, I bet things would be a whole lot worse if it was someone else. Maybe, but I'm not so sure. I can't help but feel there was another way I could have handled this. I had all these grand ambitions when I became leader. So much I wanted to achieve. But there's no time for any of that now. I've got my hands full just trying to keep the Alliance safe wasn't supposed to be like this. Tell me, friend. What should I do next? Why are you asking me? I'm no fortune teller. <laughs> Fair point. I guess all we can do now is keep moving forward. One foot in front of the other. Do you think your leader is alright? He seems a bit worn out. Well, I tried to cheer him up, but I don't think it did much. Ultimately, all I can do is my best. That's probably the only thing that'll actually help Claude, anyway. I never imagined we would have such a difficult time advancing when our foes are so disorganized and dispersed. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have come. I can barely handle everyday life, let alone a difficult mission. Perhaps you would have been better off remaining at Garrig Mach, then? I volunteered for this assignment, but surely you had other options. Stay at Garrig Mach? No way! I do not want to be there when my father shows up! 
Then why not request a transfer for the Western Front? The Aryan Road is infamously impregnable. You would have been quite safe stationed there. And risk running into Lady Rhea? She's even scarier! All right. Well, in that case, there is little you can do but focus on the task ahead. I cannot say I am pleased with our progress thus far, but Deirdre is finally in sight. If we can take the city, our mission will be complete. The Imperial Army has conquered much of central and western Regan territory. They'll attack the city in a matter of days. Thanks, Shamir. Your scouting prowess is unparalleled. I don't know what we would have done without your reports. It sounds like there's no point trying to delay them anymore. We need to pull the entire army back to Deirdre immediately. Hilda, send word to Duke Goneril and apprise him of the situation. Leave it to me, boss. It seems the repairs to the strongholds and gates have been completed, and all according to your specifications. We actually got it done in time, huh? All that's left is to get our troops in position, and our defenses will be ready. The Imperial Army is practically at our doorstep. You should all head straight to your posts. Got it. I'll tell the others. All of our commanders are so young and inexperienced, myself included. We wouldn't have any hope of victory if it weren't for the combat experience you two bring to the table. You're putting a lot of stock in my skills, little Claude. Never thought I'd see the day. If you can just get us through this fight, I'll be able to turn the tables. Don't let me down, okay? Who do you think I am, boy? You've got nothing to worry about. You've just got to believe in your friends, Claude. If anyone can do this, it's us. That's what I'm betting on. Now let's win this. Hang in there, everyone. We'll turn this around. Just you wait. The port can't remain in enemy hands. Use everything in your power to take it back. Ah, our fearless leader finally makes his entrance. We've been holding out all by our lonesome. My apologies, Judith. I had my hands full elsewhere. We'll need you to maintain our defense. Everyone else, make sure she stays alive. Okay, we need to go stabilize the front lines. Just make sure they don't steal any of our strongholds back. What? We captured the port! This does not bode well. Launch our surprise attack! We set up an ambush inside the city? I said I expected that. Lower the drawbridge and intercept them. allow them to break through our defense. Let us all back together. You got my back? On my mark. We'll do it together. I've got you now. This will make things easier. are not finished yet. Keep up the assault. Show them what the Empire is made of. It's no use. We're putting up a good fight, but we're one step behind. There's gotta be a way to turn the tables. Wait, that's... Fear not. Pulse Sigiswald Goneril has arrived. I shall deliver Deirdre from the hands of the enemy. Into the fray! Post? What are you doing here? Nothing complaining, guys. Crush the Empire forces. Everyone, follow me!
Lester's mightiest hero has come to our aid. We can't be defeated now. It's not over. All right, it's my turn. All hands, attack! What's he doing fighting for the Empire? Is that host? Guess I better prepare for the worst. Oh, it's been a while since we've had a serious fight. Come at me, Paul. This stronghold will fall. They'll break through our defenses! We need reinforcements! Thank oh, goodness! Now they can't bombard us anymore! I can't fall back now! That reputation is the illustrious king of grappling would take a hit! Not over yet! Baldi, just give up already. Why don't you join us instead? I've got no right to choose now that I'm beat. Do whatever you want with me. I did not think I had underestimated you. This is terribly unfortunate. All units, attack! Follow me! <laughs> To protect the people, we must recapture Deirdre. I must not fail here. This is for the future of the Empire. Get the better of me. We must withdraw and regroup. Fall back! We won! I want to hear those victory cheers, folks. They're probably planning a second assault after they regroup. But we'll see if that actually happens. Look! The Imperial Army is retreating! Steady, Hilda. Don't get too excited just yet. We've only repelled the first wave of their assault. The Empire has been funneling a great deal of troops into Leicester since taking control of the Great Bridge of Murden. I expect they'll have plenty of reinforcements at the ready, fresh and fully prepared to fight. Sharp as ever, Holst. I was thinking the same thing. We're not out of the woods just yet. But... You still have your plan, right? I believe it is high time you explain exactly what scheme you hold up your sleeve. Just keep your eyes on the enemy and you'll know soon enough. 
Assuming the plan actually succeeds, that is. Um, what do you mean by that? Enough with the theatrics. Do you truly intend to evade our questions, even now? Well, if that's what our leader says, we'll just have to monitor the Imperial Army and await good news. If you are satisfied with that, Lord Holst, then it will have to suffice. How long are we gonna have to wait before we know if it worked? Good question. I'd say about three days, give or take. If everything goes as planned, it'll all be clear as a nice summer sky. And, Lawrence, apologies in advance. Why are you apologizing only to me? That feels somewhat disquieting. Oh, very well. I shall wait to see just what it is you have been scheming. But to be clear, if this plan of yours fails, the Alliance is finished. We will no longer be able to resist the Empire. Yes, I'm well aware. Failure isn't an option. Move the injured soldiers to the rear. All those who can fight, reform your ranks. As soon as we are prepared, we will launch another attack on Deirdre. Another one? Why don't we just, um, wait for Count Berkeley's? Our enemy is exhausted, while we have plenty of soldiers who are unharmed and able to fight. This is the most opportune time to strike. Lord Ferdinand. Ah, General Ladislava. We've been waiting for you. Has Count Burglis arrived? No, he has yet to depart the Empire. There has been some suspicious activity in Southern Leicester that has made the Minister wary to proceed. Suspicious activity, you say? Do we have any idea what the Alliance is plotting? Not to my knowledge, sir. As much as it pains me to say it, Perhaps we should fall back until we know more. Hmm. And yet here we stand, on the precipice of victory. General Ladislava, our scouts have returned. And what do they report? Gloucester soldiers have launched a surprise attack on the Great Bridge of Murden. We've lost control of the bridge. We anticipate that House Gloucester and Ordelia's forces will soon seize the lands that belong to House Phlegathon. <laughs> so, Count Gloucester was deceiving us all along. What? We've been tricked! Oh no, 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 no! We're doomed! It seems we've blundered right into an Alliance trap. We have to retreat! Get out of here! Find some place safe to hide! Calm yourself, Bernadetta. A leader must project confidence for the good of their soldiers. We shall begin an orderly march to the Great Bridge of Murden at once. Though the enemy may give chase, stopping is not an option. We must maintain our course for the Empire and let nothing deter us. Understood. I am with you, wherever you may take us. I apologize for leading you both into this debacle. For now, all we can do is pray that any part of our host makes it back to the Empire safely. Forgive me, Edelgard. I may not be able to keep my promise to you after all. The Imperial Army is on the run. Looks like my plan went off without a hitch. According to a messenger from my father, Gloucester forces have launched a surprise attack on the Great Bridge of Murden. What did you say? The Imperial forces were caught completely off guard and have been driven back. The bridge is once again under Alliance control. He also said that Count Ordelia is working with Count Gloucester to fortify Southern Leicester using a false surrender to draw the enemy into a disadvantageous position. I take it that was your plan, my lord? Yeah, basically. Except that Count Gloucester wouldn't have acted if we hadn't won the battle for Deirdre. That was the promise we made. And thanks to all of you, I held up my end of the bargain. So, uh... What's all that mean now? 
They're saying that House Gloucester and House Ordelia never really betrayed the Alliance. I hope you can all forgive me. I knew the whole time, but my father had sworn me to secrecy. You knew about this, Lysithia? But my father never breathed a word of it to me. Claude, why was I not informed? Again, I'm sorry about that. Your father made me swear not to say anything until it was over and done with. But why? Is this another sign that he has yet to consider me a worthy successor? That's not it, Lawrence. But it's also not my place to speak for your father. You should ask him yourself the next time you see him. <laughs> I'm sure this all came as a shock to you, Lawrence, but there's no time to sulk. We need to move, and quick. If we don't surround and quash the Imperial Army right away, this little plan will backfire, and Count Gloucester will be the one left vulnerable. He's right. If Count Burglies were to enter the fray now, our allies at the Great Bridge would be caught in a pincer attack. Well, who's this Count Burglies person? The Empire's Minister of Military Affairs. His house holds the territory on the opposite end of the Great Bridge. I've yet to face him on the battlefield myself, but he's regarded as the greatest warrior in the Empire. I see where this is going. We need to move. I hate to ask this of you when you're still exhausted from the last battle, but I'm going to need one more push from each. Golden Wildfire. The Leader's Stratagem. The Alliance Army pushes back the Empire at Deirdre, where they receive word that Count Gloucester has rejoined the Alliance. It seems his disloyalty was all part of a deceitful plan. With their position lost, the Imperial Army begins to retreat. Claude and his allies press forward, planning to surround them as they flee to Adrestia. The Imperial forces within the Alliance are currently dispersed between the western part of Regan territory and the northern part of Gloucester lands. They're making a desperate attempt to march south, but Count Gloucester's persistent attacks have slowed their progress. I would appreciate it if you could be more precise with your language. In fact, my father's tactics have halted the Imperial Army's southward advance. I'm pretty sure that's what I just said. Anyway, here's where we come in. We'll surround the enemy, cutting off their retreat and cornering them in western Regan territory. Then, we give them a good thrashing. That's it? Sounds kind of simple if you ask me. Hey, what more could you want? All the best plans are easy to understand. Trust me, it's a sure win. Yeah, even I know what's going on now. We just have to herd the Imperial Army into Western Regan territory and stop them from moving any further south, right? Couldn't have said it better myself. Just remember that the enemy knows this is their last stand. We have to proceed with caution. I want to finish them off before Count Burglies has a chance to muster a sizable army and mount an attack. Um, Ferdinand and Bernadetta are leading the Imperial Army, right? I'm guessing you'd rather not kill them? Believe me, I don't want that either. We may have been in different classes, but they're still our old friends from the Academy. Once our forces are in place, I plan to offer them terms of surrender. But for now, we need to focus on driving their army into a corner. You got it! I swear on these biceps, I won't let them get away! I don't know. I'm not convinced it's gonna be that easy. But I guess that's besides the point. We've gotta get out there. You said it. Let's move out. I can't believe that Count Gloucester betrayed us. The Great Bridge has fallen back into enemy hands. Now that our troops are trapped on Alliance lands, House Regan and House Gloucester have them surrounded on both sides. It's doubtless one of Claude's clever little stratagems, and it stings. 
I don't understand. Everyone is aware of the troubled history between Regan and Gloucester. Why would they decide to bury the hatchet now? Unless... This supposed feud is little more than a web Claude has spun for this exact moment. Perhaps it is, but perhaps not. For all we know, he wants us to overthink the situation and make a greater mistake. As it stands, Ferdinand's forces are trapped behind enemy lines. The Minister of Military Affairs is moving to recapture the Great Bridge of Murden with all haste. However, I fear he lacks a sufficiently sizable force to do so swiftly enough to reach our isolated comrades before they are crushed. We cannot stand idly by while our allies are in danger. What are our options, Hubert? I have already taken the liberty of engaging several promising mercenary companies. I directed them to covertly enter Alliance territory and provide reinforcements to Ferdinand. Why was I not informed of any of this? <laughs> From the very beginning, I had my doubts about Ferdinand and his ability to lead our troops to victory. I employed these mercenaries using my own personal funds, which obviated any need to report it. And you believe they'll make it to him in time? I do. It turns out that they are quite familiar with the terrain. I am confident that they will prove well worth the cost of their contracts. It's funny, Hubert. To think that your complete lack of faith in Ferdinand might be the very thing that saves his life. The world truly is a mysterious place. Hey, I was wondering if I could ask you something. I heard that you don't have any parents. Is that right? Yeah, the woman who raised me died, and I don't even know who my birth parents are. That must be tough for you, huh? It's okay. They all died a long time ago, so I don't feel sad or anything like that now. But I do wonder who I really am sometimes. I don't have even the slightest memory of my birth parents. Well, you might not know who you are, but you still work hard and you keep your chin up through it all. That makes you super strong in my book. Hey, Raphael. Your parents are gone too, right? Yeah. Both my mom and pa died in an accident. Well then, you're just as strong as I am. You work harder than anyone I know, and you do it all with the biggest grin in the world. Of course! It's easy when you love training as much as I do. Hey, I just realized something. We've sure got a lot in common. Our parents aren't with us anymore. We're both commoners scraping our way through this war, and most importantly... What can be more important than that? Both of us have got some serious brawn! I appreciate that, but our body types are completely different. Not sure this really counts as brawn. <laughs> sure, you're a little scrawnier than me, and maybe a lot smarter. But you know, my brain's been getting a constant workout ever since we opened the inn. You have an inn? Oh, yeah. I went home and started one up with my grandpa and little sis once the academy shut down. Running a business like that takes a surprising amount of muscle. Sure, there's regular stuff like hauling things around, but you need brain power too. If you ever want to make a profit, you have to pay real close attention to keeping the books straight. I mostly let my sis handle that stuff, though. That muscle still needs more work for me. Which means I'm in charge of the cooking. But that has its own share of problems. Yeah, it can be tough to find your footing when you switch jobs. Especially if you have to start doing things outside your wheelhouse. Trust me, I've had my fair share of growing pains getting used to the army life. Everything's way different from how it worked with my merc groups. But don't you just fight? That doesn't seem so different to me. The mercenaries tend to get involved in smaller skirmishes as opposed to big battles, and most of them prefer to fight solo if they can afford it. 
but an army acts as one unit. Coordinating that many people all at the same time is a huge change for me. And there's way more to military work than just plain combat. Stuff like managing resources, making sure everyone has the weapons and armor they need. I don't think I'm bad at math per se, but it's definitely not something I'm used to doing. And the more stuff there is to keep track of, the harder it all gets. Hey, you're not so good at using your brain either. We're practically twins. That makes us pals now, right? I've got your back, so you just keep on working hard, buddy. Right back at ya. Let's keep fighting the good fight. Oh, hey, Ignatz. What you reading? Wow. Yeah, he definitely didn't hear me. Hey, Ignatz! Ah, what? Oh, it's you. Can you please try to not sneak up on me like that? Sorry about that. I was trying to talk to you, but it didn't seem like anything was getting through. You were making all kinds of weird noises while you were reading. You read something bad? No, nothing like that. It's just that this traveler's journal is full of such vivid imagery and wonderful surprises that I can't help but react. You've seriously been lugging books around with you? Though I admit, that does sound like a good one. Yes, it's fascinating. The author's unknown, but whoever it was really traveled to all these places and documented everything. It's amazing how vastly things can differ depending on where you are. Like the plants or the animals or even the ore in the ground. And of course, the way people live in those areas is so diverse too. Like their food and their clothes. But what's most interesting to me is the architecture. Ruins in Fodlin contain ancient architectural styles that are, for some reason, also found on faraway islands. All right, all right, I get the picture. You talk like you've seen it all firsthand. <laughs> well, I really try to place myself in the author's shoes when I read. So I guess in a way, I have. I'd love to visit all those places myself, but that's easier said than done. Especially since I became a knight. The way you say that makes me think you never wanted to be a knight in the first place. Oh, no! No, no, of course I did. At any rate, both my father and my brother are pleased that it's official. Sounds to me like you became a knight for them. That's not it at all. I'm very happy with my decision, honest. Even though you can't go off traveling? Yeah, getting sent out to different locations for battle is kind of the same thing. Oh, but of course the mission always comes first. It's not like I go off wandering whenever I feel the urge. Uh-huh. But you would if you could, right? Why do you keep asking me about this? All these leading questions, they're, they're uncalled for. I might not be able to travel of my own volition, but I can read books and go wherever I want in my imagination. And that's good enough for me. Sorry for the wait, Lawrence. So, what is it you wanted to talk about? Ooh, don't tell me. Is it about a girl? No, I wish to discuss the consequences of your strategy at the Great Bridge of Murden. Oh, that. If it's an apology you want, I'll say it as many times as I need to, both to you and your father. My plan left a cloud of treason hanging thick over the Honorable House Gloucester. I'm sorry, Lawrence. Please, I have already accepted your apology. And besides, did my father not agree to your scheme? Luckily, my own person remains unsullied and I will soon remedy the blemishes on my family name, you have my word. If that's not it, then what do you want to talk about? 
There is something I wish to confirm with you. A matter regarding the future of the Leicester Alliance. <sighs> Can we really trust you, Claude? I have no qualms admitting that your work has freed the Alliance from a number of tight situations. And yet, I have never been able to fully place my trust in you. The same is true even now. Were it as simple as choosing to believe, I would do just that. But this situation makes me uneasy. Day after day, I find myself forced to rely on a man with unclear roots and even more unclear intentions. Your tongue's as sharp as ever, Lawrence. But I can't say I don't get where you're coming from. I wouldn't trust me either in your shoes. <laughs> if I were you, I wouldn't let my loved ones touch a guy like me with a 10-foot poleaxe, let alone count on me to keep them safe. You are quick to disparage yourself. Yeah, maybe I took it a little far there. I mean, I'm not that bad, am I? Still, I'm not all-knowing or all-powerful like the goddess is. There's no way for me to know what the future might hold. Which means there's only one thing I can do. Stack my deck with as many cards as I can so we're ready for anything that comes our way. <laughs> but on that front, the possibilities are kind of endless. No matter how many tricks I've got in my pocket, there's still this lingering worry I just can't shake. That's what I meant by not being able to trust myself. I feel like I'm constantly walking this tightrope with no clear end in sight. Oh. Uh, Lawrence? Are you even listening? If you were any quieter, I'd think you'd have died on the spot. I am present, yes. I was just so shocked to hear you voice your anxieties that I struggled to find words. Could this be another of your schemes? What do you hope to gain by deceiving me so? Whoa, slow down there. You're the one who brought this whole thing up, remember? Kinda rude to react like that after I go and spill my heart out to you, don't you think? Forgive me, I seem to have lost my presence of mind entirely. I fear I may be entering a state of shock. Yeah, you're not the only one. I know you're a clever girl, Hilda, and you just had some bad luck this time. But even if you delegate the job to another, the ultimate responsibility still lies with you, so you need to be careful. I know. I'm sorry. Then take that responsibility and finish this. Though this much is going to be difficult alone. Ah, Marianne. Come here. Of course. What do you need? I want you to help Hilda. Um, all right. I can do that. Thank you. Now get to it, you two. <sighs> Boy, you really blew it this time, Hilda. This isn't like you at all. Sorry you got dragged into this, Marianne. No, it's all right. So, um, what should I do? Could I ask you to organize all the weapons and armor here by type? I'm going to start with separating the useful stuff from the broken stuff. I was apparently supposed to put each category of item into a different box and take them all to storage. But the message got lost somewhere along the way, which is why everything's now in this giant pile. I understand. How are you doing over there, Maria? What the? This is even worse than before! Um, yes, I'm sorry. I tried to be very specific with how I separated things, but it got a bit out of hand. Hilda, Marianne, I'm coming to check on your progress, and I had better be impressed. Oh, shoot! She's coming! Quick, shove all of this stuff under a rug or something! Hmm. Ladies, correct me if my eyes are mistaken, but this is in even worse shape than when I first left. Um, I... 
I'm sorry, Judith. It's all my fault. I, I had everything arranged just like you wanted. But then, whoops, I tripped and crashed into the pile and everything sort of went everywhere. <laughs> I see. Hilda, when I told you to take responsibility for your tasks, I didn't mean you had to burden yourself with absolutely everything. Right, got it. I'll definitely be more careful. <clears throat> well, why don't the two of you take a short break? This mess clearly isn't going anywhere. I'm so sorry, Hilda. This is all my fault. Don't worry about it. I mean, it's actually my fault in the first place, you know? Come on, let's go take that break. I need a cup of tea in a bad way. All right. Thank you, Hilda. Hmm. I'm not certain this market is worth my time. Although the variety of sellers and goods is at least moderately impressive. Hey there, Linhart. It's not every day I see you out shopping. Oh, I thought I might happen across some good finds. And what brings you here, Leonie? Same. This is the best place to get affordable daily necessities and hunting equipment and the like. I myself am looking for items that might prove useful to my research, but alas, I have come up empty. Yeah, but the best finds usually don't jump right out at you. You gotta dig a little, you know? How about this? You keep looking, and I'll pitch in and help look at the same time. No, I've had enough for today. I'm so tired. <sighs> you never change, Linhart. And I mean never. Well, I'm going to be here for a while, so if I find anything I think you might want, I'll grab it. Ooh, that looks interesting. But how will you know what I want when I haven't... Oh, never mind. Hey, Linhart. I found something good. Wait, I thought you were gonna take a nap. It would have been rude to make you look while I enjoyed a moment of repose. So I decided to see if I could find anything you might enjoy. Wait, is that a mask? Indeed. It's an animal mask you wear like so. <laughs> okay, that looks just like the real thing, which makes it amazing on you. Is it really that amusing? I thought you could wear it hunting and confuse your prey into thinking you were one of their own kind. <laughs> yeah, I could probably. <laughs> no, stop! My stomach! This wasn't quite the reaction I envisioned, but I suppose you're finding it amusing is good enough in and of itself. Sorry, sorry. I'll take it hunting with me next time I go, I promise. Although I'll probably burst out laughing and scare off all the animals. <sighs> and what did you find for me? Oh, right! Check this out! Ta-da! At first, I just thought it was a weird-looking statue, but apparently it's really old. Ah, I see. Yes, well, thank you. <laughs> Something about your reaction isn't sitting right. Is it not actually a good find? That I cannot tell without further investigation. But there's no denying it is a curious little thing. In any event, judging from its appearance... <laughs> okay, what's the deal? <laughs> I'm sorry. The statue is just so terribly amusing. <laughs> huh? Where are you going? And stop laughing! Hey, Linhart! Get back here! Is that you, Claude? What are you doing in a place like this? Oh, hey. I'm not up to much. Just shirking my duties for a little bit. Your plan's going well, huh? We've managed to corral most of the Imperial forces that are still in the Alliance. 
Everything's moving like clockwork. At this rate, it won't be long before we've finished off the entire enemy force. You don't seem too happy about it. Hasn't this whole war been unfolding exactly the way you thought it would? So far, yeah. But it's not over yet. Unless we find a way to stop them, the Empire is going to make another play for the Great Bridge of Murden. And when that happens, we'll be taking on Count Burglis himself. It'll be a brutal fight, no matter how many angles we try to play. And even if we pull it off, what then? Do we invade the Empire or just stay on the defensive? We don't know what's going on with the Kingdom and the Church, and the Almirans could decide to drop in on us again at any time. There are limits to how far I can map things out, but the Alliance won't survive unless I account for every possibility. I'm dancing as fast as I can here, but there's no end in sight. And these feet are starting to get tired. You don't have to shoulder all that weight by yourself. I'm sure we can figure out a plan if everyone puts their heads together. Well, there's an idea. Hey, would you be willing to hash it out with me? Me? Oh, uh... I'm not sure there's anything all that useful knocking around in my head. Speak for yourself. I, for one, have plenty of wisdom to share. Perhaps I should grant you some? I probably won't be much help. But on the off chance I do get a flash of inspiration, I'll be sure to let you know. Excuse me? I've placed myself at your disposal, yet you claim there's only an off chance that I'd have a good idea? I'd appreciate a little more credit. You know, I'm really glad you're the one who hired me, Claude. You've got vision. You think about all these things that never even occur to me. Plus, I know you'll always pay me on time. <laughs> Well, thanks for the vote of confidence. Sorry to make you listen to all my griping. But you know what? I feel a bit better now. Maybe it's not such a bad thing to let it all out now and then. Well, if all you need is someone to vent to, I'm here. I'll even give you a real good rate on it. Wait, you're charging me for this? You mercenaries sure know how to bleed a guy dry, don't you? Lord Ferdinand, I've brought an envoy from the Alliance. Allow me to introduce myself, sir. My name is Holst Sigiswald Goneril. It is an honor to meet you. Even those of us from the Empire have heard tales of your valor. I am Ferdinand von Eyre, and this army is under my command. I come as a representative for the Leicester Alliance. I'm sure you can guess what I'm planning to say. You are here to ask for our surrender, I take it. Your army is surrounded with no hope of victory or retreat. There would be no dishonor in laying down your arms. <sighs> so the Empire declined our terms? I guess that's not a complete surprise. It was as if he didn't even consider the possibility. Perhaps he'd have regarded it an affront to his pride as a noble of the Empire. He's really willing to throw away the lives of those who serve him just for that? Actually, his troops' morale seemed unexpectedly high. I believe they've steeled themselves for a fight to the death. Not without exception, of course. One of his officers was hiding under a table. And I noticed some dispirited soldiers about their camp. Hiding under a table? <laughs> that has to be Bernadetta. I mean, who else could it be? I wonder if she'd hear us out. Since we couldn't convince Ferdinand to give up on this desperate last stand, we have no choice but to give him what he wants. If we win this battle, the Alliance will finally be back to where it was before the Empire invaded. No matter who you face on the battlefield, hold nothing back. Hit them with everything you've got. They've got nowhere to run. We must force the enemy generals to surrender. 
it was quite brilliant to surround them like this, Claude. And it could not have been accomplished without my fault. The escape route has been cut off. There must be some way to break through. I can see the fight. <laughs> Did you give it up already? You only keep losing troops if you... Huh? Wait, that's... Did we make it in time? The situation doesn't look great, but we've still got a job to do. We'll cut a path for you. Follow us. You're Ferdinand, right? We've secured an escape route. Hurry, get your troops out of here. <laughs> Like that. Everyone, proceed to the escape route at once! Yeah, not bad. Captain Gerald! Oh no. I really don't want to do this, but I can't let them get away. The entire army will crumble if I am defeated. Must retreat with everyone well, else, regardless turn, of what know. happens. I, I can't do this anymore. I, I've got to make sure everyone gets away. Is Bernadetta the sniper? Perhaps we should use the information we obtained about the enemy's formations. Where are these arrows coming from? We'll never catch up to the enemy if we don't stop them. We'll show them how determined we are. that interested in fighting. We may be able to convince her to surrender. I wish I was surrounded by wolves, not enemies. Bernadetta, could you maybe stop fighting? Gerald, I leave the rest to you. I will rally the troops who have managed to withdraw. Captain, we should join the front line as well. We must save as many soldiers as we can. There you go, getting all worked up again. But I guess our pay will get docked if we just stand around. <laughs> Now we can focus on pursuing them. Wait, something's happening in the central area. What is that? You will not go any further. So that's the Ashen Demon, huh? Don't engage them if you can help it. Focus on stopping the Imperial troops. Let's take it down at once. The escape point is before us. Go, everyone. I will provide you with backup. If you're with the Alliance Army, then I'm here to stop you. So, we meet again. You serve the Alliance now? Just draw your weapon out of it. You and me have scored. You're more capable than I expected. We'll do it together! I've got you now! Your 
prioritize the Imperial troops. There is no need to engage if you're having difficulties. I know we were told not to engage, but isn't this a great opportunity to see how much you've grown? Sorry, but our fight ends here. And slip away like it was nothing. Come then, let us fight with honor. Is that Alois? Did he leave the Knights of Seros? <laughs> to face the Blade Breaker's wrath. I won't be the one to drag my new comrades down. I'm afraid that's it for me. I must withdraw. This is a brother's duty. You take the lead. Here's the finish. <laughs> they got me beat, huh? Hey, it happens. All right, I'm falling back. We've considerably weakened the mercenaries. All that's left is to catch Ferdinand. You caught up to me. But I shall not surrender here. Is that all? Uh, let's take it down at once. This is a brother's duty. Then I'll let you take the lead. Here's the finish. Retreat. I will hold them off. I promised Her Majesty that I would protect you at all costs, and I intend to see that promise through. Edelgard truly made you promise such a thing? But I cannot very well abandon you here. If we lose you, we lose the whole army. Please go, so that everyone might live. I'm sorry. The rest is in your hands. My lord, please be on your guard. Do not underestimate those who've been back into a war. Yeah, but we can't just ignore her. Her Majesty entrusted me with these soldiers. I'm all right. I cannot allow them to die needlessly. You think that is enough to stop me? Take him by storm. My flank up. Follow my lead. We'll do it together. <laughs> I've got you now. Let's take it down at once. At least Lord Ferdinand got away. Your Majesty, if only I could have seen you one last. Their general escaped, but we struck a blow to the Imperial Army nonetheless. I'd call this a victory. Well, we did it. Yet you're still the saddest looking fighter in camp. Why the long face? Because we only barely got the job done. Everything else was a miserable failure. Sure, we routed the Imperial Army and forced Gerald and his mercenaries to retreat. 
we let Ferdinand get away in the process. And if that wasn't bad enough, I failed to beat the Ashen Demon. Basically, we lost in nearly every way you can lose. Wrong! You were hired to do a job, and you did it. And in the process, you've received a valuable reminder about the unique danger the Ashen Demon poses. You're right. I can't believe one fighter could turn the tide of an entire battle like that. Precisely. They're surely going to continue standing in our way, so do try to dig a little deeper the next time you square off. Yeah, you're probably right. Thanks for the chat. Did you manage to find Ferdinand and his troops? No, but I spotted tracks that suggest they fled toward Garrick Mock. So they've given up on the southern route and are making their way back to the Empire by circling west. It won't be easy to catch them now. I'm just relieved that Ferdinand is still alive. I must admit, I am too. Yeah, same here. I just wish we could have caught him, though. Knowing Ferdinand, he's gonna think the only way to redeem himself is by attacking us again. Well, if he does, I'll just chase him away. I'll send that guy packing as many times as we need. I'm more worried about Gerald and his mercenaries. I'm with you on that. Right. Ferdinand would have never escaped if Gerald's people weren't covering him. I suspect this won't be the last we see of them. We can't let their smaller numbers lull us into a false sense of security. That's a surefire way to get beaten. On the bright side, we've taken down most of what was left of the Imperial Army's invasion force. I think it's fair to say the Alliance has officially made it to the other side of this crisis. Great work, everyone. May I ask what our next move is, my lord? Well, as you know, the Empire is currently locked in battle with the Kingdom of Fargus. With fronts to the east and the west, the Empire's stretched thin. They've been forced to divide their army. I'd be curious to hear what my favorite mercenary thinks. What would your next move be? As the brains of this duo, I'll take this one. The answer couldn't be clearer. Attack the enemy's homeland. We should cross the Great Bridge of Murden and mount an assault on Empire territory. If we move in now, we'll have a real shot at winning. Exactly what I was thinking. We should seize the initiative and strike before the Emperor and Count Burglies can muster a response. I agree. They attacked us first, so we're fully justified in the retaliation. What's more, if we can claim House Burglies' farmlands for ourselves, then the Alliance should be sitting pretty for a century to come. Um, isn't Count Burglies known for his incredible strength? He may be addressed to his mightiest warrior, but at the end of the day, he's still just one man. The Empire's invasion of Leicester has failed. That crack in their armor is just the opening we need to strike. If victory means peace for the Alliance, I'm all for it. I won't lose to this Count. No matter how tough he is. I'm sure if we don't take this opportunity, it won't be long before the Empire regroups and attacks us again. I don't approve of this at all. Surely the Alliance army is already exhausted from fighting multiple battles. So many of our soldiers are wounded. We should give them time to rest and recover. If our attacks were to somehow fail, and the Alliance would be plunged right back into crisis. And need I remind you, the next time the Empire knocks on our metaphorical door, we will not be able to employ the same tricks again. We won't fail. I'll handle Count Burglis myself, and I will vanquish him. But Holst, can you really afford to be away from our territory for so long? Almira could strike at any moment. My, this conversation's certainly gotten heated. Do I sense another roundtable meeting in the works? 
Seems like this kind of decision would need one of those conferences, huh? That's how it goes around here, yeah. I guess we'll just have to table this discussion until then. I've returned, Father. Hmm, yes. Father, between your feigned betrayal and surprise attack at the Great Bridge, your leadership in this war has been nothing short of exceptional. However, I must ask why you felt it necessary to exclude me from your plans. I could have assisted you had I only known your intentions. No. If Deirdre had fallen, House Gloucester would have remained a loyal vassal to the Empire. There was no need for you to share the stigma of that betrayal. I wanted your hands to remain clean. You are, after all, the heir to the noble House Gloucester. Father. But I will tell you this. Claude von Regan is dangerous. In this matter, I allowed him to inveigle me into going along with his scheme. And what was born of this plan of his? Much of our domain became a battlefield, its citizens exposed to considerable peril. That seems a small price to pay considering all we have gained. An Alliance leader who dismisses any amount of suffering is unfit to bear the title. I am convinced that Claude will never understand this. Now, that is not necessarily... Listen to me, Lawrence. I am done obeying that reckless child. You cannot mean to secede from the Alliance. No, of course not. I intend to yield my title. What? Claude may be the one to save our Alliance, but I refuse to serve under him all the same. You, however, are much more adept at dealing with his particular style of leadership. Would you not agree? You are proposing I become head of this house? Are you certain? Lawrence, my son, I have long forced you to uphold my own ideals. That too ends today. Going forward, you shall act in accordance with your own beliefs. My only stipulation is that you never forget your duty to protect the common folk and always consider their best interests. You have my word. I stand both honored and humbled to accept the Countship of House Gloucester. Golden Wildfire. A Contest of Beasts. Having struck down the Imperial Army's incursion, the Alliance sees an opportunity to launch a counter-invasion. The Roundtable convenes and urges the plan to go forward. The Alliance Army targets Burgley's territory, just beyond the Great Bridge. They advance to seize its fertile lands, which are protected by the Empire's Minister of Military Affairs. Having been vested with my father's authority, I cast the vote for House Goneril. We vote yay. And how say you, Count Gloucester? I have decided to yield House Gloucester's seat to my son. Lawrence, you will cast your vote as the new head of our house. Before I do, might I inquire as to the position of Count Ordelia? Count Ordelia couldn't attend in person, so he was briefed in advance on this meeting's agenda. At which time, he expressed that House Ordelia would support the opinion of the Council. Then House Gloucester will join Houses Edmund and Goneril and offer no objection. We vote yea. Then with the approval of all Houses, the Alliance will move forward with the proposal. Huh. Duke Goneril's position came as no surprise, but I didn't expect Margrave Edmund to show so much interest in your plan. Margrave Edmund knows an opportunity when he sees one. I'm just glad that his calculations swung in our favor. It goes without saying, but as the leader of House Daphnel, you have my full support. But I hope you understand that some of our other frontline commanders don't share my enthusiasm. Oh, I'm well aware. I'll need to find some way to get everyone on board. 
The round table voted on our next course of action, and support for an attack on the Empire was unanimous. We need to get preparations underway. Unanimous? I was led to believe that my father would be too busy overseeing the restoration of our territory to attend. The Count made me his proxy, which I interpreted as a sign of support. That's surprising. I'd heard Ordelia territory suffered greatly when the Empire invaded. Are you sure my father has agreed to this? Our resources are limited enough as it is. I can't imagine what we could spare for an extended campaign. Is it really a good idea to keep fighting this war? Since Houses Ordelia and Gloucester suffered the brunt of the casualties in our previous battles, we plan to ask relatively little of them going forward. In fact, Margrave Edmund has generously agreed to raise the lion's share of the funds we'll need. My adoptive father views this war as just another investment. He must be expecting significant returns. And he has every right to a return comparable to his contribution. Look, this isn't something you all need to worry about. Now, Lawrence, since you're the head of House Gloucester, would you care to elaborate on your thoughts about the proposal? Given the treachery House Gloucester has shown the Alliance as of late, I did not believe we were in any position to object to your proposal. Therefore, I chose to quietly acquiesce during the roundtable. That so-called treachery was all part of the plan to save the Alliance. No one actually thinks your house betrayed us. Laudable results do not erase duplicitous intent. Had the winds shifted in their favor, my father was prepared to remain with the Empire. Yeesh. All right, let's ask someone else. What do you think, my friend? Hasn't the decision already been made? At this point, you should be free to speak your mind. The Imperial Army attacked the Alliance first. They need to pay for what they've done. I agree. The Empire started this war. I say we finish it. I just want to be clear about one thing. I'm not trying to invade the Empire because of some personal ambition. Seizing House Burgley's territory is essential to the future of the Alliance. That much won't change whether we continue to wage war with the Empire or simply need a little leverage for peace talks. This fight is about protecting our future. So I'm asking you all to lend me your strength, because I can't do this alone. Oh, all right. I'm sure you must have agonized over this decision. I suppose the die has been cast. What matters now is that we win. That's true. All right. I'll steal my resolve and fight. This battle is for everyone in the Alliance. I'm gonna fight with all my muscles. Even the ones I don't know are there! I'm in too. And I'm not about to let Geralt and his mercenaries beat me either. I may be the one drawing up the plans, but it's up to all of us to see them through. I know you won't let me down. Hey, Holst. You here to train? That's right. I was just about to get started, in fact. Perfect. Mind if I join you? Be my guest. I was only planning on honing the fundamentals, mind you. Oh. <laughs> I was actually hoping we could spar a little. I've heard stories about you for as long as I can remember. People say you're the mightiest warrior in all of Leicester. So I thought this would be a good chance to learn a little something about your strength. I'm afraid you'd likely learn little from such a bout. What? Why? I can't go all out against an ally. When I spar, I have to take care not to kill my partner. Unlike in a real fight. Eh, I can live with a few broken bones. Just show me what you've got. If I do, broken bones will be the least of your worries. I'm well aware of your strength. I'd be in for a world of trouble myself if I held anything back. So, is there anything I can do to convince you? 
If you're that insistent about it, I suppose there is one thing that would change my mind. You mean if I switched sides and joined the enemy? Precisely. I knew you'd figure it out. The only way you'll experience my full might is if you face me as an enemy. After all, there's no greater teacher than the battlefield. The vast majority of what I've learned didn't come from lectures or drills. It came from dancing with death time and again in the heat of battle. So, what do you say, friend? Care to team up with the enemy and pit your steel against mine? Nah, I'm good. I'm not in the mood to betray my friends today. Quite a collected response for someone so young. Truth be told, I was expecting a little more bravado. Anyway, for now I can settle for honing the fundamentals alongside an ally. Wonderful. Shall we begin? I should call it a day. You sticking around? Nah, I should finish up too. Thanks, Shamir. I have to work out new unit formations for our next battle. Hmm. You're pretty conscientious for a mercenary. That's rare in our profession. Well, sorry to cut and run. Good luck with all that. If you're really sorry, you could always give me a hand some time. It's my responsibility, but that doesn't mean I have to do it alone. Fair enough. Come find me next time I'm off duty. Really? Thanks. Dependable as always, Shamir. Honestly, you're so mature for your age. You always seem so composed, almost wise, even when we're just chatting. I wouldn't say wise. Save that for the higher-ups. I just mind my own business. Plenty of mercenaries do the same. Yeah, you're definitely right about that. You know, you're pretty easygoing yourself, even by Merc standards. Have you been on your own for long? Didn't you belong to a mercenary group at some point? Yeah, but I bounced around a lot. Let's see, the company I was with the longest was... Probably Burling's Mercenaries, the last one I joined. But then we clashed with Geralt's band, and I was the only one who survived. There isn't a mercenary who hasn't lost someone or something along the way. The losing trusted comrades stays with you. Yeah. Captain Burling, Getz, Lasley. We were a tight-knit group, if a little rough around the edges. I would have been content staying with them till the end. Maybe your experience is what's made you so pragmatic. It takes real strength to overcome past hardships and move on. That's what I think, anyway. You know, you seem way more pragmatic than me. I wonder what made you that way. You should know not to pry into a mercenary's past. But if the right moment comes, maybe I'll tell you about it. Guess that's good enough for today. Leone, I should have known it was you making all this racket so deep into the night. Oh, hey, Lawrence. Yeah, I usually get an extra session or two in by myself after everyone else finishes their drills. A good mercenary is always ready for battle, you know. There's no telling when one might break out. <laughs> so even your mind is as sharp as a blade. Come to think of it, I was relieved to hear you had become a mercenary. And yet, pangs of guilt clawed at my heart. Huh? Why? What's that got to do with you? Quite a bit, if I may be frank. Your home, San, sits nestled firmly within House Gloucester territory. Embarrassing, as it may be to admit, I hadn't entirely realized that fact when we began at the Officer's Academy. But once the school shut down, I began to wonder what became of the students who hailed from our lands. 
I couldn't help but investigate further. Uh-huh. And that's when you found out where I was from. What I'd been through. Yes. As the heir to House Gloucester, it is my natural-born duty to concern myself with the well-being of my citizens. It must have been difficult indeed, scrounging up the funds required to attend Garrick Mock. I would hate for someone who has already been through so much to suffer any further hardship. Well, some of the money we paid the church got back to us when the academy closed, at least. That, that's pretty much it. Not an ounce of help finding a job. And definitely nothing from the Count. So I started training, sharpening my skills as a mercenary. The rest was luck. I am truly sorry, Leone. Allow me to apologize personally, both as your former classmate and as a noble in my father's stead. Stop that. It's not your fault. I chose to leave my village. I'm the one who decided to try and make it on my own. And I would have been protected by the nobility if I'd stayed in the village, right? But that's not the path I picked. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if more commoners start making decisions for themselves someday. You mean to say the nobility will become obsolete? That's not what I said. There are plenty of people out there who still depend on you for protection. That's not going to change. At the same time, I don't think you could keep every commoner safe even if you wanted to. The time we're living through is proof enough of that. So I'm sure you'll get plenty more people who make the exact same choice I did. Probably not for a while, though. An era of change at the heart of the nobility. Commoners that are no longer content with just being commoners. Hmm. Ah, there you are, Ignatz. Hello, Lysithia. Do you need something? I wanted to thank you for your actions in our skirmish earlier. You blocked the enemy's approach, which allowed me to maintain my position on the battlefield. I'm very grateful. Oh, you don't need to thank me. Protecting comrades is all part of the job when you're a knight. At first, I thought knighthood would prove to be a task beyond your ability, but you've turned out to be surprisingly dependable. Didn't you come from a merchant family? I sure did. Then if I may, why have you chosen to become a knight instead of taking over the family business? because I'm the second son. My older brother is going to take over the business. My father wanted me to become a knight so I could help my brother that way. It was a lot to deal with, but in the end, I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out. It's quite commendable to choose a future based on your family's wishes. Oh, it's not so impressive. Your family must have been ecstatic when you were knighted. I suppose they were. To be honest, I am envious of you. You are? I am. I haven't been able to do anything for my own mother and father yet. I hope to be as strong as you and do something equally wonderful for my parents one day. <sighs> You're very considerate of your parents, Lysithia. And I know how hard you work when you set your mind to something, so I'm sure you can do this, too. Yes, well, if there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. Hmm. Um, that is to say, I certainly will. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really should be going. The work of a knight is never done, after all. Hmm. So, um, oh, go ahead. I didn't actually have anything important to say. No, you can go first, Bernadetta. OK. 
Okay, well, I guess I'll start. I saw a lovely white butterfly in the mess hall this morning. Oh, but while the wings and body were both white, its eyes were crimson. It was beautiful. I saw one just like that at the stables. You saw one too? Yes, its eyes glittered like tiny jewels. It was wondrous to behold. I wonder if it was the same butterfly I saw. That would be something, huh? Yes, it would be a most lovely coincidence. Um, well, I guess it's my turn. This morning, I awoke earlier than usual, and... Well, since I had extra time, I climbed a small hill and looked out over the landscape. You woke up bright and early, huh? That's great! So how was the scenery? Seeing the plains hued red by the sunrise was especially striking. It's like I was standing inside a painting, or... Uh, I'm sorry, I can't put it into words very well. Wow, I wish I could have seen it. Maybe I can manage to drag myself out of bed before noon one day. Oh dear, listen to me. I'm sorry for going on as long as I did. No, it's alright, really. And actually... Yes, Bernadetta? Well, I guess... I mean, it's been a long time since I've been able to talk this much with someone. I'm rather awful at speaking to other people myself. So this has been somewhat strange for me as well. Yeah. So, I was thinking it might be nice if we could chat again sometime. What do you think? That would be delightful. Aw, oh, thanks, Marianne. I gotta think of lots of things to talk about for next time. Okay, so there's carnivorous plants, interesting books, the doll I'm knitting, carnivorous plants. <laughs> you talked about those today as well. Yeah, but there are lots of different kinds. Anyway, I think this is gonna be great. <sighs> what you doing, Balti? Shh, quiet. You'll give me away. Huh? Give you away to who? Okay, they're gone. <sighs> that was close. Hey, think you two could lend me a little coin? Are you seriously going to pretend nothing happened just now? And asking us for money on top of it? Ugh, you were obviously hiding from debt collectors. What, them? Yeah, basically. Must be pretty deep in the red if they followed you all the way out here. Well, the uh, debts of a man like me tend to leave those of your average deadbeat in the dust. Still, Pretty bold of them to think I'd fork it over so easy. <laughs> the only bold one here is you, Balti. You should pay back the money you borrowed. <sighs> hey! Are you listening to me? Uh, no, actually. Sorry. Anyway, gotta go. If you're heading to dinner, we'll come with you. No, I've got some business to attend to. <laughs> you can buy me dinner some other time. Well, that was weird. Right? The guy actually thought we'd buy him dinner. Oh, that's not what I'm talking about. He always does that. Ah, my dear Hilda. You bear the countenance of a maiden most troubled. What's the matter? Oh, Holst. I hope you aren't bothering my little sister, Merc. 
What? Oh, no, you've got the wrong idea. We just ran into Balt, this is all. I see. And what did he want? Some deck collectors were after him. He seemed pretty worried about it, actually. Curious. Right? I mean, Balti shakes off debt collectors the way other people change their underwear. Yes, he usually manages to drive them hence with some combination of threats and outlandish excuses. Perhaps this time they've sent more formidable bounty hunters after his hide. Wait, there's a price on his head? Sadly, in addition to racking up and running out on debts far and wide, our friend Balthus has also been picking more than his usual share of fights. Why did we let him in our army again? <sighs> I would be happy to help the man settle his debts. But he stubbornly refuses each time I ask. I think he sees it as a twisted sort of pride. So long as he continues his drinking and gambling, his debt is only going to grow. And as he's too stubborn to give those up either, I'm frankly at a bit of a loss as to how to proceed. He's a talented fighter. If he went straight and worked hard, he'd have enough coin for a comfortable life. My lord, we have a problem. An enemy raid? It's Baltus, sir. He's under attack, not far from here. The enemy's ranks are massive, so I ran back here to secure reinforcements. You did right. I will go there at once. And there he goes. My brother certainly can move fast when he puts his mind to it. Guess we should go lend a hand, huh? We certainly should. Come on. Looks like you could use some help, Office. These don't appear to be your ordinary bounty hunters. Good eye. Actually, a mercenary band specializing in assassination. How about you deal with the ones just by me? Not bad. Into the fray. Wait, so what does a band of mercy? Yep, definitely stronger now. Tenari assassins want with you. Probably learned by my stepmother. She's the only person who hates me enough to let me face down in the dirt. You might not be related by blood, but you're still her son. Why does she want you dead? She's convinced I'm gonna try to usurp my little bro as head of the family. Of course, I kind of fanned the flames on that one when I was leaving home. But you reap what you sow, I guess. <laughs> Why is your stepmother worried about you taking over? I didn't think you wanted to be a noble. I don't. I'm way too far gone for that stuffed shirt life. So then why are we fighting? Just go to your stepmother and tell her that. It's not that simple. Look, I know it sounds strange, but trust me, it's a good thing my stepmother wants me dead. <laughs> My I've got you now. You've taken care of the enemies and all the strongholds surrounding you, Balthus. Great. Thanks. That's a real load off my mind. I'm fine here by myself. Go mop up the rest. And let this opportunity go to waste? Never! It's been far too long since the two of us last fought side by side.
Fighting together like this we sort of reminds me of when we were kids. The two of us did enjoy our fair share of mischief. I can't count the number of times we charged headlong into a pack of monsters. Party time, Holes! Just like old times, boys. Nostalgia! Yeah! It's over! How about you spare a little reminiscing for the poor sister and friend who was always worried sick about you? You will regret the day you ever challenged Colt. This guy's a monster! It's not over. <laughs> we got him! I was thinking you might have lost a step. But if anything, you gained one. If even one of these guys gets away, they'll be back for my head in the dead of night. We have to take them all out. Not sure it's possible to sneak up on you no matter how tired you are. But hey, if you want to deal with it now, we're happy to help. You and Hulk really fight at one. We want the two for that matter. Yeah. Holst and I have been battling together in one scrap or another for years now. And Hilda was usually tagging along. Grab the weak little girl and take her hostage. Use her to ransom our way out of this mess. Uh-oh! They've got me surrounded! No. My dear sweet sister is in danger. Oh, wait. That's nowhere near enough soldiers to capture her. She'll be fine. Weak? I'll show you weak! Is everyone in this group some kind of beast? Not smart, pals. Even I can't handle a ticked-off Hilda. Well done, Hilda. What a tremendous display. You could have done more than just watch. If she wasn't always shirking responsibility, Hilda would be every bit the general holsters. Smash that stronghold into rubble. Come with me. Are you ready? feel like I'm barely keeping up with the three of you. Oh, hey! The enemy leader is somewhere over there. Or that's what one of the assassins said right before I sent him to meet the goddess. Well, I certainly made a mess of things. Nothing left to do but run! Let's do this! Huh. Yep, yeah, that looks like a leader, all right. Let's take him out! Be done with this! Sorry for getting you all drawn into this little family squabble. Nah, we just had to the Come on, You clearly could have handled this game. We'll do it together! I've got you now! It was nice to see you and Balti fighting together again. Reminded me of old times. Over already. Hmm. I feel a bit unfulfilled. You're telling me. Next time, let's find us a proper battle and really let loose. Looks like you two are back to your old ways again. Just please be careful, all right? I was planning to handle this on my own, but... Well, thanks. I owe you one. I'm not some stranger to you, Balthus. Did you really think I would abandon a friend in need? Yeah, 
I think Baldy would have been fine by himself. Don't say such things, Hilda. You'll make Balthus cry. No, she won't. But was it not your own stepmother who hired those assassins? 80% sure, yeah. And hey, it wouldn't be the first time she's come after me. This is inexcusable. I will speak to House Albrecht about the matter at once. Don't bother. My little bro's already stuck running that family, and I don't want to add to his troubles. The same little bro whose mother is trying to have you killed? Why protect him? Because he hasn't done anything wrong. And he's a good man. He's the only reason I was able to abandon the family and live the life of freedom I have now. So earlier, you said something about how it was good your stepmother wanted you dead. What was that about? See, she's got something of a persecution complex, and is also persistent as anything. What do you think would happen if she set her sights on my dad or my real mom instead of me? Wait, so your real mother is still alive? I heard stepmother and just assumed, you know... Yeah, it's kinda complicated. Basically, she is living in hiding somewhere in the mountains now. Anyway, that's the long and short of it, so you don't really need to worry about it anymore. But where does this end, Balti? Your stepmother clearly isn't going to stop sending people after you. It is what it is. Just gotta let her get it out of her system, I suppose. I mean, I've already got debt collectors and bounty hunters hounding me, right? What's a few assassins on top of that? If you changed your ways, you could at least rid yourself of the debt collectors. You truly are a piece of work. Oh, hey! I just remembered something I gotta do. Thanks for the help today! We are not done speaking, Balthus. In that case, let's hash it out over dinner sometime. Really get into it. Oh, and you can buy. Well, there he goes. Again. That's quite the lifestyle he's got going. Still, I can't really be mad at the guy. Nor I. Your Excellency, I have a report concerning the movements of the Alliance Army. Go on. Enemy troops throughout the Alliance have marched south and are now gathering on the north side of the Great Bridge of Murden. The scale of their force is much larger than what would be expected of a defensive operation. So it's come to this, has it? Who would have imagined that the Alliance would dare threaten my territory? What do we do? Should we ask Edelgard to send reinforcements? No. This isn't worth troubling Her Majesty over. Are you sure? We lost an awful lot of soldiers when we were defeated at the bridge. The main force of Her Majesty's army has been sent to the Kingdom Front. It would be more trouble than it's worth to call them back. Besides, you remember that mercenary company that performed so well before? They're back with us. You mean the one run by that Gerald guy? I gotta admit, they do seem to know their stuff. In addition, we can expect reinforcements from that meddlesome ox woman. That should round out our numbers. Well, when you put it like that, maybe we really can't handle this. So what's next? Are we gonna crush them with a head-on attack? We'll meet the Alliance Army at Grander Field. The area once used to stage the Battle of the Eagle and Lion will serve well. After all, it has already been trampled beyond use and I doubt the enemy will go out of their way to burn our fields, given that they plan on seizing them. I bet Holst will be part of the invasion force. He's the one who fought back all those Almiran armies. I've been dying to take him on. You'll do no such thing. I'm going to face him myself. But why? How do you know I can't take him if you won't even let me try? The fact that you don't know only proves you're not ready to face an opponent like him. 
Besides, Holst is hardly the only foe we need to focus on. I doubt Count Gloucester was acting alone when he devastated the Imperial Army. I'm sure the Alliance's leader, Claw, hatched that scheme. We need to be wary of him. Flawed, huh? Yeah, he did seem like a pretty crafty guy. Tactics like that may work for some, but don't expect our house to come up with schemes of our own. We'll see through the enemy's tricks and then quash them with our might. All right, we're gonna crush their flimsy ploys with some good old-fashioned brawling. Let's do it! General Nader, our troops are completely exhausted. Everyone's starving, and we're running out of water. I'm sorry, but I'm going to need you to bear it a little longer. If we don't ration our provisions, we won't have enough for the way back. We didn't bring enough supplies for the journey back? What is Prince Shahid thinking? I'm sure the only thing he's focused on is that fantasy of his, where he earns enough renown to secure his succession to the throne. He's so convinced he'll sup on the spoils of victory, he hasn't even bothered to prepare for defeat. Well, that explains it then. I sure hope this battle ends the way the Prince wants it to. You and me both. If we win, great. But if we stumble here, we're as good as dead. Why is His Majesty letting Prince Shahid do as he pleases? His Majesty hasn't been himself since Prince Khalid disappeared. Khalid was always his favorite, you know. Nadir, the next batch of reinforcements will be arriving shortly. A force of elite troops, courtesy of my uncle. Rejoice! Oh, even more reinforcements? The size of the army is what decides most battles. And with me in command, it should be nigh impossible for an army of this size to lose. Well, actually, advantageous terrain may be more important. We can continue this later. March out to greet the new arrivals and get them into formation. I will go rally them afterwards. <laughs> If only we could feast on lofty speeches, then we'd eat like kings. An army this size limits the tactics we can use. Ugh. They're going to think we're just a horde of barbarians! This is no fun at all. If only you were here, kiddo. So, Holst's leading the soldiers' drills himself, eh? And everyone looks to be way more into it than usual. <laughs> That's Holst for you, all right. My ears are burning, my lord. Holst! Wow, well, what a surprise! I was just watching your drills. Everyone looks so spirited. Probably because they know you're keeping an eye on them. So the soldiers aren't so enthusiastic with others? Training is only meaningful if it emulates true battle. Without tension, it's little more than exercise. We'll need to improve our methods at once. Let's cut them a little slack. It's not like they're all goofing around when you're not there. It's just that everyone gets a tiny bit more excited when they get to see you in the flesh. You're Lester's living legend, the powerful warrior who accomplishes feats of undaunted heroism without even a crest to help him. And they get to train and fight with you? Seriously, it's probably the biggest thrill of their lives. Ha! You have quite the gift for flattery. But someone like me is nothing when compared to the ten elites. Of course, I wouldn't walk away from that fight empty-handed. Even unaided, I bet I could take a limb or two before the end. If you can keep up with the ten elites, I'll need to invent some even more impressive flattery. But I meant what I said about the troops. Honestly, I feel the same excitement just standing next to you. Then it was worth my coming here. Still, I believe that you inspire far more trust and enthusiasm than I do. The Alliance would never have come together like this if that weren't the case. If only it would have. A little solidarity would go a long way for us. 
Anyway, thanks again, Holst. It's much appreciated. I'm just doing my job as the heir to House Goneril. All I do is for the sake of the Leicester Alliance. Though, even more importantly, Hilda stands at your side. That alone is enough to keep me near at hand. It sounds like I need to thank Hilda instead, then. It couldn't hurt to do so, but also keep her safe. As you know, I've sworn to protect Fodlin's throat with my very life, if need be. So if the Almirans turn their attentions to it, I'll have no choice but to return there at once. And if that happens, we'll be right there with you to drive them back. Call it a gut feeling, but I suspect their next attack will be a battle that changes Fodlin's fate forever. Uh-huh. When did I fall asleep? Where did my glasses go? Oh gosh, where did I put them? Hmm, who's that guy? Um, hey there. Did you need something, sir? Uh-huh. Is that you, Hilda? You sound like... Wait. Ignatz? Is that you? Yes. But why didn't you... Oh, right. The glasses. I totally couldn't recognize you without them. So what happened to your specs? Well, I fell asleep on that chair over there a little while ago. And when I woke up, they were gone. I must have set them down before I napped, but I can't remember where I put them. You must have been really tired to do that. Want some help looking for them? Yes, thank you. They must be around here somewhere. I'm sure the two of us will find them in no time. So what's the world look like without your glasses, Ignatz? Well, everything's blurry, for starters. And even if someone I know is standing right next to me, I can barely see their face. Sometimes I just think they're a lamp or something like that. Yikes, that's worse than I thought. We'd better find them before you stumble into a moat or something. Do you really not remember where you put them? No, sorry. I guess I was too tired and took them off without thinking about it. Aha! Here they are! must have fallen through the gap there. Uh, thank you so much, Hilda. You're very welcome. I'm just glad we found them. You look like a totally different person without those things, you know? I do? Yeah, even once I recognized your voice, it still took my brain a little bit to catch up. It was weird, you know? I felt like I was alone in the room with some mysterious stranger. <laughs> Sorry about that. Still, he doesn't look half bad without them. I mean, I think your glasses suit you, Ignatz. So make sure not to lose them again, okay? I'll try to be more careful. My, if it isn't Marianne, how is the fine maiden today? Oh, Lawrence. I'm all right, thank you. Off to the chapel again? Your devotion never ceases to amaze me. I... yes, I am. Tell me, do you regret taking part in this war? I was most surprised to hear you were joining our forces, so if you are overexerting yourself for whatever such reason... I'm not, and I wouldn't say I regret it either. Hmm? I had no other choice. When the Officers Academy shut down, my adoptive father insisted I join the army. I wasn't given the opportunity to say no. I see. 
So it is by the will of Margrave Edmund that you're with us. Yes. I can only presume he did so as a show of his loyalty to the cause, considering he cannot make much use of his own soldiers. Yet, you do not seem entirely on board with the concept. Are you sure this is what you want? If need be, I would be glad to contact your father and sort this out for you. Just stop. I'm fine with this. It's not like I have anywhere else to go anyway. This is the only option I have. So please, just leave me be. <sighs> Marianne, we are living through an era of immense change. This great war has entangled the three eminent powers in Fodlan, and will undoubtedly leave a lasting impact on the continent at large. Lester cannot stay the way it is now. No, it must not. Um, why are you telling me all this? Listen carefully, Marianne. I believe this moment in time to be a wonderful opportunity for you to turn a new leaf. I, too, feel pressure to do the same, and I have spent my days reacting in kind. Why don't you and I welcome in this new era together, as changed people? <sighs> if only it were that easy, perhaps things wouldn't be such a struggle. I'm sorry. I will continue to be as I always have. All I can do is pray. If you'll excuse me. Is something wrong, my lord? Have you noticed anything amiss? Hmm. No, it's nothing. Looks like we're coming up on Grander Field. And here I was, bracing for a ruthless attack the moment we crossed the Great Bridge. It seems like Count Burglis wants to settle this the old-fashioned way. No tricks, just one soldier bashing into another. And look at that. He was nice enough to have his troops all lined up and waiting for us. Those are all offensive formations. It's as if each battalion is a giant monster ready to pounce. I thought the army that invaded Leicester was fearsome. But this force... They are truly in a league of their own. Your legs are shaking, Moritz. Are you scared? Don't be preposterous. I'm merely quivering with excitement over the impending battle. Hey, check it out. Looks like we'll be up against Gerald's company again today. Yep. And this time, I'll slay the Ashen Demon for sure. Well, my business is with their captain. I just wish there was a way I could speak to him. You know Gerald? Of course. I'm his apprentice. But I haven't seen him in years. Not since he left my village. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not about to go easy on him just because he trained me. I want to take him on and show him how much stronger I've gotten. Gerald's really tough. Don't get yourself killed, okay? You don't need to worry about me. I'll get out of there if it turns out I'm no match for him. Then I'll just keep challenging him until I am. Watch out for the mercenaries. But remember, our real target is the Imperial Army's top commander, Count Burglis. If you aren't confident you can handle him, then keep your distance. But not to worry, because I'll be the one to bring him to his knees. I'm counting on that, Holst. Look alive, everyone. The battle's about to start. Our only goal is to take out Count Burglis. Let's start by capturing the strongholds on the front line. Where did Holst go? It isn't safe to have people charging off by themselves. He said that he wished to preserve his strength at the start so that he might be fully prepared to face Count Burgers. He can handle himself, but I'll try to keep an eye out for him. I don't see the Ashen Demon yet. Better keep on our toes. Yeah, but remember, our main target is Count Burgley's. There's no guarantee you'll face the Ashen Demon directly. Sorry! I'll 
shall aid you. Over. Aren't things going a little too well? There's no way the Imperial Army is this weak. Something's off. It's like they're holding back. In the name of the Emperor, I, Monica von Ox, shall obliterate the Alliance Army! I knew they were hiding soldiers somewhere, but we should be able to break through at this rate. The enemy is gaining strength. I can be catching them off guard and stopping them. She is the Princess of Bridget, a vassal state of the Empire. Perhaps we can convince her it would be advantageous to join us. I cannot be letting you through. You are a formidable foe, but I will not back down that easily. Come with me! We must work together! Wait, you're asking me? Look here, you're <laughs> I cannot push myself any further. But mark my words, I'll be back. <laughs> I must reconsider my way of fighting. Sorry. There's a lot riding on you, Petra, isn't there? Is it really the smartest choice to die here? You are right. I will be choosing to live. Take a breather. Well done. But this is Empire territory. Do not think you will retain the upper hand forever. So the Imperial Army wants to fight us in an open field. It's what I expected, but it's still quite a sight to see their army up close. There's no way we'll be able to break through their formation head on. If we could just make Count Burgundy's come to us. I've got it. Anyone who can, Go take out the Imperial Generals on the southeast side. The southeast? But there appear to be plenty of enemies to the west as well. Just go with me on this. We're gonna defeat those generals and then rave about how Holst took them down. We're gonna make sure the entire battlefield knows that Lester's mightiest warrior has arrived. My lord. I can no longer bear to watch quietly from the sidelines. It is time to make my move. Give him all you got, Holst. We'll back you up. Holst, Claw told us to take down the enemy generals and then pretend like you did it. I see. So he plans to use my name to draw out Cut Berkeley's, eh? Oh, so that's what he's doing. Now it makes sense. <laughs> no Imperial dog is a match for a whole Sigismund Goddard. <laughs> you are more formidable than I expected. Ah, the enemy appears. Then I guess it's time for the Blade Breaker to put an end to both you and your speed. <laughs> The Blade Breaker has certainly made an appearance, but it seems the Ashen Demon is further back among the enemy troops. Then we'll go after Gerald first. The Ashen Demon might come out if he's in danger. Time to face the Blade Breaker's wrath. <laughs>
pushing myself. Where's the Empire's strongest warrior anyway? Shouldn't he have stopped you? Gotta get stronger. Getting stronger. Looks like I'm at a disadvantage. Time to draw back. My name is Alois Rangan, no! and by my honor, you will go no further. Let's wake up. Let's show them how mercenaries fight. We'll do it together. Captain's pulled back, then so will I. Gerald's mercenaries have withdrawn. What will the Ashen Demon do now, I wonder? They both withdrew? Then it's up to me to turn this around. Draw the Ashen Demon into the stronghold. So, Pulse has appeared at last. Then I must go forth and face him myself. Caspar, this place is now under your command. Don't you dare lose to them. Man, I wonder if I was too. The enemy is on the move. Count Fergley's is headed this way. Then he took the bait. Is my true now power? we need to lure him into the stronghold. Okay, the gate's closing. Get out while you still can. Now, close the gate! Are you changing place? I fell for a trap? <laughs> I guess Gerald's defeat shook me. Our fight isn't over. We'll settle this later. You wish to do battle with me, Holst? Then I'd be glad to accept your request. You're the one who sought me out. I will take you on right here, right now. No, Holst! You're supposed to draw him into this trial first! <laughs> If we can just shut the gate, hurry and get away from Count Burgley's. He's in. Close the gate now. You're sending this many troops after me? Don't think I'm the only lion waiting to strike on this battlefield. That takes care of those two. Now all that's left is to rain down a world of hurt on the Imperial Army. If my father's locked down, then I've got to step up! Ah, so your plan is to use the Ballisti to bombard them with arrows. Works for me. Wow, host, you knew exactly what he was getting at. You must be caught. So you're the ones invading this time, huh? I'll knock you clear out of here! Lawrence, I need you! You may handle the rest, Quark! Sure, can you be more specific? Play me all you want! I can't believe you beat me twice!
No looking back. Way to go, Claw! All right, let him fly. They stole our ballisti? Kaspar, how could you let this happen? This is bad. I need to find a way out of here. Now's our chance. Everyone, take out Count Birdlees. All the Alliance archers are ready and waiting. They probably know their way around the ballisti better than us. Everyone, fall back if you need to. I'll defeat Count Burglies. Into the fray. Leopold von Burg, this stands before you. Come and face me. The stronghold will fall. before I send you to the afterlife. Face me if you dare. I can see why they call you the strongest in the Empire. But I won't fall here. Short, young man. Likewise, sir. But I'm glad to see you're tougher than they say. Finish this later. <laughs> Until then, keep that head on your neck. <laughs> you too. The Alliance is withdrawing. Do not pursue them. We will pull back as well. We've got a problem, everyone. Retreat as quick as you can. Sir, the Ashen Demon has escaped and is attacking one of our other strongholds. Take a breather. No, we can't get cut off. Everyone, attack the Ashen Demon with everything you've got. The Ashen Demon is as fierce an opponent as Count Burgley's. Do not let your guard down for even a second. The others don't stand a chance. You're the only one who can destroy the Ashen Demon. Yeah, I know. How many times have we fought now? Either way, this will be the last. Witness You're right about right that. I'm not letting you leave here alive, Ashen Demon. for one so small. Perhaps you truly are one of their descendants. In any event, you labor to destroy my vessel, did you not? That is a deed most foul. One you will pay for with your life! You cannot hope to win so bound in flesh. Pitiful. This isn't a fight you can win. Get out of there! You can run all you like. Why do you... fight me? Why so this? 
this way. Hurry! Sorry, Claude. I lost again. I'm starting to think that mercenary really is a demon. Even in a fair fight, we end up looking like chumps. Listen, something's come up. We have to pull out now. It kills me to say it, but our victory here will have to wait for another day. Got it. Let's get out of here. Why have you ordered a retreat, my lord? We nearly had them. We've received an urgent missive from Duke Goneril. The Almirans are making their move. <sighs> of all the times. On what scale? From what I gather, it's bigger than the force we faced two years ago. We need to get back to the Alliance, and fast. But the attack two years ago was supposed to be the biggest one we faced in a whole century. The Duke always keeps a careful eye on developments in the East. If that's what he says, then it's true. Even if Duke Goneril and the neighboring lords rally all their remaining troops, it won't amount to much. Do you think we can make it in time? We'll be cutting it close, but that's what Fodlan's locket is for. It should take the Almirans a while to break through that hulking chunk of stone. We're not moving fast enough. I'll go on ahead. My lord, I leave it to you to finish things here. Sure thing. We'll be right behind you. Just try and hold out until we get there. Everyone prepare for a full withdrawal. If we don't get home soon, we won't have one to return to. <sighs> With this latest turn of events, it seems unlikely we'll see the Ashen Demon again anytime soon. And here I thought we won. As did I. Who knew the Ashen Demon had that kind of strength? Not that I'm making excuses. You gave me power of my own, and it still wasn't close to enough. That's not true. Of course it is. What am I even up against here? It's like I looked away for one second, and suddenly I was facing someone else entirely. Hmm, that would explain what was troubling me before. That is the unique danger I sensed. Still, you can win this fight. I know you can. And I'll do whatever I can to make it so. We'll claim victory over that monster together. You know what? You're right. I'll be strong enough one day if I just keep at it. Still, one day could be years from now at this rate. We should probably think of a backup plan. And hey, the Ashen Demon's a mercenary, right? Might be best for the Alliance to toss some coin their way and put this whole rivalry behind us. You want to hire that thing? Seriously? Fighting side by side with the Ashen Demon? Are you mad? You make it sound like the worst idea in the world. We have a war to win here, remember? Gotta keep an open mind. Ah, I understand now. You've witnessed your adversary's true strength and convinced yourself you cannot win. What? No. I just know a valuable resource when I see one. And we're far better off with them than we are against them. If that's really how you feel, then so be it. But trust me, you don't need to worry. You'll get stronger soon, I promise. So maybe don't go relinquishing your prey just yet. After all, I desire nothing more than to see you achieve your goals. <sighs> does not defy the hand, and yet you've done just that. So this is my name, yet I am also called The Beginning. I am progenitor and mother to all who call Fodlin home. Where am I? I am not here to answer all you ask. 
Yet, I will grant the one. You stand before my throne. If you so wish, then take a seat. But know then that your flesh is mine to wield. You lack the power to resist. My flesh? What are you saying? You should not have interfered! I could have cut that wretch down with a stroke! Oh, that one vexes me so. When next we meet, I must step in and deal with them myself. It is quite clear that you cannot my power safely wield. Do I speak plain? Not in the slightest. I have so many questions. Hey, lazy bones. <laughs> Get up already. You sure you're all right? You don't seem like yourself. I'm fine. Just a strange dream. Like the ones you used to have. Yes, but this time we talked. Huh? You fool! That was no dream! Ugh. What's wrong? Do you lack wits? My voice is not for him. Whenever I speak, it is for you alone. On second thought, I think there is something wrong. I mean... My hair's still a different color, right? Yes, and your eyes, too. How that happened is beyond me. Anyway, we lost the battle, so probably best to wave this place goodbye and find somewhere to rest up. Is that a fact? Actually, I think I'd feel more comfortable staying here on the battlefield a while longer. I just need to swing my sword around, get my head on straight. Don't worry. I'll be fine. If you say so, but if it gets any worse, tell me. So, the Alliance army turned tail and ran. Surprising. It looked like they had plenty of fight left in them. They received some sort of urgent message. I imagine that means a crisis has popped up somewhere in the Alliance. Almira, probably. After only two years, the Almirans have certainly grown restless lately. Maybe they're in the middle of a succession. Been 20 years or so since their current king took the throne, after all. So, what are we gonna do? Go after them? No. We'll let them go. But when the Imperial Army tried to withdraw from the Alliance, they were hunted down, destroyed. We should give them a taste of their own medicine. The enemy's retreat takes them through our territory's richest grain fields. If we engage them, the Empire's breadbasket will go up in flames. What's more, they're leaving those fields untouched when they could just as easily set them ablaze. We'll repay their decency in kind. Well, okay, if that's how you want to play it. Minister Burglies, I must return to the Emperor and brief her on these latest developments. Do what you must, but please deliver a message from me as well. About this war with the Alliance. Our war with the Alliance has gone on long enough. That's what Minister Burgley said. Yes, although he didn't say so begrudgingly, it was almost as if he had come to respect the Alliance and its leaders. The Minister of Military Affairs admiring an enemy of the Empire? I cannot say that pleases me. The Emperor alone has the discretion to decide when to bury the hatchet with a foe, and when to bury it in their back. That foolish warhorse has always caused nothing but trouble for me. You and the Emperor should be prepared for more of the same. Then we shall continue to rely upon our Minister of Domestic Affairs to keep him in check. I assure you, that man only ever pretends to listen to what I say. But I will grant that if nothing else, his intuition rarely misses the mark. Therefore, Your Majesty, 
I would urge you to seek an armistice with the Alliance. I must confess, the same thought occurred to me when I heard that Ferdinand had failed to capture Deirdre. Perhaps it's time we focus the entirety of our armies on the Kingdom Front and cease our attempts to conquer the Alliance through military means. Hmm. Yes. Through military means. When an opportunity presents itself, send an envoy to Claude. Assuming he doesn't fall to the Almirans, that is. He made short work of one of our armies. He will not lose to Almira. We should inform Minister Burglies of your decision at once. If he catches wind that the Alliance forces are struggling, he may well charge off to fight Almira himself. I hardly think he would do something so... On second thought, who knows what that man would do. Minister Hevering, I shall leave it to you to compose the missive. Please write what you must to ensure the Count doesn't do anything rash. Golden Wildfire. What makes a king? Though victory is within their grasp, news of an unexpected incursion from Almira forces Claude and the Alliance army to retreat. Driven by revenge, Almira invades with a far larger battalion led by none other than Prince Shahid. The Alliance hangs on by a thread, but Claude has another plan up his sleeve. Looks like we made it back in time after all. The fighting hasn't really picked up yet. I'm sorry about all this. I dragged you on this forced march right after our first assault on the Empire just to face a new enemy on a new battlefield. I always thought Almira might attack, but I never predicted they'd pull together an army this big. This is exactly why I didn't think we should attack the Empire in the first place. But I'll admit that no one could have seen this coming. Sometimes you just get unlucky. And I don't think there was any avoiding this. Well, at least the Imperial Army didn't come after us. So our troops are still battle-ready. And there's been enough meat in our rations to keep me energized and raring to go! Thanks to the support from Margrave Edmund, we've had plenty of provisions. There is no reason we should not be able to fight effectively. That doesn't change the fact that messing up now could mean the end of the Alliance. All because of my miscalculation. Come on, we always dump all the tough planning on you. We've got nothing but appreciation for the work you do, Claude. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. What matters is that we made it here in time. That's what counts, right? Come on, Claude, let's get moving. Sounds like I'm the one who needs to get his head on straight. Okay, time to put all that behind us and focus on driving back this invasion. No movement on the Empire side, huh? All this quiet only makes me more anxious. Perhaps what keeps them at bay is the fear of having to face the famed hero of Daphne. Irvin, do my ears deceive me, or did you just make a joke? I do not jest. Your being here is the only thing preventing me from surrendering to the Empire this very instant. You can drop the traitorous villain act. I know you've done more for the Alliance than anyone else. You give me far too much credit. All that has ever mattered to me is ensuring the well-being of the common folk in my territory, not the Alliance itself. And that's what makes you a great lord in my book. Or rather, it made you one, I suppose. Indeed, now I am but a humble retiree, ready to enjoy my decrepitude. Maybe now, people will actually leave me be. I wouldn't count on that. You'll have plenty of unwanted company if the Empire attacks. Oh, I do not think we need concern ourselves over that. If the Empire had any intention of continuing their war with the Alliance, they would have struck already. I imagine they have reconsidered their plans following that last battle. 
It was foolish of them to start a war on two fronts in the first place, but it would be even greater folly yet to continue after witnessing the might of the Alliance. Hold on. Are you saying the reason you volunteered to defend the Great Bridge is because you figured it wouldn't be attacked? Mm, now there is a thought. Humble retiree, my foot. You're just as shrewd as ever. You honor me, Lady Judith. Hey, hey, still alive? I think it'd be pretty obvious if I wasn't. But yes, I'm back and all in one piece. Well, that's a relief. However, I noticed your approach to battle hasn't changed one bit. You still charge to the front and dive right into the thick of it. I was trying to be careful, but I guess it didn't really work. Well, you are some kind of master soldier, right? I'm starting to think you might not get yourself killed after all. Huh. So now you approve of my approach. Why the change of heart? I realized that taking the lead and fighting at the front is exactly what my brother does. True. And they say Holst is the bravest commander in all of Leicester. Usually, the commanders stay in the back so they can see the whole battlefield and give orders. And not my brother. Honestly, he can't stand being back there. He has to be leading the charge. That's why I used to worry myself sick every time he went off to battle. But at some point, I'm not sure when, I became convinced that my brother would never die. What made you think that? I'm not sure, but it's not like there's anyone out there who can beat him, right? When I realized that, it just seemed like a waste of time to worry about him so much. If anything, you should be pitying the chumps on the other side. Precisely. And then I realized, it's the same with you. You're just like my brother. <laughs> it's an honor to be put in the same category as Holst. Now I know I'm wasting my time worrying about you, and it's not like I can stop you anyway. I actually hope you keep doing what you do, so I can take it easy in the back. That's the plan. But I'm pretty sure I've seen you fighting up front with me recently. You even seem to be enjoying yourself. Me? Enjoying myself? <laughs> Please, if I'm fighting at the front, it's because I have no other choice. The whole time I'm fighting, I'm wishing I could be cheering everyone on from the sidelines instead. You know, yelling stuff like, smash them good, and yeah, use those muscles! That would really inspire our troops, right? And remember, this is me we're talking about. Sure, you can motivate anyone. I know, right? Next time, I'll cheer for you too. You'll see how inspiring it can be. All right, sounds good. I'll keep an ear out. Tough fight, eh, Lawrence? I'm just glad we both made it back safe. Indeed. Without your help, I surely would have met a noble warrior's demise. Thankfully, my admirers will have no reason to weep today. And for that, you have my gratitude. Well, that took a weird turn. Do you remember what I said before about the order of things in Fodlan? Huh. Can't seem to remember. What's all this about? You surely cannot be serious. I told you that it was a noble's duty to protect the common folk. However, were a commoner to take a lethal strike in a noble's stead. Then we have failed in our duty. I was dangerously close to suffering that fate myself. Okay, sure, but you would have died if I hadn't saved you. And in doing so, you put yourself in a most precarious position. Your life could have been forfeit. Risking my neck to save others is just what I do. 
Yes, well, you were lucky to keep it unsevered this time. Mark my words, there is no reason a commoner should ever put their life on the line for a noble. I couldn't bear the thought of someone of your status sacrificing their life for the sake of my own. So do not do that again. Are we clear? Wow, huh. that's how you repay the person who saved your life? I expected better from you, Lawrence. No, that's not it. Truly, you have my sincere thanks. I simply want you to understand my position. All right, all right, I take it back. No need to get all riled up. You're a real piece of work, you know that? Me? How rude! I will have you know I'm quite serious about this matter. Well, I hate to break it to you, but we can end up in that situation a hundred times, and I'll save you every single one. Astonishing. You fail to understand me after all this. I get what you're going for, but I've got my own way of doing things. Mercenary or no, I know there's nothing worse than watching an ally die right in front of me. Especially if they're weaker than me. I just can't help but jump in to save them, you know? Weaker? You cannot possibly mean me. Hey, you're the one who almost kicked the bucket out there. If you don't want people rushing in to save you, then you've just gotta get stronger. I must admit, your argument is sound. I cannot refute it. In that case, I ask you keep your eyes on me from this day forth. I shall endeavor to improve myself. The day my strength surpasses yours, my noble personage will save your commoner skin and restore the proper order to this world. Yes, this shall solve all of Fodlan's problems. <laughs> This is why nobody believes me when I say he's actually a decent guy. <sighs> it's already so late. Time sure does fly when you're studying battle strategies. I should get back to my room. It's already almost pitch black out, though. The sun's been setting earlier these days. <sighs> Sounds like a man? <sighs> Probably just Raphael. I've heard him talk about how he trains at night. I'm sure of it. I can't believe I let him scare me like that. I should just ignore him and focus on making my way back. It's so dark. Oh, hey Lysithia. What are you doing out here so late? I was off on my own, studying tactics, but then it got really late before I knew it. Tactics, huh? That stuff just doesn't click with me. It's difficult for everyone at first, but I assure you the field is rather fun once you get the hang of it. Rather important, too. Determining how to shape your strategy, what formation to put your units in, there are so many moving parts to the subject that once I start thinking about it, I just get lost in my thoughts for hours on end. Wow, you must be really smart, Lysithia. I love a good muscle workout, but I'm not so sure I can handle a brain workout like you can. And I can't hold a candle to you when it comes to manual labor. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses. We should focus on what we're good at so we can complement each other's abilities. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm gonna have to train even more. Hold on, weren't you just training? It's good to be motivated, but you're gonna bother people if you keep making such weird noises in the middle of the night. Huh? I didn't train today. You... didn't? Nope. I always let my muscles rest the day after a rough workout. And let me tell you, yesterday was a rough one. 
If I go too hard, I go easy the next day, which lets me go even harder the day after that. You got your day off today, Muscles, so you better be ready for the pain tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna get to bed so I can be ready. You should try to get some shut-eye too, Lysithia. So that... wasn't Raphael? Then who was making those scary noises? Ha! Yeah! Nice job, Leone. That's one of the biggest deer I've ever seen. Yeah, it's gonna make for a fine feast. Well, let's start breaking it down and... Hmm? Well, what's wrong? Ignatz, there's only one arrow in this deer. Hey, you're right. That's weird. I thought both of us hit the mark, but I guess not. These arrows are all standard issues, so there's no way to tell which one of us fired the kill shot. Well, my arrow felt great when I let it fly, so I think it's safe to assume this is mine. Maybe. It didn't penetrate very deep, so it might actually be mine. I can't draw my bow back as far as you, you know. But, I mean, it could easily be yours, too. I don't actually know for sure. Hmm, it's true that it's not too deep. And you do have great aim. Nope, nope, it's mine. Has to be. The shot just felt too good when I let it go. I guess one of us could have hit a different deer. Although, I haven't actually seen any others. Doesn't matter. Pull the arrow out while I get ready to hang and skin it. Okay, sure. Huh? Hang on, there's something in... Ah! Oh. Hurry up, Big Knots. We've got to hang it and drain it before the blood congeals. Leone, look! I found the other arrow! Well, someone seems delighted. Where was it? In the deer. There was a shadowed arrowhead inside the wound, and after I dug around a bit, I also found splintered fragments of a shaft. Wait, so the first arrow hit the deer, and then the second one hit in the exact same place? It sure seems that way. That would also explain why the arrow we found was so shallow. Wow, that's... seriously impressive. Yeah, we weren't off by so much as an inch. This is great news! I was so certain I'd hit the deer, but then I started doubting myself. I think it would have broken my brain if I was wrong. I worried I was losing my touch, too. <laughs> we were thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> I know, right? That's too funny. Honestly, you're such a crack shot, it would have been strange if you missed from that distance. And no one hunts better than you, Leone. Doesn't matter if we're hunting deer or trading blows on the battlefield. There's no one I'd rather have at my side than you. Same here. Now, let's take care of this deer so we can start that feast. Ah, fresh air. Time to get out of here and shake things up. Sneaking off in the dead of night again, Balthus? Is it too much to ask that you not break every rule in the book? Yeah, hey, host! Sure is a pleasant evening for a little stroll, yeah? <sighs> you can't honestly believe I'd fall for that. You know I'm going to have to write you up for this. You have to do what you have to do, I guess. Or you could just come with me. What do you say? If you haven't noticed, I'm trying to help you. Oh, very well. I'll join you. Thought so. An upstanding guy like you would never... Hold on, back up a sec. You're actually coming? You? That's right, Balthus. On one condition. I decide where we're going tonight. Fine by me. But what's your game here? You've never been one for bending the rules. 
Make no mistake, I went through the proper channels to get leave to go off base tonight. For the both of us, actually. Oh, okay. Wait, for me too? Alright, it's your turn to share, pal. Hard as it is to believe, there are only so many tales about the storied king of grappling, and you've heard them all, twice. Very well. The truth is, Balthus, I'm gravely worried about Hilda. Oh yeah? What's been going on? Her behavior has been... peculiar as of late. She seemed fine when I ran into her today. You sure you're not just imagining things? No, something is off. I'm certain of it. She's been giving me the cold shoulder. Have you tried talking to her? You could ask what her deal is. Of course I did. But whenever I try to broach the subject, she just walks away. I don't remember doing anything that would have made her so upset. What has happened to my darling little sister? Tell me, Balthus. Don't look at me. I'm as stumped as you. Maybe she's just at that age where she wants some independence. Though, she's still all, Balti do this and Balti do that with me, come to think of it. Here I am, pouring my heart out, and you have the gall to brag about my sweet sister's attentions. Unbelievable. You really lose your cool when it comes to Hilda, you know that? Let it be known that on this day, the mighty host, Defender of Lester, revealed his true colors. I'd gladly give up my reputation if that's what it takes to get Hilda back to normal. I don't think that's gonna fix whatever's going on with her, pal. Oh, hey, Shamir. Going somewhere? Yep. Private matter. Be back in time for the next mission. So you'll be away tonight? Who knows? Could finish today. Might take longer. Well, if someone asks where you are, what should I tell them? Say you don't know, which is the truth. Later. Shamir, wait. Yeah? Are you going to meet a special someone, maybe? Actually, I'm ending a relationship. Special in its own way, I guess, but not how you mean. Sounds thorny. Would you mind telling us more? Yes, I would. Well then, can we come with you? <sighs> Look, it's nothing. A noble I used to work for asked me to do another job for them. I ignored it. They persisted. Turns out, they have an interest in me. Now they're threatening to send mercs after me. Wait, why? It's a kidnapping, of a sort. If I refuse to go, they'll kill me. So, I'm going to strike first. Bold move. Who are the mercs? The Guardians of Fodlum. That's the huge mercenary group that's been making a name for themselves in this war, right? The very same. Although the noble in question only employs a single squad, not the entire force. I'd hoped not to see them again, but I don't mind killing them. So you'll be fighting old friends? Wouldn't go that far. We work together once is all. Can I go now? Not without me, you can't. <sighs> Figured you'd say that. And why do I need to involve you in my affairs, exactly? Besides, this is going to be dangerous. These mercs have no qualms about using underhanded tactics. This army needs you two. It's not worth the risk. But the army also needs you! Besides, I don't know what I'd do if something happened to you. And I'm not the only one who feels that way, right? We're coming, and that's the end of it. 
Whatever. Do what you want. We will. Let's go. The enemy is encamped in the center area and has sent out scouts to find Shamir. Climb a toilet, man. We'll cross the scouts and take the camp. Let's go. The scouts are spread all over. Let's take each one out silently. Don't alert the main force. Saint Shamir, is there anyone in the enemy ranks that you're particularly close to? Not anymore. Don't worry. So if you're not close to people in this group anymore, does that mean you used to be? Close to someone, I mean. You'll ask a lot of questions. Maybe try focusing on the fight instead. This'll make things easier. I crossed swords with some of the Guardians of Fogrin back in the day. And despite their reputation, they were basically just a band of brigands. I wonder if these are the same mercs I squared off with. It sounds like them, all right. An under. Yeah, not bad. Handed bunch should happily stab an ally in the back. Every merc knows the life comes with risks. Getting betrayed by your own is luck. You're telling me. Nice! We took out all the scouts, and the main force is none the wiser. Then it's time to raid the camp in the center. Let's head for the open gate. Lots is in concentration get people killed. Requesting backup! On my mark! I won't hold back! No, I'm approved and approved! I don't recognize many faces here. Maybe it's not the same squad I fought. A lot of them probably died and got replaced. The Guardians tend to use people up. I used to have an apprentice, you know. They were just like you. Annoying. They got killed after being sent out as a decoy. My fault for not training them better. I'm sorry to hear that, Shamir. Um, but why are you telling me this? Saw you weren't going to let it go. Figured now maybe you'll concentrate on the battle. Let's link up! On my mark! We didn't see a leader. Keep your guard up. The folks we sent out died already. Soft! Still, that means more pay for the rest of us. <laughs> I knew we'd find them. They're too stupid to retreat when they're beaten. 
These people don't seem to like you. Yeah, I must have killed someone they cared about. A partner or a friend or something. soft and let someone walk away from a battle. It always comes back to fight me like this. If you want to live longer, take mercy out of your vocabulary. Let's clear it out. You bore a grudge against me this whole time? Must have been rough. These mercs put up much of a fight one on one. Stay vigilant. You're open. Enjoy your eternal sleep. I'll grow as strong as I can. But the leader's patience is running thin. You're as ruthless as ever, Shabir. Why don't you give it a rest? You're still alive. Huh. Guess it really is only the good who die young. Oh, I had to stick around. So I could see you turned into a plaything for the boss. Don't normally like to kill for free, but in this case, I'll make an exception. It's done. Yeah, right. You're open. Enjoy your eternal sleep. We won! Hooray! Looks like that did it. Come on, let's go. Sorry I dragged you into this. Or, I guess you dragged yourselves. Either way, it's good you were there. Oh, I don't know. I think you could have handled them pretty easily on your own. Their aim was to overwhelm me with sheer numbers and wear me down. Against a force that large? It's entirely possible I could have lost. Throwing so many men and women out there as cannon fodder is a horrific strategy. They'd have found fame and glory if it had worked. And it's not like the dead can complain. Besides, the more of your comrades who die, the bigger your share of the reward. Pretty good deal if you're left standing when the dust settles. Speaking of comrades, it seemed like some of our enemies knew you. Yeah, we definitely fought before. But it was a long time ago, and I don't remember doing anything that would make it so personal. Not unusual in this line of work. The longer you do this, the more grudges you earn, whether you remember them or not. You've been a merc for a long time, though. I assume that kind of stuff doesn't bother you anymore. Yeah, mostly. I try to stay detached, but every now and again something slips through. <sighs> I'm not so sure I could keep my emotions in check like that. I guess that shows how much further I still have to go. But this means things with that noble who used to employ you are over now, right? Hope so. But she's a tenacious one. Oh, so it's a woman? She must really want you back fighting for her. Yeah, that's not the only thing she wants from me. Let's just say it's a mess and leave it at that. Just remember, if someone isn't interested, move on. Interested in what? I don't understand. Anyway, I'm gonna hit the hay. Thanks again. Do you know what Shamir was talking about? Do you 
you'll understand when you're older. Well, now I'm really curious. I'll have to ask Shamir about it later. Hmm. We're beating the Empire in the smaller local battles, yes, but that barely puts a dent in their total power. We can fight all we want, but there's no defeating an army of that size. It may not be today or tomorrow, but that sea will swallow us up soon enough. Is it really responsible of me to keep letting the war drag on like this? You okay there, Claude? Looks like you have something on your mind. You know, they say you'll get wrinkles if you keep your brow furrowed like that all the time. Sounds like just the dignified look I need. People always tell me I'm not noble enough. Oh, come on. Everyone knows young and lively is the way to be. Really? It would sure be nice if the round table would propose strategies that are young and lively. They're all so conservative and selfish. I think a few lines here or there would actually help me fit in. Really? You know what they say. If you're too set in your ways, it'll set on your face. So whatever you do, just make sure you don't end up some beady-eyed king with a face full of wrinkles. I just can't win with you, can I? I think you're missing the point, Claude. What I'm saying is, you should do what you think is right, with enough vigor to blow any creases clean off your face. Hold on, do you even hear yourself right now? Who knows what would happen to the Alliance if I followed that advice? Hmm, you do have a point there. But at least you wouldn't have to worry about those pesky brow wrinkles anymore. And knowing you, Claude, I'm sure you'll find a way to break through this standoff. You really do have me beat. I feel like you can see straight through me. It's not hard when your thoughts are written so plainly on your face. All I have to do is read what's there. Guess I'd better try scrubbing them off then. As you should. Honestly, Hilda, I... I don't know what to do. Is my way really the right path forward? It feels like I'm rejecting everything Lester used to be up until now. Like I'm tearing something important away from the people who need it most. Are you sure you won't regret lighting this fire in me? I don't know. Maybe I will. I'll probably get mad at you at some point, too. But I know how hard you work to keep the Alliance heading in the right direction. You're the smartest leader we've ever had, Claude. If I was a betting girl, I'd say you're gonna come up with the best plan ever, without a doubt. Good evening, Marianne. What are you up to? Um, I found this in the mess hall. Oh! That's... It was at your seat, so I wondered if it maybe belonged to you, or if... Actually, it is mine. Thank you. It's not a very good painting, is it? I mean, the use of color and composition are all wrong. Oh, I think it's wonderful. The Pegasus looks as though she's about to take flight at any moment. You really think so? Well, that's good to hear. Um, so did you paint this, Ignatz? What? I, um... <laughs> I guess you found me out. The breaststrokes are soft, yet it has a true sense of movement. I think it's beautiful. Well, I was hoping to combine the Pegasus' gentle nature and powerful wings in a single image. This was more of a test, to see what poses and focal points would be most effective for... Oh, I'm sorry. I got a bit carried away there. <laughs> it's all right. Though I honestly had no idea you liked Pegasi so much. They don't allow men to ride them, so I don't tend to hear too much praise for them. But they're so kind, and so powerful when they fly. 
They truly are the most magnificent creatures. You seem to like them just as much as I do, Marianne. I've never seen you smile like this before. Oh, uh, I... Uh, I wasn't, uh... Don't worry. I'm just as bashful about it as you are. Uh, say, here's an idea. Would you mind if I watched you spend some time with a Pegasus? I promise to keep a good distance so as not to put it in too much of a sour mood. I certainly don't mind, but why? Well, if I ever want to paint one that I'm happy with, I need to observe it up close. Or as close as it will let me get, at any rate. Oh, what a wonderful idea! To be honest, I'd resign myself to the idea that a male painter could never do one justice. But hearing your kind words has given me the courage to try my hand at it again. So, thank you for that. I'm happy to help. Truly, I am. Aww, no! I scared away another one! I know I'm hidden. Why do they keep noticing me? Of course they will be noticing you, Raphael. Whoa! Petra! Wait, why did you say of course? Because you are moving like a giant bear when you are hunting. Even animals without ears are hearing you approach. You must have subtleness. Okay. But bears are really strong, right? So maybe I should just channel a little more of that. Bear roar! Ah! This roaring is only making you louder. Now the animals are running even further away. You are hunting rabbits, yes? And foxes? These creatures are not wanting to be friends with a bear. Oh, yeah. I guess I'd run too if a bear was coming after me like that. So, how do I get more... subtle? I mean, how do bears hunt? Often, bears are not hunting. Seriously? But they're a couple thousand pounds of muscle! You can't bulk up that much and not even flex! It's just not right! Do not be looking at me. I am not knowing the ways of... bulk. Oh, right. Well, if the bear thing is off the table, what do you suggest? I mean, how do people hunt in Bridget? Our hunters have much subtleness. They are hiding themselves completely. For you... I am thinking this is not a possibility. But... There are many in Fodlin who are hunting with skill, despite not hiding like the people of Bridget. Really? Oh. They are using hounds. Hounds do not have subtleness. But I am not knowing the specifics. We do not use dogs for hunting in Bridget. You know, I think I've heard of that before. I wonder why dogs are so good at... Oh! Dogs are basically wolves, and wolves are natural hunters! <laughs> I get it now! So basically, I just need to channel my inner canine. I... do not have understanding. Oh yeah! My hunting luck's about to improve! Wolf howl! Arr! At last! Our full army is finally assembled. Soldiers as far as the eye can see. Drink it in, Nadir. It is quite a sight to behold. Yeah, I guess it is. It should be child's play for an army of this size to break through Fublin's throat. They may as well crown me king of Almyra right now. I sure hope you're right about that. Who knows where Khalid is now, but I can just imagine the look of despair on his face when he hears of what I have accomplished. <sighs> he has no clue how to lead an army this big, and yet he's already bragging of his victory. 
I'm under no obligation to follow Shahid any further. Perhaps it's finally time to do as I please. Not many people in Elmira could mobilize an army this massive. If it's not the king, it's gotta be one of the princes. Which means... Shahid's definitely their commander. What's up? Something wrong? Nah, not especially. You sure? Because I definitely just heard a we've got a problem sigh. There's nothing to worry about, really. And besides, I can't see any other way around this. I'll just have to do what needs to be done. That's all there is to it. I feel like I'm missing something. My lord, we have made ready to intercept the attackers and await your signal. Right. Here goes. Listen up, everyone. The enemy may have an advantage in size, but they're little more than a disorganized mob. We can defeat them. No, we will defeat them. Drive them back today, and we'll toast our victory tonight. Charge! <laughs> disorganized mob or not, their sheer numbers are impressive. But Lester will be done for if you let them break through. We have to take out the enemy leader at all costs. Let's start by taking care of the enemies near our base. I can still fight him! More fighting means more strength. I will not allow this to be a repeat of before. Do not spare a single soldier! Crush them immediately! They're trying to take our base through brute force. Brace yourselves, everyone! Fight with me! We must work together! Ta yeah, good to go! Bring me all you want! At this rate, we may succeed in overcoming the first wave of attackers. We have managed to protect our base. Enemy reinforcements have taken up positions in the north and south. We will not be able to use the same tactics as before. Then we'll just have to shake things up. Let's steal their strongholds and light the beacons. The beacons? Ah, I see! You mean to lure them in? There is a signal from one of our strongholds? <laughs> My turn at last. What an obvious trap. As if we would fall for something like that, fools. So it's begun. Prepare to carry out the plan. Two beacons, but the enemy isn't doing anything. We've lit all the beacons now. The enemy forces should be able to see them. Do not be fooled by those beacons. We will overwhelm the enemy with our sheer numbers! Uh, looks like we've got more enemy troops on our hands. Was drawing them over here really a good idea, Claude? We've got them right where we want them. Now, we'll pretend to attack the northern front and... Well, I won't spoil the surprise.
You'll surrender quietly if you know what's good for you. Nader, did you see the beacons? Everything's good to go on our end. How about you? I've been waiting for ages, kiddo. Let's get started. Prince Shahid, General Nader has defected. Is it working with the enemy? Show you how the fate awaits a traitor. Kill him! He's going straight for our linchpin, is he? Everyone defend the dead. Hey, who needs protecting? As if I'd fall here. Ah, true, you are the dare the undefeated. But I like to make sure I've covered every possibility. You got my back? On my mark. my finest moment. I never would have imagined we had an Almyran general on our side. We must use this opportunity to gain the advantage. You still haven't killed Nadir? Surely only a small handful of troops defected with him. Much worse than I anticipated. We have no choice but to retreat and regroup. We'll regret it later if we let them leave now. Don't let the enemy leader get away. Now, let us bring it down. Full of cowards. The likes of you could never kill me! Come then, gallant. Yeah, not bad. Warrior Almira, put my cowardice to the test. This isn't good. He'll get away if we don't catch him quick. I hate to lose this stronghold. It really is you. It's been you all along. To think that you're the one who turned Nadir against me. Well, would you look at that? You figured it out. I'm here to stop you from ruining Almira's reputation, Shahid. We should team up. We must work together. What a nuisance. Yeah, good to go. Play me all you want. Let's scum. Kill me if you can! I will become king of Almyra. A barbarian like you could never defeat me! Everyone, focus on the Almyra leader. If we defeat him, we win the whole battle. Give it up, Shahid. It's over. You lost. Let fly that arrow, then. I'll never kneel to the likes of you! But that isn't what I'm asking for you to do here. Let's end this. Come on! You little brat. I'd sooner die! Uh -huh. ah, thanks for that. Look, Claude. If you can't do it, then I will. No. This is my burden to bear.
I never wanted things between us to end this way. I'm so sorry, brother. I'm sorry, Claude. It looked like you were hesitating, so I... Don't worry about it. I never would have found my resolve if not for you. So that Shahid guy... Was he your... Don't say it. Honestly, it's not even about that. That look of desperation on his face just... Tugged at my heartstrings is all. <sighs> you know, I thought a guy like me would be impervious to this kind of thing. Looks like I don't know myself as well as I thought. But now that I know, I won't make the same mistake again. We should go. Everyone's waiting for us. Claude. All right! We did it! The rest of the Almiran soldiers seem to have simmered down. I guess it's because they lost their commander? That Shahid guy must have been the only one who actually wanted to fight us. Claude, I believe you owe us an explanation. Why are you and this Almiran general on such amiable terms? I guess you could say he looked after me a bit when I was a kid. Before you joined House Regan, you mean? How did you two come to meet in the first place? It is difficult to fathom the circumstances that would lead someone in Fodlan to make the acquaintance of an Almiran general. It's a long story, so I'll just cut to the chase. It turns out Almira isn't as unified as many believe. After the battle two years ago, I went to Nadair to see if there was a way we could partner up if something like that were to happen again. You see, I served the King of Almira directly as a retainer. I was never obligated or inclined to obey Prince Shahid. The Prince was obsessed with starting a war with Fodlan, in the hopes that he could distinguish himself enough to secure a path to the throne. This probably comes as no surprise, but he didn't have any kind of plan whatsoever beyond clearing Fodlin's throat. Once I caught wind of the situation, I thought it'd be best to have Nadir and Holes get to know each other before things really got out of hand. Wait, Holst, you've already met him? Yes, Nadir the Unstoppable and I have been nemeses of a sort for years now. It's actually Nadir the Undefeated, but go on. But when we met, he declared that he was willing to band together, if doing so would prevent Almira's name from being sullied. Well, that right there nearly moved me to tears. Before long, we were drinking and celebrating our newfound brotherhood. Your newfound what now? Ah, I take it your host sister. Then that makes you my sister, too. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, yeah. I'm actually full up in the brother department. Getting back to the story, I'd been trying to nip Shahid's foolhardy war in the bud for a while. But the prince was always as stubborn as an ox. And so, that's how I ended up here with this gigantic army. Luckily, though, I spotted my newfound brother defending the throat with the kiddo and his army. It's a shame about the prince, but I'm glad we were able to help stop the attack on Fodlin. Does that explanation satisfy you, Lawrence? I cannot help but feel there is more to the story. But for now, I will happily thank General Nadir for his assistance. You have my gratitude as well. You all helped me prevent another blow to Almira's reputation. Now, in Almira, it's traditional to throw a grand feast after a battle. We eat, sing, and dance till we can't move anymore. Oh yeah? Claude has the same tradition. Wait, but that means... Uh... We may have failed to capture any Imperial territory, but we succeeded in defending the Alliance. So tonight, we celebrate in style. I hope you're all ready, because it's gonna be a feast for the ages. 
Hey! I was right! It's feasting time! So that's what you mean. <laughs> Should have known. Money. Jerky! Steak! This is the best meat party ever! Slow down, Raphael. Just how much are you planning to eat? Oh, this is delicious. It has a nice, delicate sweetness to it. It really does. I wish I could share some with Dorte. Dorte? Who's that? Oh, that's your friend, right, Marianne? The horse one. My brother, you haven't had nearly enough to drink. Come on now, bottoms up! And you need to eat something. I prepared the food myself, you know. Try the mushrooms. They came out perfect. The war is far from over. But these people are acting like they don't have a care in the world. Keeping your guard up all the time is just going to tire you out. Everyone needs to unwind every now and again. <laughs> then why isn't the man of the hour partaking in the festivities? Now that you mention it, where is Claude? Claude, what are you doing out here? Oh, hey there. Just thought a little fresh air would do me good. Hit the bottle a little too hard? Can't say I blame you. It's been a while since we've cut loose like this. Yeah, that could be it. You've got to wonder what's really running around in that mind of his. He never revealed his dealing with Count Gloucester, nor that he befriended an Almyron general. He's probably hatching a new scheme right now. Not that he'd ever tell us about it. <sighs> what? Do I have something in my face? Well, I guess I should rejoin the festivities. Come on, let's go be merry. It still feels like he's got this wall around him. Hard to say if we're ever gonna really understand each other. I'm sure you will one day. After all that's happened, he's come to depend quite heavily on you. Although, if you really want him to see you as someone he can turn to, you'll need to get stronger. That man harbors many secret ambitions. I wouldn't expect him to back away from this war anytime soon. Sounds pretty tough when you put it like that. Oh yes, he'll say all of this is for everyone else, but he has aspirations of his own too. Just like us and our goal of slaying the Ashen Demon. If you grow stronger for Claude's sake, it'll benefit your own aspirations as well. He may not be your partner in destiny, but yours is a valuable relationship nonetheless. Hey, Arvo. Yes? Don't you think you're getting a bit too obsessed with this little grudge match? Maybe so. Though I don't believe that's all there is to it. What do you mean? I suppose it just feels like our destiny. Like it's something we're meant to do. It is now 1182. The great war incited by Edelgard has continued to engulf Fodlan, but slowly begins to change course. The Alliance's battle with the Empire ends without a victor. After facing the Olmyrans, the Alliance focuses on rebuilding, while the Kingdom's conflict with the Empire stalls. Six months will pass before the wheels of change turn again. But when they do, it will be because one ambitious man sets them in motion. Golden Wildfire.
The End of the Alliance. It is the end of 1182. Four moons have passed since Almira attacked. Though the battle lines remain unchanged, Claude steadily schemes behind the scenes. History is about to be made. Huh? Whoa, everyone's already here. Yep, we were waiting on you, Hilda. <laughs> Whoops, but Claude isn't here yet, is he? He said he'd have something to tell us after the roundtable conference, so I figured it'd run late, as usual. You got that right. Those meetings always seem to drag on forever. <laughs> Where's the love? These roundtables are supposed to symbolize the Alliance's ideals, you know. Uh, sorry about that. I was out of line. No worries, my friend. That's exactly why we made the decision we did today. What decision? Is that why you called us here? Hold your horses. Everyone, listen up. As you know, the Leicester Alliance is governed through a council of representatives known as the Five Great Lords. As the Alliance leader, it has been House Regan's responsibility to convene the round table and secure the approval of the other lords on matters of policy. The Lords of the Alliance felt this was the best system to serve the welfare of their people. And in peacetime, maybe it was. But there's no denying that the round tables have hindered our ability to respond swiftly to emergency situations. And it doesn't seem like Lester's current state of emergency is going to end anytime soon. Which is why I put forth an important proposal at today's round table, one that's since been approved. As of today, the Leicester Alliance will be reborn as the Leicester Federation. All authority has been entrusted to the King of Leicester. And as it just so happens, I have been chosen to serve as the Federation's first king. With this, we'll no longer be held hostage by roundtable delays that leave us at the mercy of our enemies. I give you my word that I'll dedicate all my efforts to protecting and preserving Lester. I hope I can count on all of your approval as well. We reached this decision after exhaustive discussion. I imagine not everyone will approve, but we ask for your understanding. I hope we can all accept our former leader as our new king and continue working together to defend Lester. So, everyone, are you with me? This must be why my father was in such a hurry to hand over leadership of our house to Holst. The former Duke Goneril was a ringleader of sorts for the lords who opposed the establishment of the Federation. That said, he's been looking to put Holst in charge for a while now. Maybe this was just the perfect opportunity. It seems I'll also have much to discuss with my father about House Ordelia's future. I imagine it's the same for you, right, Marianne? Hmm? Oh, yes. I suppose that's so. It's just ridiculous to think that our Claude, of all people, is a king now. Well, I think Claude will make a wonderful king. Yeah! Me too! Long live King Claude! Huh. Didn't see that one coming. Quite an abrupt twist, isn't it? He certainly didn't breathe a word of it to you. That's true, but it doesn't really bug me. If I were in his shoes, I wouldn't share something that important with a lowly mercenary either. Anyway, I'm happy for him. Now Claude's free to act as he sees fit. And I'm gonna keep supporting him, just like always. Yes, I think that's probably for the best. Probably. I have received word from my father. He reports that public order is rapidly deteriorating in House Burgundy's territory. 
Seriously? I've heard the same is true in the Seaward and Albany territories as well. That's right. And as a result, some unsavory characters have strayed into Daphnal territory, causing trouble for us, too. If they couldn't keep things under control, they should have come to me for help. Those three houses have always been quick to align themselves with the strongest faction, be it the Central Church or even the Empire. That the three of them opposed the establishment of the Federation makes it all the more difficult to ask for help, no doubt. If only it were that simple. Is there something else about the matter that concerns you, Lady Judith? I've heard some rumors that those three have been conspiring together of late. That there are plans in the works for all of them to defect to Fargus. The Viscounts may have been too busy plotting to secure their positions and deal with the growing chaos in their territories. <laughs> now that I would believe. I'm not sure if this is related, but there have also been some alarming sightings near their western borders. Alarming in what way? It's the Knights of Seros. Perhaps it's nothing, seeing as the Kingdom is sheltering the Central Church within their borders, but... Do you suspect that the Knights have been acting as intermediaries between the Kingdom and those houses? If so, we cannot possibly turn a blind eye. We can't say for sure if that's the case just yet. But there's no mistaking that civil unrest is running rampant in those territories. We need to mobilize the Federation Army immediately and try to restore public order. Wait a moment. Would it not make more sense to send envoys to the houses beforehand to learn more about the situation? They'd just reply to our inquiries with some half-baked excuses. Giving them a heads up we're coming should be enough. So you're ordering an immediate deployment, Your Majesty. It's nice how quickly things move around here without the round table. That's the beauty of this. Lawrence, assemble the troops immediately. Very well. At long last, it is time for the Federation to take its first steps. That's right. We stand at the dawn of a new Lester. Hey there, got time for a little chat? I do, but don't you kind of have a lot going on right now? Oh, I should probably be using your title now, shouldn't I? Since you're a king and all, your majesty. Call me whatever you want. I'm still the same Claude. I was shocked when I heard you were going to be the king of Lester. I never imagined you'd be able to unify the alliance and make it all official. Hey, it was your idea. Don't tell me you forgot. Oh, right, the thing. The thing I definitely remember. That thing. Mm, are you sure? You're not filling me with confidence in your memory here. You said that the Alliance should get rid of the roundtable system so we could act more decisively. Uh, yeah, I did say that. But I didn't expect you to remake the whole Alliance as a... Federation, whatever that is. Alliance, Federation, they're the same thing with different names. I just established something new to get rid of the old system. Huh. I guess it makes sense when you put it that way. You're a strange one, you know that? I find myself actually wanting to open up to you. It's probably because you don't seem to have any strings attached. It makes it easy to talk to you. Yeah, I'm just a wandering mercenary. All my life, I've never had many relationships to speak of. Right, right. You were taken in pretty young, weren't you? Yeah, I don't remember any of it, but that's what my mom told me. The lady who raised you? What kind of person was she? Hmm, how do I put it? It was like she could do anything. She taught me all sorts of stuff. We lived in a small village deep in the mountains. It was a humble life, and I didn't interact much with the other villagers. And one day, my mom suddenly got sick and passed away, and I was booted out of the village. I had to use everything she taught me just to stay alive after that. So, you were left to face the world all alone after they kicked you out, huh? 
The whole time, yeah. I became a mercenary, but the groups I joined didn't last for long, so I ended up drifting from one place to the next. And that's how I ended up like this. Completely untethered. I see. You know, I think I understand you a little better now. Though I suppose I can't say for certain that I don't have any connections. You mean your power? Yeah. I still have no idea what it actually is or who my real parents are. Just remember that no matter what you find out, it won't change who you are. Just like how becoming a king hasn't changed who I am. What a wonderful meal. Hey, you've still got some food left. You don't want it? That Ogma Wolverine meat's super hard to come by, you know. Oh, I don't really eat meat. You can have it. Don't mind if I do, then. You know, I always feel strangely energized after eating this stuff. <laughs> you look so pleased to be eating it. If not every day I get to hear you laugh. Did I look funny or something? No, it's just that the look on your face made me feel happy. Instead of just watching other people stuff their faces, maybe you'd enjoy trying some yourself? I'm perfectly content just watching. Huh. Well, anyway, it seems like you've gotten more comfortable eating with me, Marianne. I have. When you told me not to act like someone I'm not, at first I didn't know what to do with myself. But I still thought I could learn something from you. And as I talked with you more, I just got used to us sitting together. I see. Then why not branch out and eat with other people too? Mealtimes are a great opportunity to make new friends after all. Making conversation and sitting around the dinner table go hand in hand. That's how we ended up friends, right? It might be a good chance to get to know someone else. What's wrong? I'm sorry, it's just... My adoptive father said the same thing to me once. He did? He often criticized me because I avoided other people so much. He said that, as the heir to House Edmund, I must be at least somewhat sociable. But he never bothered to understand how difficult it was for me to do that. I'm sorry. I was being insensitive, just like your father. No, no. You've done nothing wrong. But I don't think it's a good idea for me to get involved with too many people. Why? I only bring misery and misfortune to anyone who gets too close to me. That's not true at all. Why do you even think that? It is true. I know it. Okay, if that's the case, then how's it possible for us to be hanging out right now without any problems? You're right. I should have been more vigilant and kept some distance between us. But you're so kind and I just like being around you. I'm sorry. I'll stay as far away from you as I can from now on. I should go. Hey, wait, Marianne! What am I gonna do about her? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Looks like he's at it again. How's the book, Ignatz? Ah, could you please not surprise me like that? Sorry, sorry. So, you got more books, huh? They look expensive. They were tucked away in my family's storeroom. I had my brother send them to me. We're a merchant family. All the books here are technically meant to be for sale. But they've gone unsold for years now, so he sent them, without telling my father. Your brother sounds like a nice guy. Are you too close? We weren't when we were younger. 
but I guess we are now. <laughs> we do write to each other a lot. <laughs> and he listens to even my strangest requests. That's why I tend to go to him for everything. I wonder if he feels sorry for me since I became a knight for our family's benefit. So you didn't really want to do it then? Well, no, that's not... I did it because I wanted to help them. Now that I'm a knight for House Gloucester, I've been able to make a lot more connections with the nobility. If I use that to help my family's business, then I'm perfectly happy with where I am. If you say so. What kind of books did you borrow? A bunch of travel journals and collections of letters from far off places. No matter how painful life may be, it all fades away when I read these books and imagine myself traveling. Wait, did you just say painful? I knew you weren't happy. What you really want to do is travel around and paint all the scenery you like, don't you? What? How do you know that? You're not exactly hiding it. You've got books on painting techniques, preparing pigments, and all that kind of stuff right here. <laughs> yes. The truth is... I love painting. I know the world holds all these wondrous sights that I can't even begin to imagine. If only I could see them for myself and capture them on canvas. I used to dream of doing that. But things are different now, you know? I don't regret becoming a knight, and I didn't do it just for my family's sake. I want to do my part to shape Fodlin's future. It's my responsibility as much as anyone else's. That conviction has only grown with every battle. Ah, that must have sounded so arrogant. I'm sorry. I'm embarrassing myself. All right. If you're gonna make it that clear you don't regret your choice, then I'll stop pestering you. But this war is gonna end one day. Why not keep your dreams alive for when it does? Maybe I will. Yeah! Huh! Yeah! Is that you back there, Hilda? Gah! Yeesh, Holst! You scared me! How did you even know I was here? I strive to keep my mind sharp and clear at all times. How then could I not recognize the presence of my own dear sister? It's a feat anyone can accomplish with good, honest training. You should try it sometime. Honest training isn't really my forte. Same goes for our regular drills. If no one's making me do it, not a chance I'll even bother. Ha! That's because you have the makings of a first-class prodigy. Even without putting in any hard work, your talent shines bright. But now that we're both here, why not train with me? It'll be just like old times. You mean like how you used to carry me on your back while you were doing push-ups? No thanks. That was fun when I was little, but it'd be incredibly embarrassing now. Hmm, that's a shame. By the way, Holst, how long are you planning on sticking around with us? As long as I can. It'd be a hassle coming out here every time a roundtable meeting was called, after all. But I'll have to return home at once if Almira starts showing any signs of mischief. Uh-huh. So the fact that your little sister is here has nothing to do with you being here? Not pleased with my answer, eh? I thought you hated when I admit to being overprotective. But, yes, of course you're the biggest reason why I'm here. I can keep you safe so long as you're close. Additionally, I must be on hand to punish any scoundrels who attempt to woo you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't love that part. It's not just scoundrels who are terrified to approach me now. 
still, he's thinking about my well-being, so I guess that feels pretty good. But there's actually another reason why I'm here. Oh, yeah? The opportunity to cross swords with a warrior like Count Burglis doesn't often present itself. True valor is only polished in life or death battle with the most powerful fighters. Just thinking of how I may one day encounter these veterans makes me tremble with anticipation. <sighs> of course it does. So, that's the real biggest reason. I probably should have guessed. No, don't get me wrong, Hilda. It goes without saying that the most important thing in my entire life is the well-being of my beloved sister. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Good luck with the training. Wait, I beg of you, wait! My dear Hilda, come back! <sighs> oh, boy. I think I'm in over my head here. Not often I see you, Cy Raphael. What's wrong? Oh, Leone! I'm glad you're here. Listen, do you have a second to answer a question about bow making? Sure, go ahead. But you do know that all our bows are pre-supplied to us, right? No, I get that. Problem is, the ones they give us can't hold up to my muscles. Even if I draw the stream back really carefully, the bow still ends up snapping in half. You snap bows in half? That really shouldn't be possible. Anyway, I'm trying to make a bow that I can use in place of the ones I keep busting, but I can't seem to get it right. Well, you've come to the right gal. Give it here. Thanks, Leone. Okay, so it's much quicker to reinforce an existing bow instead of trying to make one from scratch. First, you wrap this around here and flex it like so. Then on the opposite end... And there you have it. I used animal tendons, which will absorb the force you place on the bow and make it even more pliant. This should be flexible enough to withstand even the burliest of your pulls. Give it a try. Oh, wow, look at that! I'm pulling with everything I've got, and it's just fine! Thanks, Leone. <laughs> you're very welcome. But say, you're still pretty new to the bow, right? Yep, but I want to get better, because using it makes my muscles happy. In that case, I have an idea. I'm currently on guard duty, which means chasing off random bandits and monsters whenever I see them. Why don't you come with me on my next patrol? It'll be a great way to test your new weapon. Oh, that would be great! You're really incredible, Leone. No one can beat you when it comes to bow stuff. Well, I was born in a hunting village, so I guess it's sort of my thing. I imagine you've got different talents that just come naturally to you, right? And if I ever find myself struggling with one of your specialties, I'm sure you'll help me out. You bet. If you ever need a hand with food or workouts, I'm the man for you. Yeah, I'm a card-carrying member of the Clean Plate Club, so I don't need help in the eating department. Well then, just come to me if you ever want to put a little beef on your bod. Ignatz Victor reporting, Your Excellency. Yes, yes, come in. Greetings, Your Excellency. I think you're supposed to say, forgive my intrusion. Right, yes. Forgive me, Your Excellency. Listen, Ignatz, I may have a title now, but you and I are still friends as we have always been. All this formality is starting to make my skin crawl. Please, just treat me the same as ever you have. Oh, right. Of course. Anyway, what do you need? You've no doubt heard about the bandits who appeared in Gloucester, yes? The ones who were supposedly former mercenaries. 
they've been around for a while, right? Yes, my men have been searching for their base for some time now, and I believe they have finally located it. I took the opportunity to look into the provenance of these bandits anew, and it seems they were indeed a mercenary band, one in the employ of my father. I see. For some reason, they have abandoned the sellsword life and fallen into banditry. But why would they do that? I do not know. I attempted to discuss it with my father, but his only concern at present is finding me a proper spouse. When I ask, he evades me and changes the subject. Hmm, yes. That's quite the conundrum. Regardless, I cannot ignore these bandits, especially if my father had something to do with them. Thusly, I have decided to deal with them myself, and I was hoping you might join me. Of course. I'm a Knight of House Gloucester, after all. Good. Oh, and as it would be a rather tall order for the two of us to take on a gang of brigands alone, I have called in some additional support. Hey, you lords! I came as soon as I could. Just once, I wish one of my acquaintances could split the difference between absurd formality and dire nonchalance. I am a count now, you know. Wait, so are we not friends because you're a count? No, what I meant to say is... Look, enough with the titles. I'm a busy woman, so let's get moving already. I will have you know, a noble is nothing without their... Oh, never mind. I asked you here because I need your help dealing with bandits in my territory. That's it? Well, sure. I'm happy to help. Hmm, that was easy. I suppose it does indeed pay to have some true friends in one's corner. Sure does. Besides, if just you and Ignatz try to do it, you're gonna get kicked into next moon. Have you ever considered not saying the first thing that pops into your head? The two of us could easily handle this matter. I am simply being prudent. Also, these are not some run-of-the-mill ruffians, but rather highly trained former mercenaries. Right, the old mercenary to bandit career path. They have some connection to my father as well, so I would like to uncover what we can in the process. You got it, boss. If we fight and win, I'm sure some info will turn up on your old man. I am not certain I follow your logic, though I suppose it would be the preferred outcome. Now then, we should be off. With my subjects in peril, there is not a moment to waste. We will depart as soon as you are ready. I'll take my payment in meat, please. I shall tell the kitchen to prepare a ham. Hear me well, you fell brigands. I, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, stand in judgment before you. So, not to be a jerk, but when you stand up and scream your name like that, it prevents us from launching any kind of sneak attack. Us Gloucester have no need of such dishonest trickery. If our foe is asleep, we kick out their pillow before the battle begins. Firstly, let us deal with the bandits outside the base. I shall not permit you to wreak any more havoc within my borders. I can still fight! <laughs> Say, Lord, why don't you hang back and let us handle this? Do not coddle me. I am more than capable of holding my own against this pack of curves. Now that I think of it, we're near the place where Claude's grandfather met his end, aren't we? Indeed, I think you are correct. Could this group perchance have some connection to that most unfortunate incident? You yourself are a former mercenary, yes? Pray point out everyone you recognize. Uh, you do realize that not every mercenary knows each other, right? Let's do this! <laughs> that is enough.
enough for the soldiers outside. Let us proceed to attacking the base. By the good name of Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, you foul marauders shall terrorize my subjects no longer! Gloucester? Let's get out of here before we get beaten to a pulp again! A fine hit! We let these folks go. We'll just cause more trouble somewhere else. Let's track them down. You fool! and father died not too far from here. That was a long time ago now. They were merchants, yes? Yeah. They were traveling with the old Duke Regan and got attacked by monsters. During the period when my father employed these mercenaries, monster attacks were a rather common occurrence in this region. Good, but not enough. And these monsters took the lives of both the former Duke Regan and Raphael's parents. Pay attention, Lawrence! If you keep staring off into space, some bandit's gonna run up and conk you on the head! Yes, of course. I must focus on the battle at hand. All right, that should be all. We can't get up a bunch! Let's cut around back! There is something strange about the enemy's current movements. Perhaps they have another escape route in mind? I'm trying to get out the back way. After that! Yeah! No escape! It's funny how you're like a real knight now, Ignatz. You used to be so scrawny. I think everyone looks scrawny compared to you, Raphael. We stopped them. You? The Count? <laughs> Where's your father, you little brat? Retired. I am the Count of Gloucester now. You don't say. Well, in that case, I'll have to take my revenge on you instead. He seeks vengeance against my father. Whatever was driving these people? Traitorous nobles tired of beating us up yet. Wait, you claim my father betrayed you? Got used us and threw us away like trash did. Then he tried to make us disappear so as to sweep it under the rug. Let us stand together. Are you ready? The enemy will regret this! You should be saved! Just kill me and be done with it already! At least that way it'll finally be over. I would speak with you yet. I need to understand what has transpired here. <sighs> we did it! We won! Meet party when we get home! And Lawrence is buying! You all go on ahead. I must speak with the bandit we captured. There you are, Lawrence! That took so long, I thought maybe that bandit general got you. We had much to discuss, which I will share with all of you now. Did you uncover the reason for their grudge against your father? Indeed. As we suspected, they were once mercenaries in his employ. At first, they were used in the ways one might think, keeping villages safe, guarding the border, and so on. But one day, they were given a very strange order by a supposed envoy of my father. 
Well, what was the order? They were told to threaten any merchants heading toward Regan and force them to turn back. Yeah, that's a weird one, all right. The mercenaries felt the same and balked at the idea of raising their swords against unarmed merchants. Instead, they decided to chase a pack of wild monsters into the merchants' path and scare them that way. Hey, smart thinking. I'm not so sure about that. The plan worked, at first. Then one day they caught wind that merchants were approaching and loosed monsters on them per the established method. An ordinary group of merchants would have simply run away and lived. But one among this group drew his sword and began to fight. This was Lord Godfrey, who at the time held the title of Duke Regan. He fought valiantly, but ultimately in vain. Sadly, he perished along with the merchants he had hoped to protect. Merchants that included Raphael's parents. So the former Duke Regan and Raphael's parents all died because of your dad, Lawrence? So it would seem. I am terribly sorry, Raphael. Please, accept my apology in my father's stead. Hey, knock it off. You didn't do anything wrong. As it happens, my parents were meant to accompany Godfrey that day. But they had a scheduling conflict and recommended that Raphael's parents go instead, which means... Not you too, Ignatz. Look, everybody. Kids aren't responsible for what their parents do. Lawrence, do we know for sure that the order came from your father? I was wondering the same thing. Your father was always protective of the nobility's reputation, and it seems strange he would do something so sneaky, and so anti-merchant besides. Based on what the bandits said, I suspect it was someone from our house acting alone. By the time my father realized what was happening, the culprit had vanished, along with any hope of ever sussing out their true motives. Only the mercenaries remained, and my father had no choice but to punish them. I bet they didn't care at all about what happened behind the scenes. As far as they were concerned, their employer betrayed them. But I don't get how any of this has to do with you right now, Lawrence. A feudal lord is responsible for all that happens within their realm. Therefore, anything left unresolved by my father falls by necessity to me. I would also like to pay appropriate reparations to both you and your family, as is fair and proper. But I don't need anything from you. I can take care of my family plenty well on my own. Besides, I made my peace with what happened to my folks a long time ago. You can't change that now. All you can do is stir up a bunch of old, painful memories. Yes, but still. But nothing. I'm done talking about this. I'll still take my reward for beating up the bandits, though. Meat party, remember? You promised me the finest ham in all the land. And just thinking about it's got me drooling. This does not sit right with me. What should I do? I think you'd better quit wallowing in the past and go fetch that ham you promised. Best to just leave it be. You too, Ignatz. Right. Very well. In that case, I shall arrange for the finest spread of meat the world has ever seen. I stake House Gloucester's very reputation on it. <laughs> now that's the right thing to do. Still feels a little weird to leave it like this. But I guess this is for the best. Hey there. Oh, Holst. What's going on? Our king has agreed to meet with the Adrestian Emperor. Claude's gonna talk to Edelgard? Yes, and you'll be joining us. You're the only reliable bodyguard we could find on such short notice. Um, 
Okay then. Lead the way. It's good to see you again, Claude. Congratulations on your coronation as the first king of the Leicester Federation. What's this? The Empire has officially recognized our Federation? Why, Edelgard, I'm touched. But I did have my heart set on an apology. You launched an unprovoked attack against us, after all. Attack? The Empire merely responded to an invitation from Viscount Acheron of House Phlegathon. Alas, fortune turned against him at the Great Bridge of Murden, and he perished in the battle. As a result, we did garrison our army in Gloucester territory for a brief time. But I would hardly call that an unprovoked attack. Huh. And dead men tell no tales, right? Although I'll grant you that he sold us out to the Empire. Whatever transpired, the Empire and the Alliance did end up at war with one another. And I do not deny that the Imperial Army caused harm within Alliance territory. We are prepared to offer appropriate restitution for that. That works. We'll take tangible resources over insincere apologies any day. We can hash out the definition of appropriate later. Want to move on to the real reason we're here? Yes, by all means. I trust you read my letter? The Central Church must be eliminated before Fodlin can be reborn. Your help would go a long way towards accomplishing that. Oh, I read it all right. And from a personal standpoint, it's something I can get behind. But as the leader of the Federation, I can't say the same. You can't expect the people of Leicester to embrace this southern church that you've dredged up out of nowhere. I must take issue with that assertion. The southern church has a long and storied history in Fodlan. Nonsense. You hastily resurrected some dusty old sect and appointed the Empire's own Minister of Religious Affairs as its bishop. Do you honestly expect us to acknowledge such an obvious sham? <laughs> None of us will shed any tears if you do not. Nor did we truly expect that you would. We do not care where the Federation places its faith, so long as it is not in the Central Church. So all you're looking for is a little cooperation in taking them down? And I assume the Kingdom's on your hit list, too, since they've given them sanctuary. I understand the Federation faces challenges of its own. Surely you would prefer a quick return to stability at your borders with the Empire? Oh? I'd like to hear a little more about these challenges you think we have, but maybe now isn't the best time. Claude, we want stability. The decision is yours to make. Knowing you, I am certain you will carefully consider the costs and benefits, rather than let emotions dictate your decision. All right. I'm in. Holst, do you feel satisfied with those terms? Everything looks good to me. I'm especially glad we found a solution to the control of Murden. Hubert, I trust you have no objections? None, Your Majesty. All that remains is the placement of your seals. Then let us conclude our discussions for now, and go inform the world that Adrestia and Lester have joined forces for a brighter future. Sounds like a plan to me. I, Claude Von Regan, King of the Lester Federation, hereby swear this pact. Lester pledges to work in harmony with the Adrestian Empire and do everything in its power to secure a peaceful future for Fodwin. By the covenant between the red blood and the white sword that crowns the double-headed eagle, I, Edelgard von Hressfeld, hereby swear this pact. Adrestia pledges to work hand in hand with the Leicester Federation to deliver peace to the land and secure a future for all its people. The pact is sealed. And now it is our job to uphold it. 
I'm sure you noticed how Edelgard wouldn't even deign to acknowledge your existence. How empty does it make you feel to witness history marching forward without any say in which direction it takes? I never wanted to be the one making history. That's too big a role for a humble mercenary. That said, I don't know about this. The kingdom and the church are suddenly our enemies now. Is everyone really just gonna get on board with that? Hmm. What's wrong, Leone? Bad day of hunting got you down? Come on, Claude. You and I both know bad days don't happen to me. I was just thinking about the situation Lester finds itself in right now. That's an unusual topic coming from you. Go on. You know how both Regan and Gloucester territories have been the site of some pretty serious battles during this war? Well, I had the chance to talk to some people who live there, and it turns out their crops for the year are suffering because of it. Some villages even had their fields completely trampled in the struggle. Which, yeah, if that doesn't delay your fieldwork, I don't know what will. Turns out, a lot of them are blaming the King of the Federation for what happened, though. No surprise there. It was my decision to go to war with the Empire, after all. Were it up to me, Lester would never see the flames of battle on its lands again. But things don't always work in absolutes. Now that you mention it, how saw him doing? The area managed to stay pretty safe, right? Thankfully, yeah. Good. I know you'd be worried to death if something happened to your home. Hey, Claude? If I'm being honest, I don't really care much about this war. Or what kind of relationships the different regions end up having with each other. But I can get behind the future you're fighting for. It's a good one. I can feel it in my gut. Though, that's kind of all I have to go on since I didn't get the education some of the others did. I appreciate that, Leone. And I get that you don't really care about a lot of this stuff. The one thing that matters most in the life of a commoner is what tomorrow's harvest is going to look like. I know that. But those people will get caught in the web I'm spinning for the future all the same. They won't have a choice but to fight. But... I know. If we don't fight, more and more innocent people will get struck down as collateral. Even so, there will be sacrifices no matter how much or how little we struggle. And most of those will end up being commoners. <clears throat> I hope you stay on my side all the same, Leonie. And not just for your raw strength as a mercenary. I could use your perspective, too. My perspective? Think about it. You met the farmers in our land eye to eye and found out they were upset with me. I could never do that. Not in the position I'm in now. I guess you're right. That's why these kinds of things don't get addressed. They never even reach my ears. So I want you to help amplify their voices. Help me hear what the people have to say. As the ruler of Leicester, this is my number one priority. It's even more important to me than winning the war. And I'm more than glad to help you accomplish it. You know, you're really not like your run-of-the-mill noble. With a guy like you leading the Federation... Leicester will be a better place. I just know it. How you feeling, Raphael? Everything healing up? Hey, Hilda. Yeah, I'm fine. This is nothing. Well, that's good to hear. Still, don't go pushing yourself too hard, okay? You know it. Thanks for looking out for me. You really were incredible out there today, you know? I mean, even if you did get sort of reckless at times. It kind of reminded me of my brother, actually. What? Holst? Well... I sure appreciate you saying so, but I'm nothing compared to that guy. He's strong as an ox, 
a master of every single weapon, and has muscles bulging out of his other muscles. His workout routine must be the stuff of legend. I'd give anything to be like him. Yeah, he trains literally all the time. It's no surprise the two of you get along like a house on fire. I also appreciate how much he values his family. Yeah? Because I sure don't. Oh, don't say that. He's just being a good big brother who's looking out for his little sis. In fact, the last time we met up, we had a great time swapping stories about our sisters. Wait, so you were talking about me? Ugh, oh, I really hope he didn't say anything weird. It wasn't weird at all. We were just chatting about how cute our sisters look when they sleep. See, when she was little, my sis couldn't fall asleep unless I tucked her in, and we had a nice chat. And at some point, while we were talking, whoosh, out like a candle. It was adorable. Then Holes told stories about when you were little. Said you whined a lot. Stop, stop, stop! I'm not interested in stories about myself, and especially not stories like that. This is all unbelievably embarrassing, so let's just bury the whole conversation in the world's deepest hole and pretend it never happened. It's not embarrassing, it's nice! Anyway, I eventually told Holst how sad and lonely I was to be living apart from my sister now. And he said, he's sad he never gets to work with you, even though you're in the same army. And we ended the conversation by promising to always keep our sisters safe, no matter what. You promised each other? Oh, I swear my brother is always like this. What if he gets even more overprotective now that he has you for a big brother buddy? Holst is overprotective? Huh. I never got that impression. Well, he's better than he used to be. I mean, at least I don't have to send him constant letters now. Still, according to what Balti told me, Holst apparently said, and I quote, I will be the one to decide if her future husband is good enough. <laughs> That's so funny. My sister's gonna call the shots on who I marry, too. She told me so. <laughs> wow. Our situations could not be more different. I need to speak with you, Ignatz. Ah! Oh! Lysithia! You gave me quite the scare there. Do you remember last time we spoke about our parents? When you told me how you wanted to do something for them. Yes, I remember. Does that mean there's something I can help with? No. However, the way you acted when we spoke has been weighing on me. I got the impression you are somehow pushing yourself too far. No, I'm not. What, what would make you think that? There it is again. Something is going on with you, and I think I know just what it is. You wanted to take over the family business along with your brother, didn't you? Huh? I mean, uh, no. I, I never wanted to do that. I'm, uh, not really suited for the life of a merchant. Really? And yet you know so much about paintings, silverware, tea, and other kinds of merchandise. Well... It seems I have miscalculated. I thought you became a knight solely due to your family's wishes. You're not wrong about that. I mean, wait! That's not what I meant! Aha! So there is something you'd rather be doing! Well, um... Yes. Set your worries aside, Ignatz. I have a proposal. You... do? Yes! You should come to Ardelia territory and get started on what you truly want to do. 
I can arrange for you to come and go as you please. And we may even be able to provide you with other forms of assistance as necessary. Really? Well, I'm certainly happy to hear that, but... But can it wait until the war is over? I still have a job to finish as a knight. I'd feel bad for Lawrence if I just threw all of that away. I mean, he's the one who nominated me, after all. <sighs> you always take your responsibilities so seriously. Do you never put yourself first? Still, I suppose that is a rather admirable trait. Very well, then. I will wait until the war is over. Until then, hold on to your dreams, okay? I will, Lysithia. And thank you. I feel like a new light is starting to shine on my life. I don't know what will happen to Ordelia territory when the war ends. Still, if I end up a commoner, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to help him start his new merchant business. That is what he wanted to do, right? Sum up. We've agreed to an armistice with the Empire. From now on, our enemies are the Kingdom and the Church of Saros. The Church is our enemy now? You say it like you're just moving pieces on a chessboard. To be clear, this is not a repudiation of the teachings of Saros themselves. All we're aiming for is the dissolution of the Central Church. That would mean killing Lady Rhea. Is that really the right thing to do? I didn't speak with them very much, but Sedith and Lady Rhea didn't seem like bad people. Those two aren't what they seem to be. If what the Empire says is true, that is. I hate to say it, but it sure sounds like you let the Empire talk you into buying the whole store. Look, the Empire is obviously trying to use this as a means to their own end. But do you honestly think I'd agree to a deal that sets them up better than us? I'm using them right back. The balance of power in Foden has already collapsed. If we just sit on the sidelines, our position is only going to get weaker. By cooperating with the Empire, we can expand our influence and power as much as they do, if not more. This is the only way we can end the war quickly while maintaining Lester's independence. And for that purpose, you would throw Fargus to the wolves, despite holding no animosity towards them? You and I may not hold any grudges, but if you look to our history, you'll see it was the kingdom who tossed us to the wolves first. When our people were fighting for independence from the Empire, Fargus attacked and conquered Leicester for themselves. And even after we finally won our freedom in the Crescent Moon War, they've continued to meddle in our affairs, like causing that rift in House Daphnel. Hmm. Yes, well... Besides, they're harboring the Central Church, and I can't condone that. I've always been skeptical of that dogma they preach. It's just a way for them to force their own belief system onto everyone else. Their creed legitimizes Fodlin's system of nobility, which values crests above all else and leaves no room for people of different backgrounds or faiths. And if what the Empire says is true, then I couldn't even begin to count the number of crimes the Central Church has committed. Claude, are you saying that you intend to destroy our current system of nobility? Because that... I have news. A battle has broken out in ALL between Imperial troops and the Knights of Saros. The Imperial Army has already stationed troops as far north as ALL? That's a little too close to Daphnal territory for my liking. It seems Catherine is commanding the Knights. The Imperial troops are in for a serious fight. Catherine was definitely the strongest out of all the Knights of Saros. What shall we do, Your Majesty? If we're to honor the pact we just signed, we should go and reinforce the Imperial troops. Yeah, you're right. Not so fast. We have not finished our conversation. Just what exactly are your intentions for Fodlin, Claude? Honestly, 
I want to break this place wide open and tear down every last one of its insular customs. If we can't do that, then there's no real path forward. Now is the time to steal ourselves and take action. Are you sure? How exactly are you planning to explain all that to the people in the Federation who adhere to the Church's teachings? Oh, I already have something in mind. In fact, I'll need your help to see it through. Well, you'll have it. I just hope whatever you've got up your sleeve is actually a good idea. It is. Judith, Lawrence, I need you to trust me and follow my lead for now, okay? Now, let's go wipe out those knights near Daphnal territory. Everyone, prepare to move out. <laughs> Are you good with this, Shamir? I told you before, I'm not part of the Knights of Saros anymore. But we're gonna be fighting Catherine this time. Didn't you two used to be real close? We were partners back then, but that's all in the past. Now we walk our own paths. I won't hesitate to do what must be done. Not even a hint of doubt. She really is something. From the looks of it, I'd say the Knights of Saros have the Imperial forces on the back foot. The Imperial army is being led by Randolph, one of Count Burgley's relatives. He's supposed to be quite a formidable warrior. But then again, he's up against Thunder Catherine. Hard to consider him the favorite in that fight. Even so, it doesn't look like the battle will be decided anytime soon. We can afford to take our time. But won't things get real bad for the Imperial Army if we don't bail them out soon? I'm sure they will. But if we rush in without a solid plan, we'll be the ones getting stuck with the business end of Thunderbrand. We'll swoop in with a surprise attack right when their defeat seems all but certain. For now, we should prepare for the battle ahead. I've seen that look before. Claude's got another scheme brewing. Does he? I still can't tell what's going on in that guy's head. We should move before the Imperial Army is wiped out. Launch the surprise attack! What army is that? Wait, are they attacking us? Army has come to our aid. Now we can assist Lord Randall. The Federation Army has come to our rescue. I thank you. We don't have to worry about attacks from the rear now. Leave this to me. I will not waver. <laughs> If we really want to take out Thunder Cat, this is the best way to play it. Quad, is something wrong? No, it's not. Randolph, you can sense you're outmatched, can't you? You have no hope of winning. Surrender now! We did it! Now the Imperial Army can rally their forces. We'll hold here until all the commanders going to aid Randolph reach the stronghold. Is everyone ready? Then let's hurry to Lord Randolph's aid! I'm not there yet. The Imperial Army has rallied. They might turn the tables on us at this rate. Main forces with me. We're going to strike right in the center. Everyone else, circle around behind the enemy. Move out! Thunder Catherine is on the move. Now's our chance to capture the enemy strongholds. 
surprise attack to be successful, it needs to be executed quickly. Or that's what I read in the book on tactics, anyway. The Imperial Army will scatter if Randolph falls. Keep advancing! Uh, I've heard the rumors, but I never imagined she was this strong. Claude, <laughs> are you certain this is the best course? The Imperial Army is struggling. Yeah, that's just what I expected. Right now, we need to get a move on and capture those strongholds. At this rate, the Imperial Army's gonna get crushed. Shouldn't we go help them? I see you've made your choice, Randolph. Ha! After surrounding the knights, but there just wasn't enough time. Lady Catherine, the Federation <laughs> army has us completely surrounded. They let their allies die in order to trap us? Hurry and forge an escape route! We will find a way to survive this! to Catherine's aid. They surrounded us, huh? We're in hot water now, Kathy. If we can convince some of them to surrender, we'll reduce our number of casualties. I don't think she's a knight. She might surrender if we talk to her. We can't let a single one get away. We have to whittle down the church forces as much as possible. So the love of... <laughs> I am at the height of my powers under the darkness of night. Attack. Now, let us burn it down. So we are to claim victory by sacrificing the Imperial Army? How is this conscionable? Could you maybe let me go? I'd really rather not sigh if I can avoid it. Sacrificing our allies in order to win? Is that really the kind of leader you are, Claude? You coming? Show them what you can do, Raphael! What do you think of this? They won't never hit him! Now watch me flex! Did you see that? My muscles always win the day! Hey, you're not with the Knights of Saros. You've got Noble written all over you. Why not join us? We'll treat you right. Maybe that's for the best. After all, I have a dream to fulfill. Just stop. You dying here won't accomplish anything, right? You got me there. I guess I'll do what you ask. You did beat me after all. What a mess I've gotten myself into. We'll just have to buckle down and prepare for a fight. I'll take as many of you Federation cowards with me as I can! Okay! Time to attack!
I will never let you lay a finger on Lady Rhea with those filthy hands. That was an ugly battle. Your Majesty, it appears that none of the Church's soldiers have survived the battle. What about our allies? The Federation troops sustained minimal casualties. However, the Imperial forces appear to have been wiped out. That includes General Randolph. I'm sorry to hear that. Tell everyone to start getting their things together. Yes, Your Majesty. Not one enemy made it off the battlefield alive. From a tactical standpoint, that's an ideal outcome. At least, it's supposed to be. But it still leaves me with a bad taste in my mouth. Even so, the only way I can go is forward. Now that I've taken this first step, there's no turning back. Not after what I've already done. These hands will never be clean again. Claude, what happened out there? You left those Imperial troops to die. Was that your plan all along? I wanted to win that battle with as few casualties on our side as possible. What other choice did I have? You had plenty of other options. Did you really think we couldn't handle it? Our military capabilities only go so far. We can't risk losing even one of our capable commanders, no matter how unlikely that might be. But that kind of thinking got Randolph killed. You signed that pact. Wasn't he supposed to be our ally? I don't see the value in sacrificing lives that we might have been able to save. How does that make you any different from the nobles who just throw mercenary lives to the wind? Am I gonna be next? Of course not. I could never replace you. Please, you've got to understand that. You should listen to what your commander is saying, Your Majesty. Everyone else feels the same way, myself included. You're the king of the Leicester Federation. You have to conduct this war in a way that inspires people to follow you. I hear what you're saying, but what good does it do if we fight honorably just to lose? Why are you assuming we'd lose? You should know better than to write off your own army like that. Don't you agree, kid? You need to have more faith in us. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to put our faith in you. You're not fighting this war by yourself. We're all a team here. So you need to sit down and have a long, hard think about what that really means. Okay, I'll give it some thought. But I can't guarantee I'll arrive at the answer you want me to. I'm going to follow the path I believe in. That's what I set out to do as king. <sighs> Let's just make sure Randolph's remains get back to the Empire for a proper burial. Golden Wildfire. Love and loss. The formation of the Leicester Federation astonishes onlookers in all corners of Fodlan. But the treaty between the Federation and the Empire proves to be an even greater shock. Claude decides to send troops into the kingdom. However, his rash actions only spawn more problems, one of which is currently creeping towards him. Why have you come back to me like this? Lady Flesh, please. You must get a hold of yourself. My brother. How did this happen? Lord Randolph fought bravely against Thunder Catherine. He managed to create an opening for the Federation army to swoop in and rout the Church's forces. 
It was a crushing victory. For the Federation, that is. What? You were there? But the Federation said there were no survivors from the Imperial Army. When it became clear what transpired, Lord Randolph bid me and only me to escape with my life. He did this so I could tell you, Lady Flesh, how his death came to pass. He did? The King of Leicester used us as decoys. He was able to seize victory by leaving us for slaughter. When I think of how tragic it is that Lord Randolph should be cut down in the prime of his life. He was left to be slaughtered? They must pay for what they've done. I swear to you, dear brother, I will not let them get away with this. Please, I implore you, gather what soldiers you can. Skilled mercenaries too, anyone you can find. I will empty our vaults. Borrow money from the Count. Whatever it takes to pay them. But Lady Flesh, whatever for? For revenge against the King of Leicester. I will have his head. Understood. I will make the arrangements at once. <laughs> that was almost too easy. You feeling any better? I have to say, I'm still not used to this new look of yours. That makes two of us. But it will bother me less once I'm on the battlefield. I sure hope that's the case, because we've already got our next job lined up. We're going up against the Alliance again. Oh, no, wait, they're called the Federation now. Well, you know who I mean. To be honest, I'm feeling a little uneasy about this one. It's probably just because they're paying an arm and a leg for us, but be careful, okay? I will. You do the same. Oh, right. I've been meaning to give you this. Never used to be without it. Cuts like a dream. I want you to have it. Swords like this are given to captains of the Knights of Saros, and mine was just collecting dust in the band's convoy. That's right. Alois mentioned you used to serve there. That was a lifetime ago. I don't plan on swinging this sword ever again. But are you sure you want to give it away? It must be quite special to you. Uh, I'd be happiest seeing you get some use out of it. Thank you. I'll do that. Be good to it, all right? It's been a while since we last gathered here. I wasn't sure there'd ever be another round table conference again. It's still a good way to pool our information, right? Much easier than trying to hunt each of you down individually. Um, but is it really okay for us to be sitting here with everyone else? Should us commoners even be here at all? Of course. I want you all here. And if you have something to say, don't hold back, all right? If that's the case, then I'll just say it. I'm starving! <laughs> okay, Raphael, maybe hold back a little. Let's check in with how things stand across the Federation. Any shifts in public opinion? For the moment, at least, it remains unchanged. Despite our declaration of war on Lady Rhea and the Central Church, the individual churches in our cities and villages have remained calm. So long as services continue as they always have, we may not see any particular unrest among the common folk. It's the same in Ordelia territory. My father didn't try to sugarcoat the news when he announced it to our people. But surprisingly, there haven't been any signs of disorder. The same goes for Goneril territory. If anything, things seem more stable now than before. That's why I'm able to keep fighting alongside all of you. This is also true of Edmund territory. I guess no one in Leicester is all that upset about Lady Rhea becoming our enemy then. I doubt most commoners would even recognize Rhea. 
So I guess it makes sense they wouldn't care too much about her. Then it seems we've avoided the worst case scenario. All that work from the Eastern Church must have really paid off. The Eastern Church? It's the branch of the Church of Saros that covers the Leicester region. They don't have much of a presence compared to the Western Church, but their bishop is a really upstanding individual. The bishop advised the regional priests to respond calmly to the news, so they wouldn't cause panic in their congregations. All things considered, it looks like continuing our war against the Central Church and Fargus won't be a problem. <sighs> so we're really going after the kingdom, huh? It's our best hope of ending this war quickly while maintaining our independence. To be clear, I'm not suggesting we burn our way through Fargus, pillaging everything in sight. Yes, we're going to defeat the kingdom and wipe the Central Church off the map. But we're going to do so in a way that spares as many lives as possible. And that's why you're all here. I want to tap into your collective wisdom to figure out the best way to go about this. So you finally decided to rely on your friends a little. Don't mock me, Judith. I've depended on all these fine people this whole time. I just figured I could be making even better use of their strengths. If anyone has any thoughts about my methods, I'm all ears. I need your help here. You can count on us. Isn't that right, Ignatz? Huh? Oh, right. We all need to work together to end this war. Well, I guess if you need our help that badly, who am I to say no? And what do you think? Hey, you can count on me. And not just for my muscles, either. I'm pretty sure I've got some wisdom kicking around up here. Such confidence. I assume this is because you're finally putting some faith in me. I'm so glad you've come around. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Then, without further ado, let's figure out our next move. The time has come to put my intellect to good use. You will be the mouthpiece for my thoughts, I trust. Don't get too carried away, yeah? They're not expecting much from me here. Um, may I speak with you a moment? Oh, yeah. I was just about to take a break. You need something? Our relationship has been strained for a while, so I thought it was time to resolve our issues. Uh, it has? Yes. At least I felt that way ever since the incident. Oh, you mean that time you were hollering about some ghost, but it turned out to be a dead tree? I didn't think anything about that. And I didn't tell anyone, either. No, not that. Well, yes. There was that, but there was another, more defining incident, remember? Are you talking about the time I treated you like a kid and you got all mad? Yes, of course that's what I'm talking about. That happened a long time ago. Has it really been eating at you ever since? Well, I mean, I was unable to maintain my composure and got rather aggressive with you over trivial details. I kept telling myself that I had to apologize, but I could never bring myself to do it. But now, I'm... Uh, I'm sorry. Well, I'd like to apologize too. I should have been more careful with what I said. Why does being called a kid upset you so much? If you don't think of yourself that way, then any comments of the kind should be like water off a duck's back. Look, I'm a tiny bit younger than everyone else, and it doesn't help that I'm shorter, too. Plus, I do have somewhat of a baby face. Really? You don't look that young to me. You... you don't think so? Yeah. Now that I really look at you, I think you're a very pretty young woman. 
You act real mature, too. Oh, no. I'm not really. But most importantly, your skill at commanding troops puts all the real adults to shame. Hold on. Real adults? So what you're saying is that I'm ultimately still just a child? Ah, oh, crud. I misspoke. What I meant was... There you go. Making excuses again. Now I know exactly what you think of me. This conversation's going sideways again, isn't it? Hm. It would seem so. Though, I suppose forgiving you would be the mature thing to do. Hey, there you go. See? You are a real grown-up, Lysithia. Something about this still rubs me the wrong way. But... Oh, fine. I just ask that you keep treating me like the adult I am. Hey, how's it going? You been getting enough food? Definitely. I'm eating way better than I was back in my mercenary days. You didn't eat so good, huh? I spent most of my time moving from place to place, so I had to manage on my own. I'd just fling whatever I could get my hands on into a pot. Can't say any of it ever tasted too great. Wow, I'm surprised you could even live like that. And you never stayed at an inn? Sometimes, if one happened to be nearby and I had a little extra money lining my pockets. But I never really felt like the food there was any better. Sounds like you were at all the wrong places then. Nothing fun about a bad meal, I always say. That's why I want my inn to be known far and wide for its delicious food. I was actually hoping to do some cooking out here, too, so I could hone my craft. But I don't think it's going so good. You want to know why? Um, well, you did say you weren't all that great with detail-oriented work. You're not wrong there. But that's not the only reason. See, all the meat and fish we've got in the pantry is preserved. When you're not working with the fresh stuff, nothing you make's gonna have people hollering for more. You think? But there are dishes from all over the world that use ingredients that are on the verge of going bad. You sure that isn't because they don't have a choice? I'm no expert, but I've heard it can make a nice cut of meat even more savory, depending on how you prep it. Huh. Maybe we can learn some more if we ask someone who's from one of those places. Not to mention, there are other ways of preserving food, too. You mean, besides dumping salt on everything? I'm sure you know about smoking your food, right? Things will keep for even longer if you do that after you cure them. Yeah, but I heard that makes meat all smoky and gross. Kinda defeats the point if you ask me. I think it depends on how you do it and what kind of wood you use. Apparently it's really good if you do it right. Wow, you sure know a lot about this stuff. My mercenary days showed me more about the world than I could have ever imagined. I only really remember bits and pieces though. Come on, don't be so modest. I can't wait to get back in the kitchen with these new ideas you gave me. Hey, speaking of ideas, you want to help me think up some recipes with the stuff we've got here? I'm not so sure me and cooking mix. But yeah, I wouldn't mind giving it a shot. That's the spirit. I know we'll come up with some feast-worthy food if we just put our heads together. You got a minute? Sure, what do you need? Wait, don't tell me. You're here for some advice from a pro. Actually, I am. You know how all the top mercenaries have some kind of specialty? Some excel at swordsmanship, some are adept in subterfuge, and so on. Even you have your own special thing. That incredible, mysterious power. Anyway, I was just thinking that I need something like that, too. Mysterious, huh? Yeah, I guess you're not wrong. As for you, Leonie... 
Oh. I thought the bow was your thing. If you want to make a name for yourself, shouldn't it be with that? I was raised in a hunting village, so yeah, I do know my way around a bow. But a bow and arrow isn't very helpful in the middle of a heated battle, is it? I figure I'll need to do better than that if I want to be a first-rate mercenary. Hmm, you can use all kinds of weapons, right? And you can even ride horses. Sure, I know the basics, but it's more of a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none kind of situation. That may be the case, but if you look at it from another angle, those skills make you a pretty powerful mercenary. What do you mean? You know the fundamentals for everything. There's nothing you're particularly bad at. Well, yeah, but I'm just average at all of them. Even so, a mercenary who can do everything decently well would actually be in pretty high demand. Strategically, your options expand significantly if you've got even one person who can react to any change in battle. Meanwhile, mercs with only one specialty are practically useless in some situations. Like how some people don't know what to do if they get stuck in a role that doesn't suit them. Exactly. That's why a versatile mercenary who can adapt to anything is a valuable asset. Hmm, but then I'm still just an asset. It doesn't sound like that'll earn me a reputation as one of the best. For that, you just need to keep working hard and improving your skills, yeah? If you're average at everything, then that means you have plenty of room to grow. Yeah, I guess that's true. Your strength is that you can do anything. So if you keep getting better at everything and end up even a tiny bit above average, then I'd shine brighter than any one-trick pony on the battlefield. And then if you keep showing off all you can do, your name will get around and you'll be one of the best in no time. I see. Thanks. You've really given me a lot to think about. Glad to help. Though, I wouldn't really call myself first grade either. So we'll both have to keep working as hard as we can. Yeah, let's do it. We'll be the best of the best. I bet we'll even get our own special nicknames. Hey there, Ignatz. What are you up to? Oh, Claude. <laughs> I was just admiring the scenery. I come here sometimes to bask in the embrace of unfettered natural beauty. Stunning, isn't it? I find being in the environment like this to be quite calming. You can say that again. My favorite napping spot's always been right under a nice, shady tree. <laughs> that does sound comfortable. Ignatz, you always wanted to be a painter, right? Huh? Well, yes, but how did you know that? Oh, easy. I've got you all figured out, my friend. All your secrets, your worries, everything. Kidding, of course. Right. Really, it wasn't too hard to piece together. I heard you haven't always wanted to be a knight. And seeing you take in the world the way you do, there was only one possibility. You dreamed of being a painter, but gave it up before you could ever make it a reality. My father wished that I become a knight, yes. But the decision to actually do so was mine alone. That's enough of that, though. What demands our attention most in this moment is the instability both in and outside of Lester's borders. As a knight, I must do whatever I can to help alleviate the situation. You're right. The whole alliance was in complete chaos when Shahid attacked. But that's exactly why I founded the Federation, so we could overcome whatever strife came our way. I really wish there was more I could do to help. In that case, how about we send you on a reconnaissance mission? What? It's simple. You go to all sorts of different places, maybe scout out a few towns and take note of everything you see and hear while you're there. Sounds like the perfect job for you, doesn't it? 
are you sure I'm the right person for it? Of course I'm sure. I want you to travel the world, Ignatz. See the wonders it has to offer with your own two eyes. You know, I thought my dream of becoming a painter was nothing more than dust in the wind. That giving up was my only path forward in life. But you've shown me that isn't how it has to be. Once this war is over, I'll do whatever it takes to make it a reality again. As you should. What kind of dream would it be if you just abandoned ship the moment one little thing knocked you off course? Thank you, Claude. Once I'm a full-fledged painter, I'll be sure to do a wonderful portrait of you. I promise. Sounds good to me. Oh, and make sure it's extra grand so that it'll survive for centuries to come. Yes, of course. <laughs> Lawrence, I'm so glad you're awake. This is the infirmary. I see you have been taking care of... Please, you mustn't get up. They said your wounds aren't too deep. Apparently the blow to your head was the worst of it. I see. My apologies for all the trouble. To think my outing on the battlefield would end not in glory but merely in losing consciousness. <sighs> what is it, Marianne? I am perfectly all right. You needn't worry yourself over me. No. It's my fault you ended up like this. You shouldn't have saved me, Lawrence. If only I had been injured in your place. Hmm. I must have been hallucinating during the battle. What? All was well one moment, and the next I felt a sharp gaze piercing my soul. Help me, it beckoned. No sooner had I turned around than I saw you there, the very same words seeming to float across your lips. But it seems my eyes were deceiving me. <sighs> so you see, the blame for my injuries lies entirely with me. I simply assumed you were asking for my help, and thrust myself into danger to provide it. No, it's not your fault. Please, to be honest, I truly was asking for help. <laughs> my apologies for teasing you so, Marianne. But I know now how you actually feel. And I'm glad to know it was not just a hallucination after all. For so much of my life, I didn't care if I lived or died. And yet... And yet when I saw you there beside me, I realized I did care. I wanted to live. And that is good enough. Such instincts are only natural. You needn't try to justify it to yourself or anyone else. Lawrence. I thank you for opening up to me, Marianne. We will survive this war. Together. We will. And... Thank you. I'm sorry to drag you into this. It's my responsibility. And I should be handling it myself. It's all good. You clearly needed the help. Still, I always figured you'd be better at keeping your equipment in order. Oh no, I'm honestly terrible at this kind of thing. You should see the state my room is in. The more I try to get organized, the more chaos seems to creep into my... <gasps> Maria, look out! Ow. Are you all right? Oh, this is terrible. I never should have dragged you into this. What, me? I'm fine. Let's keep going. I'm serious. You shouldn't have any more to do with me. It won't end well. Huh? What are you talking about? Marianne, we're supposed to be leaving on our scouting mission soon. 
What are you doing? Sorry, I was trying to organize my squad's provisions and things just sort of spun out of control. Ugh, you always do this. Would you please just ask me for help instead of trying to do it all yourself? Yes, I'm sorry. Why don't we just head out on that mission? I can finish this later. You know what? Don't worry about it. I can handle a little scouting mission on my own. But... I think cleaning up this mess is more important. You'll help her, right? Marianne really isn't good at this sort of thing. You don't say. Just make sure you stay with her until it's done. Promise me, okay? For you, Hilda, anything. Great! I'll make it up to you later. I promise. Anyway, I've got some scouting to do. Good luck! Alright, let's get this stuff sorted. Our first job should be organizing everything by type. Okay. Whoa, hold on. I thought we were grouping all of the timbers by length. Yes, I was doing that, but then I noticed some of yours weren't exactly the same, so I divided them up further. Look, just try to keep everything simple. Three piles. One for long stuff, one for short stuff, and one for all the medium-ish stuff in between. I see. In that case, I'll set this right... <gasps> You've got to be kidding me. Ow! Again. Looks like we're back to square one. Oh no! I'm so sorry. Please, you should just go and let me handle the rest myself. No can do. I promised Hilda I'd stay here until the job was done. Speaking of which, where is she? Yes. It has been a while, hasn't it? <sighs> you worried about her? I am, actually. Would it be alright to leave this for the moment and go check on her? Yeah, sure. This pile of stuff isn't going anywhere. And besides, Hilda's far more important. Hey, when you're right, you're right. Let's go. It's just as I feared. Hilda has been surrounded. We have to help her. And this is all my fault. If I just stayed away from Hilda, she never would have... Knock off the mumbling and let's cut through that stronghold over there. Come on! Can't hold out much longer. Let's go. Listen up. I am not the woman you want to tick off today. We'll never reach Hilda in time if we can't get through this stronghold. I'm so sorry, Hilda. My crest is not 
Nothing but disaster. Huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? I just got too close to the enemy camp, that's all. Guess I shouldn't have come by myself. Next time, we'll go together, okay? Side, Marianne. And I feel the same. Knowing it was you I was saving allowed me to be brave. We did it! Thank you, Marianne. Oh, and thanks to you, too. I only hope I was of some use. Marianne seems different now that we've joined up with you, don't you think? Yeah, I'd like to think this is the real Marianne. Clear now. Wait, is that? This is the perfect chance to demonstrate how far I've come. Now, forward! Guess we weren't in the clear after all. Still, I think we can take her. can do. We won! Now we can finally go home! Thank you, Marianne. It was a group effort. Now let's get out of here before someone else shows up. Uh, I'm exhausted! I thought this was going to be one of those quick in-and-out kind of things. We're lucky we got out of there alive. So, Marianne, what were you trying to say before about your crest? Yeah, something about how people shouldn't get involved with you? What was that about? Oh, um... that... You know what? Forget it. Forget it. She doesn't have to talk about it if she doesn't want to. All I care about is that Marianne keeps smiling. Well, I suppose I do feel a bit more confident now. Since we made it home safely, it proves things can go well even if I happen to be there. Okay, thinking like that is just plain silly. I mean, the only reason I got in trouble in the first place is because I went there without you. The lesson here is that when you two are supposed to do something together, actually do it together. Exactly. All right. Hey, so did you finish that little cleaning project? Cleaning project? Organizing the provisions for Marianne's squad. Did you finish? Oh, right. That. Well, that's a big fat no. Look, Marianne was worried, so we stopped what we were doing and came to find you. So if you think about it, you're actually the reason our cleaning didn't get done. 
You were worried about me, Marianne? Really? Really? Once I imagined the worst, I couldn't get it out of my head. And it turns out the truth wasn't too far off. Oh, I'm glad you care. You know what? Don't even worry about organizing those supplies. I'll take care of it for you. You sure? You bet! I mean, it's not like I enjoy that kind of work, but I'm actually pretty good at it. <sighs> That's a huge weight off my mind. Thank you. Well, guess that about ties everything up. Oh, but you still have to help. I'm just doing Marianne's part. Plus, you promised, remember? Oh, seriously? Fine. Thank you both. I mean it. Hey, Lysithia, you have a minute? There's something I need to talk to you about. Fine. You can have one minute. I might not look it, but I'm actually pretty busy here. Don't I know it. I can't remember the last time I saw you take a break. Anyway, I'll keep it quick. It's about what happened in our last fight. Charging in headfirst like that isn't like you, Lysithia. And not in a good way. And what, in your expert opinion, makes it so unlike me? All I did was end the battle in the quickest, most efficient way possible. Which, in turn, kept damages to a minimum. If anything, you should be thanking me. It worked this time, sure. But there was a good chance it could have failed, too. You shouldn't leave things up to fate like that. If things hadn't gone your way, you could have lost your entire unit. You and your soldiers alike would be at the feet of the goddess right now. My point is, you need to make decisions based on strategy, not chance. I thought someone as smart as you would understand that. Yes, yes. That's enough lectures for today. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. But had my unit not rushed in, the battle would have dragged on for far too long. The fighting would have surely raged into the next day. We would have had to revisit our tactics entirely if the enemy changed formations at daybreak. And if things had gone south from there, it could have taken us more days further to finish the battle. I won't insist I made the right decision, but don't imply I didn't consider the possibilities. I was always fully aware that we could fail. But failure didn't even have to be an option. Sure, the battle dragging on would have had an impact on the war at large. But so what? In the grand scheme of things, your life is far, far more valuable than a few measly days of combat. Please, Lysithia. I need you to promise me you won't put yourself in danger like that again. I'm sorry. I can't do that. You know, it's not just your own life you're rolling the dice with. Every single soldier you command would die with pride by your word. So, you're saying I fail as a leader. Yes, maybe I do. Well, feel free to remove me from my post if you don't think I should be commanding troops. That's wholly within your right. Do what you will. <sighs> Until then, I'm going to do what I will. Now, if you'll excuse me. Heesh. I don't know what's up with her, but I can't help if she's going to be that stubborn about it. Either way, it doesn't seem like she's changing tunes anytime soon. Guess I'll just have to do what I can to keep her safe in the meantime. I don't know about this. Did I use too much? <laughs> hmm... I don't not like it, but I'm also not sure it smells... good, exactly? Hey, Leonie! What are you... Wait... <sighs> oh, You wore the oil! You smell so good! <clears throat> it's amazing you noticed so quickly. 
Still, it smells different from the one you were wearing the other day. Did I do it right? Oh, for sure! And yeah, that's a scent I whipped up specifically for you. I mean, I could have just given you one of mine. But I knew there was a scent out there that would suit you perfectly. So I tried all sorts of different things to make the perfect Eau de Leone. That's for you and only you. It's the only one like it in the entire world. That feels so... fancy. And while I appreciate all the trouble you went through to make it, I still don't think it's for me. I'm sorry. I feel so bad about all of this. Oh, don't worry about it. I mean, sure, it's the only one like it in the world, but it's not actually valuable or anything. I just wanted to put my heart into making something specifically for you. I think you're really special. So, I wanted you to have something special. Um... Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, it sounds like I'm proposing to you or something. Anyway, you get the idea, right? Well, in that case, maybe I'll just wear it on special occasions. Uh, that would be great. Oh hey, there's actually something I've been wanting to try with my oils. Think you could help me out? I can't very well say no after all that. Yes! Okay, so here's the plan. First, you and I each wear a different scent at the same time. Then, when we're out together, they'll mix and create an even better scent. Huh. That's actually a pretty clever idea, Hilda. I know, right? Then again, I'm not sure how I feel about the idea of our scents intermingling. Then just don't think about it. Too late. It's all I can think about now, and it definitely feels... weird. Yep, weird's the word. Well, now I feel weird. But you're still gonna help me out, right? You know what? Sure. I'm kind of curious to see how all this plays out. Hey there, Marianne. What's up? I can't get this poor thing to return to the stable. When I asked what was wrong, she said her stomach is in such terrible pain that she can't even take a step. Yeah, that sounds like a real pickle. If we could get her back to the stable, I could examine her and provide medication, but... Step aside, Marianne. It's Raphael's time to shine! I'll get your horsey back to the stable in no time. Yes, but, um, how exactly? <laughs> Easy. I'll get her onto that cart over there and push her back home. But I highly doubt she'll be willing to get into the cart given her current state. Ah, it's fine. Just leave it to me. Good horsey. Good horsey. Just like that. See? It's not such a bad cart. And here we go. Thank you very much, Raphael. I gave her medicine, so she should feel much better soon. <laughs> it seems she wants to thank you as well. Oh, you don't need to be thanking me, Horsey. I'm just glad you're feeling better. I hope this isn't rude, but I still can't believe you were able to lift a horse with your bare hands. <laughs> your little Horsey there was just the right size to wake up my sleepy muscles. So, what was wrong with her tummy, anyway? I fear she made a snack of some rotten fruit. Oof, that's rough. She's always been a bit of a glutton, I'm afraid. Still, I'm surprised she went so far as to eat something she found by the side of the road. Ah, uh, she 
was just hungry and eating what was around. Trust me, I know the feeling. I've eaten a lot of weird stuff before. Like what? Uh, I don't know. Old hard stuff, fuzzy green stuff. I think I ate some long wriggly stuff once. Goodness me, and you weren't sick even after eating all of those bizarre things? Nope. Oh, before the record, I only eat weird stuff when I'm really hungry. I wish this poor horse had a stomach like yours. Hey, if you want a strong stomach, all you gotta do is whip those gut muscles into shape. First you do a thousand crunches, give or take. Then you wolf down as much meat as you can handle. Do that, and you'll have an iron stomach in no time. Give it a few days, and you won't even notice when you eat the weird stuff. Um, I'm sorry, but I really don't think that's a proper training regimen for a horse. Hmm. Oh, that's right. Horses don't eat meat. But I'm sure she still very much appreciates your desire to help, Raphael. Oh, oh, what'd she say now? Yes, I see. Apparently, she's feeling much better and wants to go for a run in a large open field. See? She does want to work out! Come on, Marianne! The three of us are going running! 50 wind sprints around the field! Let's go! Wait, I have to run... wind sprints? So, the time has finally come to invade the kingdom. Vargas is a region with a strong tradition of knighthood. I expect a fearsome opposition. What? Are you scared, Lawrence? Do not be ridiculous. Of course I am not frightened. Why must you insist on teasing me like this? Keep a careful eye on your surroundings as we approach the border. You never know where the enemy's scouts could be hiding. We're still a ways off from the border. I think we can afford to relax for the moment. Enemy attack! What? Did the kingdom get the jump on us? No, your majesty. That flag the enemy's flying, it's General Randolph's. Randolph? That boy must hate you so much he came back from beyond the grave to haunt you. You mean as a g ghost? Oh, this can't be happening. Melissa, please calm down. Maybe Randolph's family figured out what happened and are out for revenge. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, I doubt they'd be interested in hearing my excuses. We can't afford to exhaust ourselves here. Steady on, everyone. Prepare for battle. Come on, Arval. Seriously? You can't drag me off to sleep like this when the battle's about to start. Sorry, but we need to talk. Do you remember the warning I once gave you? Well, I've been struck by a similar premonition now. Something feels wrong. Very wrong. Last time this happened, the Ashen Demon showed up and nearly sent me to an early grave. Are you telling me that's who we're facing here? Hard to say for sure. But the feeling's worse this time around. Stronger. If the Ashen Demon does appear on the battlefield today, I fear we will witness something terrible, an act far more dangerous than we previously imagined. Well, whatever's happening, I'm just gonna have to stop it. So long as you don't put yourself in any unnecessary danger, yes. Remember, your death would cut both of our destinies far too short. They're attacking from the caves and the mountains. Defeat the closest enemies first to secure the area. The enemy forces are nothing to sneeze at. Is this really just Randolph's family? Whoever they are, they're most likely after you. Everyone, do not allow His Majesty to fall. 
some of these soldiers don't seem like they're with the Imperial Army. Maybe they're mercenaries? You got my back? Come on, follow me! We'll do it together! So, they've got some mercenaries on their side, eh? I've got a sneaking suspicion I know who they hired. At least we should be able to drive them back quickly. But you attract more trouble than honey does flies, Your Majesty. Sorry, Judith. I promise I'll pay you back in full someday. Just like old times, Bulbas. Nostalgia! Yeah! It's over! We have managed to secure the area. You're done! It doesn't look like they're going to lay down their arms. What could you have us do, Your Majesty? Launch a counter-offensive? Not when we don't know the full extent of their forces. Could you all search the area and see what info you can dig up? Here I go. I'll go in front. I don't think there's any information about the enemy forces around here. Alright, here I go! Those are the scouts we discovered. I've found strength in adversity. Bastard. They might have some relevant information. No choice but to engage them. Aloise, does that mean Gerald's mercenaries are among our enemies? You did well to survive. Please, share any information you have on the enemy. The enemy general's name is Flesh, and they have Gerald's mercenaries on their side. Take a breather. <laughs> Wait, does that mean the Blade Breaker and Ashen Demon are here? Well, this went downhill fast. We need to find out where they are. We're facing the Captain's mercenaries again? No. This is no time to hesitate. I'll fight them. They've spotted me. Now I've no choice but to engage them. So... Gerald and his merry band are here after all. We could just pinpoint their location. I bear you no ill will, but it is your choice to come within striking distance. We'll do it together! even buy us any time. How am I supposed to face Flesh and the Captain now? If we assume Aloise fled in the direction of the mercenaries, then the forest may be the best place to search. Gerald's mercenaries are a formidable force. We need to find a way to split them off from the Imperial Army. I'll act as a decoy and lure out the action team. I'm counting on you all. Don't let me die. Yeah, right. You love the Federation and you want to act as a decoy? Does sovereignty have no meaning to you? I'll make the perfect decoy precisely because I am king. If you're so worried, then you'll just have to protect me. They told me my mission was to exact revenge. I suppose I'll have to earn that advance they paid me. Uh, 
The Fury! Hold on! Let me try and talk some sense into it! <laughs> How dare you point your weapon at such a pretty face? I'm tougher than I look. What do you say, Yuri? Wanna finish what we started? Sounds good. Bring it on. Would you stop being so pathetic? I know you don't really want to die here. Well, when you put it that way. I guess I would prefer not to get butchered. Hey, it's my turn. I've heard that Randolph's younger sister is also in the Imperial Army. Maybe that's who this flesh person is. And she's here to avenge her brother. Can't say I blame her. Follow my lead! Charge too far ahead. This is so dangerous. I need to fall back. That's the King of Lester. Do not let him escape. Even if this works, I don't want to engage yet. You all cover me on my way back? He purposely charges ahead only to immediately retreat. He must be plotting something. You must kill him. Please. I don't care about anything else as long as he's dead. It worked, but there's no need to try and defeat the Ashen Demon. That's like asking to get killed. This is our chance to slay the Ashen Demon. We can fight without anyone getting in our way. I lost sight of him. Where'd he go? This may be my best chance to eliminate him. Just give that girl a little assistance. What? An ambush? The way out is in sight! We must yeah. defeat them and break through! Let's wake up! Come on, follow me! We'll do it together! <laughs> Way to go. I suppose we cannot make any more gains here. No sense in sticking around. Unless. What a creep! Who was that? I was worried I was going to get a sword in my back. Hey, Judith, is everything ready? It's been ready. Now, block the entrances to the caves. That's what they were up to? Why haven't I heard anything from the mercenaries? Uh, I'll just have to do it myself, then. Flesh has finally shown her face. Take her out while the Ashen Demon's gone. I'll stay in the stronghold and defend His Majesty. Everyone else, go after Flesh. Not 
fighting back. Captain approved. Randolph, you were always there for me. I wasn't fast enough. We were too late. Not much we can do now. Your employer is dead and we have you surrounded. I think it would be wise to lay down your arms, don't you? Looks like we have no choice. Gerald's mercenaries have surrendered. That wraps up this battle. What can I say? You got us. You rolled right over us and took out our employer. <laughs> I know when it's time to raise the white flag. Wait, that's it? You're giving up? We've faced you in battle many times, only to be bested at every turn. Yeah, you've pretty much run us out of business by now. It's not easy finding new clients in the best of times. And no matter how good our reputation is, none of it matters if we can't actually win. At this rate, I'll have to stop calling myself the Blade Breaker. In that case, can I interest you in a contract with the Leicester Federation? You want to hire us? I know we've been at each other's throats since before this Federation was even a thing. But you're mercenaries. You were only fighting to hold up your end of the deal with the Empire, right? And now that your employer is gone, you're free to serve whichever side you please. There's no dishonor in working for a new client. Yeah, you should join us. I mean, by now we all know firsthand how strong you are. And sure, there might be some folks here and there who have reservations about you fighting on our side. But they'll definitely come around once they see how dependable you are. What do you say? I doubt the Empire will have any jobs for us after all of this. No better time for a fresh start. I agree. What about you, Alois? I know Lester is another enemy of the Knights of Saros. I've already made my decision. I have sworn to follow this fine captain wherever he goes. If my old allies want to come grill me over a fire, I'll just have to make myself more obscure. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> if I don't slay my foes by the sword, I will do so by the joke. Well, I guess that's that. Just tell us when we start. I'll go talk to the group and smooth things over. You two, stay here with the client. Got it, thanks. Understood, Captain. Glad to hear it. I guess we better tell the troops about our new friends here. <sighs> Captain, I can't believe we're going to be fighting together. I'm so... This is so... All right, let's just keep those tears in check, Leone. There's no need to make a scene. Why is Leone crying? Apparently, that mercenary captain trained her when she was a kid, but she hasn't seen him for years. Oh? And you must be the famed Ashen Demon, yes? Allow me to welcome you to the Federation. I'm so glad you're on our side now. You know, now that I can see you up close, you really aren't that terrifying after all. Would you mind demonstrating your power for me later? I'm curious to see if it's crest-related. And hey, if you ever need a lifting buddy, you just let me know! As you can see, we're thrilled to have you here. You know, it feels strange somehow. It's as if some part of me has been calling out to you this whole time. I'm just happy to have another powerful ally on our team. Aren't you, Marion? Huh? Oh, um, yes. It's a pleasure to be working with you. 
The pleasure's all ours. Isn't that right, kid? It looks like everyone's happy to have them on board. I guess I had nothing to worry about after all. With all due apologies to Randolph's sister, I think it's time we moved on. Hey, wait a minute. Where'd my favorite mercenary go? Sorry about all this, Arval. I know you've only been giving me your powers because you want me to beat the Ashen Demon. Don't worry about it. It's for the best, right? For all my doomsaying, everything seems to be right as rain. Recruiting Geralt's mercenaries and the Ashen Demon was the right choice. I hope you're right. What's wrong? Feeling lost now that you don't have an enemy to chase around the countryside? Yeah, I guess. I mean, the only reason I wanted to get stronger was to surpass the demon. There's no reason you can't surpass an ally. What better way to see who's stronger than to fight directly by their side? Huh. That's a good point. See, no one knows you better than me. If that's what you want, then I'll just have to help you achieve it. After all, I'm your partner in destiny. I'm here for you and you alone. Golden Wildfire. The sword swings wide. Despite Flesh's attack, the Federation reaffirms their alliance with the Empire and finally begins their invasion of the Kingdom. Seeing that Fargus is readying for battle, Claude plans for a short engagement. With a cunning scheme at the ready, his army trespasses into Fraldarius territory. Thank you for coming, everyone. Sedeth, we are grateful you could join us. I would be remiss to ignore something that so clearly concerns the Church. We are here to discuss the latest developments in Leicester, correct? Indeed. I think it's safe to say that Claude's reinvention of the region and collaboration with the Empire came as a complete shock to us all. Thus far, we have been able to dedicate our forces solely to the battle with the Empire in the West. Now we must dispatch troops to the East as well. The Federation's military force is hardly significant. We shouldn't have to divert much attention from the Western Front. I would not be so optimistic. Not after what happened in ALL. If you recall, the Knights of Saros were completely wiped out. Yes, it was a terrible loss. We didn't even have time to send reinforcements. It still pains me to think on what became of Catherine. We heard her unit encountered the Imperial Army, but the complete lack of survivors strikes me as suspicious. I see. You believe the Federation may have had a hand in the matter. Precisely. Furthermore, the territories of Burgundy, Seaward, and Albany previously wished to defect to our side, but have since reversed their positions. Perhaps their sudden change of heart can be attributed to this incident as well. If only we'd been able to welcome those houses to the Kingdom, we would have a slightly stronger position in the East. The Church initially acted as an intermediary with those houses, but I fear it would be too risky to continue now. I'm sorry. Considering their iffy loyalty, they wouldn't have been reliable anyway. If we'd taken them in, we'd just be regretting it now. That may be true, but it is yet another card we are no longer able to play. Our options now are severely limited. All we can do is hold the Western Front, and watch the Federation like a hawk to see what their next move will be. I know we are not privy to the details of the pact between the Empire and the Federation. But would it be safe to assume that the followers of Saros in Leicester have abandoned the Central Church in favor of the Southern Church? They've certainly severed ties with the Central Church, but it seems they have elevated the Eastern Church instead. Hmm. 
And the Empire allowed that? They must have figured the war was turning against them and made that concession to secure Lester's cooperation. Hmm. The Eastern Church. How is Fargus to survive when we're beset by enemies to the east, west, and even north? I think it is time we devote ourselves to finding an answer to that question. Well, we've managed to secure the immediate area. I'd say that makes our landing a success. Clearly, the kingdom was not expecting our sudden appearance this far north. They sure weren't. A certain somebody's suggestion to take the unexpected route was right on target. Technically speaking, it was my suggestion. I was just talking off the top of my head. I didn't think we'd actually be able to invade by sea. Hmm. Maybe it was off the top of your head, but I considered a myriad of options before arriving at that proposal. And we have Nadare to thank for helping us make our sea dreams come true. Oh, it was easy enough. All I had to do was secure an official order from the king. None of our merchants would dare disobey that. You managed to convince the king of Almira to sign off on this? Convince isn't exactly the word I'd use. I merely placed the paperwork in front of him at an early hour, when he might not have been fully awake. You did what now? It sounds to me like he had no idea what he was signing. It's not as if it's a big deal. We just borrowed a few boats for a bit. And let's not forget all the assistance Margrave Edmund gave us either. That's right. Being able to use his port certainly cut down the length of our voyage. I'm glad my adoptive father was able to help. Shortened though it was, I can't say my stomach enjoyed the trip. Good to see you're all as relaxed as ever. But let's get back on task. Our plan's working so far, but we've still got a lot to do. I just hope our little invitation was accepted. The Strang forces saw our movements just as we planned. They've been inspired to strike, and soon, I expect. It's possible they're already marching on Gautier territory. If that's the case, then we can't afford to stand around talking about it. We'll head out as soon as we're ready. We'll make our way through Fraldaria's territory and strike Ferdiad, the kingdom's capital. You ready for this? Come at me, no hesitation! <sighs> you actually managed to dodge that. <sighs> Not sure dodge is the word I'd use. I just let my power loose without even thinking. Guess I'm still no match for you. Give yourself a little credit. It took everything I had to keep up. If you could avoid an attack like that, then you're easily on par with me. But you barely even used your power. You know, the one that throws off your enemy's perception or whatever? I wouldn't have stood a chance if you hit me with that. So you've noticed it. How could I not? We fought about a million times by now. Your power's not exactly visible, so it's definitely tougher to catch on to than mine. But I've experienced your kind of beat down firsthand, so I'm painfully aware of the damage you can inflict. Sorry about that. I couldn't afford to pull any punches back then. It's fine. Water under the bridge. So, have you had your power for long? Where'd you learn it? I was kind of wondering if I could pick it up myself. I only became aware of it when I was fighting hard against you. But... I don't think it's something a person can learn. Even I barely understand how it works. Right, gotcha. Sounds like we're in the same boat then. Yes, just two strange people with even stranger powers. And 
I'm not only talking about your sword. Hmm? Do you ever feel like there's some sort of mysterious presence within you? Oh, uh... It's just that sometimes it's hard to tell what you're thinking. Like you get distracted by something from time to time. Almost like you're talking to someone else. Inside your head. Are you asking because that's what happens to you? No, it was just something I noticed. I simply thought I'd ask. If you say so. Oh, hey. <laughs> you fishing too? Um, yeah. Ease up, kid. We're on the same side now, remember? I know. Guess I'm just not used to it yet. We're not getting paid to kill each other anymore. We can just sit here like normal folks and catch some fish. You're a mercenary, right? For us, there's no such thing as friends or foes once that contract's paid. Yeah, I know that too. You, um, don't remember me, do you? Should I? I used to run with Burling's mercenaries. Burling. Ah, yes. That woman was an army unto herself. Yeah, but you and your company wiped us out. My captain, my comrades. Every last one of them died in that battle. So that's what this is about. You have a grudge against me? No, I don't. Wouldn't be much of a merc if I held a grudge against everyone I fought. But it was tough at the time. I really liked that scruffy crew. All of us got along, even the captain. They were the best group I'd ever been with. After what happened, I made myself a promise. I was gonna get stronger. And someday, I would defeat you and the Ashen Demon. But we're allies now, so you're gonna have to let that go, huh? Looks like it. But you know, part of me is relieved. I don't think I could have beaten the Ashen Demon anyway. Hey now, what about me? Or are you saying you could take me? Oh no, unless I try. By the way, for a regular guy just catching some fish, you haven't even got your hook on. Yeah, well, these old mitts aren't exactly made for tying tiny knots. Give it here. I'll do it. <laughs> Not half bad, kid. Thanks. People call you a legendary mercenary. But you're a lot less dexterous than I imagined. Legendary is what they call dead people. <laughs> I'm still alive and kicking, you know. Hey, and about what happened with Berlin. I'm sorry. The whole thing was just two minor lords trying to get the better of each other. If Berling hadn't come for us, we could have avoided all the bloodshed. But she came roaring in, yelling that she would take us down and make a name for herself. My kid couldn't afford to hold back at that point. I know that doesn't make it better, but I hope it helps. What's done is done. You were just doing your job. I know that. Hmm. I will need to settle this matter post-haste. Hey, Lawrence! What's wrong? If that frown was any lower, it'd be falling off your face. Hmm? Ah, hello, Hilda. Have you been sleeping enough? Your body can't survive off grumbling and worry, you know. I appreciate the concern, but I'm afraid I have no choice in the matter. As you're already aware, I have inherited the title of Count Gloucester from my father. As such, I must find a suitable partner to be my wife. It is an issue of utmost urgency. 
Yeah, that does sound like a lot. Is that why you look so crabby? I don't know, though. I don't think you need to worry. I'm sure you'll find the right person in no time. If only I had your confidence. The conditions for marrying into the distinguished House Gloucester are quite strict indeed. My partner must not only be willing to live alongside me as a proud noble, but share in the responsibilities that House leadership entails. I hope I can find such an ideal woman. Uh, but how is the situation in House Goneril? My house? Your father has chosen Holst to carry on the family name, has he not? He will soon receive the title to the house, if that is to go by. I was simply wondering what course of action you were planning to take once that happens. Well, I don't know. I mean, the stuff my brother's up to doesn't really have much to do with me. Hmm, if I had to pick, maybe I'd go traveling? I've always wanted to see the world. I'll go all over the place, taking in the sights, eating the best food Fogland has to offer. Obviously not till the war's over and everything's cooled off, though. Troubling, hmm? hmm? Quite an unexpected answer. Though I must say, earning permission from your father or host will be no easy feat. Grand adventures such as those are fraught with danger at every turn. I can only imagine the perils you might face with disease or scornful local lords. If you'd like my opinion, I believe settling down and pursuing a life of leisure much better suits your carefree personality. Maybe, but there's a time and place for everything, you know? I can travel first, then spend my days relaxing later. And besides, Holst and my dad both spoil me rotten, so I don't think convincing them's going to be too big a deal. Oh, but I probably shouldn't go anywhere that gets too hot or too cold. Extremes aren't really my thing. In that case, I know the prime location. There is a wonderful little place within Leicester borders, with boundless forests and crystal blue rivers and the most exquisitely comfortable climate. It's also rather close to Goneril territory, so your family will be able to rest at ease. Let me guess, is it Gloucester? <laughs> You're quick to catch on. It is one and the same, Hilda. <laughs> Thought so. I guess I wouldn't mind adding it to the itinerary. Wow, your painting is brilliant, Marianne. Oh, it's not anything special. Sure it is. I mean, especially since this is basically your first time. You're a natural. But me? I was born with a chronic lack of painting skill. And that's not true at all. I think your work is gorgeous. The sky and earth seem to leap off the canvas. Oh, um, you really think so? And what's more, I couldn't help but notice your ability on the horses we rode here. You overflow with talent, Bernadetta. Never doubt it. Horse thing is just because I'm a noble. They made me practice all the time when I was young. Still, I'm surprised how well it went considering I haven't been in the saddle for a while. Maybe I have some kind of hidden talent that's starting to bloom. I would expect nothing less than such an effort from you, Bernadetta. Hey, Marianne, what do you want to do when this war is over? Hmm, well, if it were allowed... I'd love to go to a forest where sunlight filters through the leaves, and read a book while surrounded by small animals. Uh, surrounded by animals? Uh, I mean, that's a lovely dream! Um, what do you want to do, Bernadetta? I'll tell you, but it has to stay between us, okay? 
I'm... um... writing a story. And I'd like to finish it. You are so very full of talent. I have such respect for you. Oh, it's not so much. But hey, I just thought of a new story. Okay, so it's about a girl in a remote forest who talks to animals and makes friends with them. Wait, isn't that... Um, yes. I totally plagiarized your life. I just thought it would be fun to turn your dream into a story. It is a book I would very much like to read. Please do let me see it if you ever finish. What? Oh, okay, Barney. Pressure's on now. I look forward to it. In that case, maybe you could actually teach me about the forest animals? You know so much, Marianne. Honestly, I'd love to just sit and talk about whatever with you. That sounds wonderful. And it's a promise. We'll talk each other's ears off. It is a promise indeed. I'm happy to have received a gift, of course. But what am I supposed to do with it? I don't even think Leone would have a use for it. But I suppose it couldn't hurt to ask. Hello, Leone. Are you meeting someone? I'm meeting you. Per your request? Please don't tell me you forgot. Ah, uh, that's right. I have something to show you. Wait, did you actually forget? Oh, who can say? More importantly, take a look at this. I don't need it and was going to throw it out, but then I thought, perhaps you might have a use for it. Throw it out? What a waste! I'll definitely take it. Truly? I suspected you might say that, but still... You gotta use things that are usable, after all. Despite the fact that it's been written on so much that it now has utterly fulfilled the destiny of all paper? Eh, there's still plenty of white space. And even if it was packed to the gills, it'd still make good kindling. In any case, if you don't need it, I'm happy to take it off your hands. Deal? Deal. All yours. Okay, now I gotta give you something in return. Let me see what I've got here. Well, looks like all I have is this dealie I picked up in the woods a couple days back. Thought it might make a good arrowhead, but it's too hard for me to flint nap properly. That... that's a piece of an ancient relic. How did you even find such a thing? Yes, well, I will gladly take it. Incidentally, would you mind telling me where you picked it up? Wow, you really want this, huh? I do indeed, Leone. Why, this is a discovery worthy of canceling my afternoon nap. Somehow I doubt that's gonna happen, but... Well, I'm happy if you're happy. And you have done me a service as well, by taking an unneeded item off my hands. It's funny how stuff like this works out. One person's trash really is another person's treasure. That is because you and I are what I would call a special pair. Care to explain that? One might say the things that matter to us are completely opposed. Even among all of our comrades, you'll not find a pair more... Well, except for... Though and then there's... You know what? We aren't so special after all. You are a very strange man, Linhart. But special or not, our relationship is perfect for disposing of unwanted items. So let's keep it up. Sure thing, buddy. Not that I have any idea what you're asking me for at this point. All right. I think we've done as much as we can today. Let's rest up and prepare for the next battle. Well, this is new. You're not usually the one suggesting we take time off. That's because there's been too much to do lately. I haven't had the chance to showcase my natural laziness. Come on, I don't think there's a lazy bone in your body. You really should take more time for yourself, Claude. 
I'll consider it. Your Majesty, an urgent message has arrived from Deirdre. Uh-oh. This can't be good. The city is being attacked by the Almyran Navy, and they're calling for any aid we can provide. What? Almyra again? After the defeat they just suffered at the throat? No. It must be someone else. I agree. These are most likely pirates who have assumed their name. Either way, they've got to have a pretty sizable force if they can attack an entire city. We should send any units that are ready to mobilize. Who do we have? My army can't spare much at the moment. To be honest, we're always a bit undermanned. Still, we might be able to send a couple of folks. How about me and Judith? You? But you're the leader of the entire army. Well aware of that, thanks. But as luck would have it, we've got a bit of time before our next battle. Besides, Judith and I know the terrain, which means we've got the best chance at ending things quickly. Going back to Deirdre will be a stroll in the park for the two of us. Still, I wouldn't say no to a seasoned mercenary tagging along. Eh? Eh? I'm not sure I follow. Really? Because I was laying it on pretty thick. Look, it's you, okay? I want you. And here I was looking forward to a little time off. Well, seeing as the king himself is making the time, how about you buck up and do the same? Yes, ma'am. Of course, ma'am. Glad that's settled. Let's go. Yep, those are pirates, all right. And they sure made a mess of the place. Time to sweep it clean. Still keeping up the act, hmm? What if a real Almiron heard you? What these sea dogs lack in skill, they make up for in sheer numbers. If we're not careful, they can easily overwhelm us. Folks are clearly as scared of Almirons as ever. Otherwise, intimidation tactics like these would never work. A sad truth for most, I'm afraid. Why, until I met Nadir, I thought all Almirans were savage, bloodthirsty beasts. These pirates aren't so tough once you get them on shore. Still, I bet there's more where that came from. You know, if Fodlin just looked outward a little more, our opinion of Almira might change for the better. Easy, Your Majesty. I know you're friends with Nadir, but that doesn't mean we should start siding with his people. Changing places? All right, take it down. Come to me. They split up. Now's our chance to raid the city and harbor at the same time. We're too short-handed to deal with them all. If only we brought more soldiers. You didn't call for me, kiddo, but I'm answering the bell anyway. Nadir, what are you doing here? I can't stand by and let a bunch of pirates drag Almira's good name through the mud. <clears throat> it's as good as ours! <laughs> This so-called Almyran Navy is a joke. Nothing but cowards and cravens, as far as the eye can see. Well, they've certainly got nothing on you. Feel free to relieve as many as you like of their duties. Gotcha! Did you 
see that, kiddo? No problem. I get all it. those pathetic pirates right out of the harbor. So they didn't get away with any of the goods? I really owe you one, Adair. Yeah, another one, actually. Now leave! Looks like the pirate leader is camped just outside the city. Then let's deal with them and finish this. All units, move out. That takes care of the pirate invasion. A bit more trouble than I expected, but we got through it all right. Uh-oh. That one's an Almiron for true. And not just any Almiron. I'm the one and only, the Dare the Undefeated. Well, he's certainly enjoying himself. I'd better dig deep or he's gonna steal all the fun. If I may, Your Majesty, I've been wondering if you have some special attachment to Almira. Lester fought against Almira for years, so I've grown to know them. That's all. <laughs> you must think I'm pretty dim if you expect me to believe that. It was worth a shot, but all right, I get it. We'll talk about it after we deal with the trouble here. Hey, kiddo. Don't you think it's about time you told her the truth? Yeah, I've been intending to for a while now. She's not the type you can hide things from for very long anyway. I'll protect you. Don't let anyone get away! Seriously, no one! <laughs> This be a lesson to all imposters. You have to get up pretty early in the morning to fool an Almiron. I think we could leave the rest of this to the people of the city. Time to be going. Nice work, everyone. Deirdre and the harbor are both safe now. We'd have been toast if Nadir didn't show up. <laughs> You've got a long way to go if third-rate crooks like that are giving you trouble. In our defense, we'd have been fine if we could have brought a few more soldiers along. I don't know, kiddo. You're good at the whole confidence side of things, but not so hot when it comes to actually sealing the deal. A man who calls himself Nadir the Undefeated says I'm overconfident? That's rich. <sighs> Cut it out, you two. This friendly banter is going to make me sick if you keep it up. You clearly know each other better than you're letting on. Say, kiddo, maybe now's the time to... you know. Ah, right. Actually, Judith, this is probably a good opportunity for me to come clean about something. I'm waiting. My mother is in Elmira, and has been for the last 20 years. Lady Tiana? Huh. Well, that's a bit unexpected, but not altogether surprising. That's where I was born, Almira. And my father... He's the king. Wait. So that makes you... an Almiran prince? I am. Sorry I didn't tell you before. Well, this certainly isn't something I expected to hear today. Still, I imagine it's not easy to bring up. So what's your deal? You don't seem surprised by this at all. Yeah, I never heard any of it directly from Claude, but I thought as much. I figured it out right around the time we fought Shahid. Oh, right. So that would have made him your brother. Different mothers, but yeah, he was my older brother. I didn't want to fight him, I really didn't. But, well, for the sake of both Fodlin and Almira, he had to be dealt with. 
Your brother thought he was doing right by Almira, in his own way. There's always been unrest in the royal family, everyone fighting over the right of succession. But that man would have been a terrible king. His lust for power just consumed him. So does this mean my little Claude is going to return to Almira and seize the throne one day? I don't know. For right now, I'm more concerned about my duties as King of the Federation. Eventually, I plan to tell everyone about where I came from. But for now, keep it to yourself. I don't want to make things more complicated than they need to be. I won't tell a soul so long as you answer me one question. Have you ever sought to deceive us? Either as the leader of the Alliance or as King? Never. Lester and Fodlin are my home, and I intend to fight for everyone who lives here. So, do you trust me? I do, little Claude, or your majesty, I should say. Just don't let me down. I won't, Judith. And thanks. The Serang army aims to strike? But we just drove them back a few months ago. The last incursion involved only a portion of their might. This may be the work of those who did not take part in the previous attack. Fortunately, it would seem their forces are few in number. Even so, we can ill afford any interference with the Margrave's work. It's been almost 14 years since King Lambert and I fought the Srang armies together. They have always been a warlike people. If they've learned that Fargus is in crisis, they would jump at the chance to take advantage of it. So then the question is, who informed them of our current difficulties? Are you in here, Boar? We've got a problem. What is it, Felix? The Federation army has invaded Fraldaria's territory. They're marching westward as we speak. The Federation? But how? I thought our eastern border was sufficiently prepared. They came by sea in giant ships and took over a port town on our eastern shore. Since when does Lester have a navy capable of transporting a full army? That's what I'd like to know. But whatever the answer, they're here now. No matter how big the ships, there are always limits to how large a seaborne invasion can be. That's true, which means they'll want to avoid any unnecessary conflict. I would expect them to march directly west. So they're going for the capital then. We need to stop them before they reach it. A job for the Shield of Fargus, if I've ever heard one. I'll go home and get ready to intercept them. Your Majesty, I ask that you permit me leave to do the same. As the former Lord of Fraldaria's territory, I cannot turn a blind eye to these interlopers. Understood. I will send you some of my personal soldiers as reinforcements. Just promise me you'll both come back alive. Hilda, did you get hurt at all? Nope, I'm totally fine. I'm super glad we won that battle today. Me too. But it was touch and go for a moment there. Make sure you're not overdoing it, okay? Is that what it seemed like? I didn't think I was pushing myself at all. I mean, you were way up in the front with me. Didn't you say you wanted to hang back and relax? <laughs> what can I say? When I saw you up there, I couldn't help but chase after you. Despite all that stuff I said, I guess I do still worry. But I thought worrying about people like me was a waste of time. Well, that's what I thought. But it turns out you and my brother are different after all. So what you're saying is... You don't think I can protect myself as well as Holst can? No, I know you can take care of yourself. If anything, you've only grown tougher lately. Look at it this way. I could cheer for you till I'm blue in the face. But if I'm stuck all the way in the back, you won't even notice. And I'd lose track of you in all the commotion. 
Yeah, I guess that's what would happen. So, how am I supposed to cheer for you if I don't get up close? But you weren't cheering. You were actually participating in the battle. Hey, it's not my fault there were so many enemies up there. They forced my hand. I'd have been in danger if I hadn't fought back. I get the feeling that you have some kind of problem with me being so close by. No, not at all. Why would I? Glad to hear it. And this way, you get to see all my valiant deeds up close. You've got to be happy about that, right? I'm not sure happy's the right word, but I'm definitely grateful for your help. You're pretty strong too, you know. You really are Holst's little sister. I can't think of anyone I'd rather have watching my back. Oh, please don't say that. I can't handle that kind of responsibility. Our win wasn't because of me or anything. You know I'm basically a weakling, right? After seeing what you can do, weakling isn't what comes to mind. But I guess you can seem shaky out there sometimes? Exactly. So shaky. That's why it's up to you to make sure I'm perfectly safe during battles. Of course I will. But aren't you supposed to be cheering me on so I don't die? I'm obviously going to do that. And in exchange, you protect me. It'd be a little selfish of you to get all that encouragement for free, don't you think? Right, if you say so. I think I've lost the thread of this conversation. That's okay. The point is, we just gotta stick together and keep doing our best. Hey, you gotta hear this! What's up, Raphael? You're looking extra cheerful today. Have you seen the looks on all the soldiers' faces lately? Don't they seem way more motivated? Oh yeah, I was wondering what was going on with that. Well, I was curious too, so I asked. And you know what they said? Is it because we're winning the war? Lots of victories always boost morale. Makes sense. Anyway, that's not the reason this time. They all said it was because of the food. You don't mean... Yep. They've all been eating the dishes we came up with. You know, with the smoked meat and the rotten food. Hey, didn't I tell you not to call it rotten? In any case, our hard work definitely paid off. And the food's great too, if I do say so myself. Right? I could eat that stuff over and over again and never get sick of it. And it's a big hit with the soldiers too. They said they actually get excited for mealtime now. Plus, it's made them fight way harder in battle. I'm really glad everyone's so happy with it. Makes all our effort feel completely worthwhile. You bet. See, food's important no matter who, when, or where you are. Yeah, back in my mercenary days, I'd scarf down any old scraps so long as I was full at the end of it. But I've changed my outlook. Honestly, I feel like I can work even harder now that I can look forward to all my meals. And I never would have gotten here without you, Raphael. Thanks. Huh. I was just thinking the same thing about you. Guess we helped each other equally. You know, I scrounged up every last piece of gold I could find just so I could go to the Officer's Academy and become a knight. But once it shut down, opening the inn was basically my only option. But then, running the inn helped me realize all sorts of important stuff too. And now I'm sure. Once this war's all wrapped up, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to become the best innkeeper in all of Boldlin. Sounds like a solid plan. But you'll probably need to up your cooking game even more if that's the end goal. Yeah, I bet I'll have to train under a real great chef to get me where I want to be. Oh, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna come up with a brand new style of cooking. Something that'll really work my muscles. 
What would that even look like? Well, I don't know. I haven't invented it yet. Whatever the case, I know what I want to do now. Hey, what do you say to tagging along with me? I think you've got a real knack for this cooking stuff. Hmm, I'll think about it. Just be ready to have me showing up at your doorstep if the mercenary work ever dries up. So you're gonna stick to being a hired hand, huh? Well, as long as that's what you want to do. Oh, but keep an eye out for an invitation from me. You'll definitely have to come over and try all the rotten food I cook up. Seriously, stop calling it that. But thanks. I'm looking forward to it, Raphael. Hey, do you have a moment? Hmm? What's going on, Ignatz? Finally leaving on that journey to see the world? No, not that. In fact, we're not going to talk about my dreams today. You always ask questions about me, but you never talk about yourself. So, I thought it was high time I asked about you. You certainly have piqued my curiosity. What? You got a crush on me or something? Huh? No! I mean, I like you, but not like, you know, in that special way. I'm joking, don't worry. No need to get all flustered. So, what did you want to know? Well, since I told you about my dreams, I wanted to know about yours. My dreams, huh? I don't really know. I've never thought too much about it. Really? Is there anything you want to do once the war's over? Just keep going with the mercenary thing. It's not like I can do much else. But we'll finally have peace. You won't have to fight anymore. Yeah, but that's all I've been doing since even before the war started. I'd just be going back to my old way of life. Killing monsters, guarding villages... There's still plenty of work even in times of peace. And who's to say some enemy from outside Fodlin won't show up? That may be true, but... Isn't it difficult having to constantly fight all the time? Every job's got its tough parts. But the mercenary lifestyle's a perfect match for my personality. I can't even imagine settling down and establishing roots somewhere. Yeah, that does sound like you. Does it now? Oh, I'm sorry. I just meant that you don't really seem like the kind of person who wants to stay tied down. You think so? Well, whatever the case, I plan on earning my keep with my sword. As long as my body holds out, that is. What about you, Ignatz? You gonna stay a knight once this thing's over? I'm not sure. I'll have to cross that bridge when I come to it. But if my duties as a knight were to end at some point, then I guess that's when I could make my dreams a reality. If I were to do that, do you think you'd like to come with me as my bodyguard? You do realize I'll be Fodlin's most sought-after mercenary by then. I'm not gonna come cheap. Oh, really? Then I'll have to work extra hard to save up some money. Because I really do want to travel with you. I'm gonna hold you to that, Ignatz. I'll be counting down the days till then. I know you're busy, Your Majesty, but do you have a moment? It's important. If it's really important, I have all the moments in the world. What's this about? There are so many possibilities, I can't even guess. As you are well aware, we've cast away Lester's old alliances and begun anew as the Federation. And we've now joined forces with the Empire to overthrow the Kingdom and dissolve the Central Church. You're happy with all that, right? Of course, Your Majesty. I would even go so far as to say I'm your greatest supporter. I appreciate that. I feel much more secure in my position as king knowing I have your support. I am fully confident you'll be able to fulfill our goals in this war.
but my question concerns what happens after that. You say you want to remove the church's authority from Fodlan and build society anew. That's right. The systems that currently bind Fodlan were all created by the church to serve their own interests. Now, I won't say they're all bad in and of themselves, but ultimately, they exist to maintain the authority of the Church of Saros. And so long as we revere them, Fodlin will never be able to move forward. Do you agree? Let me make sure I understand. When this war is over, you wish to step back and reevaluate both the existing system of nobility and our manner of faith. And you also wish to establish relations with people from other lands and those who follow other faiths. Is that accurate? Exactly. I want to knock down the walls that keep us closed in. See, I knew you'd get it. Does this also extend to Fodlin's throat? Will you throw open its gates and look to establish a friendly relationship with the Almirans? Yes, of course. It will depend on how they respond to our overtures, but that's what I'm hoping for. And what of House Goneril, a family long seen as the enemy of the Almirans? Would you send its only daughter to form a marital bond with the Almiran royal family? Is that a possible scenario? Huh? Are we talking about Hilda? Our house has no other daughters. Ah, okay, I see where this is going. Don't worry, Holst. I may be the King of Leicester, but I've no interest in also being a royal matchmaker. But what if the next King of Almira turns out to be a kind and decent man? What if Hilda even likes him? Uh, if Hilda wants to marry that hypothetical heartthrob, I'm not gonna stop her. Look, what's all this really about? Apologies. My imagination ran free for a moment. If that is what Hilda wants, then I will not stand in her way either. Your imagination's definitely still running there. I'm just as worried about Hilda's future as I am about Lester's. Maybe even more so. I completely understand. So let me just say this. I believe that both Lester's and Hilda's futures are as bright as they can be. All I ask is that you trust me. I shall take your words firmly to heart. All I ask in return, Your Majesty, is that you continue to safeguard my sister, no matter what may come. You got it. And, uh, wow, you're really serious about this, Holst. The simple joys of a refreshing morning's exercise. Oh, hey, Lawrence. Kind of early for you, isn't it? What are you doing here? In truth, I was waiting for you, Leone. I merely decided to fit in a spot of training in the meanwhile. For me? There's something I was hoping to speak to you about. Do you recall our last conversation here? You said, the day may come that more commoners begin to make their own choices, begin to live without relying on the nobility. Sure, I remember. What about it? Well, your words were quite shocking to me. I've spent no small amount of time turning them over in my mind since. If you speak true, I wonder how I, as a noble, should proceed. Huh. And? you reach any grand conclusions? Well, it is an ironclad rule of the nobility that the commoners living on our land fall under our protection. And yet, some still slip through our fingers. That is simply the state of things in today's world. In a way, you are one of them, though you did choose this path of your own accord. Hold on. Did you really have to put it like that? I didn't slip through anyone's fingers. I jumped out all on my own. Well, yes, I suppose you did. My apologies. In truth, I find it exceedingly difficult to stand in the shoes of the everyman while also pushing matters forward as a noble. But if I'm unable to do exactly that, I have no hope of preserving the stability of my territory. As such, 
I am looking to bring an exceptional commoner into the ranks at House Gloucester to act as my advisor. That's a surprise. I thought there was supposed to be some huge boundary between nobles and their people. I assure you, such a boundary still exists. But I've come to realize something of late. As we proceed into the uncertain future, more and more common folk will begin to break free of their defined roles. Such an era will be upon us before long. Your actions are proof enough of that. Whoa, slow down there. I don't think I'm some kind of great trailblazer or anything. <laughs> I've simply interpreted the meaning behind your words. I thank you for leading me to this realization. Yeah, still not seeing it. I don't need your thanks. Uh, uh, Leonie, I had this idea with your story in mind. As for the commoner I would invite to House Gloucester, the proposal I mentioned earlier, how would you like to fill that role? I appreciate the invite, really. And I know it's supposed to be this huge honor, but there's other things I want to do in life. My dream is to become a mercenary just like the captain, and I'm already on the road to making that happen. I can't abandon that. I won't. Very well. I suppose I would not want to stand in the way of your dreams. In that case, I pray you succeed in your endeavors, but I'll be here should you ever change your mind. <laughs> Good to know I have a backup. <gasps> Thanks, Lawrence. Hey, Nadir, you see that fortress over there? You think there's any way we could slip past it instead of trying to take it? I wouldn't recommend it, kiddo. You know they'd just get us from behind if we tried. Yeah, you're probably right. Come to think of it, what are you even doing here? I don't remember requesting extra muscle. Ah, don't be like that. I gotta find a souvenir to bring back, since I borrowed all those ships. Um, what kind of souvenir are you hoping to find in Fargus? In case it had escaped your notice, Nadir, the Federation Army strictly forbids plundering enemy territory. Is that so? Well, if I can't get any actual souvenirs, I'd better have some rip-roaring stories to share when I get home. If we manage to topple Ferdia, I can guarantee it'll be the rip-roaringest story you'll ever tell. But before we get there, I guess we'll need to do something about that fortress. I'm sure the King is well aware by now that we're advancing towards Ferdia. And you should know that the lord of this territory, Duke Fraldarius, is also called the Shield of Fargus. Wait a second. Didn't one of our old classmates become the Duke of Fraldarius? You know, that one guy, um, Sylvain, I think. It was Felix. There's also a chance his father, the former Duke, will be here as well. And of course, there will be plenty of soldiers inside that fort we will need to proceed with utmost caution. I can practically hear your teeth chattering, Lawrence. Don't worry, I'll protect you. I am perfectly capable of protecting myself, thank you. You just focus on your job and leave me to mine. We need to be ready for anything here. We're going all out this time, folks, so spare no effort. A head-on assault would work as well as trying to break a boulder with our skulls. We can't exhaust our troops before we hit the capital. So, we're going to blast open the gates and take them by storm before they have a chance to react. First, we'll need to secure the surrounding area to create a path to the gate for our combat engineers. Yeah, right! I want to grow even more. We've almost got the area secure. But how are we going to blast open the gates? Fire magic and barrels of alcohol. The force from the blast should... 
Well, I won't spoil the surprise. Now we should be able to proceed to the front gate without issue. Excellent. Engineers, do your thing. Everyone else, guard them while they work. The Federation is plotting something, but we'll put an end to that. It's time for our ambush. Whatever their schemes, we can't let them do it. Open the east and west gates. And clear away the enemy from the front. The gates to the right and left have opened. All who are able, fight your way inside and run riot! They're attacking the engineers. We have to help them. They're almost ready. <laughs> Talk about flashy. You blew that massive gate wide open. That blast was everything I'd hoped it'd be. But it looks like there's another gate ahead. <laughs> I won't let you take another step into Fargus. I stun it. Is that Ash? I'd like to avoid killing him if we can. I will fulfill my duty as a knight. Prepare yourself. All part of the plan. Ash, Dimitri wouldn't want you to die. If you care for him, you'll surrender. I... Okay. I give up. All right, we're gonna blast through the other gate. Protect the engineers. If the engineers fall, our plan will go up in smoke. We need more troops to defend them. I'm going out there. I don't have it in me to stand by and watch. The enemy is preventing the engineers from working. We must do something immediately. I see no reason to spare invaders who forced their way into our home. I need your strength! You got it! Let's get them! We're safe now. Is this it? Enforcements are on their way. Protect the Duke and Lord Rodriguez until they get here. Wait, that's it? It's time to swoop in and take the stronghold. Advance! <laughs> Most of them. Not much left to do now. Our comrades have fought too bravely for us to stand idly by. I hoped to hold out until reinforcements arrived. They forced my hand. Time to dive into the fray. My turn at last. You shall not take one more step towards further. Yeah. 
for me. I am still far from my best. Gotta keep pushing myself. Uh, forgive me, people of Fodaris. I have no choice but to retreat. All right. We just need to take out one more general, and then we win. Yeah! You got my back? I need your strength! Hey! You got it. Let's go! Longer. I need to escape while I still can. Great work, everyone. Time to celebrate our. Huh? Yeah. Elite soldiers of Gautier, advance! Crush the southern weaklings! Kingdom reinforcements are here. They want to fight. We're going to have to engage. Rodrigue, retreat with the Duke. I have secured an escape route for you. Leave the rest to me. Matthias, you fool. Return to us alive. Promise me. How long has it been since I've covered an escape? I've missed this rush. Risking life and limb so your friends can escape? It's hard not to admire that famous Fargus chivalry. What's the matter? Did you think Fargus's wall of ice would shatter so easily? Sorry, Rodrigue. Lambert and I will be waiting for you on the other side. And that's another victory for us. Well done, everyone. It would appear the Kingdom forces have withdrawn. I guess that means we've won. Woohoo! All right! That was some tough opposition, but we've gotten pretty tough ourselves. Really? Because it still feels like you're barely trying out there, Hilda. Do you see how much I'm sweating? I don't think I could try harder even if I wanted to. At this rate, we really will be able to mount an attack on Ferdiat. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Don't tell me you thought Claude was lying. No, it's just... I guess it's starting to feel real now. You know what I mean, right, Marianne? Yes. Let's all do our best. Uh, Claude? You don't seem all that happy about our win. Did you see Margrave Gautier's last stand? He sacrificed himself so his allies could escape. Let me ask you something. What do you think about chivalry and the other knightly virtues? I don't really have a strong opinion about it either way. It doesn't mesh with mercenary life, you know? <laughs> Fair enough. I can't say it speaks to me either. All the same. Watching someone as famed and respected as Margrave Gautier die for the sake of others. 
It was something to behold. I admire how knights are willing to sacrifice themselves for their friends without any hesitation. I really do. But it occurred to me that so long as we're fighting the kingdom with its long tradition of knighthood, there are going to be a lot more sacrifices. It reminds me just how important it is that we end this war as quickly as possible. And once we do, we have to create a world where deaths like these are no longer necessary. As honorable as that sounds, I was not aware that was our objective here. Oh, we're still doing this to safeguard Lester's future, and to free ourselves of the Church's antiquated customs. None of that's changed. But I believe that beyond all this fighting lies a future where lives will no longer have to be sacrificed. A world where everyone will be free to live however they choose. People being able to live as they please. That certainly does sound amazing. It sounds like something worth risking our lives for. If anyone can make it happen, Claude can. No, wait, I take that back. All of us can. Now that's a future worth believing in. I'll believe in it too. Well then, Your Majesty. Shall we press on? You bet. Let's go end this war. We won't stop till we reach Ferdiad. Listen well, Sylvain. You are to be the next Margrave Gautier. I expect you to stand in my stead against foreign threats and to protect your king, your people, your friends, and your family. Which, of course, I failed to do. Forgive me, Sylvain. I know I was a terrible father. So this is the part where you command me to succeed my father, right? Yes. The Srang forces are growing bolder in response to the Federation's invasion. We dare not leave so important a position as the Margrave of Gautier vacant. I respectfully accept, of course. I've been bracing for this since the moment my father departed. Ha. Huh. Me, the head of House Gautier. What will my brother say? I doubt he will have much to say at all at this point. But we will send word to the Western outposts nonetheless. Sylvain, you have my deepest apologies. It was only because the Margrave sought to secure our escape that he... Don't apologize. It would make my father's sacrifice meaningless. What he did wasn't for pride, house, or the kingdom. He gave his life to protect his friends. It was what he wanted to do. My father did whatever brought him the most satisfaction. That's how he lived his whole life. I promise you, he had no regrets. In fact, when he left the castle, he was beaming in a way I'd never seen before. But if we'd only fought with a little more skill, the Margrave wouldn't have died at all. We're at war, Felix. No matter how hard you fight, there are going to be times you just can't win. House Fraldarius fought well. The battle was so brutal that even Ash had to surrender. <sighs> Sylvain. No. All of my hatred is reserved for these invaders. This foreign threat. They take everything from us and think nothing of it. Golden Wildfire. Two Kings. The Federation army moves through Fraldarius like lightning. It will not be long until they march on the capital city of Ferdiad. However, it is unclear how the Federation forces will be able to capture Ferdiad, let alone seize control of the entire kingdom. What is the true purpose of their invasion? What is it, Arva? Hmm. Perhaps you've forgotten by now, but think back to the battle at ALL. Amidst that blazing battlefield was a man named Mycin, assisting Flesh. Do you remember him? 
Yeah, now that you mention it. It had totally slipped my mind, what with all the excitement of Gerald's company joining us. I have to say, your companions don't seem particularly concerned about the true nature of your powers. But have you yourself forgotten as well? About Tomas, and what you witnessed at the monastery three years ago. Huh. Yes, I did, yeah. I think I see what you're getting at, though. Tomas and Mycin had similar powers, and they were probably working together. Which means maybe I... and maybe your power... Is everyone here? There's something I'd like to discuss with you all. Ferdiad is already in our sights. What exactly is there for us to talk about now? Don't tell me you're calling off the attack. No, of course not. This is actually something I've been mulling over for a while now. Let's say we win the next battle and manage to get the kingdom to surrender. What's next for Fodlin? We don't have the power to rule the kingdom, nor any interest in doing so. I imagine we'd work out some sort of joint governance plan with the Empire, then negotiate the rest from there. Although, given the difference in power between us and the Empire, most of the kingdom's territory would likely go to them. Exactly. And what would Edelgard's next project be? Lester, making us a vassal of the Empire. The Empire takes control of us, and Fodlin's one big happy family again. I don't think that would come as a shock to anyone. So, what are we gonna do about it? We yank out the root of this conflict ourselves. We'll bring the war to an end on our own terms. And by root, I assume you are referring to the Central Church? I am. They're the one and only reason we're cooperating with the Empire right? The church wields their authority like some sort of righteous cudgel. The problem is, said authority was never theirs to begin with. They need to be stopped. That's the Empire's entire moral argument for this war. If they were to continue fighting after the church is eliminated, it would be nothing more than blatant aggression. But is it even possible to destroy the central church without conquering Fargus? That's why we're going straight for the capital. Dimitri's going to answer that question for us. Interesting. And what will he decide, hmm? So we're basically forcing him to sever ties with the Central Church. Ah, I see you do not need me to explain this one. Exactly. But the King of Fargus made a commitment to the Central Church when he granted them sanctuary. Decisions of that nature are not so lightly reversed. Of that I have no doubt. But if he refuses, this senseless war will only continue. The Kingdom's lands will be ravaged, its people hurt or killed. I know Dimitri doesn't want that. And neither do we. Ending this war with as few sacrifices as possible is something we should all be able to agree on. And if you do the math and weigh which option involves the fewest casualties, the answer is quite obvious. I see your point. It does sound like it would be worth trying to convince him. But would they do something so dishonorable? Fargus places a high value on chivalry after all. I don't know. But it's not going to matter unless we can actually get in a position to ask. Hilda's right. We'll have to deal with this after the next battle, and that's assuming we can defeat Dimitri and his army. As always, I'm counting on you all to get us there. Oh, there you are. Here to complain again, Lawrence? Do I look like a man who does nothing but complain? Simply preposterous. Okay, then what do you want? I'm not sure if you noticed, but I have grown remarkably stronger as of late. I've poured all my effort, nay, my very blood, into these results. And do you know why that is? 
Because you want to be more popular with women. I assure you, I have never lacked popularity with the ladies. No, it is because you threw down the gauntlet. I don't remember doing anything like that. You surely could not have forgotten. Your words ring true in my ears even now. It was something like, if you don't want people running in to save you, then you just gotta get stronger than me. That does sound like me. And I believe I responded. The day my strength surpasses yours, my noble personage will save your commoner skin and restore the proper order to this world. Did you? Yes, I most certainly did. And now that day has finally come. I am a man of my word, after all. If I could only just rescue you from a perilous spot in battle, I will have truly fulfilled my vow. So, that was a vow, huh? Yes, one I whispered into the ears of the goddess herself. Yet you seem dead set on foiling my every opportunity to fulfill it. Somehow you never stumble, never falter on the battlefield. It's almost as if you're an army all on your own. And so, despite my every intention to rush in and rescue you, the opportunity never arises. Well, what do you plan to do about this? Okay, see what you're doing right now? You're complaining again. But you've got it all wrong. The reason I don't run into trouble in battle isn't because I'm all-powerful or something. It's because I have reliable allies like you fighting alongside me. So you see, you've already fulfilled your vow. What? I... Hmm. Well, I must say, I'm quite impressed with myself. It seems I've managed to save your life without even realizing it. Which means I, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, have emerged victorious in our challenge. Congrats, Lawrence. You did good. But just so we're clear, you're not so full of it to think you're actually stronger than me, are you? Ah, throwing down another gauntlet. Very well, then. How about a little sparring session, right here and now? Bring it. But no complaining if you lose, all right? I admit this is not ideal. We should retreat and regroup. What did you expect? You practically waltzed right up to an enemy patrol. I thought if I pretended to be an ally and struck up a friendly conversation, they wouldn't notice. That's why I tried to stop you. Not even the greenest rookie would mistake you for an ordinary soldier. Regardless, it was a learning experience, so our efforts were not entirely in vain. Now let's head back before the enemy finds us. They've probably got a bunch of search parties out looking for us. We might draw too much attention if we're together. Splitting up will improve both our chances. I'm sure you'll have no trouble on your own. That's fine by me. It'll be easier for you to slip by on your own as well. Let's rendezvous in front of the nearest allied encampment. We should arrive before dawn. Got it. Good luck out there. You as well. Finally. Don't know how, but I made it back without getting spotted. Took longer than I expected, though. I wonder if Holst got back before me. Hm. Doesn't look like it. He knows this area better than me, so I doubt he got lost. Could he have been captured? Holst? Uh, what's that? Ah, oh, you made it. Apologies, I must have dozed off. I was up all night fighting. Fighting? So the enemy found you? Quite the opposite, in fact. I happened to stumble upon one of their guardhouses and figured I should destroy it. I kicked down the door, only to find myself staring down a platoon of heavily armed soldiers. 
You didn't even check before you went in? Bold. And that's when their reinforcements showed up. I had to deal with them as well. Oof. Yet, here you are, safe and sound. Safe, maybe, but completely exhausted. I probably should have looked before I leapt. That's for sure. Another lesson learned, eh, Holst? That's right. There is no end to what the battlefield can teach us, and I am a lifelong learner. Care to accompany me again sometime? Or have you grown tired of my antics? Hey, I'd be glad to tag along. I've still got a lot to learn. After all, there's never a dull moment with you around. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. I think you and I truly make the best of partners. What should I do? Something wrong, Marianne? What's up? You know, I make a great stand-in for the goddess if you're looking for someone to talk to. Oh, I... Um... Sorry, I wasn't really planning on eavesdropping. I was just passing by and couldn't help but overhear. No, I I'm the one who should apologize. Don't worry about it. So, you want to tell me what's going on? Is that a letter you've got there? Oh, um, yes. From my adoptive father. It's quite unusual for him to send me anything. <laughs> you don't seem too happy about it. Mind if I take a look? If that's not too weird, I mean. Um, sure. Here. Alright, let's see what we have here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. Now that the nobles of Leicester have moved forward with their show of unity, I believe it time for House Edmund to make its intentions clear as well. <laughs> I think I get how your father feels. Both Duke Goneril and Count Gloucester have passed their titles down to their heirs. If I had to guess, I'd say he wants to do the same with you. But the thought of me leaving House Edmund is simply too much to bear. I don't know if I'll ever become the ruler he wants me to be. Not knowing what the future holds can be pretty nerve-wracking, I'll give you that. I remember going through the exact same song and dance myself. Huh? You mean even someone like you can be crippled by worry? Yep. I'm human too, you know. Oh, but there was this one little thing I found that made all my troubles disappear into thin air. Just poof, gone. One little thing? Mm-hmm. And I think you have it too, Marianne. I do? But what is it? It's called Resolve. And I get the feeling you've lost sight of yours. What do you mean? I know all about the power your crest holds. There's no need to hide it. The only thing you need now is the willpower to back that up. So if you want help finding it, I'd be glad to lend a hand. I see. Thank you, Claude. I think I've already found it because of you. Lysithia, taking a little break. Ah, Hilda. Yes, I reached a good stopping point in my latest magical research. Wow, your dedication to that is really something else. Still, it's break time. <laughs> Do you want to chat? All right. Yes! Okay, hit me with your best gossip. Well... I heard Holst took quite the active role in our last battle. Your brother is such a valiant warrior. There truly is no end to the tales of his mighty victories. Yeah, I guess. Though honestly, I care more about him coming home alive and in one piece. 
He's the head of House Goneril now, so he shouldn't be running around like he's got lives to spare. With this war going, I doubt he has much choice. All the other nobles are relying on him. We are all envious you have such a powerful and upstanding head of your house. Your land should be in good hands for many years to come. Speaking of years to come, I haven't heard anything about who the big lug is gonna marry. I mean, it's possible he just hasn't found anyone he likes, but that only makes me more worried. Perhaps he'd have time to look if he wasn't so concerned about you. Oh well, he's popular enough with the ladies, so I'm sure he'll be fine. What about you, Lysithia? I haven't heard anything about you inheriting your family's title. Or being involved with a special someone. Involved? <laughs> no. I'm simply making my own way as best I can. Oh, you shouldn't have to do that. What about your family? I'm sure they'd give you a shoulder to lean on. My parents have already been through a great deal. I don't want to be more of a burden. Well then, how about me? What do you mean? Well, since I don't have to take over House Goneril, my schedule's clear for, um, pretty much forever. And that means I've got time to help a cutie like you with whatever. I can be your second family. Right. The thing is, I'm not sure I could do that. Ask you for help, I mean. Well, it's not like you have to suddenly dump everything on me all at once. We can take it slow. Baby steps and all that. I'm not following. Okay, so if we're gonna be our own little family, the first thing we do is try living like one. Maybe we could bunk together, or just... Uh... Ah! What are you doing, Hilda? You're such a hard worker, Lysithia. And I just wanted you to know how proud I am of you. And since I'm your big sister now, you can count on me for anything. I mean it, okay? Anything. You're treating me like a child. But I suppose I could get used to it. Oh, you're such a cutie. I can't stand it. Captain! You again, Leone? <laughs> what is it today? Seeing as you're strong as ever, Captain Gerald, I was hoping you'd train with me. Your eyes are playing tricks. I'm an old man. I'd never be able to keep up with you kids at the rate you're improving. You can't mean that. I'm nowhere near a match for you. But hearing that kind of praise from my hero makes me want to devote myself to training even more. Aren't you a little old for childhood heroes? Maybe, but I'm still happy. I worked my whole life to be a mercenary like you, after all. And now I get to fight at your side? Dreams really do come true. I'm glad. It's not often childhood dreams actually come to pass. I recall you always scampering a few paces behind me as a kid. You'd stare at me and ask all kinds of questions, even when I was clearly too busy to answer. Well, I was just hoping you'd teach me about martial arts and tactics and, and that kind of thing. Before your job ended and you left, I mean. You couldn't have learned much. I wasn't there long. Yet here you are, standing strong and tall. You have no one but yourself to thank for that. You grew up without any guidance from this old captain. I'm glad to call you my apprentice. Thank you. I promise to make you proud. And one day, I'm going to surpass you. That's my new dream. <laughs> That's the spirit. And I'm not just surpassing you, but your kid, too. 
I had no idea they were so strong. Guess the topic never came up when I was in Son. We've both been through a lot. I'm jealous about all the time you two got to spend traveling together. I bet their strength is due to your instruction. Eh, all I did was teach the basics of merc life. Natural talents likely behind the swordsmanship and tactical ability. Which means normal folks like me have to put in a hundred times the effort just to catch up. Don't sell yourself short. I wouldn't have taken you on if you didn't have talent. Your Majesty, the Federation Army has reached the eastern outskirts of Ferdiad. Already? They moved more swiftly than I anticipated. Clearly the Snows of Fargus are not a reliable ally. I was sure this attack would come at the same time as an offensive from the Imperial Army. But from all I've seen at our Western Front, that doesn't seem to be the case at all. So, the Federation Army is trying to conquer our capital by themselves? <laughs> they must think our military is totally incompetent. Well, it is true that the majority of our forces have been divided between the Western Front and the peacekeeping operations in the North. A situation most likely engineered by Claude himself. Regardless, it is preposterous to think that an army of that size could capture every castle in Fargus. Even if they were to defeat us now, their victory would only win them the capital for a brief period of time. True enough. The Lords of Fargus would converge upon them and retake Ferdiad with ease. Then that must be part of their plan. If they do not intend to hold the capital, there must be something else they seek to gain. Something that concerns the Central Church, perhaps. That sounds about right. Maybe they're trying to curry favor with Edelgard by destroying the church before the Imperial Army does. Assuming that's true, it would suggest we could avoid a battle entirely if we turned our backs on the church. But doing so would divide Fargus and lead to even more bloodshed. Is that not the conclusion we reached when this all began? It was. And that's why we're still in this war today. I understand what you mean. If our involvement needlessly spills even more blood, then our calculations were gravely mistaken. However, the Church has saved a great many people. People with no place to go, no home to call their own. The most optimal outcome would be to protect our people, our future, and the Church all at once. But, if I must choose to sacrifice one of those things, the answer is clear. I will do what I must as the King of Fargus. <sighs> your Majesty, we must act soon if we are to meet the Federation Army. I await your orders. I suppose we cannot act without first verifying Claude's true intentions. We must take the field. At the moment, we have no choice but to play the part Claude has written for us in this charade. Sylvain, don't let your enthusiasm get the better of you. If you find yourself too far ahead, fight your way back to us. I don't know what you're talking about, Your Majesty. I've got a much cooler head than you think. Rodrigue, send an envoy to Camulus and arrange for the evacuation of Lady Rhea and the others. And have the Knights of Saros, who are stationed in the capital, accompany her. Tell them they are to serve as her bodyguards. Won't well, we need them to aid in the defense of Ferdiad? For now, I'd like them as far away from here as possible. Understood. If by some chance we do find cause to sever ties with the Church. Speak no further, Roderick. Not yet. Right now, we fight to defend our capital. That is all. Look there. The Kingdom Armies come to greet us. Not the friendliest welcoming party. Even from here, I can tell they're out for blood. They must be trying to drive us back before we can surround the Royal Palace. 
Works for me. It'll be easier to fight them out here in the open than if they'd hold up behind those walls. Time to show what these muscles can do. I'll send a whole bunch of them flying! These soldiers are being led by the king himself, so you can bet they're going to be strong. I can't wait to take them on. We can't put our plan into action if we don't win this battle. Plot, it's time. All right, get ready, everyone. Let's see if a crushing defeat can get through Dimitri's thick skull. Hmm. Something wrong, Gerald? We're gonna miss all the action if we don't get going. Huh? Oh, yeah. We're not entering the capital yet, right? Nope. The Kingdom Army's come to us, so we're gonna be fighting them outside the city. Yeah, hey, you don't think Lady Rhea's in Ferdiad anymore, do you? Can't imagine she would be. I mean, the church is operating out of a different city entirely. Never took you for a man of faith, though. Oh, no, it's nothing like that. I've just got a past with Lady Rhea, one I don't want becoming my present. But that won't be a problem if we're fighting outside the city. Now, let's get out there and win this thing. We need to take out the enemy commanders and secure the surrounding strongholds. Let's get the capital surrounded, folks. Remember, we're up against House Blathid's elite royal guard. Don't hold anything back. Ah, uh, how many years has it been since I was last in the capsule? I would love to visit again sometime to continue my studies in magic. We cannot allow the enemy to surround the capital. Take back the strongholds around the outskirts. The enemy is already on the move. We must stop them from recapturing the strongholds. We require reinforcements. Send our fastest horse to the lords of every territory. Got it. There are so many historical buildings in Ferdiad. I wish I could visit them instead of lay siege to them. Follow me, everyone. We will recapture the strongholds. Oh, but do not endanger yourself, Alette. Ferdiad is our home. We'll protect it with everything we've got. How nice of them to open the east and west strongholds for us. Take down the enemy generals and breach the walls from both sides. There are most likely other soldiers lying in wait. We'd be wise to place a guard around the strongholds. The Kingdom Army doesn't appear to be at full strength. They must have sent a lot of their troops to the Western Front and to Srang. I will not allow you to wreak havoc on Fargus a moment longer. It will be difficult to recapture the strongholds now. I'll protect you. Don't let anyone get away! Seriously, no one! I can fight no longer. I must withdraw. I'm fighting for the safety of my people. That 
You will go no farther. Breather. You won't have your way. Sylvain. Now is your chance. Guess it's finally time I got out there. You're dealing with me now. Well played. We'll be like rats in a trap if they retake those strongholds. Deal with them quickly. Taking this place while well, I'm here. We can't let this stronghold fall. This stronghold must not fall. Send out the combat engineers. will be a bust if he takes back those strongholds. You have me, right? Finish them, Hippo! myself. Don't if I don't come back in one piece. We managed to drive him back. At least we avoided the worst case scenario. Hey, it's we my turn. We've most of the enemy commanders. Capture the remaining strongholds. Got them surrounded. I wonder what they'll do now that a counteroffensive's off the table. Somehow, I sincerely doubt this will be enough to make Dimitri surrender. Fall back, everyone. I will handle the rest. All right. Take a breather. Anyone who dares lay a finger on this city. Wow. That guy's gotta be the strongest warrior Spargus has to offer, right? Seems like a worthy opponent.
seriously, no one? Danger, dear Hilda. Lawrence Hellman Gloucester would never miss the mark. Sorry, friend. Had to. You and I both know I could never take you down in a fair fight. <laughs> Dimitri appears to have withdrawn. Does this mean we have succeeded in containing the Kingdom Army? I sure hope so. There'll be serious casualties on both sides if we have to go in for a direct attack. I know. At least we've done a good job setting things up. Now we just have to finish surrounding... Your Majesty, there's an emergency! What is it? An attack from behind? It's an urgent message from home. You're ordering a full retreat after we've come this far? We're one last push away from achieving our objective. You think I don't know that? Listen, we've got an emergency on our hands. I hate this too, but Lester is in grave danger. If we don't turn back now, we'll be too late to stop it. Having to retreat right on the brink of victory? It's like our assault on Berkeley's territory all over again. Wait, too late to stop what exactly? Lysithia, Ordelia territory is right at the center of the crisis. And it seems like things are already spreading from there. What? But that's... The Empire wouldn't attack us. And I can't imagine Almira would either. We do have other enemies, remember? I don't know why they're attacking the Federation, but that doesn't matter now. We have to fight back. Other enemies? Could it be? No, it is too soon to speculate. We have been forced to take refuge inside the palace, exactly as Claude wanted. And now comes the siege. When do you think they'll send over an envoy? It'll be hilarious if it turns out they really do want to occupy the capital. I seriously doubt that's what they want. But maybe we should send word to the Western Front, just in case? That's not a bad idea. If we are willing to lose a little ground over there, we should be able to spare some troops. And perhaps it is time to alert the other lords of the kingdom as well. I have a report, your majesty. What is it? Has Claude sent his envoy? No. The Federation army appears to have withdrawn. Wait, what? There's no way they'd do that! They almost had the entire capital surrounded. All they had to do was keep fighting just a little longer. Their camps are already deserted. They seem to have left for the port in Faldarius. Their retreat appears to have been a hasty one. They abandoned quite a significant amount of supplies at their camps. So what's their game? Are they trying to make us think they've pulled out so they can lure us into a trap? They were already in a position to win without such artifice. I haven't the slightest idea what this is meant to accomplish. Something must have happened in Leicester. That is the only reasonable explanation. Golden Wildfire. Darkness Attacks. After securing an initial victory at Ferdiad, Claude prepares to negotiate with Dimitri, but then word of an alarming crisis back home forces the Federation army to retreat. The glimmer of hope that the war was nearing its end has been snuffed out by those who seek to spread chaos and destruction throughout Fodlan.
We made good time coming this far, but we should slow our march. We're coming up on the affected region. You've probably all heard what's happening by now, but I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Several days ago, there was a sudden spike in bandit activity within Ordelia territory and the neighboring Imperial territory of Frim. The bandits have attacked rural villages and larger towns alike, ransacking them repeatedly. House Ordelia fought to restore order, but the attacks have increased to the point where we can no longer contain them. These territories were completely secure before we launched our invasion. How did things change so quickly? We don't know what's motivating the attacks, but survivors claim to have spotted some suspicious figures working alongside the bandits. You mean people like Tomas and Mycin? Exactly. I've actually received some confidential information from Edelgard about them. Those who slither in the dark. At least that's what the Empire calls them. They can shapeshift, they command dangerous powers, and they influence events in mysterious ways. In short, they bring chaos to Fodlan. I was under the impression that the Empire found their hideout and purged them all. Yeah, well, some of them escaped. Lord Arendelle, their leader, seemingly up and vanished. And no one's caught so much as a glimpse of Tomas since he fled from Garrett Mach. <laughs> In light of the circumstances, I am afraid I must ask. Do you know anything about this? Sorry, not a clue. Honestly, I'd like to interrogate them myself. See if there's any connection between us. Yes, I am sure you would. Forgive me, it was a boorish question. But there's no way you have anything to do with them, right? Well, your powers are similar. Maybe we'll find out more in the battles ahead. It's entirely possible that you came into contact with them when you were still too young to remember. Yeah, maybe. Guess I should take this opportunity to learn what I can. I know we're all dying to find out what their endgame is, but restoring order comes first. The flames of unrest are already catching in neighboring regions. We'll have a full-blown catastrophe on our hands if we ignore it. This is why we had to abandon our battle with the Kingdom. We need to stomp this out, and fast. For all you know, you could be a part of those who slither in the dark. It's entirely within the realm of possibility. And yet, not a single one of them seems to be considering that. Just look how much they trust you. Oh, it's the captain. Yeah, handle it any way you want. This should be an easy job for you. I'll report back when it's done. Sounds good. We're gonna take care of some other matters in the meantime. Uh... Why are you making that noise, Leone? You got an upset stomach or something? No, I don't. <sighs> you know how the captain and his mercenaries joined forces with us? Yeah, I'm so glad you get to fight with him again. Oh, wait. This is the first time you two are actually fighting together, right? Yep. I haven't seen him since we parted ways when I was a kid. I've never been in a battle with him or anything. So, yeah, I'm happy, but... No! I can't take it! Wait a minute. Is this about his kid? Yeah... Though we're practically the same age. But only one of us has the captain's full confidence and a cool nickname. We're both mercenaries for crying out loud, and I was the captain's first apprentice. But you're not family. You can bet that Gerald would have trained any child of his from birth a whole lot longer than you. Ugh, you have a point there. And if you want to talk about age, Alois has been with him since their night days. 
Which means it's likely that he was actually Gerald's first apprentice, right? Hey, you're right. I didn't even think about that. In any case, it's kind of a given you wouldn't be on the same level. I mean, they haven't just studied under Gerald. They've had years of on-the-job training with him. Plus, you don't have any weird powers. You mean like you do? Yeah, but our powers are completely different. To be honest, I want to best the Ashen Demon too. I've been striving to do that this whole time, but still haven't managed to pull it off. Is that right? You know, even if we teamed up, I'm not so sure we'd win. I don't know about that. With the two of us together, I think we might actually have a shot at it. In fact, I think my money would be on us. Want to set up a challenge sometime and see what happens? I'm all for it. After all, the captain has a saying. Better to fight dirty and win, than play fair and lose. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Gerald. For a mercenary, all that matters is the outcome. Exactly! You know, I'm really glad you're here. Same goes for you, Leone. Now let's stay sharp and show the Ashen Demon up our own way. <laughs> That's hilarious! Who knew there could be a merc like that? Yeah, he'd say it with a completely straight face, too. I take my pay in apples. This guy would storm onto the battlefield, lugging around a sack full of apples. <laughs> Truly one of the strangest things I've ever seen. I guess you could say he was hungry for battle. <laughs> Wish I could have seen that myself. He was probably the best-smelling guy out there. I'll give him that. That reminds me. Remember when you asked about my past? Yeah, sorry if that was out of line. I shouldn't have pried. No, it's okay. Actually, I thought I would tell you, if you're still interested. Are you sure? I'm sure. It's not much of a story anyway. Besides, it's already been seven years. I used to belong to an organization that was less a group and more like one giant mercenary state. Not the kind of place you go for building bonds of trust and camaraderie. Still, there was one person there who I thought of as a partner. As you can probably guess, he was killed. And that was that. Yeah, that's how these stories always end. I know it was a long time ago, but I'm really sorry. But why'd you want to tell me all of a sudden? I thought you hated talking about your past. I felt a little guilty. You shared your story with me earlier, but I didn't tell you mine. At the time, I wasn't about to go telling some stranger all about my past. But now I think you're at least somewhat trustworthy. So I told you. That's all. Seriously? Well, I'm really happy to hear that. Especially from you. Why? Everyone here adores you. I'm sure you hear stuff like that all the time. All the time? Come on, that's an exaggeration. I've always felt that you were a more distinguished mercenary than me. Earning recognition from a merc I respect is a real honor. So if you see me as some sort of senior mercenary, I guess that makes me the mentor in this relationship. Uh, I guess. I see. All this time I've been treating you like an equal, but maybe I should have been taking you under my wing instead. How would you feel if I took you up on that? Seems like fun. Yeah, well, you know what else is fun? Any person I mentor has to pay for drinks. All of them. No way! What kind of deal is that? <laughs> Just a joke, sorry. I have no intention of treating you any different. I should have known. 
That's why I like you, Shamir. Hmm. Yes, that should do quite nicely. And how are you faring, Hilda? Already over here. I couldn't make any fancy dishes, but since we're just throwing this thing together in our spare time, folks will just have to deal with it. Exactly. The quality of the food isn't the point of a feast like this. It's about sharing a celebration over our recent victory. You had quite the showing out there in the battle, my lord. There is no one in the entirety of Fodlan that can hope to best you. I wholeheartedly agree. It would be my great honor to have even a modicum of your skill one day. But my power alone did not win the day, friends. This victory belongs to us all. Holst really is incredible. I mean, despite what he says, he basically won the last battle all by himself, which makes him the man of the hour, again. He's earnest, hardworking, and full of talent. The opposite of me in every way. Now, let's get started. Today, we feast in honor of a person who was instrumental in our victory. My sister, Hilda Valentine Goneril. Huh? My lady, I thank you on behalf of all my soldiers. We'd not be here now if it weren't for your quick thinking and deft action. There are no words to express all that you and your brother have done for us. Huzzah! Okay, what's going on? I thought you were the guest of honor at this little get-together holst. Whatever do you mean? This feast is all about celebrating your actions in our last battle. But I didn't do anything. I just ran to the front line, hacked a few guys, and then pulled back. At which point you saw an enemy giving chase and laid him low, yes? Are you aware that person was the enemy commander? The moment you dispatched him, his forces crumbled. We then pressed the attack and enjoyed swift victory as a result. Really? He didn't seem very impressive. I mean, the guy went down in one hit. How tough could he have been? <laughs> it sounds like you still don't know just how strong you are. Your brother aside, there is no one in House Gonril who could stand against you, my lady. Hear, hear! We all rely on you and will continue to do so into the future! Not gonna lie, it was great having everybody shower me with compliments, but... I still want to know why you threw a feast for me in the first place. You could have just patted me on the back and told me good job and I would have been happy. You're always putting me on a pedestal, Hilda, but you never appreciate your own accomplishments. I want you to be prouder of yourself. I want your degree of pride to match your level of strength. Also, I want everyone to know how great you are. That's why we have the feast. A shame it was so small, but the next one will be a true banquet. And who's going to put that together? Considering I basically did all the prep for this one. Well, if I can get the ingredients together, I'll treat you to my specialty next time. Isn't your specialty made from whatever you find lying by the side of the... Look forward to it, dear sister. <laughs> <sighs> there you are, Ignaz. Oh, Lawrence. I find the beauty of this place to be so relaxing, don't you? Yes, I must wholeheartedly agree. It is marvelous. As are you. Not only are you a knight of House Gloucester, you have even taken on the role of a general within this army. To be honest, when first we met, I could not see you as anything more than a mere merchant's child, who happened to be gifted with a better eye than most. <laughs> That's 
probably all I really looked like back then. But now, you've grown so capable that I regularly mistake you for someone else entirely. That's nice of you to say. But I still have a long way to go before I'm where I want to be. Do you remember your time working as a knight in my territory? And back before the war began? Compared to then, you are practically brimming with life now. Especially as we march from locale to locale. You really think I'm that different? I always thought you not fond of battle. Hence why I find this reversal so very puzzling. Well, it's because... Uh, I confess, I've been painting. Whenever I've had the free time during our marches, that is. Is that so? Yes. There are so many places in Fodlin just like this one, with the most incredible views. I simply can't help but put them down on paper because, well, I want them to stay with me forever. Maybe that's why I've been looking so alive lately. You certainly see straight through me, in any case. <clears throat> I... I'm sorry, Ignatz. Huh? About what? I granted you a position as my knight because I thought it to your benefit. But I see now that your heart lay somewhere else entirely. Hearing you talk about art with such passion, such fervor, it fills me with regret. Oh, you don't need to apologize. If anything, I should be thanking you, Lawrence. You should? What have I done to earn your gratitude? When the Officer's Academy shut down, I was lost, deprived of my purpose in life. But then you came and offered me the job as a knight. Everything I experienced in that role has given my life new color. And I don't think I could do without. I see. So no matter how I live, no matter what I paint, there will always be that one hue that reflects my duty as a knight of House Gloucester. That will never disappear. And I couldn't be prouder that it's there. I too am proud, Ignatz. Proud to call you a knight of my house. And a friend. Hey, I was looking for you. Didn't think I'd find you down by the river. That's an awful lot of blood on your cloak. I thought soaking it in the water would help get it out. I don't know. That fight went on for a while. And blood doesn't come out so easily, even if you start washing it right away. If you ask me, it's more trouble than it's worth. You have another one, right? I do. But I'd still like to use this one if I can. <sighs> Something wrong? Hmm? Oh, sorry. It's just, you reminded me of Citri, of your mother, back when we first met. How so? There was this one time when she was trying really hard to get some stains out of a handkerchief. She had your same quiet composure and everything, and when I asked her if she had another one, you know what she told me? She just turned and said, if I could still use this one, I'd rather not throw it away. Well, that's not exactly the same. Maybe not. But I still see so much of her in you. When I was first getting to know her, I never saw her laugh or cry. Just like someone else I could mention. You know, you never really used to talk about her, but you've been doing it a lot lately. Why is that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm feeling a little regret for dragging you into the mercenary life. You've never had a place to call home, and you don't have any friends your age. And it's been one bloody battle after another since this war broke out. If she were still alive, your life would be entirely different. You'd be with her, and things would be peaceful. I don't regret my life here with you. 
I might not have a home or friends, but you've always been there for me. Living by the sword suits me just fine, and I've had no shortage of allies. So... You're right. There's no cause for regrets. You really are just like her, though. You know that? Get all of them? Ugh. Oh, that's the trouble with poachers. You never quite know where they are. Well, we've hit every likely hideout, so I'm guessing we cleared them all out. I'm glad you were here, Leone. You really know the lay of the land. Well, Sawin is my home. But you've been here before too, Captain. Sure, but that was a long time ago. And I don't remember it all that well. Ill news, Captain. Another group of poachers has taken hostages from a neighboring village. These people are a disgrace to poaching. Saying so makes it sound like you believe there was some honor in the activity to begin with. These hostage takers must be friends of the poachers who were just here. According to the people of the village, they were involved in kidnapping as well as poaching. They made it sound like more than a few people have been taken from the surrounding villages recently. Saw on too? Yes, they said there was one. Oh, it makes me so mad. These folks sound like bad news. We better do something before these new victims are dragged off and never heard from again. House Gloucester's orders were to deal with the poaching issue in Sawin. We did that. Our work is done. How can you be so cold? If you see someone in trouble, you help them. That's just basic decency. I don't see anyone here, do you? You know what I mean. Easy, Leone. The kid was just stating a fact. I'm sure no harm was intended. How could you possibly raise such a cold and unfeeling person, Captain? I wasn't always the best dad, I admit. Uh, perhaps we should shelve this conversation for now and determine our next move? Plenty of villagers helped me out the last time I was in this neck of the woods, so it's only right I pay it back. Plus, I'm not just gonna sit by while poachers run wild in my apprentice's home turf. Captain! But we can't linger long. We track down the bad guys, free the hostages, and go home. Got it? I knew you'd do the right thing. You don't have any connections here, so it's your call if you want to pitch in or not. Nobody will think worse of you if you decide to duck out on this little goose chase. Yeah, I'll come. I wouldn't want anything to happen to Leone's home. Good to know I can count on you, at least. I'm sure you'd manage without me, but many hands make light work and all that. Then let's roll. Leone, you're in charge. Leave it to me, Captain. Now, enough deliberation. The time has come for plain old liberation. Uh, sure. Right behind you. The hostages must be further in. Maybe we can draw the bad guys away from them first. A fine plan, Captain. Once we've done so, we can easily rescue the hostages. Here we go, then. Let's make some noise and get their attention. How many decades has it been since I was here last? Where does the time go? I know what you mean, Captain. Though not literally, of course, as I don't believe I was with you at the time. Experience leads to strength. We were dealing with poachers the last time we were here, too. Remember? Can't say I do. 
My turn. Wait, now I remember. None of you were with me the last time I came here. That makes sense. She would have been too young, and I was with the Knights of Seros. them out. Now's our chance to rescue the hostages. Okay, let's take care of any enemies who held back and rescue those hostages. Guess we should mop up the rest. Of them, huh? It's my turn. Please, Captain. When I first met the captain, I was a weak little village girl. And now I'm a mercenary. I really have come a long way. You? Weak? That's hard to imagine. I think of you and Leone as my siblings. All of us were raised by Gerald, after all. Which would make you... What, Alois? Our older brother? They sure put up a fight. But the Gerald School of Warfare remains undefeated. My I turn. didn't realize Gerald was into strategy. Always struck me as more of a hit him until they stop moving sort of guy. Oh, so he's strategic when he needs to be. Underhanded, even. He does whatever it takes to win. Hey, you're Leone from Sawin, right? Wow, you've really grown up. Thanks for the help. <laughs> I'm surprised you recognize me. Though maybe I don't look all that different. Looks like everyone from the village is okay. Just have to get them to a safe place now. Way we're just gonna let you walk out of here. Get out! I almost admire how persistent they are. The hostages are in danger! You know what to do. The killing blow! Ah! It ends here! My turn? You've become quite the mercenary. Seems like only yesterday, you were just a little kid. I know it seems like yesterday to you. But I've done a lot of living since then. You're done! Was it too much work taking me on as an apprentice? Nah. I mean, it's I gotta turn. do something to build the time, right? You know, you were a pretty good apprentice. No matter how much I rambled on about this or that, you still hung on my every word. Well, I didn't know how to write. So the only way to remember your lessons was to concentrate as hard as I could. I think we're about done here. Get them where they're weak and be done with it. Wasted energy benefits no one. Another of my lessons, and a founding principle of the Gerald School of Warfare. Come to kill some poachers in the name of justice, huh? Well, you meddlers should have minded your own business. That must be the leader. Let's make him pay. Reminds me, how's your old man? As poor as ever, but he's healthy and happy. I remember how the two of you used to drink until the sun came out. <laughs> you got my back? Let's show him how mercenaries fight. I'm gonna follow your lead. 
We did it, Leone. Okay, now we're really done. Let's beat it. Yes, sir. I told jokes to the hostages as I delivered them safely back to their villages. You could say I had a captive audience. We've restored peace to this whole area, Captain. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Mergs like us are only supposed to work for pay, but a freebie every now and then won't kill me. Yeah, I would have regretted it if I'd gone home. Thank you for doing the right thing. I just followed orders, that's all. Well, I'm thanking you anyway. Now the villagers can live in peace. I was supposed to stay here and be a hunter with my father, you know? But once I met the captain, I knew I had to try and make it as a mercenary. My father and the rest of the village always supported me, before the academy and after. It's been a long, strange path, but I finally became a mercenary and was able to help my hometown in the process. I don't think I've ever been happier. It feels like I've repaid some debts, although not my actual debt from school. Still working on that one. I'm glad we helped you give back, instead of helping to give you back. Alois, you mind reporting back and letting Count Gloucester know what happened? Oh, and, and don't forget to grab the reward money. Understood. I will away at once. Leone, why don't you run along to Sawin and let everyone know things are good now? Tell him I'll stop by later. I will, Captain. Thank you, again. You two should head back to base. I've got to pay my respects to the village elder and Leone's old man. Probably won't make it back until tomorrow. You expect them to throw you a feast, don't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, yeah. That's why you sent Leone ahead so the villagers could prepare for your arrival. I mean, you got rid of the poachers and now Leone's telling them you're on the way? You're practically begging them to serve you up a fancy meal. It's not like that. Although, if I get there and they just happen to have a feast ready, it'd be rude to refuse. And poor Alois doesn't even get to join in on the fun. Shame. Hey, that guy hasn't had a drink in years. He's not missing anything. Now then, this is an evening for grown-ups, so you kids get on home. If anything comes up while I'm gone, you can handle it yourselves. Well, time for me to set off. Ah, there's nothing like that first drink after playing the hero. I'm impressed with your old man. That's a savvy move right there. I'll have to follow his lead someday. You would emulate him? Eh, probably not, now that you're asking. Well, guess us kids should shut up and head home. Maybe hold hands so we don't get lost. Must we hold hands? Only joking. I swear, the only thing duller than your blade is your sense of humor. We've dealt with bandits before, but this is worse than anything I could have imagined. Indeed, the damage done to the larger towns was upsetting enough, but the horrors unleashed upon some of the villages borders on the unspeakable. We saw entire fields trampled and destroyed, whole villages burned to their foundations. Attacking innocent civilians like that. It's inhuman. How could anyone be so cruel to torment people like this and then walk away laughing? It's horrible. I'm convinced that those who slither in the dark are behind this, pulling the strings. 
It makes perfect sense, seeing as they already know Ordelia territory so well. What do you mean? Many years ago, the Empire accused House Ordelia of participating in the Hrim Rebellion. This was just an excuse to begin meddling in our affairs. During that time, they sent a group of strange mages into Ordelia territory. Everything about them felt wrong, from the way they looked to the powers they possessed. It was clear they weren't regular people. Are you saying they were really those who slither in the dark? I believe so, now that I look back on it. Though it's not exactly a memory I care to relive. And now they've wormed their way into Ordelia and Hrim territories again. This is just a guess, but their base of operations could be somewhere near here. Do you remember ever having lived in this area? Yeah. My mom and I spent a few years in a mountain village somewhere in Ordelia territory. But she wasn't born there, and I don't know where she lived before that. Hmm. There could be a connection there. Or maybe it's nothing. Either way, dealing with them needs to be our top priority. We gave them this opening. They never would have been able to take advantage of us like this if we hadn't been at war. Just another reason why we have to end this conflict as quickly as possible. We have to ensure nothing like this ever happens again. Hey, Claude. Oh, Hilda. What's up? Ugh, don't ask. It's just been one meeting after another lately, and they all drag on forever. What, bored of them already? Can't say I disagree with you there. But we've taken the Alliance in a brand new direction as the Lester Federation. Of course, not everything has to change, but the things that do need to get decided soon. So it's only natural we have so many meetings, right? I know, I know. But if you ask me, these are more of a hassle than any round table ever was. Honestly, Claude, I never thought you'd end up as our... King. It's kind of weird, you know? Well, I had a lot of opinions coming at me from all different directions. And this ended up being the solution I came up with. Hard times like these call for more than the round table was ever capable of. We need a fierce leader willing to face the world. I get what you're going for, but having that leader be a king... I don't know, it makes me uncomfortable. I get it. But trust me, everything I'm doing right now is what needs to be done. Hey Claude, is this really what you wanted? To be the king of Lester? <sighs> you always struck me as the kind of guy who went wherever the wind took him. A free spirit. Someone who would find someone else to lead and nag them into taking the job. But right now, I get the feeling that your role and everything that comes with it are keeping you tied down. No, I wanted to rule. I'm sure of that. But I didn't realize that's how you saw me. Claude, you're not alone. We're here for you. Yet off you went, taking the throne all by yourself. Were we just getting in your way? Of course not. It's honestly because I have you all that I was able to make that decision. I know I'd never be standing where I am now without the support each and every one of you has given me. <sighs> if that's true, then you shouldn't be so afraid to ask us for help. I'm more reliable than I look, you know. Right. I'll be sure to take you up on that, Hilda. I mean, I did think I was already doing it, but I guess it wasn't enough. Oh, definitely not. You've got a lot to learn from me, Claude. I'm practically an expert at relying on people for help. Nobody tops you in that regard, that's for sure. 
I'd be honored to have you as my teacher. Well, if it isn't the Honorable Count Gloucester, you're looking quite busy today. Ah, Lysithia. Indeed I am. As Count, I now bear the great burden of ensuring those who live within my territory are safe and prosperous. Such a vital matter requires my leadership in diplomacy, military efforts, and economic measures. Yet I will gladly handle them all to protect my people. Your burden as a Count, huh? Precisely. Hilda's older brother, the Venerable Lord Holst, is also making great strides as the new head of House Goneril. I even hear Margrave Edmund is preparing to hand succession of his title off to our dear Marianne. Yet, now that I think about it, I've heard not a word regarding the future of House Ordelia. <sighs> when will you be inheriting your rightful title, Lysithia? I... I have no intention of doing so. House Ordelia will end with my father. I see. May I ask your reasoning? My parents have been subject to one horrible experience after another for decades now, precisely because they are nobility. So I want them to be able to live out their golden years at least, in a little bit of peace, without the responsibilities of the house tying them down. Yet, they would lose everything were the territory to fall into chaos after they vacated the leadership. I'm doing everything I can at present to make sure our people continue to be safe and fulfilled, even once my parents are gone. Hmm. You needn't keep all your worries to yourself, Lysithia. I am always here to extend my aid. Please. Come to me if you ever need anything at all. You must not be afraid to rely on others, you know. There is no shame in asking for help, especially when it comes to such important matters as one's family. It's not like I'm ashamed or anything. Lysithia, if you ask me, I believe you should take the title of Count Ordelia for yourself. You act now for the well-being of your parents, Yet you do not let that cloud your concern for the common folk of your territory. Is there anyone better suited for the role than you? In my eyes, no. <sighs> Something tells me there is another reason, your parents aside, that you refuse to inherit the title. <sighs> Which is exactly why you must turn to your companions for advice. We are deserving of that much trust, at least, yes? After all, we are all working together to stop this war. Relying on us is the first step to solving your problems. More than anything, I, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, will do everything in my power to assist you. Fine, fine. But can we leave this discussion until after the war? In the meantime, I'll just have to keep an eye on you to see if you're really as dependable as you say. Very well. You may witness my dependable nature to your heart's content. <laughs> I hope I have the time to. Thank you for all of your help again today. I was happy to do it. <gasps> Bring me more hay for eyes? That's so rude! I'm sorry, Ignatz. I fear she's getting a bit too familiar with you now. <laughs> I'm just glad she's getting used to me. Although I probably could have done without that Four Eyes comment. Ignatz, why have you continued helping me care for these Pegasi? Surely you have enough to paint your picture now, yet you continue fetching hay and mucking out stalls. You're probably right, but this is for my dreams. You remember the painting you picked up before? Well, I created it to resemble the Pegasus I once rode with my mother when I was small. You rode a Pegasus with your mother? Yes. I heard she was a Pegasus Knight a long time ago, and when I showed interest, she took me for a ride. 
The moment we took off, I got so scared I buried myself in her sleeve and missed the whole first part. But once I finally managed to pry open my eyes, the view was breathtaking. I saw the whole of Lester spread out before me. It stirred something in my heart, and I... I wanted... You wanted to become a painter? I wanted to become a Pegasus Knight! Ah, uh, but that was just one of my many silly childhood dreams. Plus, after we landed, my mother told me that Pegasi don't allow adult men to ride them. So that pretty much nipped my dream in the bud. I see. But while I may have been forced to give up that dream, I can be anything I want in my imagination. And by interacting with Pegasi like this, it's easier to imagine myself soaring through the sky. You clearly still hold dear the desire to ride one. Even if we weren't speaking of it now, your passionate feelings resonate throughout your paintings. What? You can... sense my feelings? Yes. I can easily tell how precious you consider Pegasi. Oh, that's what you meant. And if this one understands how you feel, then maybe... just... Maybe, she will permit you to ride her. But isn't that impossible? Normally, yes. But she's very used to you now, and honestly, I'd really like to see it. I would dearly love to see your dream finally come true. Well, if you put it like that, I can't very well say no. Hello, Pegasus. Will you please deign to carry your new friend, Four Eyes, up into the sky? <gasps> no! I take it back! I take it all back! I want it to fly, but not like this! <gasps> oh dear, I thought she'd let him climb on her back, but grab his clothing in her teeth. Goodness, I hope they don't rip. It would be a very long way down. Oh, I can't enjoy the scenery like this! Marianne! Help me! Got any arrows left, Raphael? This is my last one. There are so many wolves. I can't believe we've run out of arrows. Guess all your archery skill doesn't mean much if you don't have arrows, huh? Yeah, that's pretty much the long and short of it. At this point, we just have to take with... Hang on, Leone. I got this. You've been helping me with archery, so now it's time for me to break out my specialty. Raphael, that was amazing! You saved us! It's all because you reinforced this bow for me. Yeah, but I had no idea that's how you were planning to use it. I mean, you just grabbed it by the end and started thrusting it like a spear. No wonder those wolves ran off. You probably scared them all to death. I'm just impressed this thing held up to all that punishment. Your enhancement saved the day, Leone. Still... The fact that I couldn't break it means I'll have to work out even harder till I can. Wait, no. That's a bad idea. And yet, my muscles are crying for some good breakage. I don't know, Leone. What do you think? Hey, your muscles saved our hide, so if you want to smash that bow to splinters, knock yourself out. Still, I reinforced that thing pretty well, so you'll need to come at it with everything you've got. And if you do manage to snap it, I'll keep making new ones until I finally perfect a Raphael-proof bow. Now that's an idea I can get behind! I'll do what I'm good at, building muscles, and you do what you're good at, building bows. That way, we can combine our powers to be the toughest fighting duo in all of Bowland. <laughs> you may be right. I mean... I'm not sure if we'll be quite the force of nature you seem to think we'll be, 
but it'll definitely put our strong suits to good use. Say, do you remember what I said when I first helped you reinforce that bow? I told you you'd help me with your specialty one day, just like I was helping you with mine. And guess what? That's exactly what happened today. I think this is the start of great things for us. I can't wait to see where we go from here. I'll be counting on you, big guy. Hmm... Something fishy's going on. I hope they're not getting into trouble. If it isn't little Hilda. Why the long face? Ah, Balti. You know, if Holst heard you were looking down in the dumps, he'd come flying faster than you can say overly attached. Of course, I won't be the one to tell him. You'd better not. He's been acting... strange lately. I'm actually starting to worry. Do you know what's going on, Balti? Oh, me? Nah, how should I? Well, the two of you have been hanging out an awful lot recently. Wait, don't tell me you've been corrupting him with your wicked ways. If I find out you're to blame for what's going on with him, so help me, Balti. Take it easy, will ya? You? You've got the wrong guy. Besides, even if I was trying to use my wicked ways on him, which I'm not, what of it? You don't really think your brother would be swayed that easily, do you? Fair point. My brother can't stand anything that isn't honorable and just. That's the truth. There's not a soul better at keeping people in line. Yeah, and if someone did try to corrupt him, he'd just beat them senseless. Then lecture them for hours on end. And if by some chance he did give in, would you hate him? Of course not. He's my brother and I'll always love him no matter what. Not that I have to worry, since he's basically incorruptible. Oh, my dear, precious sister. Is that what you truly think of me? Ah! Host! When did you get here? I love you too, Hilda. Now come on and give your brother a big hug. Baldi! How could you do this to me? Wait, Hilda, I can explain. There's a really good reason for this. Honestly. Really good. You set me up! He heard everything. Look, Holst told me he's been really worried about you lately. I just wanted the poor guy to hear what you had to say, that's all. Now he knows how you feel, so he doesn't have to worry anymore. <laughs> All's well that ends well, yeah? I am forever grateful, my friend. You have shown me the true nature of my darling sister's feelings. What are you two so happy about? I've never been more embarrassed in my entire life. I'm sorry, Hilda. I was the one who talked Balthus into this. Please forgive this poor, misguided buffoon. Direct all your anger at me, along with your love. Oh, you really are hopeless, aren't you? Nonsense, Hilda. For you, you are my hope. Ugh. What are you even saying? Ugh. Fine, do whatever you want. Just leave me out of it. Never a dull moment with those two. Everyone, the Middle Frank Opera Company is at the town up the road. We have to get there quick! Wow, really? I never imagined they'd come all this way. Wait a minute. What are they doing here? Don't they have their own opera house in the Imperial Capital? Apparently, they came to put on some shows after you signed that pact. Like, as a token of friendship between the Empire and Lester. But now, the performers and their guards have volunteered to fight the bandits. 
They're working together with the local soldiers to protect the town. You're telling me that a bunch of Imperial Opera singers just up and decided to fight for the Federation? Well, the Middle Frank Opera Company does have quite a few passionate supporters. Though it's likely more accurate to call them obsessed fans who go wild for their superstar divas. I'd bet those fans are more than willing to go out and play soldier themselves as well. I had no idea the opera could get people so worked up. But they're not going to be able to handle these bandits. I heard they're fighting as best they can, but the battle's not going their way. Please, Your Majesty, we have to save them. Yeah, Your Claudness. I want to help those opera folks too. My sister's going to be so excited when I tell her I met them. What are you all being so formal for? Oh, I get it. This is all about meeting those famous singers. I swear, no matter how grim things get, you never let it get to you, huh? Not that it's a bad thing. All right, I guess we're going to go beat down some bandits. Better not keep those divas waiting. Rescuing the townspeople is our top priority. And we need to help the volunteer soldiers, too. Also, if you see any suspicious types lurking among the bandits, they might be those who slither in the dark. Be careful. How many of these ruffians are there? I can't protect everyone forever. Is that Professor Hanneman? We have to save him! Ah, so you've come to my rescue. Thank you. Things were getting a bit out of hand. Well, that was certainly close. I am much obliged for your assistance. Have you seen Manuela? She dashed off in pursuit of the bandit leader. Who are you? Why are you chasing me? I'm not going to let you steal from such vulnerable people. Stop, thief! Professor Manuel is going after their leader! We gotta help her! Please, lend us a hand! The opera troupe can't hold out much longer! Dorothea, wait right there! I will not allow those vile criminals to lay a hand on you! Let us stand together! Let's show them what friends can do! No evil! Be gone! Tear their leader limb from limb! Oh my, I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me there. The double I planted turned out to be a stroke of genius. Now to take my leave while the taking is still good. Is he the real one? Don't let him get away! I think you've got a handle on everything here. I'll go tend to the injured. We could get across if we lowered the drawbridge. I'm just passing merchants. I'm not good. Well, it was worth a try. You got my back? Let's show them how mercenaries fight. I'm gonna follow your lead. Long way to go. I should have stayed a merchant. 
The money came easier. Hey! I think I remember him. He's a merchant who used to visit Garrig Mock. Please! Someone help me! and strip his bones of whatever you can find. The south side of town is damaged as well. Let's get over there at once. Now. There's still some people who've been left behind. We have to rescue them. Yes, we must help before it is too late. Anyone do something so horrible? You're about to get exactly what you deserve. Save your breath. You'll need to scrap as I tear your limbs from your body. You do realize you're dead now. Yes. <laughs> Somebody help! Please, don't leave me behind! No There's problem. no way this guy's their ringleader. Now where could those pesky slitherers be? I owe you my life. Thank you. Attack! Give them no quarter! <sighs> I'm so glad they're all right. Now we've got a demonic beast on our hands. The fun never stops, does it? The town cannot sustain any more damage. Take the beast down! Um, I don't feel so good. Is the enemy's weapon, please? Dorothea's been poisoned? That isn't good. We need to get her to the evacuee shelter on the double. So this is the scene where all hope seems lost. It's got some pretty big muscles. But I've handled bigger. I survived? Thank you. I won't forget the debt I owe you all. If you want to repay us, you'll need to heal up first. We'll talk more once we've taken care of the bandits. This is a rather rare poison. Don't worry, Dorothea. You're in good hands. Our attack is supposed to be in the... Keep it up! We've managed to fell the beast. And it looks like the town scraped by as well. I should have known these thugs would serve as little more than bait. My name is Solon, and I am the savior of this beast-infested world. I will brook no interference from beasts. So be it. 
Another chance will present itself ere long. He escaped! We almost had him. Hey, at least we got the situation in town under control. Great job, everyone. Gone in a flash. Just like three years ago. Was that dark magic? If he's got spells like that in his back pocket, I don't know how we'll ever catch him. We finally found him again, but I still couldn't get any information out of him. I wasn't able to get any answers either. What did you want to ask him? I have questions about what was done to my body. He and his associates performed horrible rituals on me. Blood experiments. And because of what they did, my lifespan has been drastically shortened. My Scythia. The experiments took a great toll on my body and left me with a burden that eats away at my longevity. Tomas, or rather Solon, I thought he might know a way to reverse that. I had no idea. We can't let him get away next time. If we're not able to catch him, then I'd rather we kill him. At least then, he'd never be able to perform those atrocious experiments ever again. I hear you, and I won't forget it. I have a feeling we'll face him again someday. And when we do... We won't let him beat us. Solon looked surprised when he saw your powers. It was like he recognized something. I just don't know what. Maybe it wasn't about me. Maybe it was about you. What's the difference? Our destinies are one and the same. But if he does know me as you suggest, then it stands to reason that I would know him as well. Which is certainly possible. Though I have no memory of meeting him before. You think this means we really are connected to those who slither in the dark? It's too soon to say, but I suspect we'll find our answer in due time. So long as the truth is what you really desire. Solon may have escaped. But I am pleased that we were able to rescue the songstresses from the opera company. We didn't come out here just to save a few opera stars, Lawrence. We came to protect the town. Besides, those stars just ended up being Dorothea and Professor Manuela. Just? You could at least try to sound more excited, Your Majesty. That's hardly a way to greet someone you haven't seen in years. Sorry, no offense. I've never seen you two light up the stage, so to me, you're just kind of... you. Well then, we'll have to remedy that. As soon as this war is over, we'll invite all of you to see us perform. If the opera company's still standing, that is. Alright, let's get down to business. I suspect the kingdom's getting ready to move in response to our retreat. I think it's time we head back to Deirdre and find out as much as we can about what they're planning. Your Majesty, pardon the intrusion, but I must speak with you immediately. You're with the Imperial Army, right? What's going on? I was sent by the Emperor of Adrestia herself, Your Majesty. She formally requests that the Federation dispatch reinforcements to her position. Edelgard wants us to back her up? I was under the impression she had the Western Front under control. Wait, if she's asking us for help, then I bet she's not in Western Fodlin at all. Correct. The Emperor is currently at Garrick Mach, preparing for an imminent assault by the armies of the Kingdom and the Church. Huh. Can't say I saw that one coming. All right, tell Edelgard we're on our way. Yes, Your Majesty. We just got back from Ferdiad, and now we're heading to Garrick Mach? Never a moment's rest, huh? No time for it, I'm afraid. 
If we don't act quickly, more lives will be lost, and the end of the war will slip even further away. Plus, if our next battle's at Garrick Mach, there's a chance Rhea will be there. This could be just the opportunity we need. Can you go assemble the troops? Golden Wildfire, a symbol of the past. Claude's swift military actions save Ordelia territory from immediate danger. However, the Empire's situation has drastically changed. The Kingdom and Central Church are closing in on Garrig Mach, placing Edelgard at a disadvantage. After receiving a request for aid, the Federation Army rushes to the scene. Edelgard requesting reinforcements from us. This is not a matter that we can respond to lightly. Why? It seems pretty straightforward to me. Hilda, do you truly believe that Edelgard would so readily put herself in our debt had she any other choice? That does not sound like the Edelgard I know. She prefers her debts flow in the opposite direction. Huh. Sounds like you two have something in common. <laughs> I will not deny it. In fact, that is precisely what gives me such insight into her current predicament. Make no mistake. The situation must be dire if she feels we are her best option. Simply put, were we to refuse her, it may well lead to her downfall. What are you getting at, Lawrence? You've got a real dark glint in your eye. The Empire's regime revolves entirely around its current Emperor. If Adrestia were to lose her, it would collapse like a house of cards. I see what you mean. At this point, there's no one in the Imperial line who could realistically inherit the throne. In other words, if we abandon Edelgard in her hour of need, the Empire will fall right along with her. Not an argument I expected from someone as self-righteous as you, Lawrence. That sounds more like... It actually sounds like you, Claude. <laughs> it totally does. And he wouldn't even bat an eye as he said it. It certainly does sound like him. Oh, I'm sorry. And Claude wouldn't even tell his own allies what was going on until it happened. Hey, that's ancient history. Nowadays, we all plot our schemes together. We're doing it right now. I guess that's true. Although, maybe that means we're all turning into Claude a bit. How else do you explain what's happened to Lawrence? The idea that I am somehow emulating Claude is preposterous. I am merely proposing what I believe to be the best course of action for Lester. We can debate whether or not we've all become mini Claudes later. For now, let's hear what the King himself thinks we should do. A battle between the Empire and the Knights of Saros with us being the factor that could turn the tides. We've been here before, haven't we? Last time, I chose to sacrifice Randolph in order to ensure our victory. And because I did, we got ambushed in ALL and barely made it out alive. I don't want to make that mistake again. Oh. This time, we're going to rush to Garrick Mach, wipe out the Central Church's forces, and take down Rhea herself. That's the plan that will put an end to this war with as little bloodshed as possible. That makes it the best option we have. Yes, we're effectively rescuing Edelgard. But hey, we could do worse than having an Emperor in our debt. If that is what you deem best, you will hear no objections from me. Yes, I find the plan satisfactory. I've got no complaints either. Let's get going! Sounds like we're all in agreement on this one. Just give the word, Your Majesty. Right. We march on Garrick Mach to rescue the Imperial Army. Prepare to move out immediately. Hey there. How's my favorite mercenary? The enemy's practically on our doorstep, but you're still taking the time to check on me? 
Why not? I'll never be too busy to check on you. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. So what, you're just being nice? Not exactly. You didn't get a chance to learn anything even after you met Solon, did you? Yeah, we never got closure after our fight against those who slither in the dark. But now we have to turn our attention to the Central Church. I figured even you might have trouble moving on from that one. I'll be honest, I can't stop thinking about it. Who am I, really? It's like the answer is dangling right in front of me, but I just can't reach it. I'm sorry. I wish I could do more to help you with that. Don't apologize. It's clear what the priority is right now, even to me. We need to put an end to the church as soon as possible so we can end this war. You're right. The longer Foden remains in turmoil, the more likely it is they'll try something again. We need this war to be over so we're not left vulnerable. And that means more work for you. I'm fine, see? Now go be important. All right, all right. But one more thing before I go. This war is going to end, but our fight with those who slither in the dark won't be over when it does. As long as they keep plotting, we'll keep going after them. I'll need your help with that from here on out. Got it? Of course. You can count on me. And if it so happens that we do eventually find out who you really are, just know that you'll still be the same person to me. You'll always be you. Remember that. Thanks, Claude. Same goes for you. Whether you're the leader of the Lester Alliance, the King, or even the Almiron. Oh, keep it down. We're not talking about that part yet. That's not true at all. But... Oh, look who it is. You really don't look like a kid. You shouldn't worry about it. You think so? Yeah. Now that I really look at you, I think you're a very pretty young woman. You act real mature, too. Oh, you're just saying that. I'm not like that at all. <gasps> Excuse me? Just what do you think you're doing? Whoa, what's wrong, Lysithia? You were speaking to a girl just now, correct? Just now? Oh yeah, I was. What about it? Care to explain that line you fed her? What? Did I say something weird? Allow me to refresh your memory. Now that I really look at you, I think you're a very pretty young woman. You act real mature, too. You said the same exact thing to me, remember? I'm not a fool, you know. So what? You just go around spouting off the same lines to everyone? Whoa, wait, wait! Just calm down. I know that was wrong of me, but I do have an explanation. By all means, enlighten me. Just hear me out. You might have noticed, but giving advice isn't exactly my strong suit. And yet for some reason, people always ask for my opinion on their problems. I never know what's best or how to respond. So, I memorized a bunch of lines from some stories so that I'd at least have something to say. And it just so happens, one of those lines is complimenting a girl. So what you said didn't come from you, but rather some fictional character? Yeah, that about sums it up. I'm really sorry. And then when people have asked for your advice, you've just parroted back some meaningless words. I can't believe you! I thought it would be better than people getting mad at me for being honest. Hearing the truth is always more preferable. So tell me now, what do you honestly think of me? It 
It's extremely difficult for me to express what I feel in my heart. But I'll just say this. You don't have to try so hard to impress people. You're at your most attractive when you're just being you. Because you already are extraordinary. <gasps> is... is that so? Very well. I will endeavor to keep that in mind. I apologize for pressing you. I have matters I must attend to right now. So, uh... Oh, man. I ended up using someone else's words again. But that really is the way I feel, so... She'd understand, right? Oh, hello. Are you on your way to get something to eat? Yeah, you? I am. Shall we go together, then? Sure thing. I wonder what they've cooked up for us today. <sighs> that was satisfying. Pretty nice getting such tasty meals all the time, huh? I agree. The meal was lovely. You didn't finish your meat again. It's kind of a waste, you know. I ate a lot of the vegetables, so you can have it. Hey, if you're offering... Wait a minute. Haven't we had this conversation before? <laughs> I think we have. Did something happen to you, Marianne? You seem more relaxed today. In a good way, of course. Oh, no. Nothing in particular. But I made a decision. I'm not going to worry about whether I bring misfortune to others or not. I've been a part of this army for a while now, and I've worked closely with everyone in it. And nothing terrible has happened to anyone as a result of being around me. Well, of course nothing bad's happened. I'm still a bit anxious about everything, but I decided to adopt a more easygoing attitude. I'd like to emulate you and your nonchalant demeanor, how you can just move through the world without a care. <laughs> You're making me sound kind of irresponsible. But you know what? I'm okay with that. I say if you want to talk to people, then talk to them. If you want to be alone, then do that. I really think it's best to just be yourself. Don't force anything. Yes, I think so too. But I fear my adoptive father might chastise me again if I say that to him. I'm not so sure about that. I think he'd acknowledge how far you've come if he saw you now. You really think so? You might not have noticed, but you're a lot different than you used to be. You're definitely somewhat sociable. More so, even. I just hope that's good enough for him. I'd like to think it will be. Well, I mean, I guess I don't really know what kind of guy your father is. Sometimes I think you say whatever pops into your head without thinking. I suppose that's what I like about you, isn't it? I can already tell I'm going to learn a lot from you. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. It's nice to feel the breeze on your skin every once in a while. Hey there, Hildy. How nice to run into you. Same. So, uh, what brings you here? I had a craving for tea, so I came out here to pick some herbs. Tea, huh? I might have to get in on that. Hey, is that a new bracelet? It's different from the one you wore yesterday, right? Oh, this? Yes, a fan of mine gave it to me. She looked up to me as a songstress before she became a soldier, and by sheer coincidence, we ended up assigned to the same army. The fact that she still supports me even now makes me happier than I can say. Yeah, getting a gift from a supportive fan must be a pretty great feeling. Looks valuable, too. She must really like you. 
Yes, it is rather nice, isn't it? Wish I had a big fancy bracelet I could swing around. You wear all sorts of accessories, don't you, Hildy? Also, makeup and the like. Why, there's no one better in the whole army when it comes to such things. If that bar was any lower, it'd be rolling on the floor. Most folks here don't give fashion a second thought. Still, I like to make my own accessories based on current trends. You make them yourself? Oh, that's amazing! Oh, and speaking of recent trends, I hear plants are the latest and greatest thing. Not flowers, mind, but complicated patterns such as ivy and vines. That's right. I've been sort of obsessed with them lately. But the more elaborate I make them, the more delicate they are. I think a bracelet made like that would break too easily. Oh, you have such dexterous fingers, Hildy. That's sweet. But seriously, I'm not much of a craftswoman. Anyway, not to super abruptly change the subject, but what kind of makeup do you use? Are you all about the latest fashions, or do you tend to go more traditional? Uh, generally, I try to use those that are reputed to be good for the body. They say some cosmetics are actually quite unhealthy, which worries me. I know what you mean, and you tend to not find out until it's way too late. I want to stay cute forever, so I've got to watch out for stuff like that and protect my skin. Ugh, so true. But say, how about we continue this chat over some tea? Are you kidding? I'd sit here and talk to you until the cows come home. Ah! Ah, there goes another one. This wolf thing isn't working. My howling's getting better, but it's also getting louder. Oh, I'll never be a hunter. I am not a green. Petra? Wow, where'd you get all that game? And that is why I had the decision to be lying in wait near you. Well, I'll be. You waited for me to scare all the animals out, then bag them yourself. They had such fear of your loudness that they were running in a straight line. Very easy to hit. This is what is called drive hunting. I have been studying the Fodlin way. Drive hunting, huh? Yes. Fodlin hunters are using hounds to track their prey and put it into corners. But we don't have any hounds. We do not. So, you are being my hound instead. What? Wait, no! I was being a wolf! You were saying before that dogs and wolves are the same. I mean, yeah, I guess. I have been thinking with hardness how I can make you more than just a large man searching the woods for prey. Then, I found an idea. You are the hound. I am the hunter. We will be making a great team and catching lots of game. Hey, I like the sound of that, Petra. It's nice of you to buddy up and help me with something I've been struggling with. I am happy to be helping. And I am thinking Raphael-style hunting would find much popularity in Bridget. Seriously? But you already have so many good hunters there. You really think there's a place for me? Because that would be incredible! No, you are incredible. You would find enjoyment in Bridget life. We have many delicious meats you cannot be finding here. Oh, yeah. I bet it's a totally different kind of yummy. Guess I've got to try it and see for myself. The first thing I'm going to do if I visit Bridget is order a whole platter of food. That'll also be the second thing I do. And probably the third. <laughs> you are a true lover of meat. Oh, and then 
I'll need to get some training in. Do people in Bridget like working their muscles too? Our hunters are all needing to be light on their feet. They are not usually training for enlarging their muscles. But maybe farmers and woodcutters are seeking bulk. I'm really trying to picture this. I mean, most farmers and woodcutters are pretty burly already, so the Bridget variety must be huge. Oh, wow. This is great. Raphael, farmer of Bridget. Raphael, woodcutter of Bridget. <laughs> yes, I am proud of my home. So please come visit. You will always find you are welcome there. It's me, Cal Kloster, Lysithia von Ordelia. Ah, yes, please come in. Thank you. Count Gloucester, I have come here in my father's stead and must return to the front line soon. But I wish to formally apologize for any trouble caused by the recent events in Ordelia. Oh, but my domain was left largely unharmed. In fact, if anyone is apologizing here, it should be me. I knew full well what was happening in Ordelia, yet was only able to dispatch a small force to aid you. It is only natural that a house should prioritize the safety of its own domain. And besides, House Gloucester is tasked with protecting the crucial Great Bridge of Murden. Your understanding is appreciated. But for me, I fear this also has a personal component. It is true that I could not abandon the Great Bridge, yet your father has been my compatriot for many years, and I view him as a true brother in arms. Had something happened to him, I would never have been able to forgive myself. I had no idea you held my father in such high regard. I have always felt I owed him far more than I was ever able to give. And what do you owe him exactly? My lord, you have a messenger from the Federation Army. Send them through. At once, sir. Sorry to barge in like this. What do you want? Oh, hey, Lysithia. Didn't know you were here, but it actually saves me some time. You are the mercenary captain who reports directly to His Majesty, yes? Has something happened? A town south of here has been overrun by bandits, down in Ordelia territory. What? And here I had hoped all those rogues had been suppressed. It's just a ragtag group of anyone who managed to avoid extermination at the hands of the Federation. Looks like they all came together for one last hurrah. Since the town isn't too far away, I was asked to come here and see if you could spare any troops. I will send all I can, but I fear it will be a scant force. But surely the Federation will send reinforcements as well. Well, that's the thing. Everyone sort of got their hands full preparing for the next battle. Honestly, they could barely spare me as a messenger. I didn't realize Claude could be so cruel. Hey, it's the truth. This is just bad timing. All the big names are scattered off in one place or another. I mean, take you. You're all the way out here apart from the main force, right? Still your tongue! I'll have you know I'm here on very important business. This bickering can wait. We need to mobilize what units we have at once. We? Wait, you're coming? Am I unwelcome? Hey, the more the merrier. Welcome aboard. I am glad to hear it, for any force would be lucky to have the great Irvin Fritz Gloucester on their side. My military prowess may not be as renowned as some, but I have bestrode many a battlefield in my day. 
Sadly, I could not lend much aid during the recent disturbances in Ordelia. But this is my chance to rectify that error. In that case, we should be off. I sure hope he knows what he's doing. The bandits have completely taken over the town. Then we will just have to take it back while the street to the town. Let us split up and work on capturing each other. <laughs> These bandits are no match for nobles such as ourselves. Yet yeah, they also lack the scruples of nobility. We should proceed with caution. don't sense anyone from those who slither in the dark here. I was wondering if we might run into them. Can't say I'm disappointed that we didn't. Heard a guy could really let loose here. Hope we ain't too late for all the fun. <laughs> Great. More bandits. <laughs> let us show them that the rule of law still holds strong in Ordelia. It is a noble's duty to protect the commoner. I told my son he must never forget that. And he remains dedicated to that idea. Perhaps a little too dedicated. By the by, Lysithia, is my son making himself useful in the Federation Army? Indeed he is. The man's fervor is rivaled only by that of the king himself. Here it comes! I had thought perhaps you did not like my father, Count Gloucester. An understandable impression. We did tend to get into heated arguments at the round table. Your father and I have strong opinions about how best to protect our own territory and people. We are like-minded. Yes, I see that now. It's not over. That should do it. Let us take care of the other bandits now. I understand that you often quarreled with the other lords at the round table as well. My quarrels with the other lords were mere petty bickering. Only with your father could I exchange ideas on equal footing. It's still fun to be happy we can hold this place. So, if you want it, come and take it! I will show you no mercy! I must say, I've been rather worried about your father. I rarely saw him at the round table since his illness. Your concern is appreciated. Sadly, I think his long years of overwork have finally caught up with him. Yeah, not bad. We'll vanquish our foes! I'm gonna follow your lead! I got you now! It looks like we've taken back most of the town. Not bad at all, my friend. A shame that you were born a mere commoner. We got nowhere left to run if we lose here. Plant your feet and fight to the death! Did they really think we would let them claim this town? Watch closely! Let's go! We can
can do this! Huh? Together we're invincible! <laughs> and that's what you get! Oh, yeah? <laughs> yes! We've done it! You did well, Lysithia. Perhaps even better than myself. Thank you for your assistance. Not at all. I'm glad the town is safe once more. Thank you for your assistance, Count Gloucester. Not at all. I only wish I could have been of more use. Sadly, my efforts paled in comparison to those of you and your mercenary friend here, Lysithia. I wouldn't go that far. Me either. Honestly, I figured you were gonna be dead weight, but you really held your own. Such impertinence! <laughs> ah, but it's a terrible thing to grow old. I hope you never have to do it, either of you. But like it or not, I admit I am past my prime. Still, these old bones did what they could. You were a tremendous help. And I've no doubt my father will feel the same when I inform him. Please do give him my best. And let him know that we are still the sturdy pillars of Leicester. Of course. That said, I am pleased to see your father has such a superlative air waiting in the wings. Perhaps Count Odelia might consider stepping down a tad early? I... I cannot say. As leaders, we often butted heads because we had to look out for the interests of our own realms. But once we have both passed on our title, we could simply be friends. And that is something I would greatly look forward to. That reminds me, you mentioned earlier that you owed him something? Ah. Yes. It's something of a longer tale, but perhaps now is the time to tell it. When you were still quite young, the Empire often saw fit to meddle in House Ordelia's affairs. As I was on the outside looking in, I was never able to discern any of the particulars. But even as a bystander, it was clear that your father's hardships were considerable. Yet, I did nothing. As leader of the pro-imperialist lords at the time, I could little more than stand by and watch. Your actions are completely understandable. The Empire would have brazenly ignored any protests of their political interference. As such, we had no choice but to endure their tyranny. It must have been difficult for you, as well. Still, I should have spoken out, if nothing else. I owed your father that much. I see. I cannot change the past, but I hope I might help your father live out his remaining years in peace. Perhaps we could take tea together sometime, reminisce on the old days. I'm certain he would love that. Tea? Really? That's your grand idea? Why don't you build him a mansion where he can get old in peace or something? Still your wagging tongue, Churl. No, no, our friend has a point. Taking tea together is a bit... pedestrian, all things considered. For I am Irvin Fritz Gloucester, after all. <laughs> hey, thanks for your help back there. What did I do? You helped get everyone on the same page. I appreciated the backup. It would have ended up like that, even if I didn't say a word. Like I said, we're all turning into you. Yeah, I still don't know what to think about that. But if it's true, then you probably deserve the credit. You've done a lot to keep our little team unified. 
I don't know if I've really done all that much. If anyone should be grateful, it's me. If I ended up on someone else's side, I'm sure people would have gotten all suspicious about my powers. They probably think I was their enemy. But here, I'm just part of the team. You all really make me feel like I belong. I get that. I felt like an outsider my entire life. But our friends are a pretty open-minded bunch. They even accepted Nadir with open arms. That's exactly the sort of world I dream of. A world where nobody is branded an outsider. Where anyone and everyone is welcome. Life would be a whole lot easier if that's really what Fodlin was like. But the church preaches a very different vision. They use social status to justify prejudice and have no tolerance for those who come from anywhere else or who don't believe in their teachings. There's good there too, of course, but I want to wipe the slate clean and start over. It's ambitious to be sure, but can I count on you to continue fighting by my side to help me make my dream a reality? As a friend, right? <laughs> of course. At least until the war is over. Wait, that's it? You're just gonna up and leave as soon as the fighting's done? Who knows? Alright, I'll leave it for now. But don't think you're off the hook. We'll pick this up again when the time comes. Anyway, we should press on. I'm sure Edelgard is awaiting our arrival with bated breath. Well, this is great. Having some trouble there, Gerald? I wanted to replace the clasp on my gauntlet, but I can't quite get the blasted thing to stay. Here, let me try. Oh, look at that. You got a real knack for these things. Thanks, kid. I'm surprised you've survived this long with those ham hands. Being a good mercenary isn't all about dexterity, you know. Besides, when you've lived as long as I have, your body just doesn't work as well as it used to. Trust me. You don't look that old to me. You can't judge a book by its cover. I might not look it, but I'm practically an ancient tome. Not to mention I've lived pretty hard. Might just be a gut feeling, but... I've started feeling like the goddess might call me to her side before long. Come on, it's not like you're at death's door. Besides, you really think the goddess would be calling you of all people? You don't hold anything back, do you? If the goddess won't have me, then I'll just have to make do in hell. Do you think you'd have any regrets if you died right now? Not one. <laughs> Except maybe living too long. What about leaving your kid behind? Can't say I wouldn't be worried, especially because that kid isn't exactly normal. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I've never seen a power like that before. Not even generals with crests measure up. True, it's not like my training was all that rigorous either. But before I knew it, my kid had become the Ashen Demon. Just a personal quirk, I guess. Makes it tough to find friends, though. In that sense, I'm glad we're here. There's tons of young folks around. And maybe the kid will take a shine to you, since you're both mercenaries. Who knows? I've been hoping we could talk more, at least. Is that so? I'm glad to hear you say that. It takes a load off my mind. Now you really sound like a dad. I was never much of a parent, but I do worry all the same. You know, I think we were meant to end up on the same side. Would you do me a favor and look after my kid? When you put it that way, it really does sound like you're about to die. Hey, it's possible. Tomorrow's never guaranteed in this line of work. I meant what I said. Can I count on you? Yeah, 
Sure. I'm not gonna refuse a dying man's wish after all. Claude, there's something I need to discuss with you. Sure, but keep it short. I know I don't look it, but I'm actually pretty busy here. Hmm. Are you making light of how I usually respond to your requests? Hey, don't be like that. It's just a joke. We can talk for hours if you want. I've got all the time in the world. There's no need. I'm simply passing on a message from my father. Count Ordelia, huh? Go ahead. I'm all ears. I guess it's no surprise he has a word or two to say to the king. I mean, first the imperial invasion, now all this unrest sweeping across the land. None of this would have happened if I'd just kept a closer eye on those who slither in the dark. Hold on. I think you have the wrong idea. My father doesn't want to complain to you. He'd actually like to thank you for bringing the fight with the kingdom to an end, and for rushing to quell the chaos in our territories. He also said he's willing to offer his full cooperation with any of your majesty's policy proposals. All you need to do is say the word. I appreciate that. His broad-mindedness has always proven a great help. Then consider my message delivered. But please, don't put more of a burden on him than necessary. Anxiety has tormented his mind for years now, and he's recently started finding his body less and less willing to cooperate with his brain. So I've heard. Don't worry, I won't ask any more of him than what's absolutely essential. Thanks, Claude. I'll do the work of a hundred others in my father's place. Hey, slow down there. You already do too much as it is. Piling more on top of that is just gonna crush you. And yet I need to do it all the same. I can't let myself fall behind the other Lester nobles. Most importantly, I need to put an end to this war, so I can start thinking about how to bring peace and stability back to House Ordelia's territory. I get where you're coming from, but everyone needs a break now and then. Your body's probably screaming at you to get some rest. I'm all right. While it's true my lifespan is slated to be short, it's not like I'm gonna just drop dead out of the blue. I'm just as healthy as I've ever been, I assure you. You look fine enough, sure. But there's something lingering beneath the surface weighing you down, isn't there? Something the rest of us can't see. Your body's bound to give out if you keep pushing your limits without taking some time to recuperate. But... Listen, my Scythia, I want this war to end just as fast as you do. And once it does, I'm going to settle the score with those who slither in the dark. In other words, it's in your best interest to stick with me. <sighs> so consider this an order from your king. Stop fighting like you don't have a tomorrow to live for. I mean, I'm still going to need plenty of help once the war is over. I can't have you kicking the bucket before the real fun starts, okay? Understood. If it's an order from His Majesty himself, I guess I don't have much of a choice. Now, if you'll excuse me, I know I don't look it, but I'm actually pretty busy here. Does she really understand, though? At any rate, I'd better put this war to bed as soon as possible. Marianne? Ah, Marianne! There you are. I thought you'd be in the chapel. I, um... I went to pray earlier than usual today. You're really committed to this whole praying every single day thing, aren't you? Oh, no. It's nothing so grand. And besides... Praying to the goddess daily on behalf of my friends is really all I'm good for. Okay, stop. Seriously? You're amazing, Marianne. There's a ton of stuff you do that no one else could possibly handle. 
I suppose so. Yeah? Well, I know so. Um, Hilda? Why are you always so nice to me? Huh? What do you mean? Well, you have so many other close friends. Yet you always seem to go out of your way to show me kindness and decency. You even took responsibility when Judith was about to berate me during our armor sorting escapade. Yeah, I guess I did, huh? I totally forgot about that. Yes, and I have wondered ever since why you did such a thing. Eh, it's no big deal. I guess I just wanted to be nice. Seriously, Marianne, you're the best, and having you around makes my life a lot easier. So, just consider it my way of saying thanks for all the times you helped me out. I've helped you? Absolutely! You're my emotional support! You're always around when I need a shoulder to cry on or somebody to listen when I get all mad. You always know the exact right thing to say, and then you smile at the end of it and it's like, I don't know, it makes me all warm inside. You do all that little stuff without even thinking of it, and it really keeps me going. I never thought of it like that. I had no idea you found me helpful. If anything, I thought you considered me a burden. Thank you, Hilda. Your words, they... they mean a lot to me. And I will do my best to support you in all the days yet to come. There's that smile. You never fail to brighten my day, Marianne. Delicious as always. Alright, now that the old stomach's full, it's time to put my muscles to work. Raphael, do you have a minute? Oh, hey, Ignatz. I've got hours for you. What do you need? Well, um, how would you feel about joining me? As a knight, I mean. Me? Be a knight with you? Yes. That's why you joined the academy, right? But all the roadblocks in your way have made you almost a mercenary at this point. As you know, I've been working as a knight under House Gloucester for a while now. And it seems I'm going to be rewarded rather well when this war is over, for all my achievements in helping the effort. I might even be able to use that newfound sway to recommend you for a position of your own, Raphael. Hmm. Well, what do you think? It seems like a good plan to me. Is that really what you want, Ignatz? Huh? Well, what do you mean? Don't pretend like you don't know. We're friends, remember? I can tell in the flash when you're not being honest with me. Well, I... I couldn't possibly spend all that reward money on my own, so... That's not what I'm talking about. You're not happy staying as a knight, and you know it. Huh. You really do see straight through me, Raphael. Honestly, I've wanted to make amends with you this whole time. Your parents died in my parents' stead, after all. I thought the least I could do was help you become a knight, like you always wanted. Thanks, Ignatz. It makes me real happy to hear you say that. But you don't need to make anything up to me, and you definitely shouldn't be basing your life decisions on it. You got where you are with your own strength, right? You should be using that for what you want, not what you think anyone else does. Raphael. And you know, I'm totally okay not being a knight. Once this war is finally over, and we're at peace again, I'm gonna take over the inn. So don't worry about me, okay? Follow your own dreams, Ignatz. I'm really no match for you, Raphael. 
but I'm proud to call you a friend. From the bottom of my heart. Captain Gerald, I have a request to make of you. Ugh, someone's formal today. Well, out with it. When this war is over, please let me join your mercenary company. You'll go back to wandering the world, right? So please, Captain. Please let me come with you. <sighs> I'm happy to hear you want to join us, Leone. That's not enough for me to say yes. No. Why not? There are two reasons. The biggest is that I'm thinking about stepping down from my position as captain. So the ultimate call isn't really mine to make. Then who will lead the mercenaries? Couldn't tell you. That's up to them. The second reason is that I think you should start your own band of mercenaries instead. You... do? You're a mercenary in your own right now, and a fantastic general in this army. With that kind of experience, there's no point in going to work for someone else. Do you really think so? Of course. Someone with your skill set would be a fine addition to any group of mercs, including mine. But you're planning to surpass me and the kid, right? You can't exactly do that if you're working for us. We'll have to build your own band of mercs from the ground up and win your reputation just like I did. You'll need to give it your all if you want to create something better than what I've built. Hmm. Then that's what I'll do. I'll form my own band of mercenaries that's every bit as good as yours. That's why I'm proud to call you my apprentice. But in exchange, I have a condition. You have to remain as captain until I catch up to you. Oh, well, I guess it's a captain's job to live with an apprentice's reckless decisions. But I don't have all the time in the world. <laughs> this body's falling apart as it is. So get yourself up and running before I shrivel away. <laughs> Got it? It's a promise. I'm looking forward to the day. The situation is grim. The Kingdom Army and the Knights of Saros have the monastery completely surrounded. And Rhea? She's here. Looks like she's commanding the Knights of Saros herself. With her leading the charge, the Knights' morale must be through the roof. Looks like your guess was right on the mark, Lawrence. Indeed. If anything, Edelgard's predicament is even more dire than I imagined. If you're sure you want to rescue her, we'll have to move quickly, Your Majesty. Right. Let's go, everyone. Time to save the day. Honestly, it almost feels like you held back till I needed help. Far be it for me to say that you're wrong. Being owed a favor by the Emperor herself uh, is... Yeah. Oh. Well then, I guess we can call it even. But don't close your ledger just yet, Claude. My quill is at the ready, Edelgard. Call in all the favors you want. Ready, you guys? It's time we show them just what Lester can do in a fight! I will go ahead to put a stop to Dimitri and Rhea. I am counting on your support. Well, we've come this far. We're not about to stop now. Too great. But I can at 
must serve as a decoy for her master. Monica is in danger. Do not worry about me. You must attend to her. I'll not falter. You got my bag? I need your strength. Majesty here. So that's the Empire's Minister of Religious Affairs. He heads up the Southern Church now. If he's in trouble, we should go help. Then you know. Oh, thank you. Is Her Majesty all right? Do tell her I've been fighting valiantly. We've got this, Marianne. As long as we're together. We can do anything! Out you go! I'm alive! I mean, of course I am. My death would be a crippling blow to the Empire. Set the flame as we me. planned. This opportunity will not escape us! They are burning Garrick Mach. That's a bold move, Dimitri. Stand down! Stand behind me! We'll vanquish our foes! We have no evil! Be I got it. What? The wall collapsed? Did someone intentionally do this? Our path is blocked. We need to find another route and catch up with Edelgard. There you are, Edelgard. Your life is mine! Edelgard is under attack! We must defend her! This stronghold will fall! Stay out of my way! Actually, this is perfect! Now I can avenge the Margrave as well! We'll show them! Oh yeah! We'll show them! Blame me all you want! I can't go on. I'm sorry. I have to fall back. Excellent. Continue gotcha. defending the Emperor. Uh, there's no way through. There she is. Ignite the flames once more. They will know how deeply our rage burns. Fire again. Me surrounded by flames. Can't deny there's irony in that. I will end you. Can't 
Dimitri's most loyal retainer. I must be getting close to you. As long as I stand, you will not lay a finger on his majesty. Let's wake up! I need your strength! Eliminate Dimitri and force the Kingdom troops to retreat. We have gained control of Garrick Mok's entrance. I'll take up position here and stop the enemy from invading. I cannot allow you to do this alone, Your Majesty. Please, permit me to fight alongside you. I've long awaited this day, Aengard. Your tyranny ends here! Oh, this is not good. We can't let Edelgard die. We must seize this opportunity while the Kingdom army is engaged. Quickly, capture the front gate of the monastery. I should have known she wouldn't let this opportunity places. slip by. Get on over to Garrick Mach. She popped up out of nowhere. Is there another secret path we don't know about? I'm with you! Attack! Don't give him a chance to retaliate! Garrick Moth is certainly a strategic location, but is it truly essential to the kingdom? Perhaps. If we control this land, we will be in a better position to ward off your invasions. Yes. My turn? I've no reason to hold back before the enemy of the Margrave and my people. Right, right. But on the other hand, it'd really make my day if you withdrew. No? <laughs> if it's my head you're after, you'll have to risk your own to take it. Stop Dimitri with everything you've got. Hold nothing back. <laughs> Goodness, we defended the strongholds. No matter how many years pass, you people will always be little more than fools. Return the land you stole from us! Sorry, but I think I'd rather fight you instead. I will correct the mistake I made when I took you in, by ending your life. You got my back? I need your strength! Hey! You got it. Let's go! I got you now! Eric Mach is our church's most sacred site. We must reclaim it. You shall face retribution for violating this sacred ground. This is our chance to take out the Archbishop. We must not let it pass us by. I'll take you all on. will be mine again! Opportunity has slipped through our fingers, but we shall return. The next time you will not be so fortunate. 
We managed to hold out, but Rhea got away. Can't stop me! Such feeble attacks Sorry. kill me. If the church has withdrawn, then we need not risk our lives any longer. And just like that, a full retreat? Not that I'm complaining, mind you. This war won't end until Rhea's dead. Get ready for a chase, everyone. Well, would you look at that? We won. Thanks to you. Actually, I'd say you pulled most of the weight. The Kingdom and the Church had a ton of grizzled warriors on their side. We would have been in real trouble without you and your mercenaries. You were pretty impressive yourself. You barely even broke a sweat out there. I appreciate the compliment, though. I'm glad we got the chance to team up like this. Me too. The war's not over yet, though. I'm hoping you'll stick around to the end. Of course. The Ashen Demon has proved a greater asset than we could have ever imagined. You must be relieved to see your gamble pay off. If nothing else, I'll be a lot less busy as your partner in destiny going forward. Hmm. What a thing to imagine. Thank you, Claude. I owe you a great debt. Yeah, we really saved your skin. Though I'm sure you would have preferred to have us in your debt instead. Must really chafe having the shoe on the other foot. And what is that supposed to mean? If all you plan to do is mock me, then perhaps I'll not honor the debt after all. Hey, it was just a joke. Just something Lawrence said. Nothing for your Imperial Majesty to worry about. <sighs> Jokes aside, do you have a minute? Eager as I am to get back out there and chase down our enemies, we need to talk. If you insist, what is it? Right now, the Federation and the Empire are fighting together against the Kingdom. But honestly, I have no desire to see Fargus in ruins. I'm only after the Central Church. At this point, though, wouldn't you say the two are one and the same? I'm not so sure. When Dimitri decided to grant sanctuary to the Central Church, he really wasn't in any position to refuse. If he had, the chaos that ensued would have torn Fargus apart. But what if things are adding up differently now? It's clear the war will drag on so long as he continues to shelter them. Besides, the Federation's Eastern Church and the Empire's Southern Church are both operating independent of Rhea's influence. The Central Church must be looking like a pretty heavy burden to Dimitri right about now. Perhaps, but the Archbishop has far more influence in Fargus than anywhere else. Even if Dimitri has changed his mind, I doubt those around him would be open to the idea. The fact remains that the Kingdom has yet to show any sign of severing ties with the Central Church. They stand beside them even now. This is just a theory. Well, actually, it's more like wild speculation. But what if the reason Dimitri tried to take Eric Mach was because he wanted to distance himself from the Church? By facilitating Rhea's return to Garrick Mach, he could be trying to set the stage to break away. That's an interesting theory. Do you have any evidence to support it? Not really, but that's the impression I got when I saw Dimitri on the battlefield. To be honest, it didn't even occur to me before now. We were so determined to take down Rhea in that battle, we never spared a thought for Dimitri's motivations. I see. Had it occurred to you sooner, you would have had quite the decision to make. About whether to leave me for dead, I mean. After all, if the Central Church was really leaving the Kingdom to return here, abandoning me would have been the expedient choice. Oh, come on, Edelgard. 
Sure, we've had our differences, but that doesn't mean I want you dead. <laughs> I'm happy to hear you say that, even if it is a lie. <laughs> you wound me. It's the honest truth from the bottom of my heart. So you say. No matter, you should continue to do as you see fit. And I will do all I can to bring this war to an end. Sounds like a plan. Let's end this war. Right now, that's all that matters. The Kingdom Army and the Church's forces have withdrawn and are fleeing north. The mercenaries are already in pursuit. And the Federation Army will join in the chase. Give the order to the rest of the troops. Yes, Your Majesty. I've got a pretty good guess as to which mercenaries are leading the hunt. I'd better pick up the pace. Edelgard, if you'll excuse me. I assure you, Claude, we will not be far behind. The Federation Army is going to beat us to the punch. We should give chase as well. I agree. Send a fifth of our army to pursue them. I will accompany them myself. Dispatch half of the remaining forces to the Western Front and assign the other half to defend and repair the monastery. Only a fifth? Are you sure that will be enough? There's nothing to worry about. With the Federation Army present, our hands will be tied regardless. Besides, if we neglect to leave the monastery sufficiently guarded, I fear I'll never hear the end of it from Count Varley. Did we lose them? I was hoping we could at least tell our allies where they went. <sighs> What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Just thinking how the time has finally come. Golden Wildfire. The Hour of Vengeance. It's over! Oh, how I've waited for this day. The day that I kill you! Run away while you can. Free to try, but you won't get away from me that easily. I'll carve out your monstrous heart and put an end to the beast dwelling within. Your destruction is everything I've ever fought for. Our two favorite mercenaries were supposed to be leading the charge. So where are they? It's strange that we haven't heard from them yet. I can't imagine they'd fall for a kingdom ambush, but... We have a problem, Your Majesty. A group of mysterious mages has appeared just ahead. It looks like they're preparing to intercept us. <gasps> mysterious mages? Are we dealing with those who slither in the dark again? What objective could they possibly be pursuing now? Not a clue, but we should hurry. If it's a fight they want, we don't have much choice but to oblige them. Your Majesty, I've spotted the mercenaries among the enemy force. And they appear to be fighting each other. I don't know the details, but it seems as though our commander attacked the Ashen Demon. What? Don't tell me. Have our fears come to pass? Was our friend truly part of those who slither in the dark all this time? It's too soon to say for sure. We know the enemy is capable of both controlling and impersonating people. He's right! Back at the Academy, the person we thought was Tomas was really Solon all along. 
So for all we know, our friend could actually be somewhere else entirely. Whatever the case, we have to keep going after Dimitri. That'll take us right through where the two of them were sighted. We'll drive off those fiends, try to grab our friend or whoever's impersonating them, and figure out what's going on afterwards. We can afford to do that, right? We can't afford not to. It would be an unspeakable loss if we slew the alleged imposter, only to learn we had inadvertently killed our friend. Then it's settled. We'll stop them and get to the bottom of this. I will hunt you until my dying breath. Get back here! We need to get over to them now. Things won't end well if we don't put a stop to this. I have the slightest notion of what is going on, but I'll have to Sorry, destroy them all! One step closer to my goal. We cannot proceed unless we eliminate those mages. See how those beasts crawl to the slaughter. Let me put you out of your misery, beasts. We'll vanquish our foes. Oh, I strength will do your trick. Now watch me flex. Did you see that? My muscles always win the day. No I'm tired I got of playing with you in greats. Come on, snap out of it. Stay out of this! It does not concern you! What's going on? This isn't like you at all! Okay, I guess you're not in a listening mood either. Hang on, kid! I'm coming! I must move us away from all of these foolish distractions! What was that? Some kind of warping magic? They must have gone somewhere else. Hey, it's my this presents a problem. We need a group to pursue them while the rest of us fan out in case they warp them. Why do you insist on interfering? They're putting up more of a fight than I expected. Deploy the reserves. We'll have to take out the ones before us if we hope to enter the stronghold. I'll not permit this chance to slip away! Your Majesty, it seems Lady Hidalgo is pursuing Dimitri through the mountains. They're that close by? Then we need to wrap this up and get over to them. Let's do this! You're still chasing me? You certainly are tenacious. What is the Federation Army doing? This is our chance to capture him. All right, here I go! I could take a lesson from your persistence. I dislike ending things on a low note. As such, prepare to die!
Let's arrest them and send them to the back. We'll be sure to question them later. You came for me, Gerald. Thank you. Don't you sound down. surprised, kid. I'm almost defended. Sorry! If I must wring the life from you by my own hand, then so be it. You're not getting away this time. I hope you're ready. Try me, you witless beast! Your Majesty! My sincerest apologies. The mercenary commander has escaped. Well, that was quick. I don't know what's going on, but it can't be good. I need your strength. We'll show them. Oh, yeah. We'll show them. Blame me all you want. <laughs> How could I allow myself to be bested by such a despicable beast as this one? Sacrifice. This world can never be made clean. Oh, great Saharas, veil of night fluttering in the abyss. By the laws of creation, throw wide your infernal gates and swallow my foes. So, you've come here to strike me down yourself. I thought you were a smarter foe than that, Edelgard. Really? You think you'll win this fight? The upper hand is clearly mine in this moment. All I have to do is buy some time. <laughs> so you say. Then I suppose I must test your resolve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not so fast, you two. I don't want to miss all the fun. I wouldn't say no. So what do you want to do? <laughs> this power, it's... It has been a long, long battle. My race wavers at the brink of extinction. And so it falls upon me to reclaim this world. That what was stolen from my people might be theirs once more. Which is why I was born. Yes, I created you. The cycle of the world, the rehousing of souls. How desperately I sought this secret art. But it demanded precision. One defect, one essence wrongly transplanted, would lead to consequences most irreparable. I knew I must oversee the process myself in order to save my beloved people. When my consciousness first initialized, I was nothing. I remember the sound of water, of bubbles, the sound of a massive object slowly lurching along. I thought the noise would continue for eternity, but then, a change. Something gave way. The water began rushing rapidly. Pale shadows closed in around me. Amidst deafening sounds, I walked desperately in search of light. That was an unforeseen accident, 
I was sure all had been lost to the waters. It was fortunate I had created you, for you proved useful in a way I never expected. I am to become you. That's why I'm here. That's why I've been compelled to remove any obstacle in your way. Only by destroying the abomination inside the Ashen Demon can we bring salvation to the world. So you understand. Then return that body you two share to me. It pains me to do this to you, but alas, all was written from the beginning. Golden Wildfire into the chasm. Where am I? Stay where you are. It would be best if you refrained from bringing out any weapons as well. Wait, Edelgard? Hold on. What are all three of you doing here? I have the same question. It appears we've been swallowed up by some kind of strange magic. That's the long and short of it. But isn't all of this your doing? <sighs> when we awoke, we found ourselves here, in this dark and ominous void. Don't tell me you can't remember what happened. You suddenly transformed and started attacking your friends. Luckily, we managed to knock you out and capture you. But it wasn't long before you came to and escaped. I was told that you were acting like someone else entirely. <sighs> I guess that kinda rings a bell. The last thing I remember is Arval telling me to slay the Ashen Demon. At least, I think it was Arval. Arval? The voice in my head. We've known each other for a few years now. Uh, huh. Sounds pretty out there, right? This is why I never mentioned it. And you claim this Arval suddenly decided to turn on you? I know how it sounds, but yeah. There are two things I can say for sure. The first is that Arval's magic is what dragged us all in here. And the second is that there's no one in my head anymore. How can you be certain? Because I don't feel them. At least, not in my mind. Arval's somewhere else now. Somewhere distant. I don't mean for this to be an interrogation. But distant? From where? This story of yours is hardly convincing. Well, you do seem to be your old self again. That, if nothing else, makes me want to believe what you're saying. At the very least, I hope you know a way out of this fathomless prison. About that, I know I said distant, but Arval's definitely here with us somewhere. If we can find them and figure out what magic they used on us, we might just be able to escape. That sounds wildly optimistic. It sure does. But considering we don't know a thing about this place, we might as well give it a shot. In that case, let's begin looking around and see if we can't find any clues to where we are. Dimitri, we need to talk. I'm just gonna come out and say it. After the war, I'm going to abolish the Central Church and depose the Archbishop. The people of Fodland have been shackled by this decrepit system for too long, and I'm ending it. You're going to do away with the church? That's right. Think about it. Who steals your freedom and gives you an endless list of duties and obligations simply because you have a crest? Who forces you and your friends into a bunch of unwanted marriages and positions of power? The church even forbids any official contact with outside regions. Not exactly great for Fargus, right? Being as close to Serang and Albinia as you are. But to be clear, your quarrel is with the church, yes? Not with Fargus itself? 
Exactly. We have nothing to gain by fighting you. And really, our enemy isn't the actual church so much as the people at the top who make all the decisions. I understand where you're coming from, Claude. And on a personal level, I actually agree with you. But as a king, you're opposed. Yes, for three reasons. First, abolishing the church would deny the king's right to rule Fargus. Without one, the people will descend into chaos and war. Would you be able to take responsibility for such a thing once it came to pass? Second, recklessly discarding the church will only incite discord among the clergy and its supporters. And finally, a revolution of this nature will not only mean casualties among the common folk, but will endanger your own life as well. Leaving the first two for a second, I have some serious issues with that last one. I'm glad you're concerned for my safety, but I can take care of myself. But don't you see? The people you wish to depose are human, just as you are. No matter what ingenious scheme you come up with, or how careful you try to be, they will suffer. And their vengeance will eventually find you, no matter how hard you try to stave it off. I know full well the guilt that accompanies such actions, and the retribution they provoke. Everyone has to deal with the consequences of their decisions. If you let it rule you, Fodlin never changes. And if it doesn't change, it'll just fall apart. But not taking the time to look where you're going will only lead you to stumble and fall. And if there are those who would be hurt by this, I consider it my duty to help them. <laughs> there you go, trying to save everyone again. You really are too good for me. To be honest, I'm jealous of how you're not burdened with the same restrictions. In the world I'm trying to create, you wouldn't be burdened by them either. You could even... No, forget that. I'm serious about what I said, though. And I really do admire how you want to save everyone. Honestly, if you weren't a king, I think we could have been friends. I feel much the same. Had I joined with you, I might have been able to see a different vision of Fotlan. I have to say, this isn't how I imagined Fodlin's three most powerful leaders would be coming together. Indeed. I hesitate to even consider the look on Hubert's face right now. I don't think anyone's too worried about me, though. Vanishing without a word is kind of what I do. Even now that I'm the King of the Federation, it looks like I'm as unreliable as ever. Or perhaps it's the opposite, and your people think you're reliable precisely because you always return. It must be nice having friends you can depend on to handle important matters in your absence. And it must feel lousy to realize no one wants to do your job, Edelgard. <sighs> I'm glad to see your tongue remains as agile as ever. Let's try moving our feet instead, shall we? Hey, I can do both if you want. It's definitely not an either-or kind of situation. So, Edelgard, say the four of us get out of here in one piece. What are you planning to do about Dimitri? Maybe we should join forces and take him on together. You're such a bore sometimes, Claude. And is that a serious proposal? Hmm. Well, I suppose it would be easier for me if the kingdom stuck around. After all, I get the feeling that if we divide Fodlin between the Empire and the Federation, I'll be the one holding the short end of that stick. Our goal is to deal with Rhea and the Central Church, not to unify Fodlin. You never have been one to mince words, have you? Well then... Allow me to match your honesty. It would be more convenient for me if the kingdom ceased to exist. The Central Church has a much closer relationship with Fargus than with the other regions. Even were we to capture the Archbishop and force her to dismantle the upper echelons of the Church, it wouldn't be enough. 
the roots of that organization run deep. Hey, hold on. You're just looking to capture Rhea? You're not gonna, you know, get rid of her? Is it not enough to subdue a foe and remove them from power? I'm just surprised. I would have expected you to be more... thorough. And here I thought you wanted to pursue a peaceful solution. Hey, give me some credit. If I didn't like to rock the boat, Lester would have been swallowed up by the Empire ages ago. I have ambitions, Edelgard. Real ones. I won't go into details, but I'm definitely fighting to make them a reality. All that, and you're not planning to enlighten me? Unreliable and stingy. I, for one, have no qualms with telling you my ambitions. I seek to destroy the irrational power structure that shackles Fodlin. Just Fodlin, huh? Come again? Hey, don't get me wrong. That's a goal I can get behind. That's why we're working together. But I'd be grateful if my own ambitions can be fulfilled at the end of your path of conquest. I'd like to believe that is possible. At least for now, we can work together to achieve a common goal. And perhaps someday, our pact will become a more permanent one. I hope so, at any rate. Same here. But before that, we need to find a way out of this place. Yeesh. You can't tell forward from back in here. Let's try over that way, maybe? Good idea. It seems different from the rest of the void. Look out! <sighs> so it failed. Has my skill degraded that sharply over the years? Arval. I have been searching for you. And look what you brought me. The three who fancy themselves sovereigns, ruling over that abomination's wretched spawn. What unexpected luck. I do hope you are all prepared to face death this day. So this is Arvel, is it? Undo this sorcery and return us from whence we came, demon. Oh, I do not think that will be happening. But even if I desired to accede to your wishes, the great forbidden spell of Zaharas is a one-way journey. None can escape this eternal darkness. I vote we kill this thing and see what happens. Who's with me? Something tells me they wouldn't lay this trap, only to suffer the same fate as us. If this being can free themselves from this void, it stands to reason that so too can we. Then try cutting me down if you like. Sadly, what you see before you is but an illusion. I have a task to fulfill. And once it is accomplished, I shall leave this place alone. Arvel, wait! What task are you talking about? Why did you use me? And what are you trying to do here? Ah, but you are mistaken. I am not Arval. My name is Epimenides. An ordinary man who vowed to kill the beast which set the Earth ablaze. Do you not comprehend my purpose? I must save this world and its true people. That is why I chose to pass my consciousness down through the ages. And you... You are the vessel for that consciousness. What does that mean? I don't know what's going on, but I do know whoever that is needs to be stopped. And how far are you willing to go? Will you cut down your own friends to reach me?
Hubert? No. It must be a double. If so, it's completely indistinguishable from the real thing. This is vile sorcery indeed. Her Majesty, why are you consorting with the enemy? Is this right where you want him? Why are you... No. This is a deception. The man I know would never raise a weapon at me. Claude, no! Don't do this! I can't believe you would hurt me. This is harder than I thought. I mean, how do we know for sure they're not real? The Emperor is before you. Deal the killing blow. You can't fool me. If it were really you, you'd understand. Oh. You would drench your hands in the blood of friends to get what you want. I should have expected no less from the children of beasts. Their screams are so real. But steal yourselves. Don't know who will confront next. Are we being walked away? No. Space itself is distorting around us. Our surroundings have changed. This place is so twisted you can't even tell where you are. Aren't you sad for your comrades, murderers? There it is. There is your rage. Uh-oh. I can spot one fake, but how do I tell which Edelgard and Dimitri are on my side? Perhaps each of us should take on their own double to prevent confusion. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. This darkness is a mirror for the soul. And once a soul is imprisoned here, it is eternally severed from the real world. Just imagine how much easier our task will be with the two of us. A nice thought, yes. But I'm sad to say I fail to trust even myself. Why are you helping the Emperor, you wretch? If you mourn your friends, avenge them! It's a blessing I get to face you. There is truly no one I more desire to end. Stop playing the kind soul. Everything we've ever wanted is before us, right for the taking. If you're really me, then you already know why I'm doing this. I don't like leaving my fate up to luck. I'll protect you. Don't let anyone get away! Seriously, no one? I feel like I just slew my twin brother. You got my back? Clear the way! We'll do it together! say it's pleasant watching my own death. I'm unstoppable. I owe you one. You're always bailing me out. I hope to return the favor someday. Understood. Let's link up. Let us go together. We'll do it together. Illusion or no, I must thank our adversary for letting me experience that.
That's the last of the illusions. So it would seem. They're wide open. At least now we're certain they're not real. We can cut them down without mercy. Again? Please tell me we're gonna find that guy this time. Right. Let's get searching. Oh, but you four are a marvel to think you are already adapting to this place. Now have the grace to lay down your lives and let the world you've torn apart heal. There you are, my partner in destiny. You're not Arval. And even if you were, I'd fight you all the same. Destroying me will achieve nothing, for you will all still be trapped in this place. Enough. How much more must I sacrifice? You resist me so! You know my reason! The tomorrow we're fighting for! The two are to me! It's incredible. Just how strong you've become. Arval. You have grown more than I ever thought possible. And yet... <sighs> I've never felt more alone. Like we made it out in one piece. Are you sure about that? I still have no idea what's going on. Arval, or Epimenides, I suppose, has vanished, and we've been returned to where we started. Perhaps we should just consider this a victory, an ironic one, as we achieved it by working together. Fair enough. So, what happens now? I can't speak for Edelgard, but I'm not exactly itching to fight you. Whatever's in store for us, let's say we just call a truce for now. I wouldn't have been able to return here had it not been for your assistance, as well as Claude's. Letting you walk away may not be the soundest of tactics, but at this point I see no other option. Agreed. Let's consider all debts paid. But just to be clear, I crushed you once, and I can do so again. Right. 
I gotta admit, I never saw any of this coming. In truth, I can't say I much expected any of this. Still, it got us talking again, and that's gotta be worth something. Well, I should be off. I hope we can do this again sometime. The speaking part, anyway. In that case, I will depart as well. I'm sure everyone must be quite concerned for me by now. See you both on the other side of this war. Well, my friend, are you ready to get out of here? We still have one more enemy to deal with before all of this can end. Archbishop Rhea awaits. Golden Wildfire. Field of Beginnings. The Federation successfully aids the Imperial Army, and together they pursue the Kingdom and Church forces. However, Claude's sole aim is to eliminate Archbishop Rhea. While Edelgard contends with the Royal Army, Claude and his forces go after the Church. In their pursuit, they arrive at the Teen Plains, where Seros and Nemesis battled long ago. It's not much further to Kingdom territory. Once we've crossed the border, we'll march through the Teen Plains and make our way to Ferdiad. The plains of Teen are the largest in all of Fargus. As I recall, they're also where a well-known battle took place long ago. We're going by land instead of sea this time, huh? I have to admit, I prefer it this way. We may have taken a wild little detour, but we're finally back to marching on the Kingdom capital. Claude, are you sure it would not be prudent to ask the Imperial Army for assistance? They certainly owe us after that last battle. The Imperial Army changed course to travel west, and Edelgard went after them. They're well on their way to Aryan Road. Most of the Kingdom's forces have gathered in the west as well. Rhea and her troops are the only ones who fled north. I don't get it. Sure, it makes sense for the Kingdom to reinforce their position on the Western Front. They're losing ground there, after all. But is the King of Fargus really abandoning the defense of his capital city and the church? I can't claim to know what his intentions are, but I suspect Dimitri's decided to leave the rest to me. What's that supposed to mean? What in the world could the King of an enemy territory trust you with? I think I get it. Dimitri is counting on Claude. The Central Church is just a millstone around the Kingdom's neck at this point. Dimitri's probably hoping Claude will cut him loose. Are you suggesting that the King wishes to avoid formally cutting ties with the Central Church and is therefore using us to bring about its demise? Hmm. I have heard that the Central Church aided the Kingdom when civil war broke out. Perhaps Dimitri feels indebted to the Archbishop and his knightly values demand he not oppose her directly. But that's... No. I suppose this is the nature of war. There is more to it than that. The Kingdom and the Church have a long history full of reasons why the King can't betray them. Long ago, the hero Lug von Blathid cut down the Adrestian Emperor of his day. In fact, their battle took place on the Tail Team Plains, which we're just about to cross. The Church mediated the conflict and recognized House Blathid's independence, leading to the founding of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. As you might have guessed, that's how they got the Holy Bit in their name. So essentially, abandoning the Church would mean turning their back on the very group to whom they owe their independence. And that's why Dimitri wants the fledgling Leicester Federation to do his dirty work and abolish the church in his stead. And that's my guess, anyway. But his reasons are immaterial, since getting rid of the church is what we've been after all along. For the sake of our future and the free world to come, we'll tear down the central church and put an end to Rhea. You can count on it. 
And if they run off to Ferdiad, we'll just have to conquer the capital to get to them. That's the spirit. You know, kid, you've really become someone we can depend on. And now, Your Majesty, we await your official order. You got it, Judith. It's time to fling open the doors to a whole new era. All forces, advance! I want to apologize again. I'm really sorry. I can't believe I tried to kill you. It's all right. I know that wasn't really you. Still, the one who did it was a part of me. Literally. You asked me about this before. About some mysterious presence within me. That's right. Well, sorry I couldn't give you a straight answer back then. Arval told me not to tell anyone. That's the name of the presence that was inside my head, by the way. The one that took control of my body and tried to kill you. Or maybe it was someone else entirely. The one that called himself Epimenides. Arval and Epimenides, hmm? I wonder what manner of beings they are. Beats me. And it's not like I can just go and ask them now. Honestly, I kind of wish I'd talk to Arval more now that I can't. That's how these things work, sadly. When you're ready to talk, the person you want to talk to is no longer there. But there's still so much I don't know. Remember how I got trapped inside that void with Claude and the others after our fight? That's when Arval used the name Epimenides, and then tried to kill us. Are Arval and Epimenides the same being? I'd like to think they're different, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Epimenides is just Arval's true identity. I don't know if they were just using me, or if they had some other goal in mind. All I've got are a bunch of mysteries that I'll probably never solve. I did notice one thing. What's that? It was when we were fighting, and you were being manipulated. It seemed like Arval was trying to keep your body from getting hurt. They could have fought more recklessly. I don't see why it would have made a difference to them. But they were making sure you weren't harmed. Seriously? Arval was protecting me? It's just a feeling I got. But yes, I think that could have been the case. I guess Arval's the only one who knows the truth. Or as the Saros folks say, only the goddess knows, right? But hey, thanks for telling me that. Really. It does make me feel better. I've got no choice now but to keep moving forward. Live out the destiny the two of us once shared. Funny. I came here to apologize, but you ended up cheering me up instead. I'll catch you later, okay? Only the goddess knows, hmm? Well, the goddess may have been the one telling you that. Claude, I am well aware that we Lester nobles will be cooperating with the Imperial forces moving forward. But House Gloucester has always prided itself on an amicable relationship with the Empire. This changes little for us. Huh, I guess you're right. Your father did head up the pro-imperialist faction, after all. Yes, until your wicked schemes severed their ties. Do you really have to bring that up again? I thought I apologized for that. I am simply stating the truth. If such words ring out as criticism to your ear, perhaps your conscience is the problem. But what I mean to say is, my house already had the foresight to do this previously. Your actions now are mere imitation. I can see your point, though the logic is a bit forced. It naturally follows that House Regan does not deserve to sit upon the Federation's throne. No, the people yet yearn for their rightful rulers, House Gloucester. 
I'm pretty sure that's just your ego talking. I don't think people really feel that way. Do not misunderstand. I am not opposed to your being king, for the moment at least. But your reign was granted by a round table conference, not blood, making you nothing more than an appointed monarch. And a temporary one, if I may. House Regan does not hold this position by birthright, and it will not stay with you in the future. No. The next to be put forth as king will be... Why, of course, it shall be me, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. Some even propose I ascend the throne immediately if you begin to teeter toward ruin. Yeah, you're really letting your ego run wild here. But I have to admit, the idea of a non-hereditary monarchy does sound interesting. Doesn't it, though? My capacity for such thoughts is proof enough that I am suited to be king. But I can't stand to think about going back to making that decision via roundtable. It'd be no different from how we used to do things in the Alliance. Oh? Then how will we decide? How about letting the people of Leicester choose? Left to their own devices, they'd probably pick whoever they thought would be the best able to protect them. Sounds pretty good, huh? A preposterous suggestion. Is this in earnest? Though, hmm, such a method would prove a great boon for House Gloucester. The common folk in our territory have the utmost trust in us, after all. And for once, I think that's fact, not ego talking. You do realize it would be the whole of Leicester choosing, though, right? Not a problem. Our just rule is known far and wide through every mountain and ravine of Fodlan. I think. But let us set that matter aside for now. That is not what I came here to tell you. You should know, the role of king within the Federation is as of yet unstable. Proceed with caution, lest it all come crashing down around you. You're right. Unlike the Empire to our south and Kingdom to our west, the Goddess's guidance didn't grace the founding of our Federation. So the role of King is a fragile one, held aloft only by the people supporting them. I'll be careful, just as you say. And thank you, Lawrence. I think I might just get through this with my wits intact if I have you here next to me. Please do not get the wrong idea. I simply do not wish to see my beautiful home succumb to the foul clutches of despair. Of course, of course. And I hope you keep coming to me to voice all your complaints. I'll be counting on you, Lawrence. Hmm. Yeah, something's still not quite right here. Maybe the chest decoration is a little... lonely? There's no way this accessory is good enough to sell in its current state. Something wrong, Hildy? Hey, Dorothea. Yeah, I'm actually trying to make a necklace, but it's not going well. I just can't shake that feeling. It's, I don't know, missing a little something, I guess. Anyway, I was just mulling over what I should do about it. Oh, so this is one of your handmade accessories. I've wanted to see one for so long. Might I offer an opinion? Oh, absolutely! Give me the brutal truth. I can handle it. This is fine workmanship. Much more elaborate than the goods you can buy off a common tinker. Ah, oh, the chain is patterned after a vine. Yes, I see. Forgive an amateurish opinion, but what if you were to add some leaves under this floral decoration? If there were a pattern that bridged the flower and the vines, that might lend it the special something you feel like you're missing. You know what? That just might do it. Yeah! I think you're really onto something there, Dorothea. Thanks a million! I'll give it a shot. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. Oh, but now I'm going to come to you whenever I'm in a pickle about how to fix an accessory, you know. 
I would be delighted. Say, do you have any interest in actually selling the items you make? Huh? Wait, you think I could sell them? As I said earlier, you rarely see goods of this quality. They could, for example, be used by an opera troupe. Like the Middle Franc Opera Company? Exactly. Stage costumes use all manner of accessories and ornamentations, you know. And once they're seen in such a setting, nobles from near and far will be clamoring to buy them. Dorothea, I love you. I'm so happy I could scream! Actually, maybe we could keep the spirit of our newfound cooperation going. See, someday, I actually want to open a school for craftspeople who make accessories like mine. And since you used to work at the opera company, maybe you could help me with the whole businessy side of things. I mean, opera people are pretty good with accessories and stuff, right? So, what do you think? <sighs> That's wonderful, Hildy. Oh, what ideas you think of! There are a few jobs retired opera members can get, which was always a source of worry for the company. So let's definitely return to this conversation in the near future, all right? Oh, I am so glad I met you, Dorothea! Late again. I just get so caught up in my studies. <sighs> there it is again! No, it must be Raphael today. It has to be. I checked that he'd be training and everything. He even specifically said he'd be doing it after dinner. So... Doesn't make it any less scary, though. I guess he can't help but yell while he trains, but I really wish he'd figure out how not to. Hey, what's with the creepy voice? I could ask you the same thing. Do you have to be so loud and booming all the time? The least you could do is keep it down a bit. What do you mean? I'm on my way back from my training session. But you heard that weird noise too, right? I tried listening real close to see where it was coming from, but no luck. Wait, wait, wait. You mean to tell me you're not the one who was making it? And here I'd convince myself it was you training. Hey now! My muscles scream during a good workout, but it's nothing horrible like that. I'm sorry, Raphael. Uh, wait! That's not the point! If it wasn't you, then maybe there really is a ghost! There! Ah! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! It's here! Yep. I think it's coming from inside the storage. I don't care where it's coming from! Just go on and check it out already, Raphael! Well, okay. But are you sure you want me going alone? I'd be leaving you here all by yourself. Yeah, I don't want that. I'll stay hidden behind you. <sighs> this is the place. Come on, Lysithia. We're going in. Uh... <sighs> Wait, it's... a puppy? Oh, hey there, little guy. You hungry again? <laughs> You're a big eater, just like me. The minute you finish one meal, it's straight on to seconds. Raphael, do you... know this dog? Oh, yeah, he's my eating buddy. Little guy can chomp down ten times his body weight in food. 
Wow! And he stayed so small. Wait just a minute. Shouldn't you have realized it was him earlier? I got all spooked for nothing. <sighs> There you are. What's going on? It's not like you to send for me. I have something to give you. Well, this is new. What is it? Here. Flowers? Oh, I'm really surprised. I mean, you've never given flowers to anyone before, have you? I had to ask some of our allies for advice. Because I wasn't sure the best way to communicate my feelings. What do you mean? I'm really thankful that you're my captain, but also that you're my father. I've never really told you that, so I wanted to make sure you knew. Ah, oh, kid. When I asked, everyone said I should give you flowers. Apparently that's what they used to do back at the Officers Academy. I wonder what it would have been like there. The Officer's Academy, huh? You might have just been a student there if things had happened a little different. Or who knows, maybe you'd have ended up like Alois and forced into giving seminars or something. Not that you're really qualified to be a teacher. Hmm. Anyway, these flowers did the trick, kid. Consider your message delivered. Though, to be honest, I kind of already knew. You might not give a lot away, but you're not completely unreadable. Sorry for making you think I had no idea. That's all right. I'm just glad you know. By the way, why'd you choose this kind of flower? Did someone suggest them? No, I picked them out myself. I thought they were nice to look at. Calming, in a way. <laughs> uh, you even like the same flowers as your mother. Can you inherit that kind of thing? I used to give these to Citri all the time. I'd pull them out from behind my back, and her whole face would light up like the brightest torch she'd ever seen. Maybe this is how she felt whenever she got them. I'll keep that in mind for next time. I want to see how this mercenary life of ours is going to play out, together. Those feelings are never going to change, and I'll do what I must to make sure you know that. Huh. Thanks, kid. Your Majesty, I am glad to see that you are safe. I am fine, Gustav. My apologies for worrying you. What is your report on the situation in the West? For the moment, we are holding the line against the Empire's offensive. The news that Your Majesty has arrived at the Silver Maiden will do wonders for the soldiers' morale. Unfortunately, the same can be said for our enemy. The Emperor pursued me here, and should be joining her forces at the front. But no matter how high the enemy's morale, they will not find Aryan Road an easy prize to take. In that case, perhaps our concern should lie with Lady Rhea and the Knights of Seros. Ah, yes. The Kingdom Army parted with them to deal with the Imperial forces here in the West. I have heard nothing of their fate since. Were they able to reach Camulus safely? No, Your Majesty. They have stopped in the northern region of the Tail Team Plains to prepare for battle. They intend to meet the Federation Army there? It is likely they determined that with the Kingdom Army unable to leave the Western Front, they would not be able to withstand a siege at Camulus. They have assessed the situation correctly, then. The Kingdom Army cannot spare enough troops to break a siege at this moment. But if Camulus is taken, Ferdiad itself may well fall to the forces of Leicester. To prepare for that contingency, I have ordered our citizens in the capital and the surrounding area to evacuate to Gautier territory. But does Claude truly wish to destroy Fargus? 
somehow I doubt it. Your Majesty, a message from Duke Faldarius. The Imperial Army seems to be taking more aggressive action. He would like you to brief the commanders on the current state of the war. Understood. I will be there shortly. But Your Majesty, what of the Central Church? Gustav, we will do what must be done to safeguard our people, no matter how great the cost. Were we to bow down to the Empire and accept the Southern Church, Fargus would fall to ruin. A great many of our people would die. However, the Federation has shown us a way to avoid such a terrible fate. Then there is truly no other way? We are deeply indebted to the Central Church. <sighs> Yet it is a debt that I cannot repay. I will gladly accept whatever punishment I must. If it means saving even one more of my people's lives, then as the King of Fargus, no sacrifice is too great. Forgive me, Gustav. Your Majesty, if this is the path you have chosen, then I will walk it with you until the very end. Your Grace, the Federation army is approaching from the south. King Claude appears to be commanding them personally. The rebellious blood of those wretched ten elites has led one of their descendants to turn his blade against us. Perhaps it was a mistake not to have terminated their bloodlines long ago. Your Grace? Lady Rhea, with the Kingdom Army occupied on the Western Front, we will have little in the way of support from them. I believe the wisest course of action would be to retreat to Ferdiad and attempt to hold the palace there. No. We will face them here. Long before the Kingdom even existed, Saint Sero slew the fell King Nemesis upon this very soil. This field is a sacred place for the Church of Seros. We will have the Goddess's protection here. Indeed, but... You have nothing to worry about, Seteth. If anything should happen, I want you to take Flane and escape. Lady Rhea, you cannot mean that. Long have I protected Fodlin in the Goddess Sothis' stead. It may be time for that duty to finally come to an end. And would you accept that? Not willingly, no. In our absence, future generations are likely to repeat the foolish actions of their ancestors. And when that happens, who will be left to stop them? This land has suffered enough as it is. <sighs> I will fight with all my strength and spirit. For my mother, for the future, even for humanity. What shall come to pass? Only the goddess knows. Such are her teachings. The teachings of my mother. Rhea. As in the Battle of Tail Team, I will strike down any fool who dares dishonor our creator. This is it, folks. If we slay Rhea, we'll usher in a new era for Fogla. Give it all you got. There's no need to rush. Just keep pressing forward. Our first objective is to capture the strongholds on the front line. Everyone, stake your lives on this battle and make the goddess proud. We will annihilate the wicked Federation army! We've managed to advance this far as two groups, but I didn't foresee the bridge being down. We'll just have to hold out until we can meet up again. I might actually put in some effort. <laughs> Fight until my dying breath to protect Lady Rhea. Cyril, I will remember your heroism always. It's 
Send here. I'm gonna help Lady Rhea. Take a breather. All right, here I go. Watch out! Ah! He's going for the strongholds. We've been told to return to the capital. But we're the only ones who can protect the church's people. Is that Mercedes? Does that mean the kingdom's commanding those troops? I will do what I must until the very end. Mercedes. So this is where you've been. I will save you. You got my back? I need your strength! You got it. Let's go! I got you now! Lady Rhea, I'm sorry I couldn't help. All right, take it down. They appear to be having a difficult time. I have no choice but to intervene. You coming? Show them what you can do, Raphael. My muscles always win the day! I did all that I could. I guess I wasn't up to the challenge after all. Mercedes, it is not worth risking your life for this fight. It was my choice to put my life on the line. But now I must fall back. Then please, fight alongside me for now. It is the best way to keep you safe. My turn. Our allies Changing are struggling. Places. I must lend them a hand. There is no need to overexert yourself, Flame. Promise me you will retreat the moment it becomes too passive. We're moving right along. Keep That's capturing you. the enemy's strongholds. Fighting, but this is my duty. Come then. You still fight in me yet. I will not be defeated here. I am afraid. I have exhausted myself. I should withdraw. Take a breather. Violence defiles the Fodlin needs the Archbishop. Anyone who does not understand that must be eliminated. The Goddess, there is no salvation for them. Guardians of the Holy Tomb, come forth! Bring down the hammer of judgment upon these sacrilegious rebels! Those soldiers were likely created with magic. The devices controlling them should be here somewhere. There are yet injured allies on the other side. Let's link up. I need your strength! You got it. Let's go! 
Lean. She'll heal the enemy if we don't take care of her. Yeah! We've taken all the strongholds on the front line. Continuing in this state would be a challenge. I must retreat for now. <laughs> well, at last, the Federation Army has us on the back foot. Do we have any hope of winning this? The church forces seem at a loss without their frontline commanders. Those enemies on the front lines were strong. But we were strong. We took them all out. <laughs> Even with the goddess of protection, the remaining forces are hardly enough to hold them all. What are you doing? We'll vanquish our foes! We have no evil! Go! Be That looks like a device over there! We've got to capture the stronghold and stop it! Those soldiers now, but they're not completely gone. Ugh, they give me the creeps. I see they found the devices. Right, but it matters not, for they still have no hope of victory. Once you take the stronghold, you need to disable that device. I don't know how, but I'm sure you'll figure something out. The central church collapses. Many people will lose their spiritual foundation. That would be terrible. I will fight alongside you, my brother. Goddess, infuse me with your divine strength! of this magnitude be coming from? Are we witnessing the Archbishop's power? Show them what you can do, Raphael! They won't know what hit them! Watch me flash! Did you see that? My muscles always win the day! She's not fooling around. Here we go, everyone. Don't let the enemy push us back. The battle's only going to get tougher from here on out. The Immortal Core is ready to go. Lady Rhea, I am sorry. I... I can no longer... That must be the judgment of the gods! We have her divine protection, so charge forth without fear! Is My turn that magic is the places? goddess's protection? Their faith has blinded them! People do horrible things when their faith becomes tainted with fear. We must stop them at once. Blade! No! How could this happen? How dare you! Let loose! Blot out the sky with your arrows! Something's falling from the sky! 
We are in serious peril. Everyone, fall back. It's all you, Hilda. Leaving it all to you, Frog. Like all of it? All of it? Blame me all you want. I had not the strength to stop Be them. Careful. Forgive me, Rhea. Rhea, we must retreat. I cannot allow flame to perish. May fortune smile yeah. upon you, Lady Rhea. Do what you must. I will settle this on you. <laughs> This is our final opportunity to pass judgment on the enemy. If you can yet move, follow me! Our forces have reunited thanks to the strength of my efforts. Truly, I am more fit to lead than our actual king. You do realize the actual king is standing right here. But if you want the job so badly, I'll happily let you take over later. This stronghold will fall! Now, let us bring it down! Such an abominable presence. Yes, I knew that one day you would turn your blade on me. Don't get the wrong idea. My powers have nothing to do with this. I'm standing here of my own free will. So, you've chosen to side with Edelgard. I am disappointed in you, Claude. No hard feelings, Rhea. I'm just determined to see what the world would be like without you. your strength! You okay to keep going? Of course. And after we win this battle, you're gonna show me the new world you're creating. This is not over. I must carry on for the sake of my mother's fallen comrades. It's time to finish this, Rhea. Are you sure you don't want to just walk away? It's not too late. I did not go looking for this fight, but you will not see me run from it. You have spilled much blood during this war the Empire started. I'm not here to talk about who started this war. I'm gonna end this. That's what's important now. This world cries out for change, while you keep it shackled to the past. And it's up to us to help set it free. I'm ready if you are. For all of Fodlin! So be it. I will crush you where you stand! Well, color me surprised. Rhea's really the Immaculate One? Whatever she is, we have to end her. Now quit staring before she crushes you! Gotcha! Watch out! Leaving it all to you, God. Like all of it, all of it. Blame me all you want. None shall surpass me. We need to make one final push. We're almost there. I'm getting pretty hungry, but I can hold out. You got a feast waiting for us after we win this. Ah! 
We've been through a lot. But all our efforts will be rewarded if we win, right? Stay behind me! We'll vanquish our foes! We have no equal! Be gone! It's my turn! Our victory will secure my place in history as a hero of Fodland. We dealt with our fair share of surprises. We're finally here. Our king is really something else. You coming? Show them what you can do, Raphael! Watch Reflex! Did you see that? My muscles always win the day! This is far from the end. Take a breather. But it will be a significant step forward if we win. Time to finish this. Everyone, lend me your strength! If there is any way I can help change Lester and Fodlin for the better, I will. I'm still not sure if this is really the right thing. But I have to twist Blood and push forward. comes to an end here and now! <laughs> Our work here isn't over. Not by a long shot. Got plenty of road ahead. But we've taken the first step. Together. It is now 1183, Blue Sea Moon. The Federation has joined with the Empire to invade the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Claude sought not to conquer the kingdom, but to destroy the central church. After Archbishop Rea's defeat, the church has lost much of its martial prowess. Tensions continue between the empire and kingdom. Having now reached his goal, Claude proposes an end to the war, yet it remains uncertain if either side will accept. What an adventure we've had. Hard to believe it all started with one little dust up in the woods. We've seen each other through so many battles, and yet I know we've got a lot more to go. Chances are I'll stay and fight for this place, but don't hold it against me if I slip away from time to time for an adventure of my own. And while my future isn't set in stone, I know one thing for certain. Right here, right now,